you like audiobooks or audio shows, check out a free trial of Audible. Just click the link in the description. Welcome to Mind Shock. This is your host, Bruce McGuire. Today we are tackling one of the most requested logical analyses on a flat earth debate. That of Jaronism, David Weiss, and the one and only Austin Whitsitt versus Professor Bryant Myers. And unlike that other Professor Dave goof, this guy's actually a professor, and he actually has more than one brain cell to rub together. He actually seems pretty intelligent, We're gonna, and he also seems to be arguing in good faith, which is what's important here. Now, I can't tell. Obviously, I don't know the guy. But it seems like he's here for an actual good faith debate and discussion. So we'll see how well that works. And we will see if the one and only Austin Witsit is able to have some meaningful exchanges with Bryant Myers. So this guy has multiple degrees in physics. So... <laughs> It should be very, very interesting. As always, if you find Mindshock interesting, informative, and entertaining, you can donate to our PayPal. Help support logic and reason in a world where it is becoming extinct. This isn't about conclusions and what the shape of the Earth actually is. This is about a logical analysis on logical argumentation and who is using more logical fallacies to present their position and whether or not one has come to the belief that they chose logically or as a result of indoctrination and indoctrination facilities, regardless of what the truth actually is. That's not the point here. I mean, there's so many triggered goofs coming out of the woodwork that only want to obsess about conclusions instead of the point of these entire analyses, which are to analyze logical argumentation. So if you want more of that, you can help support us. Just check the link in the description for our PayPal link. You could also become a YouTube member right here on YouTube for access to exclusive streams and chats. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, like and share, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon, Patreons do get priority for case topic, logical analysis, co-podcast or requests. You could also be a guest in the podcast depending on your tier. Questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunkings of any kind, leave them in the comment section. All right, so before we get started, I will just give the disclaimer again. This podcast is not about the shape of the earth. This podcast is about logical argumentation and who argues their position more or less fallaciously. We will, of course, have the logical fallacies counter. I am also going to add a zingers counter just for the heck of it to make it even more entertaining because even though some of these flat earth debates are hilarious for all the wrong reasons, <laughs> we can make it even funnier because insults separated from the fallacies. So just to examine who has the best insults or zingers per se, if this is used as an argument, it is also counted as an ad hominem logical fallacy. Now, whether or not it's used as part of the article, part of the argument, it will also be counted in the zinger section if it is truly a good zinger. And then we will examine who is the champion. I also want to say, for people that are interested in logical debate, you are in for a treat. I mean, witnessing Austin Witsit debate is like watching prime Michael Jordan play basketball. Again, it has nothing to do with him being a flat earther, if he really is, or if he's simply just arguing for the flat earth side and he's actually a globe earther, or if he's on the fence and he has a neutral position. Whatever the case is, Austin Witsit's command of logic and logical fallacies is absolutely incredible. It far exceeds my own, and I've been dealing with uh, and studying with logic and logical fallacies specifically for many, many years. I may or may not have a couple degrees from a couple different universities that some might find prestigious. I would never use this as an argument. I, know, I don't even want to bring those up because either the points I'm making are fallacious or they are not. Whatever indoctrination I happen to receive at whatever indoctrination facilities has no merit on the argument itself. The argument itself should be examined for its own merit. And I don't know Austin Witsit's background. I don't know how many degrees he does or doesn't have. But what cannot be denied is this guy's greatest of all time status as a debater. I've watched a lot of debates on a lot of different subjects. I have never seen anybody 
as good as Austin Witsit. People think Ben Shapiro is a good debater. Some people think that he's actually pretty decent, but he's usually coming against really weak opposition. Austin Witsit just plows over any and all opposition I've seen. I haven't seen him debate Bryant Myers yet, so we'll see how he does against this guy. Usually Austin, unfortunately, is paired up with these just mental midgets on the modern day debate podcast. It's actually hard to get through some of those debates because these people aren't even on a first grade English level and Austin Witsit is forced to play them. And can you imagine how bored Michael Jordan would be playing with toddlers? I mean, they don't even know what a jump, sh a fadeaway is, let alone how to hit it, how to block it. I mean, <laughs> that's Austin Witsit versus his usual opposition on the modern day debate channel. Very difficult to go through. I mean, a lot of those people that he's arguing with, they might actually be mentally disabled. So it'd be interesting to see Austin Witsit against a worthy opponent. And again, just in terms of pure argumentation, I have not ever seen anybody as good as Austin Witsit. And I would say he doesn't even have a close second right now. People want to give me props, but I don't think so. I don't think I would be able to defeat Austin Witsit in any debate on any subject. He would probably be in my number one pick for any debate on any subject just because of his command of logic and logical fallacies. Nothing to do with Flat Earth, of course, just mentioning logic. So again, if Michael Jordan played on a different team, that wouldn't diminish his skills. I mean, he actually played for the Wizards. He actually did. His numbers were pretty crazy for a guy his age. Again, if you haven't checked out the Michael Jordan podcast on Mindshock, I did a logical analysis on Michael Jordan's career and who is the greatest of all time in basketball. But here, in the world of debate, I will nominate Austin Witsit as the best of all time, and we are in for a treat here just watching him debate in general. So let's get started. This is live. It is the 15th of September. It is 6.05 p.m. And it's time for Jaron and Dave and Sean and Austin to get schooled about living on the globe by yeah. Professor Bryant Myers, BSMA Physics. I don't think the BS stands for what I think it does, but maybe it does. We'll, we'll bring everybody on. Let's say hello to everybody. First, we've got... Oh, we got to get rid of that real quick. Hold on. we got a bar in the way. There we go. We've got uh, Witsit down in the corner. Awesome, Witsit. How are you, my friend? Good. How's it going, man? Looking forward to it. Should be should be good convo. Should be fun. And we've got uh, to his right, your left, Sean Hibbler from Hibbler Productions. Sean, what's up? What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me on. Uh, enjoy the show. Should be fun. And we've got, of course, Dave Weiss in the house, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> the Jew. <laughs> Dave, oh, thank you. Show. Thanks so much. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> um, how's it going? Welcome. I'm, I'm looking forward to this, Brian. Yes. Uh, let me let me uh, introduce Brian. He uh, reached out to me a while ago, and uh, you know, um, he came across like really nice. And he's like, you know, I believe this and that, and he wanted to have this debate. And um, I said, you know, rather than have a debate, let's have a discussion. And he agreed to come on with all of us. So it's not four against one. It's five guys having a conversation yeah. about what they truly believe. I'm going to stop him right there because it is probably going to be four on one, but let's give Bryant props here. Usually it's all the triggered goof globe earthers who are, te who are just jumping on one guy, some scientifically skeptical individual who's questioning the shape of the earth, which is a scientific thing to do unlike a religious thing to just take something on blind faith. Again, the subject being the shape of the earth is irrelevant here. Science versus scientism is the question. So we really have to give Bryant props here, especially if he truly is discussing in good faith. Bryant is not a troll. He is not a stammer of any way. He 100% believes what he believes, and he's going to try to school us, and you know we're going to try to school him. And maybe somebody will change their mind at the end of the day. Now, we all know that we have all shown that we are able to change our minds because we were all Globers at one point. So we'll see what happens. And it, we're, we're probably going to agree to disagree on many things. And we're going to let Bryant do as much talking as he can. We might get a little heated, but yeah. we're not going to call each other names because we're not little fairy boys. All right. <laughs> Is he referring to is he referring to Professor Dave there <laughs> and a lot of these other groups? Okay, I would like to know this. So David Weiss brought up an excellent point that authority worshiping cultists and coincidence theorists. I don't know why they don't look at this point. I guess they're too mentally weak and too mentally deficient to examine that very important piece of information. 
So coincidence theorists and authority worshiping cultists, they always psychologically project onto whoever is against their position that they're just sheep and they were they they were hoodwinked by some random conspiracy theorist on the internet into believing that. Well, here's the thing, they at least, even if the conspiracy theorists, authority worshiping cultists and or flat earthers, even if they're wrong about everything, the mental strength required to go against the establishment, to go against the crowd, that cannot be denied. So David Weiss brings up an interesting point there that not enough people really bring up. Even if these flat earthers or conspiracy theorists are wrong about everything, they did show that they were mentally strong enough to change their position not some kind of uh, flim, flam, fickle switcheroo when the idiot box says one thing, they switch. That to go against the mainstream and the establishment and be willing to be subjected to this amount of ridicule. I mean, is there anyone more ridicule than a flat earther? So their mental strength in that department, even if they're wrong about everything, I'm not saying anybody's wrong or right, but David Weiss brings up an excellent point there. And... um Brian, one of the, uh, what I miss, what I leave out, uh, say well, hello. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. I look forward to just kind of going through. I got the full spectrum of topics on globe versus flight earth, so I think we'll be able to cover a lot of ground, and I've spent a lot of time preparing this, so it's very efficient, and, you know, and, and I, I hope, you know, at the very least, even if no one changes their mind, um, I think there's a lot of science that maybe could be, like, sharpened on the flat earth side because i've just heard so much that's so easy to i mean just and, basic physics stuff that's easy to debunk and then like well anyway, we'll do a bit into it one, one other thing which i want to say which um uh, bryant is on the same side of the fence as everybody else here on things that we shall not mention on youtube <laughs> okay uh, he, he is on the, the same side of the fence on everything he he you know i'm you know i, I said in a couple of emails to him I'm you're really pissing me off because I'm starting to like you. Uh, yeah. And he uh he um he just we differ on two things. Flat uh, yeah. Earth you guys and don't the moon think birds are, you guys don't think birds are robots, do you though? No, so, we don't. Um, okay, okay. So yeah, it's probably just <laughs> no. those two things then yeah. And the thing that jumps out right away too, Bryant really does seem like a like a likable, genuine, good hearted guy. Now, is that gonna work against him when looking at conspiracies? Because a lot of things certain conspiracy theorists do, I'm not saying the majority, I'm not even saying a large minority. It might be a very small minority, but they're very vocal. They attack some of these coincidence theorists and authority worshiping cultists who don't believe that there are any conspiracies, that there's criminals out there not working alone or in elements of the government. A lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time it's because these authority worshiping cultists and coincidence theorists, they're so good hearted. I mean, they might be mentally deficient. They might have extreme Dunning-Kruger. They might not understand logic in any way, but they're so good-hearted. It's difficult for them to understand the evil and corruption that exists in other humans and the mental strength required to understand that. That's a big ask. That's a really big ask. So Bryant might not possess the mental fortitude required to confront the levels of corruption at play. That doesn't mean he's not a nice guy. That doesn't mean he's not a really good-hearted guy. He, that might mean that in greater amounts than even conspiracy theorists who might be correct about certain things, but are quite cold-hearted. But we're here to discuss logic, but I just, I did want to address that for the people that might want to attack Bryant as a troll. He does not seem to be trolling from the outset here. We'll continue to examine. Okay, good. So there's a couple yeah. of really weird out there ones that I'm not into, but I, I've heard enough of your well, your stuff to know that we pretty much agree on everything except these the two little things. Um, and and I, if, if we can, I would rather not get into the moon landing tonight because that's just not an area I've spent time researching enough. So I want to focus more on just the science, more on... Well, already right there, there's a red flag. If he hasn't really spent the time researching and looking at the proof, because extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So if you're going to be scientific, if you're going to be scientifically skeptical, why would he believe in the moon landings if he hasn't spent time researching them, that's pretty anti-science. It's a very religious stance. So already, I mean, you know, the, the, this is the first red flag for Brian in terms of logical reasoning. But I, I won't use that as a major fallacy here because 
technically he's saying he wants to avoid that uh, that aspect of conversation instead of providing support for it. So we'll leave that alone. Well, let's, you know, let's we, can talk, we can talk about the moon. I want to talk about the moon, but um, not know, the landing there. Not the, <laughs> not, not, not the lunar module. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Can we not we can talk about the land? Show. If, if you give me some time to you know do my own research and really be more thorough on that, I'm happy to do that. It won't all. be a fun show because we'll all be moon landing deniers and oh, we'll be like, why are we here? Why are we here? What are we? Oh, go oh, I mean, I, I've got a couple a couple of doozies for that, but um, maybe maybe we'll bring that up with the moon. I, I I just want to bring up a couple things that I think are pretty solid proofs that we did land on the moon. But but let's start. If you don't mind, can we just start with the uh, the whole Earth? You know. Because I hear flat earthers always, or flat people that believe in flat earth. How, how do you like to be addressed? I, I want to be like, you know. Um, we like to be called flurfs. <laughs> <laughs> we 100% deny a globe heliocentric yeah. um, beehive yeah. well, model. 100% well, doesn't well, people, exist. Well, people that believe in flat earth. I mean, it's easier to say flat earthers, but I mean, I know that's better. What's well, a level and stationary plane? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we're so, globe deniers is the yeah, most open, so, open if minded. I say flat, if I do say this flat earthers, I want, I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. Um, okay. Good. I just, it just, an, it just kind of comes out quickly and efficiently. You're good. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that's one of the things that I, I mean, can I share my screen here now? Or, or you I can, but you're ready to go. Yeah. Whenever you want to do, go ahead. Fire in the hole. Okay. All right. So let me make sure I'm okay. Am I shared right now? Or I don't see it. You are good. Go ahead. Okay, I'm just not seeing it on the side. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, of course, a question that comes up a lot, a lot of, you know, flat earth believers that I've talked to, it's like, well, show me a picture of the globe. It's like, and then, of course, you get into what I feel are actual pictures. And and before you get into the photo forensic speech, I actually spent um, a whole day going through photoforensics.com and Forensically, which are two online photo forensics tools. And I actually went and found the highest resolution images of blue marble and um, earth rising and a couple others. And, and I also uploaded some pictures of digital pictures of myself. So just my own, which I know, which I know is true, right? So in these forensic tools, I was seeing some, you know, some aberrations even in my own pictures because digital pictures are always going to have some distortions, but I couldn't following the, and I'm not a photo forensics ex expert, but, but following, you know, very careful tutorials that are online, I was not able to detect any, obvious like you know an error air analysis there was just nothing obvious when you made the block size large enough that if it was a fake photo there would be much much more type of obvious things whoa okay so right off the bat there if you give somebody a photo of bigfoot and they can't detect any aberrations does that mean the photo of bigfoot is real <laughs> See, again, so this would be a burden of proof logical fallacy and an appeal to extremes logical fallacy because he's stating that if it were fake, it needs to be obvious. I mean, not to mention the level of technology. If we go by the rule of thumb that the mil So if the conspiracy is true, again, it, when you're examining a concept, you're not going to use the parameters of a different concept to disprove it. So, I mean, if somebody doesn't believe in God, they're not going to take the Bible as the word of God. So trying to use the Bible to prove God, that's not going to work. You can't use the parameter of that. So he's stating that the burden of proof is always on the one making a positive claim. So if you're claiming that a photo of the earth is real, that a photo of Bigfoot is real, that a photo of a demon is real, whoever's making the positive claim the burden of proof is on them and extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So, and then also appeal to extremes because if it's faked, it has to be obvious. If we go by the rule of thumb that the military is roughly 50 years ahead in terms of technology, possibly far greater. I mean, who knows? I mean, Moore's law, the exponential development of computer tech. If they're so incredibly advanced, you wouldn't necessarily detect aberrations, but whether you would or you wouldn't, Again, that doesn't change the burden of proof. So two fallacies right off the bat for Bryant there. There's so, ways to there's ways to cheat that though, right, Bryant? Like for instance, no, if, yeah. I mean, if if I take a photograph of a photograph, it will always be perfect on air level analysis because there is yeah. no differential there. It's going to look like a perfect picture, even though I right. took a picture of a fake photograph, right? Right. Well, the, but the point is, is it, I'm not I'm not claiming that these are proof of anything. But when you say they're not proof. It's the same for you guys. So your photo. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
It's not the same. Because again, let's we're going basic logic 101, children's level logic. The burden of proof is on positive claims. I use this example all the time. If someone says there's an invisible flying spaghetti monster and he's going to kill everybody if we don't pay taxes to the invisible flying spaghetti monster, maybe the invisible flying spaghetti monster really is up there. And maybe the invisible flying spaghetti monster really will destroy everybody if we don't pay taxes to it. But there's no reason to believe it scientifically if the burden of proof is not presented. So it's not the same for both sides. So Bryant here with a fundamental lack of understanding on basic children's level logic regarding burden of proof and positive claims. I'm actually a little surprised here because he seems like a genuine nice guy. Now, that, obviously, that doesn't mean he's smart, but that usually means that there's some kind of ego checking. Like, for example, goofs like so-called Professor Dave, Simon Dan, all those Dunning-Kruger goofs, their Dunning-Kruger is so extreme and off the charts, and their ego has them on such short strings. And they're also extreme narcissists where they can't consider that they're wrong. This guy seems to be, again, it could all be an act. I'm not saying he's not the best actor ever, but he seems genuine. And he seems genuine and nice enough to possibly consider that he might be wrong. I'm a little surprised that he doesn't have at least a basic command of logical fallacies. Forensics analysis is just as un unscientific as someone trying to prove that they're real because oh, sure. digital photos, you know, unless you get the actual original photo and you actually get a photo forensics expert... And you can see, let me just... Uh... Well, that would be an appeal to authority. You can find experts on both sides of every issue. You can't defer to the expert. That's like deferring to some priest at a church on whether or not he's speaking to God. Well, you're not the expert, so you don't know if God is real and he talks to priests. So let's go talk to the priest. If the priest confirms it, and then if his peers, if it's peer-reviewed, if you go to other churches and other priests also confirm God exists... And they possibly can speak to God. If it's all peer-reviewed from the priests, does that mean it's real? Obviously not. I mean, this is children's level basics. And it would be true that the only pictures of Earth that even science would, would claim to be true would be the ones from the moon landing, right? Everything else could not be a photograph because it would be a well, digital representation sent as data. Okay, right. A digital. But, but again, we live in a digital age, so um, I want to get to the, some of the more um, current and that, I don't want to focus so much on the moon landing photos, but just so you know, I mean, there is a lot to photo forensics. So when you just go out there and say that these are all, well, I've used photo forensics and I've shown that it's not true or that it's whatever. I, I've heard you guys say stuff like that. You know, in a court of law, you actually have to hire. And I looked into hiring a photo forensics expert just to prove my point. I, Again, in a court of law, anything, any kind of positive position, if you're trying to prove I mean, this goes beyond the shape of the Earth. Let's let's just assume everybody's on the same page and the Earth is a globe. Let's just assume that just for one second. In a court of law, if you're presenting something positive, you can't just show photos of whatever. You it's it ha you have to prove that it's real. So if these photos from space that are admittedly manipulated or CGI by the manipulator, not to mention if NASA is the accused, you're not going to take their word for it. I use this example all the time. If a murder, an accused murderer is going to bring their own surveillance photos, even if they're real, like <laughs> they're coming from the accused. So Brian also doesn't understand conflict of interest. Also, this red herring deflection. Oh, well, we live in a digital age. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> how is that, how, like, how does that address the burden of proof on the photos being presented by the accused? <laughs> I mean, a lot of fallacies here right off the bat. So this is not off to a good start for Brian. They were too expensive, so I didn't. But they're expensive, first of all. That holds up in a court of law. And he told me that digital photos, there's really no way you can really prove it but you do things like this. You, you've got to go through many different sort of, there's like many steps. You know, you can look at the photo forensics, but then you've got to like, okay, look at the metadata, look at, you know, there's, there's like a lot of, lot that goes into photo forensics. So the only way that I would believe, or I think we all should be critical here, that what you're saying that you've done photo forensics and you've shown the moon landing photos to be false, is that you have to hire a professional photo forensics expert no, you don't. Again, appeal to authority, logical fallacy. If you haven't checked out the Apollo Missions podcast on the Mind Shock series, I go over a lot of anomalies 
and then also EMF extraction, which shows artificial lighting in the moon land, in the so-called moon landing photos. I mean, that's pretty much as proof positive you can get that that was shot in a studio, unless you can come up with an alternate explanation on why man-made electromagnetic frequency or why electromagnetic frequencies are emanating from man-made light sources on the moon landing footage. So again, check out that podcast. But again, this just fundamental lack of understanding of burden of proof on top of appeal to authority logical fallacies. Because again, he wants to get an expert. We can we can go get a priest at a church. An expert in God will tell you that God is real. <laughs> so, that, I mean, it's, it's really strange that a guy... Because again, Brian actually seems humble enough and nice enough to p examine alternative positions. I mean, he's here willing to do a good faith, what I assume is a good faith debate and discussion. And uh, Jaronism, Hibbler, David, or Witsit, they can comment on uh, whether they felt that it was good faith in the moment while they were discussing with him. But either way, I mean, it's really weird that he doesn't understand these children's level logical fallacies. And I want to see those documents. I want to know who it is. And I want to see what their analysis is. Just, just for one of you guys to say it is not convincing. And that would be a genetic logical fallacy as well, because he thinks information is convincing based on who's presenting it, as opposed to what is being presented. So this is just not off to a good start. And I really feel bad for the guy, because he seems like a nice guy. And Austin Witsit here is lying in wait to attack, and it might not be pretty when he finally does. Brian, like yeah. that that picture you're showing us, they um, NASA has a um, 24 hour um, stop motion, just a whole bunch of pictures where it's spinning. Oh yeah, yeah. How come they never show the moon in that? You know, it, it, the moon should come around, and you can't say it's out of line because it because it's well, a they, full they Earth. Have, the sun is behind the camera. The, the Discover has shown the the whole moon. I mean, they had the image of the moon going right past. Yeah, one time. Mm -hmm. Well, still, I mean, they, you say that they can have we pull that have. up? Can someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you right, think right, that one looks right, legit, Brian? Well, right, I, right. I've, I've done analysis. Th this on one, it. yeah. Right. Well, listen, I can tell you something about that. The reason you see the red, the green, when you look at doing air analysis, yes, yeah, the three colors, because they had to take three, they had to take separate images because it's moving so fast and combine it into one. So it, again, you got to realize the moon, moon is going really fast across the Earth. So the, the, what they did is they took three snapshots in three different colors and they combined it into one image. Okay. So that's why if you do an error analysis, what do you mean really? Why would it be really fast uh, though? Right. The moon is going pretty darn fast. Two thousand so, miles per hour relative to the size of the Earth isn't fast if you're that far out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, that puts it in perspective. <laughs> and 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 also, why well, isn't they they why isn't the, the moon reason. lit? Why isn't the moon lit? It's, it should be a full moon. There's the money there, shot. Well, there's. Yeah, I've seen some of those things. I, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but there's different, you know, the cameras that are taking the images, if they, if, if you, if you open the exposure too much, then you end up getting overexposed on the earth. If you, open, if you, if you do it too little, then the moon gets, you, you got to find a compromise. So, place. but look, we have a full earth and the moon and the earth is lit up. So that would be a non-congruent logical fallacy because he's, uh, you have to show that in both instances and then show the difference between because this to me this just looks like the earth actually looks like it could be real here to me the moon looks like it's clearly been like copy pasted from paint like it doesn't even i mean it's not even close <laughs> the moon is closer to the camera only only a quarter know, of a million miles closer this is, i'm not a photographer dave so right so again he, he's not a photographer, but he's still, notice how he's still presenting the argument. He's still grasping those straws to try to explain away how this footage is real or could be real with religious blind faith. And you could hear the religious fervor in his voice while he's simultaneously arguing he's not an expert. So why is he even attempting to defend this? He could just say, okay, I don't know why it looks like that. It could be real. I'm not denying it's real. Uh, maybe it is real. It just looks kind of fake, especially the moon. The moon looks like it was copy-pasted from paint. Maybe that's just me. Uh, the earth looks okay. It looks kind of decent. But the moon just, I mean, <laughs> that's not even good graphics. I mean, that's pretty poor. I, I do know enough that when you guys say, oh, no stars on the moon, I mean, you guys know, come on. You guys know that that's overexposure, right? The reason that you don't see stars when the moon landing photos is because if you open up the exposure, you're going to end up with, it's, it's going to be too bright. I mean, uh, and I so, 
And it's kind of weird. As a light expert, he doesn't address all the multiple light sources on the moon that, again, once you factor in the EMF extraction, they're studio lights. But so clearly it doesn't look like that. And people actually have done tests uh, in various surfaces. Again, you could say, okay, the lack of atmosphere would affect this or that. But you can do tests yourself at night in the desert with dust, with or without studio lights, and see the difference. So obviously there is a lot with exposure, but you would think they would at least take different shots in different exposures to show different things, which again, if you're, if you're involved, I, I mean, if you're claiming they went not once, but all these, all these moon missions, they went to the moon all these times, you would think there'd be some kind of diver. I mean, if they have time to play golf, they can take a couple different shots at different exposures. I, I hear what you're saying there. I, I just throw in my two cents. Um, one of our, one of our guys, uh, in Thailand, um, um, Phuket word, he went out with his iPhone four, uh, yeah. iPhone four, an old iPhone, and he stood underneath a street light and he aimed the camera at the street light, yeah. so it was blinding the camera, and he could see stars behind the street light. Well, How come because- when they when they're on the moon, facing away from the sun into the dark sky, they couldn't see a single there, star? There, there are again, you could I've done you can do similar experiments and show different results too. So I I'm not going to take just one an, an n equals one experiment. See, I don't like these. And as a scientist, as an N equals one means I got a scientific study. Then it's just one person in the statistical. You're basically doing statistics on one person. Well, that's also what he did (laughs) regarding the moon landing. He's saying you can't see stars because of the exposure when you have a lot of evidence to to the contrary. Not to mention the fact that they could have easily taken different shots at different exposures. I mean, that's what anybody does. That's what any explorer, they climb a mountain, whatever, at night to start. I mean, you're going to take shots. I mean, even if you're an amateur, like we're not even talking about professionals with billions of dollars at the exposure. You're an amateur. You got to do a couple different shots at different exposures. I mean, you're just, that's just natural to do that, especially if you're on this mission of what is the greatest accomplishment of all mankind. But you pretty agree, much anybody though, like said you it's not proof. 15. You need at least 15 for a good statistical study. I used to teach statistics, so I know that. I'm pretty Let's sure anybody could go anybody could go on their street with street lights, point their iPhone camera at the sky and pick up the stars. I don't think well, that's again, you can do that, but you can also if you're trying to but street lights are not you're, it's not you can't say that that's the same thing as being on the yeah, moon. Yeah, fair enough. I agree with Earth. that. Okay. I actually agree well, with that. So so like you said, well, it's not proof of anything to me. That's one of the fakest looking things I've ever seen in my life. So I, it doesn't cut that, it. For that's me. fine. That's fine. I mean you can and again, I, again, I'm not a folder friends expert, but I did spend a fair amount of time going through as much as I could. It's like, okay, there's not convincing evidence that it's not real. Can I prove it's real? No, I'm not a folder friends expert, but I'm not convinced that they're unreal is what I'm getting at. And there I, are many experts that said that the pictures from the moon landings weren't real and they went okay, in depth show, and did Okay, whole show whole. me the experts. Okay, I want to list those names. You can go to allis.com. They're all PhDs. Um, AUL. Okay, well, well, send me the link because there's, there's okay. plenty of people on the other side that and this is why I appeal to authority is a logical fallacy. And the fact that Bryant doesn't know it, it's so weird. Like, how does he not understand the basics, the children's level 101 logic? I mean, yeah, th- this is tough. And it's tough for a whole bunch of different reasons. And I'm actually starting to uh, suspect that this might not be as entertaining as I thought. Because when you're watching, like, prof- so-called Professor Dave getting destroyed by David Weiss or some of these other debates where where these scientism cultists and goofs are getting obliterated by flat earthers, which, if flat earth's not even true, that makes it even funnier. But regardless of what's true or not true, that's not the point of this. I mean, Bryant seems like such a nice guy. His cluelessness might not be as entertaining. But let's continue anyways. Yeah, sure. of course. But uh, you asked for people on this. Side. Okay, so, so again, this is the whole picture thing. But but what I want to get into now is something called, um, you know, with 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 the new satellites that we have now around the world that are that are able to take whole disk images. Again, you say disk because so is that a circular reasoning logical fallacy? Because he's presupposing they're actually what they claim to be, and that the da- that what they're taking is actually what he's claiming. <laughs> I mean, it's a multi layered circular reasoning logical fallacy. You can't get a 360 degree image of the earth, you know, um, but they're taking these now every 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. And they're getting what's called truth observations guys. So you can actually like the Himawari eight has been able to detect fires from space and to help with sort of the direction of the fires going. So we're getting now live images from these satellites. Hold on, they're not take, live though. They're not live. Well, no, no, they're not live, but they're taking every 15 minutes. Yeah. You got to wait is a delay, right? So, but, so then it's not live, is it? <laughs> live means <laughs> live means it's live. <laughs> 
Wow. Jer I don't know Jaronism. I, I haven't really seen, I don't know if he does debates. I haven't seen him before, but he seems to be quite sharp. I mean, he, he responds pretty quickly. I'm still waiting for Witsit to uh, unleash. He's just looking there poised. He's like a, a crouching tiger ready to attack and obliterate everything in his path. And when he does, it's probably going to be really good. <laughs> so... Can I can I uh, interject but you're, but you're here for? Telling, but you're telling me that hundreds of pictures every day are fake. But yeah. what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Appeal to incredulity, logical fallacy. Uh, yeah. Have you ever heard of Hollywood movies? I mean, th there's a lot of fake stuff out there. <laughs> why are they taking? Why would it take any amount of time? <laughs> What's the point? I mean. <laughs> Oh, appeal to motive. Wow, he's going rapid fire with these fallacies now. But what, what's the point of taking 15 minutes to get us an I know, image? But, but, you can, you but, can, but no, hold on. Answer me that first, though. Why would you ever accept 15 minutes late for an image of the earth? How long would I it mean, take? It's, it's got to take, but listen, you can take a picture with your clock at a certain, a, a really unique cloud formation. You can go on Himawari 8 or Go 16, and you can see that same cloud formation. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So let let you let you can get truth confirmations like this from space. Uh, all right. Yeah. So so uh, I'm gonna break so your right, paradigm you're, on this. You're, you're you have to let me talk right. on this one. Okay. 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 So we're gonna show you some research that we did um, on the Himawari 8. Where how come that's hiding there? Hold on. Um, transition. Here we go. So and this just, is. We, we found a server, Jaron, jump in at any time. Yeah. Um, either whistleblower or somebody found us a, an FTP server with thousands, tens of thousands of folders on it with images from the Himawari 8. And they had a blue marble, an un, you know, a regular blue marble model. And then it had flat images of world radar. And it was showing how they wrap it around a sphere. This is a NASA FTP server. I'm just gonna jump forward a little bit here. And so here's uh, here's um, one of the maps they use with the weather on okay. it. Um, that you know that these are images that were on these servers, and then so check this out. This one is they they got the blue marble. They wrap the weather data around it. Okay, and we take it a little farther. This is the folders that we got it out of off of their FTP server, and then they added a terminator line. Right? They added a terminator line. So here's the question yeah. for you: If this is a real image from the Himawari eight. How did we see the clouds over here? When we go back here, it, there are the clouds. Yeah, I, I know you, you do a lot of this kind of stuff, Dave. I would have to see the files and everything. Wait, do what What kind of stuff? A lot of this kind of stuff? Like destroy his argument? <laughs> I mean, again, this has nothing to do with, I mean, I'm, I'm going to claim here it has nothing to do with flat or globe. They want it to look like a globe for whatever reason, whether it is or it isn't. It looks cooler that way, right? If it looks cool, people do weird types of graphics for even boring stuff, okay? Like inside the TV studio, they'll add dramatic lighting and shadows. That doesn't mean, like, whatever, the shape of the studio isn't what it is. They just added whatever they wanted to add to make it look the way they wanted it to look. But Dave Weiss, that's very interesting because if that's all legitimate, if everything he just brought up with the FTB servers, if that's all legitimate... I mean, that completely demolishes Brian's argument and all he can respond is with, you, you do a lot of this kind of stuff. <laughs> like what, present facts? Because <laughs> if it's empirically verifiable, I didn't go to the server. If David Weiss can provide all those URL links and show the Terminator line and all that crap, if he can do all that, and so far, I don't know if I've found him to be lying. Like the links he had with the infrared footage and all that, those were all legitimate. Now what that proves, that's a completely separate argument. But the information he's providing, if he's saying it can be found on their FTP server and that's verified, then that's verified. Now, again, that doesn't mean that the Earth is not a, it isn't a globe and it's flat. That just means they want it to look like a cool sphere with shadows and all that, and they're taking uh, all the data that they're taking from either high-altitude balloons or satellites, whatever, on whatever the shape of the Earth is. That doesn't really prove anything either way. That Bryant just seems really triggered that things are not as they appear. <laughs> before i can comment on that because i'm, I'm not understood but I'm let me ask you a question let, let, let me ask you a question yeah. if we showed you the server the nasa file server where they're loading these pictures every 10 or 15 minutes would you be willing to concede that yes it could be faked get well you know, I, I, it could so, be composite you know composite so is, so hang on, well, hang on. Composite, here's my question sure. you agree that there's radar stations all over the world that could map out on a flat map all of the weather patterns in real time. So they can take that data and no human has to be involved with this, wrap it around a globe, 
put a Terminator line on it and send it over to NASA that would every 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know, Dave. Minutes. That would take 10 or 15 hey, minutes to do that. No, it wouldn't. It would take one second to do because <laughs> AI now can draw a picture from a description that you make and make it look photorealistic. Yes. So this is nothing. Uh, but they're coming from the wrong direction. This is looking straight down on the Earth. I mean, I, I don't buy that. Coming from the wrong... What is he talking about? Coming from the wrong direction? If there's satellites or hotter, whatever, high altitude, whatever, whatever's taking the imagery, I don't think anybody's disputing that there's some kind of high altitude imagery being recorded, whatever the shape of the earth. I, I don't think anybody's disputing that there's at least something up there taking photos and video, whether it's satellites, whether it's actual satellites, whatever, whatever it is, it's up there. I don't think anybody's disputing that. Now, what is he talking about different angles? If they're taking it from different sides, I mean, obviously they'd be all over the world regardless of shape and they'd be recording everything. So what... I mean that was that was really really bizarre coming from the wrong side. I mean, what kind of logical? I mean that's just a non that's just a nonsensical logical fallacy. Like what is he talking about? He's just making up nonsense. Brian, what? can I ask you a question? Genuinely yeah. curious. So like if it because everyone says it's live and it's not right. I know we just it's discussed. Not live. It. It's every. But wait, it's still wait. Late. My, I got a, I, I, I just it. got a question for you. So if it's say every ten minutes, right? Say it takes that long to send yeah. it and receive it. How come sometimes when we go check it, it's like twenty five minutes late? Yeah. It's I mean, I, I don't know this. I've I've checked that too. I don't know the servers, but I mean, you can do truth observations. I don't buy that. But the radar on the ground can take these eleven k quality photos. I'm sorry, guys. I I mean, these are eleven thousand by eleven thousand pixel photos. Wait, what, why would that be relevant to where the camera is? What is he talking about? <laughs> I mean, th these are really, I mean, I, I, I don't buy. I mean, what is that, an appeal to incredulity? It doesn't make any sense, though. Not to mention if they are taken from high altitude. I mean, did David Weiss say he said they were taken from radar stations but and mapped into the data and wrapped around a globe? But even if they were taking it from, from satellites or satellites, like, what's the difference? You, I mean, you take it. It's put into the program to make it look like a cool 3D spherical Earth, regardless on what the true shape is, just because it looks cooler. That doesn't prove anything one way or another. But again, Brian is so triggered almost for the sake of being triggered because of his authority worshiping cultist status. He just can't handle that it's not as it appears. It doesn't prove a flat Earth in any way, but notice how he can't even handle that, <laughs> what David Weiss presented. Hold on. The, the, there's you're stitch lines. You can see the stitch lines inside the Himawari 8. So yeah, they're not you zoom in, you well, see where it's stitched together. See, they're they're purple their stitch. Website. I can show you if you want. Yeah, zoom in. Well, Someone zoom in. Here, on it. I'm going to show you. Darren, can you see you this? Let, let Darren bring it up. At... Can you see my screen now? Um. Yeah, yeah. No. That, that's right. your screen. So Go this ahead. is him where he's live. I'm just going to find a uh, full picture of the side. Okay, right there is pretty good. So now if we zoom in here, we're going to see that as you get really close... Come on. Okay, so I can see that on any Himawari image you're telling me, or is it just yep. this one? No, every yes. one. Everyone. This every single live. one. This is every right single now. one. This is the live. So if you go in here, you have to get real close, and I'll, I'll show you where. I'll look at it. I'll, I'll take a look at that myself, but I'm again, I, you know, I'm... Yeah, see well, right let's here? take a look now. See right here? This right here? I can't really see... Well, okay. you can. Because it's real small screen. for him, yeah. Do you, if you, yeah. Oh, I can, uh, yeah, see right here. Oh, wait, am I not sharing on the share screen? Oh, yeah, no. No. You can see that line. You know that even, even, I mean... You can see this line, though, yes? There's a purple line right I, here. I can't see it. I mean, it's really small for him. Yeah, but it's small for me. I can see. It. All right. Well, okay, well you can see well, right well, here I, I, and look at right here and here. So there's just go along the edge and you'll see there's another one there. Okay. Well, just leave okay. it as a as an open. The other top. thing, I, just I, one I, other thing about Himawari that I find extremely questionable is if you find on any count, you know, whatever the full moon is, yeah. you should see the full moon come around the back of the Earth, and you never see it. And you never see it. Of course, you're not going to see it cross in front, but behind. There's, there's, there's probably, again, I'll, I'll look at There's probably a good reason for that. But I, again, well, I, I mean, we could always say that about anything. But there's not <laughs> Appeal to ignorance. <laughs> there's probably a good reason. So he doesn't know whether there's a good reason or not. Now, maybe there is, but he's already presupposing and assuming the opposite of being scientific. He's being religious in his claims. There's probably a good reason. Now, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But he's saying there probably is without any actual basis for it. There's not. What could possibly be no, a good reason why they wouldn't show you the moon going behind the Earth? Well, you know, the big question that I always bring up with people is like, you know, we have these, these high-resolution images that are hundreds and hundreds are coming in every day. And the flat Earth, there is no full Earth, full flat Earth disk from space photo. So, oh, of course, if not. you guys place these standards on... Hold up. I mean, those high Wait, what? 
What? That's one massive deflection, shifting the burden of proof, but mainly classified under the 2 quo Q logical fallacy, basically just saying that the other person also does that instead of addressing the actual claim. But it's also built on top of a straw man. He's stacking these fallacies because flat earthers aren't arguing that there are satellites really far distant in space that would be capable of taking these photos and presupposing that it's not an infinite plane so there would be no way to take the photo in the first place even if space was real which i don't know i mean some flat earthers might say it's real that so he brian here is now stacking multiple fallacies on top of each other it's kind of impressive in that in that regard High elevation. I want to go to the high elevation. I, we don't found, think Earth's a disc in space. Brian, man, that's Brian, wild. Brian, do you think that we think we're a disc in space floating in space? in space? I'm just saying, okay. even with the, even getting to a high enough elevation to where you can see the, the wall, but let's get into that later. We, um, we don't can, think we can get up high enough to even get a couple states and, in know, and we don't think there's a wall at the end of the Earth. No. We don't think there's a wall at the end of the Earth. The Kabayashi map is real, which is actually from probably a fictional. I'm not saying the Kabayashi map is real. What I'm saying oh, yeah. is we live on a plane. Antarctica, as far as they let us go, we don't know what's beyond Antarctica. We'll get to Antarctica. Can we just move on? Because I mean, yeah, these are yeah, they're showing real. pictures so we can move on. Just real quick. Like, me a I looked up or... September, this is September no, I mean, 10th. Well, There's sometimes... no moon. <laughs> Austin Whitson. <laughs> move on from showing me cartoons. I mean, that's a good point too. I mean, why is Bryant spending all this time even on images? If the best, he, if the only, this guy's a physicist and the only, he wants to bring up images. I mean, why not use actual laws of physics and experiments instead of possibly faked images from the accused? I mean, that's kind of weak in and of itself. I mean, even if you could prove that they were real, I mean, if that's all he has, that's kind of weak for a physicist just to rely on only this aspect. That's kind of weird. Sometimes Dave does the witch ball thing. And I think you know, Dave, that you can get a camera and different, different angles of fields of view. You can get different, the, the side, I, took, I took this myself. So I've seen this with my own eyes with my own camera. So this, I'm not lifting this image from anybody. This is with my own little globe. And just by using a 15 millimeter and a 45, I was easily able to show that depending on, you know, Discover is 980,000 miles away, you know, some of like the Apollo shots are maybe 28,000 miles or whatever it was miles away. You're going to get different, you know, the continents are going to look different sizes. You guys get that, right? I, I, I totally get that, but not to the extent that they show us. For example, well, hold on a second, Mr. Bryant. If you take, a photo of let's say a basketball that says Spalding on it is the size of the lettering going to be proportionally different to the stitching based on where you take or how far away you take the the shot from okay my respect for Bryant just dropped a lot because this is one of the silliest arguments you're not going to get Spalding is not going to look twice as big without the size of the ball changing and the size of the ball is not going to change depending on how far or how close you are relative to the Spalding logo. I mean, this isn't rocket science. It's very simple to understand. You could do this experiment. Go, in, go to like a giant soccer field or whatever, put down a basketball with Spalding and take, you know, take the shot from 10 feet away with different lenses in different lighting conditions at different angles at, at different exposures do it all around or let's say a football field do it put it at the half line and take it every 10 yards from each end zone from the crowd from above spalding is not gonna the letter s is not gonna look is not gonna take up the entire size of the ball i mean this this is so fallacious i might need a coffee break right now example right here darren if you can make me big so he can see yeah, just doing you know, fast this this chicken. is the united states right here and so this circle uh, represents about this much land and you're saying just because we don't oh, see the, hold on the, don't see the whole side all of this other land is on the other side okay now we could argue oh that's what i that's what you do think it but you know then we see stuff like this from from nasa right and people are like well that's the globe well that's not the globe this is clearly a fisheye lens you're not we're not going to disagree on that you got that but this is the one that gets me right here um, where, let me just pull it up. Hold on. Give me a second. It's got to resize this real quick. Um, so 
whether we're seeing the full edge or not, because we're close, it's looking big. So maybe maybe we're looking at that close one that you have. Um, we can measure this because we can drive across Mexico and go across here and measure this. And it's 934 miles. Well, the diameter of the earth, the diameter, right? The diameter of the earth is 7,917 miles. This little red line here, I should be able to fit eight and a half times in between yeah. these two lines. You can't claim that that is um, because we're closer or farther well, from well, the well, earth. Look at, look at Africa right here. I mean, this is obviously, we know that the, we know the diameter of the earth and the radius. And obviously Africa looks like it's taking up the whole uh, side of the hemisphere. It's yeah. Because of the field of view. Walter Bislin has some very careful tools that you can use to get views of the earth from different fields of view from different distances and you see when you use this tool it's very mathematical you get all these differing sizes and proportions. i agree i yeah. agree he's right flat earthers are wrong okay so i i'm not a major expert in uh in photography or videography but the basics of i mean you know i've done some amateur photography the field of view basics i mean this is very easy this this is basically children's level stuff now you can see, I mean, just look up simplified guide to field of view and you can see clearly, for example, in this building on this roof, you will always, it's proportional. So regardless of which lens you're using at which distance you are, different things, for example, this chimney relative to this window, you're always going to be able to fit the same amount of chimneys in the window. Now the field of view is only going to change it's it's proportional so it'll change everything equally unless something is very close to the camera or ha let's say halfway between the earth and the camera so if there was for example a satellite in front of the earth on these images the size of the satellite and then the earth could be affected because of the distance but you just have the earth far away, just like the basketball. Like if you take a basketball and then a football and a golf ball and put them at different distances and take different photos, yes. Then one ball could appear a different size than the other. But all the parts of each ball will be proportional to each other. Like the size of the lettering is not going to change to the size of the same ball. So field of view really comes into play when things can look different sizes. When you have more than one thing, you have something in the foreground, background, midground. That's clearly not the case here because it's just the earth far away. Now there are of course aberrations in lenses. So there could be slight aberrations, for example, in mountain ranges, the mountain ranges might appear slightly, might pop out and might be slightly bigger, but you would never get any of this mass deviation that we see because there would only be slight differences because even if they're using completely different lenses, again, proportionally, if they're getting the whole earth in the shot, if they're not like the shot, I think, uh, David Weiss just had a shot that was a lot closer with just Saudi Arabia. That, that, forget about that because that's not showing the entire earth. So that you could have some clear differences there. Nobody's talking about that. We're talking about shots that have the earth in full view with massively different size continents. So this, I mean, this is, I mean, I don't know how many fallacies this is. This is a straw man, a non sequitur, a red herring. I mean, he's just clearly misapplying field of view here. Whenever they say that the pack that some of the pictures look like they're different size continents, that it proves they're all fake because you can't get the same effect on a sphere. You're correct. Yeah, correct. Same thing with the with the color, Jabe. I mean, you know that different cameras can take different perspectives. So just because one looks one color, I never I never claim the color. I just say they they all well, look you, horrible. You also, but let's talk about different colors. I've heard I don't I don't I don't I never claim that. I, I say they're all different. Which one do you like? That, yeah, which one's real? Like, like it's just a well, joke because they're, they're all fake. I mean, which one do you like? It's because they're different perspectives, different cameras. I mean, they just different cartoons. <laughs> well, I, I, so um, okay, well, let's just move on. So we're I don't think we're going to get much further than that on this okay. point. I'm not sure what Austin Witsit made point. He that continents could look different sizes. Yes, slightly, slightly, of course. Just again, because of different lighting conditions, different aberrations in different lenses. Again, you can experiment with that and do it yourself, but they would be very, very slight. You wouldn't just get North America had half the globe. That, that could never happen if you're far enough away. If you're really close and the Earth is not in full view, so for example, from the ISS or from certain claimed satellites, when it's so close that you can't see the entire Earth, you could 
get different, massively different sizes, but not at such a distance that the full earth is in view. Again, you can do this experiment with a basketball and the basketball logo will not magically appear twice as big. The ball itself, including the logo, will proportionately appear, can appear twice as big or whatever. So they'll both proportionately be bigger or smaller depending on lenses. Nobody's arguing that. Um, so let's we agree it's just not proof either way, right? We got to, we got to. Okay. Now listen, I do know your model. I didn't mean to say you going beyond the dome and taking a picture of the whole disc. What I meant was if the sun, and again, I don't know, I hear different things, you know, you know, Robotham and um, Eric Dubay say 3000 miles is the, is the sun above. I've heard Dave say that the sun is somewhere else and it's a projection. So I, I get, nobody seems to know. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, and again, know. imagine if. I know, but, but if, if the sun is 3,000 miles up, why not just send something up there to take a look at it? I mean. Because nobody's ever been 3,000 miles. miles up. You can't even well, get the but, jet but, fuel but, but, to go uh, 60 miles up. The government has to approve you to even shoot a rocket 30 miles up. You can't just go 3,000 miles up. I don't even. Go three, I, I've studied rocket propulsion in Georgia Tech. You can go 3,000 miles up. It's illegal. Um, I'm saying it privately, maybe, but I'm just saying there's probably ways. To if, if if this was really maybe maybe the government will let us yeah but but you should be able to get high enough so well anyway yeah. so let me is this kind of I mean now I I know you guys think there's maybe other so that was a moving the moving the goalpost logical fallacy because he said you should easily be able to go three thousand miles up then all of a sudden oh yeah yeah privately you can't so you actually can't even though he just said you can and then all of a sudden oh okay maybe you don't even need to get three thousand but you should be able to go high enough what is this vague high enough I mean just constantly moving the goalpost you guys think there's maybe other lands outside of the wall but but just this. Can can we can we can I agree? Can you agree with me? This is kind of the map that you guys use. Sort of. I wouldn't. I think. I wouldn't base the I mean, uh, continent sizes. Uh, you know, are. Well, I wouldn't the say thing they're is, Like you guys can't seem to agree on like which map you want to use. I mean. So when you say that though, hold Earth, on a second. Bro, do, you, how... do you realize that if when you guys discovered the globe or whatever, that every single mission, every single map that was drawn was government funded, completely and totally? There's no private. Uh, research going out there and figuring out what the shape of the continents were. It's all government funded. So to come at us and say, well, you don't have everything mapped is ridiculous. And yeah, we don't have any government assistance. So that would also be shifting the burden of proof logical fallacy. Because if he's claiming it's a globe, he's saying the burden of proof is on someone to disprove any of these maps. Like even if you look at flat earth maps, so there's like a million different flat earth maps. He's saying that's a problem. You, like, because there's so many different ones, you should have a perfectly accurate one. <laughs> As if that has anything to do with falsifying the globe, which I'm assuming that they're trying to do. So really, really weird stuff here. No, oh, but we've mapped the world. I'm not trying to be, again, I'm well, not you think we've mapped the world. We. When you say we, who is we? Well, that's an appeal to authority. <laughs> They've mapped the world, and he just took it on faith that it was an accurate map. You said we went and we mapped Again, the world. Uh, who, who is we? You know, to just to just disregard like everything that history has told us. I mean, I reification logical fallacy. He's just grouping in all these appeal to authorities of all these concepts somehow magically prove that the map is accurate. I agree that maybe not everything distortions in history, but I mean, we, right. you know, science and and you know, I'm, I'm not a cartographer. I'm not a map expert. I just want to know like what map you guys use. Well, well, what? here we don't we don't have an exact map for me. Uh, I'm a I'm a fan of the Gleason's map. This is a representation of the Gleason's map on my clock yeah. app. And and what's that? Here the the one thing I want to say is, um, whatever time of day it is, if you look look at where the sun is. So when the sun's over here, I can call my friend PK up and say, hey, what time is it? Where's the sun? He'd be like, oh, it's noon, and the sun's right above me. You know, and then six hours later, I call somebody in you know over here in Africa, and they'd be like, oh, the sun's right above me, right? And so. It, there's something truthful about this because the sun goes around and this shows you where the sun is at noon for each location. Right. right, Which, right but the thing is, that's not accurate because you can point like Wolfie 6020 did a video where he shows your app. No, he's wrong he, because Wolfie doesn't understand how East and West work on the globe. So. Well, I mean, I, well, we I can show you. Can when you're I, ready. I think I think anybody can find a way to go outside and, and point and see that the sun is not exactly. Let, let me ask you, question, but you, you, might think that. can you can you point west right now? Well, if I had a again, we can get a compass and do a test. We you don't can't have point exactly. west. West is a is right where you are. Anything past that is south. Okay. Well, I, I don't know. Do you want me to show you? Do you want me to show you? Because yeah. you let, want let Darren show you a quick demonstration, and then we'll go right back. Is that okay? Or you you, you want to press on? I just, I just want to show I, you I, why. I don't want to press on. I don't. Let, let, I, let him press on. Right. 
Okay. Yeah, let's let, let them get a little so bit more. So we can just go. So I mean, the Gleason map, and I know you guys. I mean, the, the point that I have is this is an azimuthal projection of a sphere, and I've heard Dave say that no, the sphere is a is a you can't it doesn't go that way. Projections from higher dimensions to lower dimensions, you lose information when you have two D. So you can't just say, oh, we took the two D. Wait, so you're saying if 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 let's say we discovered a flat Earth and we all got together and said, hey, let's make this so it's a sphere. You're saying it's impossible for no, us to I'm put that on a sphere. A perfect. This is a perfect azimuthal project. Well, azimuthal of course, wouldn't it be though? You, hold on, you're not listening to what I said. If we showed up, saw flat land, decided to put it on a sphere, then if people later in life took the sphere and laid it out as a flat map, that's all possible. Okay, but you, you do guys, you guys do know that there's been globes around. I mean, I've heard you say that. The oldest globe is 1492. Okay, oldest fine, globe. but I'm just saying that I've heard you guys say, I mean, well, I've studied a lot of flat earth history, so I do know, I do know the fact that. But Aristophanes and those guys, they knew that the earth was a sphere and they just, no, nobody ever decided to make I one? I know, but, 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 the, but the geocentric model and the Ptolemaic model was even in the darkest of the dark ages, the educated world. Agree, you know, embrace the globe, even though they thought it was the center of the universe. And this is a very well documented historical fact. And you know, I, I disagree when you guys say, "Oh, yeah, it was taught in schools." So why were we taught about Columbus sailing the ocean blue and discovering the Earth was oh, round? Well, you no, know, listen, I, that's actually based on um, what's the author's name that wrote the book. That's actually a fictional account. He actually fictionalized Columbus's. There's this really good okay. Exactly. So he just proved the point against himself. So if what it exactly how much has been fictionalized of course the victors write the history books if the conspiracy is true obviously that would all be fraudulent not to mention there's a whole lot of other fraudulent history so but magically this wouldn't be fraudulent is that his is that bryant's position just another appeal to authority magically hallucinating that well that this is all well documented and the documents could not have been forged in any way because no documents have ever been forged in history right <laughs> i mean this guy's pretty goofy. I mean, what can we say? He's pretty goofy. So why? One guy wrote a book, one guy no, wrote no, a book, and then it showed up in schools and it showed up in textbooks? No, no, that's, I know that that's, that's, that is an unfortunate thing that happened, but he never sailed across to, to discover the world wasn't, was flat. I mean, he, that was never, he, they knew the world was a globe. In fact, what they thought though, because this is before Newton, they thought that they had to go over the hump and they actually underestimated the size of the globe. But so Aristophanes they, knew it. They, they did believe it was a globe. Well, I know, but maybe they didn't have the, I mean. Maybe they didn't have the I mean. <laughs> so he's like, oh, they knew for a fact. They knew that, oh, but what, maybe this and maybe that. Obviously, he has no clue what they knew. Nobody does. If you weren't around back then, you don't know. If there is some kind of conspiracy or cover-up, regardless of what the shape of the earth is, maybe there's a cover, maybe it really is a globe, and that there was a flat earth cover-up. And then maybe there was a cover up for that. So again, regardless of what the shape is, if there was a cover up, how would people know? And authority worshiping cultists always hallucinate that, yeah, there could have been fraud before, but there's definitely none now because they're just that clueless about human nature. And of course, scientific method and basic logic. Uh, 1700 uh, years later, they didn't. Well, no, they, they, they had the idea of the globe but they thought that they were going to have to like go over the hump, you know, to get to the, to the, so they had this idea of the antipodes, which they didn't understand the South Pole. But then of course that all, when Newton came along that we understood it was gravity. So, um, hmm. but I mean, but, but, but it's right. pretty good historical evidence that the, the educated world since, since Eratosthenes. The pretty good, pretty good that the educated was so what is this? this is a no true scotsman wrapped in to an appeal to authority wrapped into appeal to popularity <laughs> so educated you, that they the thought world. they were going over a hump that's pretty well, educated. proof they needed back well, then no, 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 that's no, all, that was the only proof no, was going, wait a, no wait a, no wait a minute what's going down. they didn't have newton's equations that you got to realize that oh. they didn't have the science to understand this yet and yes we can we can look back and say well why do they believe in the antipodes it's because they didn't know gravity at this point wasn't known okay so again before we get into the gravity issue so 500 years from now all of this will be regarded as the same so what this goof goofs like bryant these authority worshiping cultists what they don't understand is we're not living in magical times now 
In 500 years, what most of current knowledge, which is assumed to be true, and of course, previous generations' knowledge is assumed to be limited, inaccurate, or flat out wrong, why would that change in 500 years? I mean, the authority worshiping cultists, it's like they don't have the mental capacity to understand that 500 years from now, 5,000 years from now, the scientific understanding of the universe will be completely different. We're going to be looked at as the Dark Ages. Now, that doesn't mean everything's 100% false, of course, but it just means it's inaccurate, incomplete, or possibly totally false as well, depending on which concept you're talking about. And we might not even know, is there really a way to know that until technology and more laws of physics are discovered hundreds of years in the future when knowledge is exponentially ahead of what it is now and will be all looked at a bunch of clueless goofs, regardless of what the shape of the earth is. Yeah, the, it was a religion. It was that the perfect shape was a sphere. So the Greeks proposed it philosophically. It was an know, ontological it, premise but, but that the perfect shape was a time where we've embraced the flat earth since you got to go back. Brian, to hold, hold on a second. You, we don't know anything past the early 1900s, right? There's no one left to tell heard, us. You, and and, you and you, you've, you've seen my interview with. I've heard you say that. That's his counter to empiricism. <laughs> And the scientific method of actually observing and experimenting and verifying. His counter is, I've heard you say that. <laughs> oh, man, this is hilarious. With Ruth, and right. there's, there's people that say they were taught flat earth and globe earth in American public schools in the 1950s, right? So this is, and no, this is not what not we, we, hold on a second. So all he has is, that's not true. <laughs> So I'm not saying it is true, but to counter that's not true, that's the logical fallacy of argument by denial or denialism, just simply ignoring an account. Now, maybe it's not true, again, but the point is you're denying someone's empirical experience. Now, that is an anecdotal logical fallacy because uh, David Weiss here is bringing forth an anecdotal logical fallacy. But an anecdotal logical fallacy, he's not claiming 100% of people were taught this. This fallacy is purported, he's saying some people, so let's say it's a vast small minority, certain schools, I mean, I don't know, who knows, maybe they were religious schools, whatever the case may be. It is, if they're telling the truth, it is true. That doesn't disprove all of the schools where it wasn't taught. So, it's not exactly an uh, anecdotal logical fallacy by David Weiss because he's not claiming that all of these school in these isolated instances. Now, what does that prove? That doesn't really prove anything. I mean, maybe you can find schools today that teach flat earth. I mean, there's schools today that teach about demons and stuff like spiritual schools, whatever. That doesn't mean it's not true. There could have been a public school in like some kind of religious area that did teach flat earth in the 50s. How would Bryant know? He's just denied. Now, again, the burden of proof is on positive claims. People have actually posted textbooks. Again, I don't know if they're real or not. They have posted textbooks, I think, from the 20s or 30s. I don't think anybody's posted anything from the 1950s regarding Flat Earth. We didn't have instant communication. We had barely, you know, back then, we, you, you could barely make a phone call across the state um, easily. So when they were <clears throat> switching over, you know, what people believed, you know, like if they did it I here in Connecticut, some people in California, they wouldn't know what's going on. It could be a decade before they found out. Oh, what's the name of that town? There was one town in the 1800s Zion. that didn't embrace the, what's it? Zion. Zion, yeah. That historically was the only town I could find that was well documented to have embraced the flat earth in their education. I don't think that the educational system, I, I think, I don't, I just don't buy it. We, we have been teaching the globe earth for quite some time. And there, it, it didn't start in the 1900s. Well, nobody said it did. I mean, how many straw mans is this guy going to stack? <laughs> All right. Well, that doesn't I mean, mean anything. I, I, I that saw doesn't... the interview with that lady, but she was 102 years old, Dave. And I mean, I, I did. The, I wasn't. It wasn't very convincing. This doesn't mean anything. I, if they were teaching the globe for 7,000 years, that doesn't mean it is a globe. So it doesn't oh, mean. I, okay. I agree. But, but you guys just say that it's, you know, they've been teaching flat earth up until the 1900s. That's just patently false. Yeah, I don't say that. Uh, Okay, sorry, well, yeah, they were a minority whenever Aristotle supposedly existed. There's no primary documentation for that. So we, okay. we were just going to move on to. Okay, we can move on. You already agreed that, you know, this is not like a real map. Um, we did. So I just, oh. I, I just want to talk about what we want to talk, talk about that. I, did t I don't know. We, I didn't know we agreed this. Oh, the Kabayashi. Well, you bring up Kabayashi in the documentary next level. So that's the only reason why I put it there. So where, so it's been proven that it's uh a, a fake well, you, you got to take it in the context of the art. This is the this is the article in the um, Hawaiian Gazette. Is that 
this was kind of the lost world sort of they, they, oh, okay. they, it's kind of the, the time of that that era where this the lost world was a big thing to talk about and everybody was fascinated by it yeah nobody's fascinated about lost worlds or atlantis today that was just only in that era right brian <laughs> I mean, I, I get no pleasure from pointing out Brian's fallacies here. He seems like such a nice guy. So this isn't like analyzing, you know, one of these goofs like Professor Dave or Simon Dan or Neil deGrasse Tyson, these Dunning-Kruger narcissistic goofs who are just, it's hilarious to watch them humiliate themselves with their utter cluelessness. But this guy's a nice guy. I mean, the, the, the fun's just not here. I mean, it's mostly just a strict logical analysis and my disbelief that Bryant, who seems like a functioning adult, just doesn't have these children's level basics when it comes to logic and logical fallacies, uh, that doesn't have a grasp of them. So you had some of these fantastical accounts that sounded real that were published in newspapers, mm -hmm. but yet were mm -hmm. still based on a fictional thing. So, well, you, maybe it was real. Sometimes ancestry passes but, down but real this stories. Was the brother, this was the brother of the Kabayashi that, wrote, that drew this, and he did it just by hand. I mean, so it's... Wait, so who was supposed to draw it? Somebody who wasn't connected to it and didn't have the knowledge? <laughs> I mean, what? Obviously, I'm not claiming that anything is real. A uh, burden of proof is on positive claims. Whoever's claiming it's real. So Witsit stated it correctly. Maybe it's real. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Who knows? Bryant is always falling for the appeal to incredulity logical fallacy where he thinks whether he personally finds something convincing or not has any correlation to reality in any way. I mean, again, just fundamental lack of understanding of basic logic here. When you really look at the evidence, it's just not very convincing that it's really based on anything real. But Aristophanes with no primary documentation is convincing. Uh, actually, the Aristophanes, we can get to the sticks and shadows experiment, which I know you guys like to make fun of, but it's actually pretty darn convincing. But <laughs> Wow. But and, and notice how he how he completely avoided Witsit's point about the documentation of it in terms of first-hand documentation at the time of, not after the fact. And notice how he completely ignored that. Because <laughs> let's, let's say the experiment's bulletproof, just for the sake of argument, like, just for the sake of argument. Obviously, that experiment doesn't prove anything. But let's say it did. Let's say it was a bulletproof experiment, just for the sake of argument. Without the documentation that it actually took place, I mean, that's not convincing that it was actually, there's no evidence that it was actually done at the time they said it was done, even if it's bulletproof. But this goof still finds it convincing. Because <laughs> authority-worshipping cultists, whatever their authorities, you know, the Church of NASA, the Church of Academia, whatever universities they went to, they treat them as churches. So whatever they, whatever they teach, whatever they preach, they regurgitate as gospel truth without questioning. Anything that's blasphemous against these teachings, they find that unconvincing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that we're making fun of it. It's that you're bringing up to our attention that this article in this newspaper, which, by the way, is hidden from the masses. Let's not act like everyone knows about this. OK, so this is hidden from the masses for a reason. But you're going to say or say, oh, you know what? This isn't real. It's just in this, some stupid paper. Well, everything you're reciting so far is in a stupid paper know, written I by know, some stupid guy. So the Rockefellers. Right. Okay, yes. Right. OK, right. I mean, I get, I, real. You know that I. <laughs> We've already established how I feel about the Rockefellers. We don't need to go there. Uh, <laughs> because how he feels about something has some kind of correlation to reality. I mean, even if he agrees that the Rockefellers are, you know, architects of social engineering and fraud and, and deceiving the masses, even if he agrees, I haven't heard him agree, but he said, we've already gone over how I feel about the Rockefellers, so maybe they're on the same page. I think David Weiss at the beginning said that they agree on everything except the shape of the Earth and the moon landing. So perhaps he's aware of the fraud of the Rockefellers, but whether that's true or not, notice how he's always talking about his feelings or what he personally finds convincing. I mean, why not use objective logic and reason in the scientific method? Why is he always talking about feelings and what he subjectively finds convincing? <laughs> I mean, this is as anti-science as you can get. Okay. Well, so, you know, the uh, globe idea was disliked. I mean, the, the teachers were well, fighting teaching this in school. 
I, I, again, that's not, I don't believe that history. So newspapers, I, okay. So well, let's I, I, all, all I'm newspapers saying is, is if you're going to say something like that, you have to have more evidence interviewing a 102-year-old lady. No, there are newspaper articles posted at the time that talk about them. So it's all, this is all sort of like not I'm real telling concrete you, anything. I, I looked, and all I could find was Zion. It was the only place I could find that was teaching flat earth. So he admits that they were teaching it. <laughs> so he's saying he's saying it was false that David Weiss made the claim, and yet he supported the he found the verification that it was being taught in one particular area. David Weiss never made the claim that it was taught everywhere as the de facto default model. He simply said that flat Earth was taught, not in a hundred percent of schools. That claim was never made. He's not hallucinating to pretend to know that. And I, I, so is Brian just deficient at basic English? Is that what the problem is here? Because he's corroborating what David Weiss said, that it was taught somewhere <laughs> in schools. <laughs> I mean, this is just sad. I mean, it's not even that funny. It's just kind of sad and pathetic. There is really just no evidence that it was being taught at all. Going back, it, to it, the, Who cares? Okay, doesn't right, prove okay, either okay, way. Who cares? But you guys do say that, so that's the only reason I brought it up. So, yes, because that, that's what my research led me to. Yeah, there's evidence okay, that there fine. that it's not as old as the mainstream portrays, and there's no primary documentation for Aristophanes, etc. But who well, cares? Either way, and, and actually, let, actually Pliny, no Pliny, there is actually historical evidence when you look back. <clears throat> I, I, I will. One I, guy I, out of the whole world. It's still right. a story that you were told. So, so hold on, hold on. Let 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 you're, Brian. You're Brian. All of history is a story. Wait, so he has a problem with one 102 year old old lady who's living now giving what she believes to be her account. He says it's not credible, whatever. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. I'm not going to question it. I didn't live her life. I didn't go to the school that she went to. So maybe she was taught flat earth. Maybe she wasn't. Again, that doesn't really prove that she, I mean, that has no, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't prove a flat earth or a globe earth. But Bryant, for some reason, is so triggered, he wants to pretend that that's not even true, that that's what was taught, regardless of what is real or not. Like, again, for the sake of argument, Let's go with Bryant. Let's say the heliocentric globe really is the true model of the universe. I actually never disputed that. Why is he so triggered about something that was taught in school? And why is he calling this 102-year-old lady not credible? Maybe she is, maybe she isn't. But she's living now and gave her account of what happened. And he's bringing up some guy and all these translations and mistranslations of what happened. So he only has one guy. Uh, if that really was written around the time it was, again, I haven't seen any definitive proof that uh, any any of the mistranslated texts of history are accurate. Maybe they are. Again, I'm not saying they're not. But same thing with the invisible flying spaghetti monster. If, if we're going to believe in it, we're going to need more than a couple people who wrote about the flying invisible spaghetti monster. We're going to need more than that. We're going to need more than that. Even if several people corroborated that story... We're going to need more. We're going to need something that, along the lines of the scientific method. Go, yep, go, you get to well, choose to believe it or not believe it. When, when stories uh, don't make sense, know. like, you know, talking about well, how let, they let got me, they got the distance to the sun by just guessing that the <laughs> Venus was the same size as Venus. Earth. That's the pretty dis- lucky. You no, know, the distance to the sun, you can find the elongation from Venus during its orbit. You can actually look for the elongation where it's at its longest point. And then you can take that when we actually have done radar. Bounce Wait, it no, 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 no. You're, missing, you're missing what I'm saying. I'm talking about no. when they first got the distance. How did they figure it out? They figured it out by guessing that Venus was the same size of Earth. So wait a second. I, so is Bryant just deficient at English? I mean, this really showcases how little degrees are worth. Because if Bryant is not even on, let's say, a second grade English comprehension level, or you can argue that he's just so triggered all of his logical capability, let's say maybe he does possess a lot of logical capability, but for whatever reason, the subject of flat earth completely shut his brain down. So now he's not even on a second grader level because he's not even understanding. Jaronism quite simply stated, and Bryant made the claim that he did a lot of research into flat earth and the flat earth arguments. So Jaronism is referring to the very first measurement of the sun. He's not referring to anything now. And Brian, how could he not understand that? Is he? I don't think he's playing stupid. I don't think he's of the ilk of Professor Dave, Simon, Dan, all these trolls um, who just play stupid. I mean, maybe they are. Again, I'm not going to for false dichotomies. Maybe they really are mentally disabled, but they're also possibly trolling, mentally disabled goofs trolling. And I mean, it's quite hilarious, of course. But Bryant does not seem to be in that category. He seems to be a really nice guy. So is it just a case if he's just that triggered 
that his English comp even his English comprehension levels dropped so severely below elementary level. And they got lucky that it was. The casino. So, oh, okay, but I'm saying, but we've been able to accurately. Oh, now, yeah. Again, this is yeah. what we're saying is that their stories are just stories. Like, for instance, the same thing happens with um, how they got the distance to the moon or how they tried to get the distance to the moon back in the BC era, where they say, oh, they saw a half moon. They knew that there must be a 90 yeah. degree angle to the sun. And then they just estimated what the angle from the earth to the sun would be. Nobody could do that today. Right. Well, I, okay. I mean, I we, we've got more accurate ways to measure it now, but allegedly, yeah, but the story yeah, is I, that they I did don't, it back I don't then. disagree that there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of things through history where they didn't know, they didn't understand what was really going on. I mean, this is why we evolve and we learn things, and we, um, but yeah, the, not the evidence thing, either. The thing way. I really want to bring up now is um, Aristophanes, please. Not, not the Aristotle. Which would yeah, let's talk about things that aren't hidden and buried. Like, so wait, wait a minute. You wanted to, you wanted to talk about Aristophanes, and then I had something. You know, we have a few things we want to say in that. So, do you want to bring that up now, or you want to go somewhere else? Well, um, I wanted to talk about Aristophanes a little bit later, but if you want, if you really want to talk about it now, we can talk about it now. No, just it's go with you. whatever you want to do. Whatever well, your order is. If it's in your order, just go with your order. The only thing I wanted to say is um, about Aristophanes, really was that if you have two data points, I agree, you can get it to work on a flat earth. I actually am in agreement. Well, brownie points for Bryant. Maybe we underestimated him. Is he the first person in a flat earth debate that has the modicum, just the, the bare, just a few brain cells required to realize that different variables can lead to the same result? If you switch around the variables, you can have the same result of the experiment. So that particular experiment actually doesn't prove anything, if it even transpired. Is this the first person in a flat earth debate to actually be at a basic children's level logical understanding? Okay. Like you get three or more locations, especially like this one study that was done in 37 places around the world. What you end up with, if you map it out mathematically, and, and, ma and this, is, this is one of the points I want to get across, is mathematical models can be confirmed. You guys don't Yeah, but have back a then, hold on. Model. But Sagan tells the story of Aristophanes proved it. Everybody talks about Aristophanes proved it. This is why the world knew that the earth was round. But you yeah. just said right now, oh, but it also works with two data points on a flat earth. So you can admit that. But, 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 but they didn't do three data like, points. They didn't do like, three. They did two. Right? So that story's a lie, right? The story, I mean, Aristophanes did two, and that doesn't prove anything. I mean, well. And Carl Sagan in Cosmos no, no, drilled no, it into no, every kid's no, no, head. No, wait, 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 wait. Two does work. All I'm saying is if you get a local sun at the right distance, right. you can also get it to work on a... On a, on a right. So you're telling me Aristophanes but, believed, even though he believed that the sun went around the earth, he thought it was an infinite distance away? I like, I like to stick more with like the here and now. <laughs> look, no, look at the evasion. I mean, he's, why does he not want to address that point? He can address the point and then say, okay, I mean, he kind of did it, but now he's refusing to address the argument of how the variables were determined back then for that experiment. I mean, are we not discussing science? Isn't this a good learning moment to say, okay, this is a well-structured experiment and uh, this is not. So this wasn't, and that was all basically nonsense. And now this is what a real experiment looks like. And that's how we know the world is a globe. But look at these triggered goofs. He can't even come full circle to admit that that was all doesn't prove anything non-scientific. So if the evidence exists now to prove the earth is a globe and he can demonstrate how that's all well and good, but notice how it's such blasphemy against his religion of scientism. He doesn't even want to blaspheme against the previous priests that came before. So obviously he's claiming the current priests of scientism have way more technology and can accurately measure all these things, which is fine. I'm not disputing that. But he's so thoroughly indoctrinated into the cult of scientism, he doesn't even want to blaspheme. It's so hilarious. <laughs> An experiment right. well, right. by, of course. By, 37, by 37 people around the world where they, and here's the thing when you do the mathematical model flow, Aristophanes is you end up with what's a, a linear you end up with a linear curve versus a, versus a power curve so it turns out and, and when they did this data when they mapped 37 different places it mapped it matched perfectly almost perfectly the what would happen on a, when you model this on a globe versus a flat earth you have to assume a distant sun with how did you how, you have to assume the sun's 93 well, million I, I, I didn't even want to get in I mean that's just more than I wanted to get into but all well, that's part of the base assumption <laughs>
<laughs> so that's more than he wanted to get into. So he didn't want to get into the actual matter at heart on what is or what isn't a scientific experiment and how exactly it works. He wanted to do some kind of general overview to obfuscate. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> I'm saying there is no way you can get three or more data points to work on a flat earth. It just there's doesn't no way. No, but there's no there's way to no triangulate way. That, the sun that, to that anyway, right? No, can, you, it you actually show, does work. Can you triangulate? It does work. Can you triangulate the sun, Brian? Today, you can. You can. Well, I'm not. You know, I mean, well, the answer is no. So he just reduced to stuttering now and claiming that you can't do. If the Earth is flat, again, I'm not claiming it is. But if it is, how would you not be able to do that? Because <laughs> again, I actually went over this. I believe it was in the short podcast, Fundamental Flaw in Flat Earth Debate. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. It's a very simple concept here. But anybody who's just too hopelessly indoctrinated into their cult, whether it's the globe earth side or the flat earth side, if they have a cult mentality, again, I'm not claiming anyone does or doesn't in general, although Bryant here is appearing to, whatever reality is, that's what it is. So claiming something can't work because you're missing information. Again, I'm not claiming it can or can't. I'm saying reality is whatever it is. For example, I use the convergence example all the time. Train tracks look like they touch in the distance. So regardless of what shape of the earth is, they look like they touch, but they don't really touch. So whatever the way the human eye works, the way the visibility index works, the way all the laws of physics work, they work whatever they work. So humans, obviously, what humans know out of the total knowledge of the universe, hu everything humans know can probably be rounded to zero or close to zero. So out of all of the undiscovered laws of physics and how all of that works, that could explain things. Again, this isn't an appeal to ignorance. I'm not saying it supports any particular theory. I'm not claiming to, to know which theory is true. I'm saying whatever theory is true, theory X, let's say, is true. That means everything does work to support theory X, whether we can figure that out or not. And for whatever reason, I guess the narcissists can't understand that humans are fallible. Human knowledge is very limited. They can't triangulate the sun today. So they also don't have the ability to triangulate. Now their excuse is it's just too far. So they can't get the well, again, You can measure the distance of the sun through, you know, through knowing how far Venus is away. And then you, you can get the angle. How do you know how you far tell me how, yeah. is away? Yeah. Tell you me how you get, get that. They, they, bounce, they have done it. So this is a circular reasoning argument, and then he's stacking on an appeal to authority. They've done it. The priests have talked to God. They've done it. He can't actually provide any empirical evidence, but he just has faith. They bounce, They have done it. They bounced radar off of Venus. Who's they? Okay. Have you seen it? Have yeah, you seen radar, that? I, again, Wait. You, guys, you, guys just dis, you guys disregard everything. Do we have... Disregard everything? Or demand adherence to the scientific method instead of appealing to faith. Science is skepticism, not blind faith acceptance. How does Bryant not know the basics? I really do feel bad for this poor guy. Background radiation coming from the sky anyway? How do you differentiate between what you sent and what's already coming? And, and Brian. Wow, it's it. Laying the smack down with the basics of controls. <laughs> I mean, controls are a very simple concept. So whatever currently exists, obviously any addition, that's why you have an independent variable, a dependent variable, and a control. I mean, this is science 101, and for whatever reason, Brian can't grasp this. And all he can do is sputter here. It's kind of weird. I, feel, I really feel bad for the guy. You're Again, taking that you've never done it, and you're taking the word of NASA, a government-run agency, that you know they, they you know that they're lying to us. You guys, you guys don't even know how far your son is away. I mean, yeah, we don't true. we don't make claims yeah. we can't prove. That's okay, the point. We're we have that no claim. model. The thing is, with science, is we have a mathematical model, and we find the results fit the doesn't model. Doesn't mean it's true. Science isn't math. I mean, That's a circular reasoning logical fallacy. You can't just reverse engineer everything, but they don't even do it well. If you look at the massive changes in cosmology over the past 500 years, I mean, look at the rate of error has just been so extreme, even within the heliocentric globe model. Now, what's that going to be in another 500 years? Everything Bryant here, it, all the faith he's preaching, that's all going to be different in 500 years, even within the heliocentric globe model. I mean... If the flat earthers continue doing whatever they do, the flat earth model could be vastly different in another 500 years as well. 
But again, wits it here taking the scientific position and not hallucinating or pretend th to know things that he doesn't know. That's being scientific. Bryant just takes all of this on faith because he's in a religious cult, even if his conclusion is true. Again, I have to repeat that every five minutes because the triggered Dunning-Kruger goofs in the comments, they never stop. <laughs> they never stop obsessing over the conclusion. The whole point here is logical analysis of argumentation. I mean, do I need to flash a screen every two seconds for all the goofs out there because they don't get the point of this whole thing? <laughs> what I mean by that is when you look at the distance away, it all matches perfectly with the heliocentric model. So, so it's not that we're just using, using it radar. Do, it, do, it, it does. They made it match perfectly to teach it to you in kindergarten. But it doesn't match perfectly, though. They keep changing it. Like every 100, 200 years, all the distances get changed. <laughs> the sun distances, the planetary. I mean, look at the past couple hundred years. All those distances got changed a bunch of times quite drastically. And, and course, actually, they yeah, change it all the time. They're not going to teach it to you. Yeah. Okay, they change uh, it all the time. They just changed Polaris. And, they said I, I, it's 100 just one light thing, years closer. And now the moon's in our atmosphere. Okay, I'm right? not going to be able to get through any of this if you guys right. If you guys keep, keep trying to keep it on the track of science and adherence to the scientific method instead of faith, he's not going to be able to get done with his sermon preaching if they keep interrupting him demanding scientific evidence. <laughs> But yeah. just about right. the moon real quick, when they launch a, a, a beam at the moon to get a reflection beam, they say they send one quadrillion photons and they get one back. One. One, one photon out of four quadrillion. And, but and again, that, but the distances we have, if you understand, you know, Kepler's laws, you can actually see that it all works perfectly on the heliocentric model. All right. So this is a reification logical fallacy. Pretending something works perfectly doesn't mean it works perfectly. Again, if you pretend that mass, uh, if you haven't checked out Run Z Cow's thorough debunking of Einstein's relativity, check that out. Uh, he used to have videos on YouTube. They've all been removed, but his uh, paper is, uh, you could still find his scientific paper online. Relativity, the great mistake, Einstein was wrong, whatever. And he lays it down point by point. The videos were better because he kind of explained it like you were five in very easy to understand terms. So anybody who didn't have a mental disability could easily see how relativity is just stacking assumptions. And he point, systematically, point by point, dismantles the entire theory of relativity and special relativity. So again, you can think that mass attracts mass, but if we're talking about electromagnetic attraction and magnetism, you can call it whatever you want. The math works perfectly. Either You can make it fit either. Just like you can add one unicorn and another unicorn and get two unicorns, the math works perfectly. But if that's a cat and not a unicorn, pretending it's a unicorn when it's a cat, that pretending and hallucinating doesn't make the theory true, and then roping in a reification logical fallacies that say all of these hallucinations and pretending work perfectly together, <laughs> I mean, that's just stacking the fallacies on top of each other. But what's alarming here is that Bryant really does seem completely clueless in terms of just basic logical fallacies and the difference between science and scientism. I actually, I think the best way to do any of these debates is to start out with the definitions of science and scientism and just run through 10 basic logical fallacies because then Bryant would see how silly he's being because you outline it at the beginning, you maybe even put up a whole screen with them, that way you could just point at the screen every time the person makes a mistake. Because again, Bryant seems like a very nice guy. He seems like he's arguing in good faith. He genuinely seems ignorant that his religion is actually faith-based and not science-based because he doesn't understand the fundamental differences between science and scientism. So yes. you, you so wanna, we can maybe a, move on because I don't think we'll ever get through it. Like Just okay. reifying the model isn't proof of it. Mathematic, okay. I can show you a Superman well, I, equation. I, my, my initial plan was just to kind of go through the slides and have open for discussion because we're never going to get anywhere near through any of this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, agree. I think we kind of let uh, him present some of his go, stuff. Go ahead. Now. We can agree to disagree on that. Yeah, yeah just let's agree to disagree. Um, but the empirically verifiable definitions of science remain the same, even if Bryant disagrees with them. <laughs> Faith doesn't magically adhere to the scientific method because they agree to disagree. So this is something that, I mean, I, I've yet to hear, I've heard you guys try to explain it, um, but there are direct flights. You guys realize that, right? There are yes. direct flights by, by, by two airlines, not just the one which you claim is like government. I, I've heard some, some of you say it's like government people and five coats of paint on the 
playing. Didn't you say something seven. Like that, David? Seven. seven. Okay. Seven. But I mean, you really, because you, you guys do realize that if these direct flights exist, which, you know, Wolfie 6020. Is which they exist, do. Which they do. And you can actually go to your, and you can see the great circle route. And you can, you know, if you're a pilot, you can load this in and see that it does follow a great circle. And you can calculate the time that it takes. Of course, they, they have all this in their flight plan. And, you know, you can download this flight data at um, flightaware.com. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. actually look and you can actually see for yourself, like the flight data at flightaware.com. Yeah, so we get that from a free account. And so, but if you put this, if you map this exact route on the flat earth, it ends up going this absurd distance because if you go, you know, again, you guys say, well, it stops in Los Angeles. But then if you do that, we can actually see the time it would take to go to Los Angeles and back again. And I mean, you guys agree, right? If I, if I offered to pay a ticket for one of you to come with me from Los Angeles and we take, we all take our own GPS, right? And we're able to time the how long the global it takes. positioning system. We want it to know where we're at the globe. Radius right. value that's going to help us. Okay, so but again, you can do visual proof. There's a lot of things you can do. So basically, you're going to deny everything, right? <laughs> Demanding adherence to science instead of taking as gospel on blind faith is not denying everything. It's demanding scientific. Evidence. How does Bryant not understand the fundamentals of science first religion? The fundamentals of science is any positive claim must be proven. You, you don't just take it on faith. That's the opposite of science. That's religion. How does Bryant not get this? No, no, we don't, we deny just don't anything. believe reification fallacies. If you're begging know, but, the but, question, but, it's useless. But so, how can you explain this? You guys can't. I've explained explain it. This. We've explained it many we times. We can. There okay, is, explain it then. Okay, how so here's, you here's one from, thing you need to tell me. So on, on a trip from Sydney to Santiago, if right. you're talking about on the globe, that when you do the mathematics on it and it comes out to say 500 miles per hour, the plane's going. Then yeah. you look at the at the winds aloft. You look at the jet streams there, and you realize that they go right. 150. It's hold on, they go 150 to 200 miles per hour. So that means the plane was going 300 miles per hour and taking a 200 mile per hour jet stream to get there in the amount of time. Doesn't it make more sense that the plane would go its maximum speed? of 500 to take advantage of the extra speed and actually be going 750? Well, they know the time. It's like it's 14, it's 14 hours one way and 12 hours the other because, it, because yeah, there's wind. The world has wind currents where, you know, I've, I've driven back and forth across the coast. I know it's faster one direction than the other. I mean, but but these, but these not twice the time, though. I mean, these... Who said twice the about, time? Well, I would have well, to be twice the time. No, it would be twice the time if you took... If you took, if you map this exact route out, which... All right, so this is, of course, a straw man logical fallacy, and he also roped in a bunch of other logical fallacies. But again, fundamental failure to understand controls and variables. Because you have to calculate all of these things to know. Because if there's a, if there is, the jet stream is how many miles per hour it is. And then what is the total speed back and forth? And how do you plug that into the distances between continents? And how do you verify those distances? Because again, if we're not being religious, if we're not being religious, if we're being scientific, we need to figure out, again, I'm not claiming anything. I'm not claiming that the earth is a globe or a flat plane. I am not claiming to know the size of any continents or how far they are from each other. I'm not claiming anything because I can't hallucinate to have proof I don't have. Now, if they're claiming proof exists, and maybe it does exist, I am not denying that the proof exists, but you must present the proof if we're being scientific. So far, Brian has not presented the proof, but you would need to know the exact distances between the continents. Then you would need to, of course, know the jet stream speed in each direction and verify the plane, which direction the plane. You would need, verif you would need people on the ground to verify it from many different points. So... I don't know. I'm, you would think that would have been done. Maybe it has been done. I'm not claiming it has not been done. But the burden of proof is always on positive claims. Again, you can download the flight data and put these coordinates into the flat earth map. You end up with a route that goes like this. And this okay, so it's this well done. The, the GPS uses the, the globe in contention, bro. It's well documented that planes can go over 800 miles per hour. It's documented mainstream that planes have been clocked going over 800 miles per hour. That little app you're using doesn't actually That's get ground gonna, speed. It gets airspeed, which is relative to the static pressure around the plane. So it's begging the question. Well, the, air, the air moves with the earth. I'm sorry, but you, uh, we'll get into that later. Oh, okay, no, 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 that's not what he was saying. Because, That's not what he was saying. <laughs> the atmosphere, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Hey, so, hey wait, Brian, Brian, let me just interrupt for one second here. 
We're going to let you talk as much as you want. But when we interject, let us just get our quick point across without interrupting. And then you go okay. right back to you. Okay? And, and let me just say something real quick. You also say like, oh, you guys are just going to reject everything. But you have to realize from our point of view, everything we're telling you, you're rejecting without even thinking about it. You're not even, know, you're not even you, entertaining you our thoughts. Okay, but how do you explain this? I just did. We just did. I just did. And no, you weren't you even listening. What do you mean? What, what's wrong with what I said? So the, uh, again, the plane that map, takes, hold on. You can map this distance on the flat earth and you get a ridiculous arc. This why do we have to fly all the way out yeah, there? Why would yeah, they based on there? the software you're putting this in. Who, who, who no, made this all this? No, software. You can go up. This is not the flight route that, that we oh, know happens you can, with these two. So we had, we had, Brian, we had somebody take, we had somebody take that right. flight and they did it live on my channel. They, they right. live streamed their flight. Go Brian, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm showing right now. Max, Max, this was Max Egan. He did it and he clocked. He said his compass, he was expecting to be heading um, south or west, you know, but he was going, uh, he was going northwest and then west and then southwest and then south. And we, okay. we, we, we clocked, we, we checked, checked it out on a flat earth map and it makes perfect sense. Here's the plane right here. And it goes, it's just going uh, northwest, northwest and right there, west for a split second. Then it's going southwest, southwest and south and his compass readings his actual physical compass readings matched the flat earth map but were way off did not match yeah. the globe map no it didn't match what was on the back of the seat in front of okay, him okay well send, it, me the, send me his information i'll take a look at it I, it's funny because he claims he did all this research and he knows all of these talking points and then yet he's like oh send it to me i don't know that every single point he's like oh well send me it i don't know it <laughs> So he's clearly just vastly underprepared for this. But again, that doesn't really prove anything either without the independent verification. Because again, the compass could have been malfunctioning, whatever. You would need people on the ground to verify by sight that plane, uh, uh, how the plane is flying over those pieces of land. You would think it would have been done. Like, has anybody done that? Because, I mean, that would be pretty easy, right? You, you would just coordinate with all these people. I mean, you would get a plane, have it get some kind of weird blinking pattern with like a lot of different lights, very specific lights, so it wouldn't be confused, like super high powered lights on the undercarriage of the plane so it could clearly be seen. And then, you know, have people uh, laser track it or whatever so you can clock the speed the aircraft is going and then also obviously have people inside the plane doing their best to keep track of everything with compasses and also with, with high powered cameras so they could zoom into the lands that they're flying over. And then the people stationed at all the, over the land and over the water too, you have people in ships in sight of land of the land masses and various islands. And then you could easily do this. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's relatively simple. I guess the word simple is better than the word easy. It's simple. It would require a certain amount of manpower, of course, but that would be an easy way to prove it one way or another. But I, right. I've seen a lot of contrary but, flights and, that have been done and been documented very well. And um, just, just one, more, one more thing, 40, 40 seconds. Um, we don't know how fast airplanes are flying. It is very well likely that, you know, to hide this information on one way, they're going miles an hour and the other way they're going 800 miles an hour to you know to um make these times you, you know i always notice a plane is like oh we took off an hour late but we're going to make up that time in the air they have the ability to make up that time in the air the last thing is think about this on a globe on a globe northern hemisphere on the top southern hemisphere on the bottom go find a flight route between any two northern airports that dips below the equator you won't be able to find one they go north to north to north, and they never dip below the equator because that doesn't make any sense on the globe. But on a you know, there's cabotage laws, right? I mean, you can't if you're an airline in the northern hemisphere, you have to go to the southern hemisphere to go back to the northern hemisphere. No, th th there's all of the just flights. Said I, I, at least I haven't found one yet. It doesn't mean that, that there aren't. Um, but all they all make the line the, the pretty much the line you would think. But in the south, deep south, going uh, across the globe. They go all the way up into the north many times and all the way back down. Well, that's because of cabotage laws, but they also have direct flights. So, you know, like I said, th this. Uh, no, I'm talking direct flights, but they'll, they'll go. The, I mean, some of them are direct, right? Some of them stop, but they go, they go these ridiculous routes that make no sense. And just in the, just in the south, not in the north. Okay. Let me say one thing, Brian. Let me just show you one thing. So the other thing that's weird to me is there's always these cases where I'm like, well, if they have this, it would be hard to, for us to explain. One of those was under sea cables running from. Australia or New Zealand to South America because 
when you go look at the map of all of our undersea cables, there's no cables that run across there. So then I said, that's peculiar. Why wouldn't they have cables running there? Then I went and looked at, well, let me look for cruise ships. There's no cruise ship that goes from New Zealand or Sydney to South America. Why? Because it's way bigger of an area than they're to- than we've been told. So if a cruise ship went out there, they're going to get, you can't make a cruise ship get a jet stream like a plane. A plane can grab an extra 200 miles per hour. A, a cruise Again, ship can't. I, I have to research it. <laughs> so, you know, that's such a coward way out because if he's truly having a scientific debate, say, okay, for the sake of argument, let's say what you say is true. How could that be countered? All he can say, oh, I have to look at it. Oh, send it to me. So he's just offered nothing this entire, this entire discussion so far. Okay, well, I'm telling you, so don't just dismiss it, but think about it and research. That's a great answer. No, that's a great answer. answer. Let's move on. Good answer. answer. Yeah. Yeah. You have to research it. Great. I I didn't create this little – I mean, again, to me, it's an impossible flight. I've looked at it many times. I I don't buy your explanations. There's just no way on the flat earth you can can follow the actual coordinates that are in a flight log. Appeal to incredulity. Not only was there a way, but this one guy claimed to have done it. Now, since the flat earth map – they can claim they can make up any map that would match whatever the plane flew, right? Doesn't mean doesn't mean the flat Earth map is accurate in any way, but it clearly can be made to match the flight. I mean, how is Bryant not comprehending this? You can make anything match anything if you're just imagining random parameters. Obviously, those would have to be proven, but you can imagine a whole bunch of different things to match flights. I mean, it's just it's so weird. It's like Bryant has completely abandoned the scientific method. And, and when you actually enter them, it's, this is not made up. This is actually entering when you actually enter the coordinates on, not up here, but it's, it comes out something like this. Yeah, but you a plane a, just is put a, in. You, you, could, distance, you just you put, put in the GPS distance. route. You just put in the route and it just goes. The plane just flies itself. So It's, it's like dead reckoning. Right? Look now, into if, it. now, if you said this, the, the planes are going supersonic speeds, then that could possibly make up the difference. They literally do. Admittedly, mainstream, they go over 800 okay, miles per hour in the way. north. I mean, that, that's that's the what we're saying is the way okay, that they can. That's the, it. The jet streams down not, there in the south. But again, you got to show me proof that they're going that fast. Uh, the, the jet streams, it's proof public that information. Do. Okay. Yeah, the jet streams go to the Then you'd be, you know, it's a sonic, you know, there's a thing called a sonic boom that, you know, you have But they can do it on the airplane. You won't do it on the ocean. No, but jet streams because of static pressure around the plane. People above will hear it, though. People above will hear it, though. Above what? Not out in the middle of the ocean. This one's out in the middle of the ocean. A plane goes. Well, they're, they're not going to hear anything. Well, static de- pressure. Wow, Brian is so triggered. He's just grasping at any and all straws to try to defend the faith. <laughs> if they got to do these speeds, then there's going to be places where they're going to be going over land. Well, yeah, above water. Going, no, no, you could get out. You could get out over the water. You would get out over the water and then really take fast. off fast. All right. Okay, well, let's just move on. Let's okay. move on. <laughs> Too triggering. Got to move on. We're not going to make any headway here. Um, so one little thing I just wanted to... Um, Again, I, I, I hope we can move on because I don't think that we're going to come to a come to any type of consensus on that. Not when he just keeps avoiding the burden of proof or lo- or the basics of logic. But you know, no. send me send me some stuff. You know, I'll take a look at. Um, that that's a good answer. Yeah, we like it. No, I, I I look at stuff, you but know, you I'm have not- to have but you have to have an open mind. If you look at stuff with the already preconceived. I, I do have- well, we're saying things and you're not even listening. We just gave you an explanation. He has an open mind. He was literally just grasping at straws to justify why a plane couldn't be going at a certain speed <laughs> without even knowing. He didn't measure it. Again, that doesn't mean it is. But without the measurement, he already started rolling in the excuses to defend the faith. For how a plane can do it in the South. And you're just like, no, no, no. I don't think that it's impossible. I think it's impossible. We're like, I, I, again, just, I, spent a lot of, I don't know how that, I mean, the, the faster speeds is the only way it's possible. Then that's, that's what we that's, said. That, this is so weird. They're claiming that it's the higher speed. And he's saying, yeah, that's the only way it's possible. They're not claiming that it's being done 10 different ways. They're claiming it's being done one way. And Bryant is saying, yeah, that's the only way it's possible. That's why it can't be done because people would hear it. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't make any sense at all. This is, this is weird. Everyone knows that happens in real life, though. It's just so. openly admitted. Su- supersonic. I mean, like fourteen hundred. No, no, no. It's not supersonic. No, if the wind, fourteen hundred, and if the, 800 and if the eight hundred to nine hundred would do it. And he's just constantly strawmanning and pretending they're making statements they're not making. They clearly cited the miles per hour. Now he's doubled it out of nowhere because they claimed eight hundred. Now he's like, oh, they're going fourteen hundred. Nobody said fourteen hundred. I mean, this is really weird. Is just Bryant that triggered that his brain just ceases to function? 900, no, no, would, 900 would do it. Those, 900 would do it. Well, not when you do that distance. You do it. No, you're you're drawing a big view. You're drawing that line. So nobody who flies in that route ever sees Antarctica. You would see Antarctica from that route. 
Nobody's ever that seen Antarctica no from that. Well, actually, so. they do. Actually, again, if you no, they do not. Go look no, at the. Go look the at the ice. globe. Wait, wait. Go back to where you oh. had the data points and tell me how somebody sees Antarctica from oh, those no, data points. Not on that. In this oh, now you're changing it. You see that when they oh. when you look when you look at these two. Hold studies, on, that picture on the right. Nobody's ever taken that flight route. What is that? Ah! This is not drawn as it should be drawn. This is not the Great Circle. Right. <laughs> so now he's saying the evidence that he presented is not at drawn properly. <laughs> so he's basically debunking his own evidence now, saying that oh, it can't actually be used to prove it. <laughs> Correct drawing. So what okay. are you showing us? If you for? look at this okay. we flight. Great circle routes on the no, meridian no, are actually, impossible anyway. No, actually, this might, anyway this might be. It, it's, it's just the perspective of the... Um, no, that's not... So, is that what's what's that there? white thing on the bottom? What is that there? <laughs> <laughs> no, like the white circle. What am I looking at? The top picture. Well, let's just, let's just move on. I, this is, is that supposed to be Antarctica? Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. like a cartoon. All right. It's not a cartoon. Duh. They I should mean, have a real. They should have a real photo. I know, now. but you think so, bro? You know, Dave, your 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 app has Antarctica on it. You know, you do realize that, right? Around the outskirts. How so? I I have your app, and I went to Antarctica to look for someone, but it kept loading and loading. Somebody told me that they found some people in Antarctica that downloaded oh, your app. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, they, yeah, we have, NASA, we have, NASA. We have two guys in, in Antarctica. Okay. One of them at KC Station, and the other one was out in the middle of nowhere. Here he is, right here. Right there, yeah. Yeah. So I, I right. And I I was communicating with with him for a while, and um, it was quite interesting. Okay. Mm. So I mean, again, you know, these so. What I want to just go over some high altitude stuff is one of the things I've noticed that flat earthers or flat earth believers don't seem to understand. Oh, I don't have my drop with you. Oops, Bulb sorry deniers. guys, I didn't know that. Well, deny whatever you want to call it. Be called is is the sheer what? scale of the Earth. Okay, so sorry. So, um, Nobody's denying the sheer scale of the Earth. Aren't the flat Earth claiming? Aren't the, the flat Earthers usually claiming it's even bigger than present? <laughs> I mean. This level of shamaning, it's just so silly. And again, I'm, I don't think Brian is doing this on purpose as a troll. It looks like just a fundamental lack of brain power here due to being triggered or whatever. Maybe he just has some kind of weird autism where he's kind of smart in certain areas and just fundamental failure here in this particular area. I don't know. I don't know if you can, can you see me right now or, or am I... Like, we got it. Sorry, guys. Good. Am I, am I sure? Uh, yeah, we can see. You are now. I had you. the wrong screen up, but go ahead. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm, the, the amount of water on planet Earth, and I did the math, there's one one thousandth amount of water as there's volume of land. Okay. You, mm -hmm. And so that's literally two drops on a bowling ball. I'm not a bowling ball, a billiard ball. So if you take two drops of water and just smear it around, okay, that's not much water. Okay. The Earth is huge. It's not like this over here. I don't know if you can see my screen where you'd have all this water fill in the smaller earth and it looks like it's a lot of water. So, the so but wait, it's a wait lot of water. Wait, it's wait a, a lot of water. It, it, it's a lot of water. If you think about it, they, it you are agreement that 70% of the earth's surface is surface. ocean. Sur okay. Okay. All right. And, and, and let's say the average depth of that ocean is only 300 feet. Okay. So if it's 70%, let's just say we, we take half of that 300 feet and put it on the land. All right. That's 250 feet of water. Covering the entire globe. That's a significant amount of water. I know, and it goes I, down I, to I, seven I, miles. No, what you're not, you're not, you're missing my point here. The volume of the earth compared to the water is only, there's only one one thousandth the volume of water. Because when you take, I mean, just do the math, you can do the math and see. All right. You're well, talking about so the, what, whole, the whole earth construction, construction, the whole yeah. earth construction. Well, the, the relevance is because when you get into these earth from space pictures, um, well, in like in images like this, when you guys talk about the atmosphere, the atmosphere is incredibly thin. It's yeah, actually only this is this, know. this is to That's scale. A cartoon. This is not a cartoon. Okay, this what? is if you Wait, draw. That what is a cartoon. Watch, what are we looking what? at? Right? That is a cartoon. At? That is a cartoon. No, 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 I'm, this isn't meant to be an actual. This oh. is meant to show you that the. Why not? Then okay. let's get some real ones. Do you have any? Okay. okay. But fair <laughs> enough. Go ahead with the with the visualization. Wait, what? <laughs> so he's saying it's not a cartoon, but it's not meant to be real either. <laughs> what? Now, Bryant does have an interesting point here regarding the volume of claimed water on the claimed Earth. So obviously, he again, he doesn't understand the burden of proof, logical fallacy. But within the information presented by so -called, the so-called establishment, again, you just look this up on Google. It says 332.5 million cubic miles in terms of water volume on Earth. 
Well, I mean, it is a lot, but relative to the claimed size of the Earth, it's not in terms of percentage. So 71% of the Earth is covered in water, but what is that in terms of volume? Now again, without proving the radius of the Earth, none of this means anything, but it is interesting that Bryant did bring up that if we are going by the globe Earth model, the model itself doesn't claim that just because the surface is covered that the volume is great amount. According to the model here, it would be 332.5 million cubic miles. Now, again, what does that really mean? I don't know. Let's see what kind of claims are made. Let me just go through the slides and then we can have discussion. Sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So, so this yellow line here is the Carmen line. This means that 90 over 99 percent of the atmosphere is below this line mm -hmm. so pretty much when you have images like this that show the atmosphere looking so big and that you know how could the atmosphere be going this fast up here and so well it's not that big it's actually only relative to the size of the earth it's only this little bit so the point i'm trying to make is that when you got these you know these pictures at high altitude you're not going to see much curvature i mean the curvature is there but it's if the earth is huge, right? Mm -hmm. You're not so, going to see any so yes, curvature. So I agree, you know, the Red Bull skydive, that was a fisheye lens. It's clearly way too much curvature. So mm -hmm. right. know, it, it goes both ways. And then, you know, Do you agree if the earth was flat, you wouldn't see any curvature either? Well, no, it, what you guys do is you cherry pick images from, and I actually have looked at the actual originals of all of these. And you can actually see, if I can just load this here. Um, Cherry pick? Is he just psychologically projecting? Because the people that believe the Earth is a globe cherry pick the images they send. The flat earthers, again, there's there's different types of flat earthers. That's, again, that's a, not only a false claim by, see, technically that would be a hasty generalization logical fallacy by Bryant because he's grouping in all the flat earthers into one category. There's a whole bunch of different types of flat earthers, just like there's a whole bunch of different types of globe earthers a certain percentage of flat earthers that bring up certain images at certain altitudes showing zero curvature, that's a certain percentage that they're claiming debunks the earth. They're not using that as a claim for flat earth. They're using that as a claim for lack of curvature on a globe earth of the purported size that scientism preaches. Theoretically, the earth could be a much greater globe and you still wouldn't see the curvature. So there's a lot of possibilities here, and of course, Brian's just grouping this all in with a hasty generalization logical fallacy. And That's a simple a, question, a, though, Brian. If the Earth uh, was flat, a flat level plane, there would be no curvature, correct? But I know, but you guys don't have any actual good images to show no curvature, except these mm -hmm. ones that are cherry-picked. You see, you see how triggered he is? He can't even answer the question. The correct answer is yes, correct. If the Earth were flat, there would be no curvature. I mean, he's not saying, he's not telling Bryant to agree with it in any way. This is just a basic question that children can answer, and yet Bryant can't. He has to, he's just so triggered. I feel bad for the guy. All the hot air balloon ones without a fisheye lens show no curvature. And, oh, and also, it's, it's, show it's no actually curvature. the opposite. I'm sorry, it's actually the opposite. The I ones just... that are done very carefully... When you center the frame on the horizon, you guys realize oh, that, Oh, that happens right? a lot that, from a balloon? They center the frame? Let, let them finish. Let no, them no, finish. You, oh, finish. you center the frame on the horizon, and you always see a curvature. And Walter, and, and the cool thing about Walter Bislin's calculator is that you can use a model, a mathematical model. Always appeal to extremes? <laughs> you don't always see it. What did he do here? He cherry-picked these 16 examples... What he's acute, what he psychologically projected the flat earthers did, he did that himself to show that, which nobody's disputing that, again, based on lenses used. This is why none of this really proves anything. Because the way that lenses, photography, and film work, anything can look different than what it, is actu what it actually is. So none of this really proves anything. I mean, you'd have to go so much farther, higher... I mean, there's just, I don't even know why this is being argued. It's kind of embarrassing. That validates what the actual curvature is. So we know how big the Earth is, and we can model how it should look from a certain altitude. 
and what we see is what we get. Again, with these reification and appeal to authority and appeal to popularity logical fallacies where he's pretending we, he's, uh, again, I guess scientism cultists would, can be grouped under that we, but people who are actually practicing real science, regardless of which side on the flat or globe earth debate they are, they would never make this argument. When we properly center the camera frame on the horizon, so you guys do realize fisheye lenses Let me get this. Not, yeah, go ahead, in the, in the middle of the actual photo, or the middle of a fisheye lens, it's, per, it's straight as straight and curve as curve, and right down the middle, same thing. But above and below, that's where it gets distorted. Have Ryan. you seen any of these without a fisheye lens? That's what I'm asking you. Well, oh, the fisheye, yeah, but, without well, the mage product. Without, yeah, yeah, there are there are. Okay. There's no let's, curve. Let's say this too. Okay. You do oh, know that every true. you do know that every single true. camera and every single eyeball is spherical and has uh, problems with that, right? You're never going to get a flat image. Period. That's I've heard I've heard Bob say that. That's when I was. That's when I threw my hands up and just quit debunking flat Earth. When they said, "Oh, if we go out to space." And there's in, in the window, and it's my eyeball is always going to see a curve. It's like, okay, no. how, how can you debunk well, that? No, for no, no, he's say saying that. that you see in a circle, so you would see that. And then also it's called Rayleigh scattering. You get a circumference of light, a radius of light over a flat surface, you would potentially see that. And in addition, Neil deGrasse Tyson tells the whole world that you wouldn't see curvature oh, from Neil 60 deGrasse miles Tyson. up. No, no, hold on. Neil deGrasse Tyson was wrong. 63 miles. Okay, so a lot to digest there. So again, wits it with the basic common sense of controls. How does the human eye see? So whether the earth was flat or a globe, would train tracks still look like they touch in the distance? Would convergence still be there? Obviously, these are known as controls. Now, it's really not that difficult. That's why I would say 99% of what is being discussed doesn't prove anything one way or another. But who are the clueless goofs who can even realize that fact? I mean, <laughs> what is going on here? Now, at least Bryant, again, we have to give this guy credit. I have to give this guy credit. He's, he's actually doing an absolutely horrible job, but better than I believe any other heliocentric globe earther has done before i've proposed the conspiracy theory that flat earth is a psyop and if the earth really is a heliocentric globe there's some kind of this is kind of like a joke where the intelligent heliocentric globe believers they intentionally never argue or debate flat earth in public because they think it's too funny to watch the clueless goofs defend the globe earth so poorly as to increase flat earth membership which to them is funny if the earth really is a globe again that's just one of the theories i'm not claiming that theory is true but that would be really hilarious because i mean there's definitely really smart people out there they're just choosing not really smart heliocentric people on the heliocentric globe side they're just choosing not to ever debate publicly in any way now, if Bryant's the best they have out of the publicly debating ones, I mean, the bar is so low. I mean, I have to give them credit, but the bar is set so extremely low. It's set lower than children's level basics. But at least Bryant is here claiming that one of the scientism priests, Neil deGrasse Tyson, is wrong. Let's see what he says here. Because I don't know if any other debate, most, most of the... Uh, Scientism cultists, the scientism worshippers of the Church of NASA, etc., they view Neil deGrasse Tyson as one of the prophets of scientism, one of the saints of scientism who can do no wrong. All Neil, right. I don't know why okay. you guys think well, Neil deGrasse Dave, Tyson is somehow the so, mouthpiece look, for all of Because he's your spokesperson. Oh, that's what, uh, that's right, guys, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, so Brian, do, do you realize that on a flat Earth, you wouldn't see curvature? You, you, we can agree on that. And yeah. on a globe Earth, if you think you see curvature, like you're showing us those pictures, you have yeah. to follow that curve around. And by the time you turned around, you'd be pointing at the ground. But that's not on a globe how you would see because it would remain at the same level. So we see in a straight, we see in a, um, in a, in the same distance in all directions. Radius. So whether it's 10 miles or 100 miles, we're seeing that same distance at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, all the way around. So we see in a circle. Right. So here's my guy standing here. And this is where he sees. This is the limit of his vision where the sky meets the land. And he's seeing in a circle. And if you carefully look at that, draw a line across it. Here's the curvature that you're seeing. It's just the limit of your vision. You're drawing right, wait, a line. Hold on. I want to know why he shakes his head at that and says no. So what, what about what Dave just said you don't agree with? You don't think we see in a circle? Well, this this is what you can't you're just seeing. say no when he, uh, I, 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 on a flat. Just think of this. If the earth was if the earth was flat. 
and we see, you know, the, where the, the sky meets the land, that's the limit of your vision. Well, if it's 10 miles or 20 miles or 50 miles, whatever it is, at one, at a, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, I'm seeing that, but you draw a straight line, you're drawing a straight line and the point right in front of me is, is the 50 miles away. And as it goes out, it's getting farther and farther and farther away beyond where I can see. So you're drawing an imaginary line like this. And this is your curvature of a flat earth. And by the way, this doesn't prove the earth is flat. This is, this is, this is, is what you would see on a flat law, earth. But and that's it's also law. what you would see on a globe. Earth. But that's a fact. I, what law of perspective is that though? I mean, what? What do you mean law of perspective? Do you, you're are you telling me you, you can see you're further? Telling me that you're telling me that that's, if that's a flat earth, you're going to, you're going to see curve on a flat earth like that. This is, yes. we, we, you can, so if it, let's say there's a cumulus cloud day and all those clouds are sitting there, I don't know, 5,000 feet above your head and then 20, 30 miles in the distance, those clouds are touching the ground. Well, that's the limit of your vision. Okay. Because you can't that's see, the it's the convergence point. So that's yes. the limit of your vision. So whether that's, but, but so it's 30 miles that way, it's 30 miles that way, it's 30 miles that way. And if you connected all those dots, you're drawing a big no, no, that's, circle. I'll tell you where you're, I know where you're getting this. It's a, it's a 0 0.02 degrees of, of angular. Spirit. No, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm Resolution. talking about. Okay. All right. Bryant seems, okay. We've given him far too much credit. I mean, this guy might actually have a mental disability. He's not grasping this. I, I don't know what to make of this. I don't care how many degrees this guy has from indoctrination facilities, a child can understand the concept that David Weiss just outlined. He's even got the diagram, but even without the diagram, is it really that difficult to understand that, let's make this really simple. Let's say you're almost blind, you can only see one, feet, one foot in each direction. So if you look around you, one foot in each direction, would that be a circle? a square, a rhombus, would that be a perfect circle from where you are standing? So, so let's say somebody can see 100 feet, everybody's vision's a little different, somebody can see a little bit better than somebody else, whatever it is, whether it's one foot or 10 feet, 100 feet, if you do that in every direction, will that make a circle from where you are standing? If you're standing in the middle, would that be a circle? Bryant can't understand this? Really? I really don't think he's playing stupid like some of these other goofs who enter these debates. Look at his face. He seems genuinely confused. And if he does have a mental disability, I mean, why didn't somebody stop him from coming on the, you know, on this podcast and just humiliating himself? I mean, it's crazy. But that's the, the, the vanishing point, Dave. The vanishing point no. comes from the 2.02. Okay, so you didn't realize that, right? No, no, no. I'm not talking about. I'm talking. That's that's yeah. that's you trying to squeeze in between the sky and the ground. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in these images, the the farthest you can see the land is the farthest you can see the land, and it's in the same distance in all directions. That is a circle. You're looking at that because of your programming and saying, oh, that's the curve of the globe. Sphere. It's not the curve they, of the globe. Oh, but you guys do know what Rayleigh scattering is, right? Yeah, yeah. I just brought Rayleigh, it up. The Rayleigh, the Rayleigh limit. I mean, the Rayleigh, the Rayleigh criteria. I'm sorry. Yeah, I literally just brought it, brought it up. one that brought it up. So yeah. the Rayleigh criteria says that even though our angular resolution can only make out a certain level of 0 0.02 degrees, light is still hitting our – photons are still hitting our eyes. So we are still receiving light beyond that. There is the vanishing point of perspective – is not a point. It doesn't end there. It's just, that's the limit of our vision. We can get a telescope and extend that further, but we're Photons. still getting light beyond that. <laughs> yes, we are. This is the, this is the Rayleigh criteria. So, okay. But yeah, no, you have to block light, of light with the local light source. And then you would literally actually be able to see a curvature or like imposed with the convexity of your eyes, you would see a slight uh, convexity and you can replicate this in blender or whatever you want to do. It's just like objective and yeah so and if the earth was flat brian and you were looking across the the atlantic ocean let's say from the east coast of the united states to spain you do recognize that you it doesn't matter what telescope you have you're not going to be able to see through the atmosphere the well, atmosphere again, but you can see if you're on a uh, and then that's another um well you didn't answer my question do you would you agree that you would never see across the atlantic ocean whether it's a sphere earth or a globe I, earth i would I would say that on certain conditions that are very clear, you should be able to. Wow, we can't see 500 miles, and you think we could see 2,500? All right, so this is a fundamental failure by most people who argue. <sighs> Have these goofs never seen a weather report or a visibility index? 
Like, does he not understand how precipitation affects visibility? I mean, even a small child understands that in extremely foggy conditions, you might not even be able to see down the street in a really dense fog. Now, there's never 0% precipitation, at least, that has been observed thus far. I mean, if somebody knows about it, that's fine. But there's always going to be some kind of moisture, some kind of elements in the air that are going to prevent you from seeing 100% perfect with perfect clarity across great distances. This is not rocket science. This is, this is just absolute children's level basics. And Bryant is so triggered, he doesn't even want to give a straight answer. If he's capable of giving that straight answer. Again, I don't know if he's some kind of like idiot savant where he's like a super genius at certain topics that are not being discussed here. And that's how he's advanced in academia, quackademia, whatever. And for this particular pot, for this particular topic, his mental disabilities are beca are more clear. I don't know. I'm not saying we can see 2,500 miles. I'm well, that's saying how that far it is across the, the Atlantic Ocean. The I don't know. I mean, the Look, conditions. Continuation of light, bro. Come on, man. Wait, he doesn't know the distance, the claim, the distance by his own cult. <laughs> what? <laughs> light, light keeps going. You do realize that. Not through an light, atmosphere. No. <laughs> My goodness, it's got okay, continuation no, of light. just like just like sound, man. Sound travel. light spreads light out. Light travel. has to fill. Light is right. going out in a. Just say it's, I, it's it's radius becomes a sphere. It's, I, I know, it's going in all I directions. Know. It's getting thinner and thinner and thinner to the no, point it, where you can't see it. Dave, Dave, it's I've done the calculations with the star. Let me just go to that point now since you're bringing it up. <laughs> Completely avoiding the previous point about looking across the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> um. Because I actually did an experiment where I, to my, that I proved that I could see further than, the, than my angular resolution. And I, I did it right here. And I, I bought this little, little bulb here and I measured, I measured the, how, the radius of, or the radius of it. And I, and I figured out exactly what the limit of how far I could see it, which would be 30, about 30 meters away is where my angular vision disappears, right? Yeah, you but can see I, light further away. Yeah, you can see light a lot further away. And this is, and I've heard Dave talk about this, and it's. But nobody did anybody even claim that. <laughs> it, wait, is what? What is he doing here? Is he? What is he claiming? Is anybody disputing that angular resolution is not? I mean, what? What is he even doing here? <laughs> Normal eye limit. Obviously, that depends on the lights, depends on the objects, depends on the viewing conditions, the atmosphere, etc., the precipitation. I mean, there's a million different things that this depends on. Like, what, what, is, what is he doing here? <laughs> Provably, I mean, I did the whole calculations with, uh, with um, Alpha Centauri, and you can, there's actually right here, it's very, it's very easy to explain why we can see Alpha Centauri. Pre no, it's not. You have to, how do you know the no. mass and the brightness? How do you know the mass of that star? Because guys have figured it Alpha, out. Alpha, Alpha Centauri, you know, again, this gets into like, like many decades of astrophysics and astrology where. So this is just another appeal to authority logic about. So he's just stacking fallacies and then creating this experiment on top of fallacies and expecting everybody to take it on blind faith. Does that sound scientific to anyone or is that just religious? It's mapped out. We well, but again, if you can make the the easy assumption that, um, and this is based on good science, not an assumption, <laughs> but even if you don't believe, I'm saying I'm I'm talking to you guys because you don't believe mainstream science, that that Alpha Centauri is about the same size as the sun. How do you know so that? How do they know that? Again, it's it's it, the equations they use. Um, how yeah, far equations, is Alpha Centauri? Equations are not Alpha are Centauri not reality. Is 4. One plus one unicorns equals two unicorns. That must mean unicorns are real just because the math works. The math works. <laughs> or, and again, they just look, I did the calculations here and we know that the sun, because by your argument, even if it wasn't Alpha Centauri, if we put the sun where Alpha Centauri is, you would say that we couldn't see it. So let's and just, you would say we could. Can we just and walk again, it? The calculations wait, are right here. Wait, the way, the, hold on to the calculations. Again, fundamental failure to understand how burden of proof works. The burden of proof is on the positive claim. Who here is making a positive claim? Now, maybe the flat earthers are. I haven't heard their positive claims. I haven't heard any of the flat earthers here claim a distance of the sun. 
they're asking the question. They're being scientifically skeptical and scientifically minded. They're asking how Bryant figured out the distances, the sizes, and whether or not they're the same. And he's just sputtering into all of these logical fallacies in a trigger dunning kruger type fashion. I mean, this is not science, Bryant. I don't understand how Bryant doesn't understand the basics. Children's level science and logic 101. You're not going to just assume and have blind faith in those that came before. If all the priests figured out that God is real, I mean, that must mean God is real, right? I mean, it's been decades of good priest work, according to him. He calls it good science, whatever. Good talking to God, high level Bible research. That must mean it's true because it was done for X period of time. Like, what is Bryant talking about here? <laughs> just one question, then you can keep going. Do you believe in the inverse square law of light? I, I, I've actually done videos on the inverse square law. It, yes I'm, or no? Is it a, is it a real yeah, thing? But I'm showing you that this, is the, this thing takes into account the inverse square law. And what, huh? the, what the conclusion is, is we actually have, you can do the calculation. So here, he, he never answers the question. I mean, obviously that's a yes, because he said it was factored in. But how hard is it to say yes or no? Usually only trigger goofs can't say yes or no. <laughs> so... He keeps going, you can do the calculation. Well, you can do the calculations for adding up unicorns. That doesn't mean unicorns are real. That doesn't mean the unicorn wasn't mistaken for something else. That doesn't mean there aren't other variables. You can't just expect everyone to believe in unicorns just because the math works. The amount of photons that hit your eyes. <laughs> no are, photons hit no, anybody's please. eyes. Stop well, with the photons hitting the eyes, well, man. You're listen, tripping me listen. out. <laughs> How do my eyes protect myself from that uh, kind of speed? Well, I feel like you're threatening me crazy. physically or something when you say that. It's, it's the amount of light. Okay, you don't, use, <laughs> you don't use the word photons. It's the amount of light. There is light hitting our eyes. Provably, if you say the sun is where Alpha Centauri is, you can do the calculations and show that light is hitting your eyes from that location. To do the calculations, so, you need the mass. No, you, well, you, you just agreed that we could assume, just for argument's sake, that oh, we could put the sun where Alpha Centauri is. And Nobody agreed to that. <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What is Bryant smoking? He keeps saying, oh, they just agreed. Nobody agreed to anything because he didn't demonstrate that with irrefutable proof, which is what anybody scientifically minded would need. Based on Dave's rationality, we would not be able to see it. We would not okay? be able to see it. Well, no, we would. Right. You actually okay. can prove. So, but hold on. So, let's, so wait a minute. Let, wait, let, I just want to ask a quick the question. The actual amount. Of, you know what, Brighton? You if we know, went halfway to the sun, would the sun be four times as bright as it is? Dave, I've heard this argument. That's what I'm trying to. I'm asking a question. Do you believe? Am I wrong or am I right? Him. Yeah, disprove oh, I'm tr I've heard all that, so I'm trying to. I'm trying to explain the answer to that. He's asking, so, would it be so, four times as bright? Would it be four times as bright as the inverse square this law this dictates? Is why I didn't want to go four against. Because he can't answer a yes or no question. I mean. This is why he didn't want to go on. It's a yes or no question. I mean, or you could say approximately. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. You could say approximately yes or not even close. No, yeah. I mean, he can't even see that this is really weird because like if he understands the concepts well, how can he not answer a simple question? Or let's say there's a missing variable you need to answer that. He can say uh, that's not easy to determine because of X variable, which is this instead of just having this meltdown. <laughs> I mean, this no, 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 I'm, I'm just asking I, you one question, that's it. We can I be quiet, we can be quiet, let do it. I've actually taught the inverse square law. I know, understand, like your balloon analogy, how the balloon thins out. Okay, that's, that, that's not incorrect, but it's, you gotta realize that if you're using light. How dumb does it sound when somebody asks a priest for proof of God, the priest says, well, actually, I've actually taught at seminary school. I've actually taught this. How does that prove it's true? It's so silly and religious. And the fact that Bryant doesn't understand how silly and religious his answers are. I've heard this argument. I've actually taught this. You can do the calculations. I mean, while completely avoiding actual meaningful dialogue or being able to prove any of his points. I mean, this is why there are so many flat earthers. Again, real or, real or not, there's so many flat earthers out there because none of these people who are publicly debating can give any straight answers. It's real weird. It would have to be a ridiculously thick balloon because the amount of energy coming out of, well, again, we could say the sun or Alpha Centauri is, and again, this is based on 
and for many decades of astrophysicists doing lots of many decades of priests talking to God and teaching in seminary school. Lots of careful research to map out the stars, and and again, when you study this and get appreciation for the predictive power, and. But, you know, if you don't study science, you don't really appreciate how all these things can be predicted. How everything... If you don't study religion, you can't really study how all these prophets made accurate predictions. <laughs> how everything falls into place. <laughs> but if you can just take the, uh, this amount of actual luminosity, which is the brightness of Alpha Centauri, and take that inverse square. Yes, it does drop off by an inverse square. But there's still... What does luminosity as constant mean? Lum lum okay, no, luminosity... Yeah, luminosity is constant, brightness diminishes by inverse square law. But the luminosity, the power output, is this, this, here's the power output, is like, let's say, 6 times 10 to 26 watts. So that's a lot of light. That's a real thing. Luminosity is constant. What do you mean by that? The luminosity is the brightness. So that's, that's the amount of power that's getting radiated out, okay? The brightness is the inverse square. This is what's, there, what's called a radiance. So a radiance is measured in watts per meter squared. So that, that's what spreads out by inverse square, okay? Okay. So when you get to the Earth from that distance of Alpha Centauri, you still have measurably 2.7 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared. What, what distance is that, and how is that proven? And we know the minimum detectable amount of light for our human eye is actually, we can detect that perfectly fine because we can detect as little as 10 to the minus 10 watts per so meter. So you did the math on the closest star, the very closest star that I there know, is, but right? the closest star, but there's still, there's more than enough. But you do realize there's only five to 6,000 visible stars. So we're, it's not like we're seeing like the whole galaxy. We're only seeing our local vicinity. You don't know the distance to the stars. They just changed Polaris distance by 100 light years and minute they were off by 100 light years over 30%. I've got, I've got, I've got the data from Polaris, but we can... Um, but wait, yeah, the data that they changed already. They okay, changed which, one, by... which version do you have, Brian? Brian, right. uh, uh, can I? I, can... I, I you know, you, I do want to ask him though, Dave. Let me do this one because I just want to ask you him. Got, if... You guys, you guys have, think that Polaris is staying in place, but it's probably moving. But wait, wait, that's called, a, little, that's that's called a diversion, right? Because I, you're bringing up this something that requires the distance to the stars to make your whole argument. So I'm like, but you don't actually know those distances. For example, Polaris. Well, this, is where, this is where science comes in. For example, that. Polaris was just to come out and admit that they were off by over 30 percent, and it's a hundred light years closer at least. So you admit that. We don't well, actually know for but, sure but, that but, these but distances the, and masses okay, are correct. Distances, but I'm saying the actual movement of Polaris we map we map very carefully. Okay. Okay. You're changing the you're changing it now to a well, I'm moving the goalpost <laughs> and also completely avoiding the argument. I mean, you could you could rope in a bunch of logical fallacies there, red herring, etc. He's saying something that appears to be directly related. I mean, it's sort of kind of related, but we're talking the movement, whatever. The movement is very easy to see the movement, right? The star the stars are rotating around the earth whether it's a globe, whether it's flat, whether it's geocentric, whether it's heliocentric. You can set up a time lapse. You can see the movement of the stars. So regardless of the shape of the earth or what what the the, the movement of the stars are easy to track relatively compared to knowing the distance. So he completely avoided. He's this triggered and or clueless that he completely avoided that Polaris, they and again, they did this with the sun too. The distance to the sun has been changed so many times because not only are humans fallible, but human technology is fallible. But these scientism cultists have such blind faith in the infallibility of fallible humans and fallible human technology, they can't even see how clueless they seem. They're not even on a children's level of logical understanding here. Well, I was trying to explain before that, that light, the reason that we can see light, um, we, there's a good explanation why we can see light so far away, and it doesn't drop off. Look how he just completely, again, avoided addressing this fundamental failure. So if they're off by 30%, 30% is a large error. 30% is a large error, especially when you're making these finely tuned calculations to tenths of degrees and, and all of this like he did. That's, again, why the math could work, but it might not be representing true reality. And again, there's just fundamental failure to understand the basics by Brian.
Brian, can I, yeah, can can I we, ask a question? Can we just walk you're... him through the distance thing? Because I want to know where he thinks right. that we're wrong. See, I, I can't debate four people. No, it's not debate. No, no, I'm asking we're, you a we're question. Not. We're, we're, it's a we're conversation. A question together. We're having... If he's going to melt down every time they ask a question he can't answer, they're not jumping on him with four guys talking. They Three guys, I think three, was it Witsit and Jaronism? Possibly Hibbler? I don't know. They just they they, they keep asking the same question because he's not answering it. It's four guys asking the same question. Sure, we're having a, a simple debating. conversation. I can't. I just get into one thing and I. He's like, well, no, we're, we're still talking about, about the sun and whether we would be able to see it far away. But you know, yes, Dave, you would be able to see it far okay, away, provably. But hold on. So Dave always questions. talks about Dave yeah. always talks about the sun if it were right above our heads and still eight hundred sixty-seven. I've seen him do that. Okay, yeah. it would yeah. take up the whole sky, right? So then we move it ninety-three million miles away, and now it's the size of a dime, right? So if we did it again, doubled that distance, then it would be smaller than that dime, right? Let's say okay, half as big. Going by angular resolution, though, I already okay. know where this goes. And you, when you get down to the point zero two angular resolution, where we couldn't make out details, but remember, we don't. We our eyes are photon receptors. It's not about. Uh, you know, and this is why I did this. This is why I did this little experiment because I could show that even though my eyes could only see it thirty meters away, I was able to see this light like three hundred meters away. Yeah, but it's if we keep our, our eyes are our eyes are photon receptors. It's not about angular resolution for stars. No, but we didn't bring up angular resolution. We're just talking about the sun. If it reduces in size at eight minutes, yeah, but that, eight it light is minutes. angular resolution though. When you reduce it and reduce it and reduce it to the point. Okay, but where then you have to multiply it by you, just to get to a, a, a light day. You have to multiply it by twenty four eventually, and then you have to multiply it by three sixty five just to. Get, you're talking about the sun reducing, doubling know, its, its distance three hundred sixty five times. That you're going by size of like something like when we look at angular. Right resolution on the planet we're looking at things that are reflecting light stars are it's the same thing powerful. though it's the same thing it's not, no it's not wait the inverse right. square law right. hold on hold on not. i want to ask him though the it's inverse square law are you the saying the inverse time. square law only applies to light sources not reflections no the inverse it's well reflect it applies to that but the, the thing is the light sources have a lot more light than the reflections do he still hasn't addressed the distance change of polaris why, why is he avoiding that? <laughs> I think we all know the answer. Okay. It's the number of photons that hit our eyes, guys. It's not how far something away is. All right. So so can I just ask a I question and you can school this, me? This is easy to do. If you, if you guys can just follow the math, it's, so, easy, it's easy to show that the sun could be visible to our eyes. I mean, the, the light from the sun could be visible from our eyes if it was an Alpha Centauri distance away, meaning it would look like a little point in the sky with light but it, it would hit our eyes because it's not about how big it is. It's about the photons hitting our eyes. So at what point would it stop being seen? Again, I, I know that when you're, you know, I've done the calculations with like say Pluto versus Alpha Centauri. Never. And if you look at the size of Alpha Centauri versus Pluto, Pluto would be like 10 times smaller. But the reason we right. can't see Pluto and we can see Alpha Centauri is there is just an enormous amount of output of light and energy coming from stars? Can, can I ask just a couple of questions yeah. as a as you know not a scientist? Yeah, there's a certain amount of uh, would you, I could be wrong. Is there a certain amount of photons coming off of off of uh, a star? I mean, there is there is a, a a certain number. If you could calculate what they are, it would be what it is. It's ridiculously so, high. Yeah. It, so yeah, yes, yeah, forget the number. It doesn't matter. So so as you increase the radius of that yeah. that. Those photons are going to be getting less and less and less, and that's exactly. where the inverse. Hold on, exactly. let me let me ask my question, please. Yeah. So, so that's where the inverse square law comes in, where every time you double the distance, it's one quarter of the brightness. Right. So, so when you get so so, if I went halfway to the moon, would the moon be four times brighter? Wait, yes, wait. right. The answer is yes. Would you agree? The moon is not a star, Dave. I can't I'm, I'm, okay, so no, if the, it doesn't matter. Just hear, hear what I'm saying. It actually the, doesn't matter. The, wait, wait, wait. So, so the inverse square law does not apply to the light coming off of a photon. Oh, it's the, again, it's not. It's not about the inverse square law. It's about the number of photons. That's what. Right, uh, but, but okay. So the number of photons is four times as many when I'm halfway there in the same square foot of space. Okay, right. Yeah. When you got. When you so, got so is that is that a yes? Right, but there's a lot less light. A lot less. Oh, oh, so hang on. I'm not. I'm not comparing the amount of light. So I got a square foot box. I'm looking. Oh, okay, okay. I would be done with this in 30 seconds if you just hear me out and, and, okay, and just okay. answer. And then I want to throw it back to you because this is about you getting your information out there. We don't want to stop you. So I got a square foot. I got a moonlight coming in. I go halfway to the moon. Now there's four times the amount of moonlight in that square box. Agreed? Halfway again, there's now 16 times. And if I go all the way to 100 miles from the moon, it should be over 60 times brighter than the sun. 
According to the inverse square law. No, the, according to math. The the surface you, you do know the inverse square law goes by the radius. Just of leave the your camera on, object, Austin. right? Sorry. When I yeah. take like what, for instance, the gravitational drop off from the Earth, the, the one over r squared is not r from the surface; it's r from the center. You've got to take the the center of celestial bodies to do the one over r squared drop off. All right. It's a, very, it's a very big r that you're doing one over r squared. If you can't, I see what you're doing. But you're you're going to the surface. You've got to look at the r squared as the radius of the moon. Okay, that's a big radius. So when you when you I mean this is gravity, but the light holds the same way. The surface area is going to be related to the curvature, you know, space, time, and gravity. So it's the same kind of thing. You've got to look at. Wow. So he's just stacking all of these presuppositions and assumptions. Now, if they're true, that's fine. But you have to, again, provide the evidence for them if you're being scientific. If we're not being religious, he needs to back up each point he just made. But he's just exp expecting everybody to take it on blind faith. doesn't make any sense. The radius, and it's a, you got to go the other direction from... Okay, so we're off the inverse square law. We're on to the radius. Go ahead. Next, the next point, wherever you okay, want to yeah. go. But all, the, all I was trying to get at with that is I've heard your discussion on that, and it's the flaw with that thing is it's not angular resolution. It's actually light that we see. That's mm -hmm. why we can see distant stars, because the amount of power, the amount of radiance, the amount of luminosity is just unfathomably large. So, again, this is um, a red herring logical fallacy, because all of these variables are still in play, and he's still stacking assumptions on top of assumption on other fallacies, which makes his whole line of reasoning completely unscientific. Even if the math is accurate, I'm not disputing the actual math. I mean, I haven't double checked it, but let's say for the sake of argument, let's give it to him. Let's say all the math works perfect. That still doesn't prove what he's alleging. But, but, it, it, but we don't but see no some stars, right? We don't, some of them are, not, we can't see. No, yeah, some we can't see, but I'm saying there's, again, the, like I'm showing these calculations here, if if you do the 1 over R squared from the luminosity, if it drops below 10 to the minus 10 watts per meter squared, then our eyes won't, then our eyes won't pick it up. So, right, that's why we only see five or six or 7,000 stars in the night sky. And I, and I think, all, isn't it true out of all the 5,000 stars or 6,000 stars, whatever it is, that the sun is the third smallest? They tell us that it's an average size star, and but it's actually the third smallest I, 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 out of all stars. I, I, I have to look it up. I don't yeah. know the answer. Well, of course, they need them to be bigger yeah. because they need them to be bigger. Wow, he doesn't even know that, and he's discussing the subject. That's kind of important. That's kind of important, especially if you consider yourself some kind of an expert or at least expert enough to be having this kind of public discussion. I will say this, though. Bryant is just such a likable guy. I mean, he doesn't come off as this unhinged, clueless goof loony. I mean, he does seem relatively clueless, possibly some kind of uh, autism or mental disability that doesn't affect other areas. Like he's a some, maybe some kind of idiot savant where he's just a super math genius. Again, I haven't double checked his math, but let's say he is just for the sake of argument. But he just doesn't understand basic logic. So he can understand all these advanced math equations, but he can't put two and two together when it comes to logic, even basic children's level logic. You know, you, you kind of see this with, with, with certain figures in history, like, you know, some kind of superstar musicians or artists where they're just super geniuses in a very, very narrow field. And like they can barely tie their shoes together or understand any kind of basic logic or reason when it comes to anything else. Is that what we're seeing with Bryant? But again, Bryant is light years ahead of any other individual discussing flat earth debate on the heliocentric globe side. Where he's just such a likable guy. Like I can't help but like this guy. I feel bad for him that he's humiliating himself this badly. But he's such a likable guy. I mean, how do you not like Bryant here? He just seems like such a nice guy, which is what's making this so difficult to do. But again, we're all here, obviously, for educational purposes and to see how logic applies in flat earth debate. So hopefully this is very educational for everybody. But yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's a nice change of pace on the hand that Bryant just seems like a really, really nice guy. Because they need to explain why we can no, see it's, them. It's not about that. It's about luminosity. It's not about the size. It's about how much light it's emitting. Because so, that's, that's what's dropping off 1 over r squared. It's not the size of the orb. It's the amount of light that's dropping off 1 over r squared. That's what you're, that, that was the mistake in your Alpha Centauri argument that I so heard. If you, but again, Brian just stacked assumptions there because you don't know the size. So how would you know the size relative to the light being emitted to do those calculations? 
size and distance. Even if you want to say size is irrelevant, how can size be completely irrelevant though? Because the, the light being given off, it's X amount of light per X amount of mass, per X amount of matter, right? I mean, you could say you'd still be able, obviously, if something is much more emitting a much more powerful light, even if it's much smaller and it's emitting a more powerful light, you would see it. But again, when you're arguing anything, I mean, you kind of need to know the dimensions, right? Because otherwise, like, what exactly are you arguing here? Because if you don't know the distance and you don't know the dimensions, I mean, obviously, if it's, mu if it's emitting much more powerful light, yes, you would see it across a greater distance. I don't think anybody's disputing that. So is this just, again, another stacked straw man here on Brian's side? If you do the math, the closest star, how many times brighter than the sun would it have to be for us to see it? Well, I mean, it's, it's over 100 times more. And, but, 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 you know, like, like um, Polaris is like 48 times the size of the sun. It's much bigger than, I mean, Alpha Centauri it's, is about the same It's 48 size. times the size of the sun, and it's like 900 quadrillion times farther. I know, but again, if you, again, you got to take the calcul. Again, this is why when you don't do math, you can't see it. <laughs> this is why when you stack house of cards of assumptions, you still haven't proved the original point while pretending and hallucinating that all of those layers of stacked cards are legit. Therefore, the math is legit. I mean, you can add up all the unicorns in the world, but without first proving that they're unicorns, the math is irrelevant. Wait, wait, Dave, could you just repeat everything you just said, Dave, your last <laughs> sentence? Maybe he didn't hear you. Wait, so no, I, I did hear him because I can okay. do the thing. How many times brighter is Polaris than the sun? Is it twice as bright? Because I, I can't know. imagine something twice as bright as the sun. It's not. A, it's not. It's, it's way more than twice. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying I can't imagine it's, twice it's as bright. Unfathomably, so it's unfathomably bright. It's very. It's unf the, the, I'll, we'll agree with that. I mean, but that again, it would have not, to be unfathomably bright. Well, but again, we have, you got to realize that astrophysicists map out the stars and have very- That's another thing he says, you got to realize. Realize what? The real lies? Do real eyes realize real lies? I mean, what is he talking about? You got to realize that's like his default catchphrase. Like you got to take on blind faith, isn't this? <laughs> Precise equations where they do very but you, you astrophysicist but i mean i look but at all the stars data. don't move right all the stars relative to each other don't move so they could legitimately make up any number they, they that do, they wanted they right do move. Yeah, they do move no they, they don't move in move. relation to each other so i'm saying you well, could actually do the apparent motion of the stars does move wait wait hold on a second <laughs> apparent motion so well jaredism is saying is here in relation to each other so now Claiming they move without being able to tell that they move, I mean, what, what is that statement worth? Because if they're always in the same spots night after night, despite these, uh, these vast distances, if they're really being traveled, they don't appear to move even if they do. So what is arguing? I mean, again, science is based on observations, not saying, okay, they actually do move, but it's not observable. So therefore, I mean, <laughs> science is all about observation, experimentation, repetition, clear identification of variables and controls. So do, I mean, does Brian not know any of this? This is first grade science. First grade science here. But Parent I, motion? I, I'm skipping over. But right. we, do you recognize that if, if we all got together before anybody got here and we assigned distances and luminosity to the stars, that we could just assign to them. How is it's somebody going to disprove it? Do you, do you guys understand how astrophysicists work? It's a lot. It's like years of careful looking through many observatories. All right. Again, he's stacking reification logical fallacies, hasty generalization logical fallacies, appeal to authority logical fallacies. It's just he's stacking all these fallacies. Do you not realize? Like, do you know how long priests have been going to seminary school? It's not just one guy this year. I mean, there have been priests going to many different seminary schools over many different years where they, they carefully analyzed the Bible. They, they carefully analyzed all these people that spoke to God. They speak to God themselves. I mean, you got to realize, you got to realize it's not just now in this one guy. It's all stacked on top of this history of seminary schools and talking to God in all these religions. Therefore, it must be true. <laughs> I mean, how silly is Ryan here? Again, I just feel bad for this guy.
and they're they off by a hundred yeah. light years. They look close. We're close. We're close. I mean, I'm, it's not that they don't make mistakes. It's just that um, I don't know about that, so I have to look it Trust up. the science. Don't question the science until they tell not you the about, science not is wrong. Not about questioning the science. It's that a lot of things fall in perfect alignment and, and make a lot of sense when you study it. <laughs> I mean, the Bible, it all falls into perfect alignment on how God created the earth and did all these things and all the prophets. It all, when you study the Bible, when you study the Bible, it all makes sense, right? You got to realize, you got to realize there's been a lot of priests going to seminary school for a long time here. <laughs> hey, if I made a model about Superman flying and then I saw a shooting star and I said that Superman flying and the math match, but that means Superman was flying. You guys took like one you guys look for the one flaw and then ignore all the other things that are making excellent predictions. Whoa. Okay. Let's tackle that. That's hilarious psychological projection. So, well, first of all, we got to give him credit because he's admitting that the flaw, he's, he's not hallucinating that there are no flaws, but for whatever reason, he has a blind faith in that there are no other flaws. So he's hallucinating that only the flaws that have been determined to be flaws are the real flaws and nothing else could be a flaw. And he's saying, oh, it all matches up. Everything matches up perfectly and is predicted perfectly. Well, the ancients all predicted perfect eclipses and everything with their flat earth cosmologies and, and, and the world on the back of the tortoise and all that. And they're building pyramids that line up with eclipses. I mean, the predictive power is just amazing. That means it's true, right? <laughs> I mean, how clueless is Brian here? I mean, a lot of these goofs that argue publicly, they're just obsessed with predictions while ignoring the scientific method and controls and the fallibility of humans and logical fallacies. That's the problem here. They're only focused on predictions. If some claimed psychic just happens to predict a bunch of things by guessing and it all turns out to be true and they really think that we're living in some kind of computer program, I mean, maybe we are and maybe they're right. But just accidentally guessing what appears to be true, even if it doesn't really appear to be true, because if you have to take a whole bunch of things on blind faith in order for the predictions to appear to be true, I mean, what does that mean? Again, plenty of the ancients predicted all of these astro uh, astronomical movements and eclipses and all these things perfectly. The Mayan calendar actually needs less adjustment than the modern Gregorian calendar. What does that tell you? <laughs> I mean, we should just default to the Mayan cosmology because their predictions are better, right, Brian? <laughs> you know, and then uh, because excellent prediction doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that who's, we just accept it. Then, what who's the scientist that said or that they, uh, they made in, predictions about the uh, eclipses before that they knew the Earth was round? They knew about eclipses yeah, but back. Your well, model can't even predict eclipses. I mean, what do you mean, they, dude? Have, NASA what are you talking uses about? A geocentric model and the Sarah cycle to this day, they don't have a three body equation. But I, 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 this is the problem. Everyone says predictions, but that's the not geocentric true. Geocentric is still a spherical Earth. But Brian, know. yeah, okay, but it's not moving. Oh, bonus point for Brian there. He was able. Okay. This is interesting. I think Bryant definitely is my favorite guy in terms of non laughing at the goof because he's such a nice guy. But he also has now it's not saying much, but he also has demonstrated the most brain power out of anybody arguing on the globe side. So th this is I mean, you know, it's it's a nice change of pace. It's a nice change of pace because he is making valid points here and there. That's more than we've seen from like the Professor Daves or, or the Anthony Cumia and other, all these Neil deGrasse Tyson, all these other clueless goofs, Joe Rogan, that argue for the globe model that are just basically completely brain dead. At least Bryant has some kind of brain power capability, not in the area of logical fallacies, not even in the area of applying the basic scientific method to this topic, but, but he still has made valid points like that one. Like that one. Geocentrism is obviously not proof of a flat earth. It could be a geocentric globe. Bonus points for Brian here. And so, but the problem is it's not predictions. It's post-diction. Okay? We make observations and then we take the math and we make it work in our model. It doesn't predict things that aren't already known. Wow. Total demolishing by Witsit. I mean, Witsit is really on point. Like I said at the beginning, I mean, Michael Jordan's kind of been sitting on the bench, but now he's in. And I mean, that was just pure decimation. Excellent point by Witsit. It is <laughs> after the fact predictions and then matching reverse engineering whatever model to make it look like the predictions were accurate by reverse engineering all the math. 
takes what is known and then it reverse engineers you guys the have no, You guys have no model. You can't even predict why things fall. So that means. That so now he went to quote qui hasty generalization. He just basically attacked it instead of addressing what Witsit just said, which completely annihilated Bryant's point. He just completely goes to quote qui. No, no, no. You're just doing this. You don't have money. But he didn't address anything that Witsit just said. I mean, this is just sheer destruction. Jordan's putting up 60 points. It must be not true. Well, we, it. Hopefully, no. we'll get to that, and I will show you you're drastically <laughs> wrong about that. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to get to hear what you guys have to say about gravity. That's why I'm hoping we just move on past all the, the reification fallacies and the, you know. Okay. Yeah, we, all, um, we all went to kindergarten. I mean, we know the basic stuff that you believe, you know. <laughs> Easy, Sean. <laughs> Easy. I mean, this is why I wanted to do Pope now. number one. No, Brian, wait, wait, I'm no. just playing. Brian, it's a joke, I know, man. But Brian, like, Brian, like, and by the way, by the way. I can't have a discussion with four people. It's well, we're, we're all making the same. We're... He can't have a discussion with four people? Hasn't he taught? Didn't he keep, keep mentioning how he taught all these classes? Did he not allow discussion in the class? Did no one was nobody allowed to ask questions or anything? They just had to remain silent the entire time. He can't handle a conversation with four people. And I have to say, like these flat earthers here, they're being way more polite than any kind of uh, debate where there's a flat earther on with multiple globe earthers who are usually not polite again and just spam ad hominem logical fallacies and clueless ramblings like so-called Professor Dave and that previous analysis. I mean, not a lot of people are more clueless and rude than that goof. But these flat earthers are being rel pretty respectful. I mean, Hibbler cracked that joke there, but he still did it in a respectful fashion and, you know, without the name calling or the expletive. It could be one person saying all of the same stuff. Is this just a no, little more efficient? I can Go agree ahead. to be quiet. I'm kind of, I've got a toothache going. Go it's not the we'll greatest, be quiet. So I'll be Go quiet. Ahead. Everybody mute. <laughs> <sighs> Go ahead. I, Good, Brian. This is what I feared was going to happen, but anyway. No, the, don't. What are you fearing? We're Wait, he feared people would actually have questions and call him out on his logical fallacy. <laughs> he was expecting them to just take his word on blind faith, <laughs> like his students do at the indoctrination facilities he works at. <laughs> it's funny. We're having a great conversation. Come on. Yeah. You were you were afraid that maybe we'd make some sense. Maybe no, that's it's not it's not making sense. I just can't explain. I mean, I've heard all your. He can't explain. <laughs> he can't explain anything scientifically without defaulting to fallacies. <laughs> Is that a Freudian slip there? Stuff, Dave, and everything I can. You know, it's it's not difficult to. But you're just dismissing outright. everything outright. You're not. I'm not dismissing it outright. I can do. He just did. He just completely igno ignored Witsit's very valid point about post dictions and reverse engineering math complete he didn't even reference it he just completely ignored it and started attacking them for not having a model instead of addressing the main point which completely obliterated the argument that bryant was making the past half hour i've I spent hours doing these calculations and doing experiments and that's kind of sad because with you know he spent all this time without even understanding the basics of the scientific method without even understanding the basic logical fallacies. I mean, that's sad. And I, I genuinely feel bad for the guy because this guy seems like such a nice guy and such a likable guy. I mean, he's definitely my favorite globe earth representative thus far on any of these debates I've looked at. So, you know, Brian, you've got my vote. Okay, so that, I can show to myself that this is not true. Okay, so show back so, the, the image you had before this. You just had the sun above the, the flat okay, earth. Yeah, so Again, but hold on. Go back to the image you had. The, you showed us the sun above the flat Earth. You had arrows drawn to it or lines drawn to it. it said, "Can we?" One yeah, more. I mean, this is, again. I, I know. Again, I, okay, I know but, you guys get this all the time, but I, I've heard your no, but argument. Do you, but do you realize how close the sun and moon would be to the Earth? That is do, ridiculous, right there. That the, the sun and moon, if they're three thousand miles, how, is what? Are they? Are they three thousand miles? No, I'm saying even the, if, they, if were, they were. Right. A lot of people think it's much much closer, and the sky is much closer. If there's much, much closer, then, then we'd be getting hotter going up in altitude. I mean, we, No, we, we because the sun lights up, up the sun altitude. heats up air. It doesn't heat up just because of the, it's the sun. You can get closer to the sun and it's not going to be hotter. <laughs> really? You're going to really say that? But you can get closer to the sun and it's not going to get hotter? Wait, so Brian's never climbed a mountain? So he thinks it's hotter at the top of a mountain than the bottom of a mountain? Really? Oh, man. Come on, Brian. <laughs>
Uh, have you ever been on a mountain at the equator? You think it's sunny and, and right because beautiful the, there? the sun is 93 million miles away, and the reason that it's colder at the uh, high alt altitudes is because there's less atmosphere. That's what I just said. So now it's moving the goalposts and red herrings stacked on top of each other because we just said get closer to the sun. So, <laughs> I mean, sure, you could you could nitpick and and do all this and cherry pick and, and try to invalidate by moving the goalposts, but the original point was close to the sun. So on top of a mountain, you're still closer to the sun. So if he wants to make a more specific argument, he could, but he just made himself look clueless right there. So I just right, said. But I'm saying if you have a local sun, that doesn't make any sense going up an altitude for it to drop in temperature. It does. It, it does the same. What? what? If, you have a, if you have a local sun and you go up an altitude, you should be getting hotter, not colder. Why? It's and the same atmosphere being lit up. It's the same atmosphere being no, warmed it's up. A lot, I know, but 93 million miles away is the, the light comes in more or less parallel not exactly and it's you know it, it's 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 coming in at a much more uniform if you have a local sun you're going to have hot spots right below where it's what's floating and we say hot less spots. dense all right let's agree to move on okay okay like i mean that's presupposing like a lot of aerial circular reasoning logic fallacy straw man because I mean, he, he's again trying to plug in the parameters of the heliocentric globe universe into a possible flat Earth model and plug in the same parameters and use that to prove it wouldn't work, <laughs> which is obviously clueless goofery. Okay, now sunsets. This is one I've seen in your documentaries where you have, and even Dave uses it sometimes, where he has the sunset fade back and disappear. Well, I lived on Siesta Key for seven years, and I actually did sun gazing for a year, and I watched almost every day when it, when it was sunny and I could do so, the sun sink all the way down. I mean, I was staring at it and it really did look like this. It wasn't just vanishing or disappearing or getting smaller. You know, the sun does not get smaller when it sets. It stays the same relative size. And anybody with a good solar camera and a solar filter, um, solar, a solar filter on the camera, can see that the actual size of the sun does not get smaller. And again, and so there's, if you've looked at certain people, they've shown that if you take two tennis balls and you take that camera up away from the tennis balls, then they don't reduce in size when they're away from each other. So no, that, that's, not how, that's not how his perspective works. I'm but sorry. It is how perspective works. So no, it doesn't. Perspective works. You understand the, the equation for perspective to arc tangent of, you know, X over cool. D the distance. Oh, right? that's how it works. Oh, I didn't know the math on it. No, no, but I'm saying that, that, that what that equation is, is showing is that it's basically angular resolution. That's the angular resolution equation. Is that as we see things in the distance, they get smaller towards the vanishing point. But the not things, sun, not things on a ceiling that are far away from you. They would be, they would maintain. You can, we can, we've, I can show you. That, everything. That Let we, me. I have it right here. Oh, thank you. I, you ha, I have, Perfect. I have an example right yes, here. So, I, hold on. Let me just show you. You're already you. shaking. You're already shaking your head. You're, so he's already shaking his head and grabbing his head. Is this somebody engaging in objective, logical, neutral debate? Like he's refusing to hear their rebut. He's refusing to look at the experiments. Is that a man of science or is this a religious individual who's considering this blasphemy and he doesn't even want to look at the blasphemy? This show, you're, already shaking, you're already shaking your head. You're, you're making a claim. But hold on. We're making a claim. Hold on, Brian. You're saying you don't believe it. You let us show you. Brian, I don't let us show you the example. He says then, he has, then, then we'll move on. But I don't understand why he, when you say you have an example, he just shakes his head and he's all upset like, I'm not going to look at anything. Why would well, you be I, like that? Why, why wouldn't just, you look at? Well, let look? us show you what but what he said. Let us show you a physical example, not a calculation, an actual I mean, measurement. He, he's already dismissed it. It's kind of like pointless. What are we? What are well, you going to? I've seen it though. I've seen. And what you've seen? So, what, so now, why are you just said how perspective works? And he's going to about to disprove what you said. So how how I mean, have you seen it? And a, you still are saying a meme the same versus thing. reality is what no, I'm talking this, about. This here. is a camera. This is this is not this is a how meme. your eyes. This is not how your. This eyes is exactly how your eyes would see it. No, your yep. eyes will see that ball getting smaller in the distance. It is smaller in so, the distance. Look, you see the ball in the distance right here. It's smaller because yeah, right. it's farther away. Right. That's okay. how but the, now when, when but when something is already far away from you, so now we're up high. You can flip it over if you're looking up in the sky, and they're. They're both pretty close to the same size. And as it moves, it does it. It's almost the same size. Okay. Well, and, and when you said, and you said, depending on a camera, good solar filter, the sun doesn't change size. Many times it has changed size. We, 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 we show that the sun does change size. So again, this doesn't prove anything. Cause again, we, we have to look at controls, variables, independent, dependent variables, and you'd have to know the distance to the sun 
See, that's the problem here. None of this proves anything. It doesn't prove flat Earth. It doesn't prove globe Earth. It doesn't even definitively prove how perspective works because when you're missing variables, you wouldn't necessarily know what something would look like. I actually go over this in the critical flaw in flat Earth debate podcast for anybody that hasn't looked at that podcast. This is the gist of it. Because reality is whatever it is. Everybody can agree on that that's not completely mentally disabled. It is what it is. It might not even be a flat or globe Earth. It's whatever it is. If it's some kind of weird computer program that's switching back and forth between flat and globe Earth just for kicks to trigger people. If that's what the computer program is, that's what it is. It's whatever it is. Reality is what it is, independent of what random humans believe. So... <laughs> And for some reason, none of these goofs can get that on any side of this debate. I mean, Witsit might be able to understand this. He seems pretty sharp. I don't know if anybody's ever actually uh, asked him what he thinks of that concept. But it is whatever it is. So again, do train tracks touch in the distance? They look like they touch. Doesn't mean they touch, though. So the way perspective would work with an object of an unknown distance away where you do you would not be able to do the math without knowing how far away it was so how bright is it yes you can measure the current brightness but how would you know the difference in brightness whether it was closer or farther if you don't know the current one <laughs> i mean this isn't rocket science these are basics and to identify that there's an unknown variable now if you're claiming it's known again the burden of proof is on positive claims and prove it just randomly defaulting to appeal to authority and religious arguments. Oh, oh, they, they proved it. It's been decades and decades. You got to realize it's been decades and decades. They've studied it. So, you know, for decades and decades, if they thought the world was flat, I mean, they would be using the same argument, right? For decades and decades, they know it's flat. I mean, that's not an argument. <laughs> that's just fallacies. But it's, it's a little different every day, depending on the atmosphere, what's going on and what you're looking at. Yeah, but it not, does clearly change size. It, it changes sizes a little bit throughout the year based on our distance from the sun, but it's not much. Okay, so he just admitted that it does change size. <laughs> Again, these are all different variables. Now, yeah, Brian is a curious one because clearly his brain functions good enough to understand that his argument was false. So now he's kind of, again, moving the goalposts and, and changing definitions, but then claiming it doesn't disprove his original point. I mean, it's really weird. Again, I, I really just feel bad for this guy. It changes over the, over the changes. same day. The Solarium same day. says it changes throughout the day. It actually gets Not smaller and bigger throughout the day. Solarium data does. Depending on what, I mean, the weather conditions and what part of the Earth right. you're on, in my opinion. There might be but. some refraction, but in general, the, the sun stays the same. Good point. There might be some refraction. There might be some of a lot of things. <laughs> and without knowing all of them, you really can't make any kind of conclusions based off of this. I mean, so I don't know how Brian doesn't understand that. I mean, it's quite, quite basic. Size during the whole... It also can magnify at times, too. It's, it's, but, a, it's, it's an optical little, illusion, in my bit, opinion. A little bit. And, and, and Brian... I do it at all. I'm, I'm the same distance. I'm straight over this ball, and the other ball is pretty much the same size. Yeah, but that's not the perspective works. Perspective that, is exactly from, how perspective works. Oh, it isn't. Perspective is from your eyes going out, Dave, not oh. from the top looking down. Well, when when you're looking no, at the sun, is it your eyes going out or is your eyes looking looking up? Same thing as looking down. No, like looking when down, you're looking at the sun, no, if instead, the sun was right in front of you, in literally in front of your face and went away, it would get smaller. But because it's up high, so your sun's this is this would be their sun and it would get smaller, sure. But because it's up high, you don't have that perspective. Picture looking you, that in this that's in the sky. Don't picture yeah. like we're looking down. Flip it up in the air. I'm looking up in the sky. Here's the sun at noon, and here's the sun at sunset. I have a question. Has Brian ever been in a planetarium? Does he not understand how any of that works? Now, again, I'm not claiming that that's what's going on in the universe, but if it is, theoretically, it could work that way, right? Because it works that way in a planetarium. Yeah. It, that's how perspective I, I works. I'm showing you. Helpers, that's not how perspective works. So just basic, flat-out denial. With, I mean, that's what he's been reduced to. Just blatant. Nope, not how it works. He can't disprove any of it. He can. He just, you know, says, oh, well, the math works. Well, even if the math works, again, how many variables are being considered? That's why the scientific method is important. You need controls, dependent, independent variables. I mean, there's so many unknown variables here. How can you make any conclusive claims in either direction? 
but okay, we're, we're looking fine. at it. All right, all right, all right listen. All right. This is it's okay. Okay. Listen, it, listen, guys, guys. This is this is this is okay. We can agree to disagree. Yeah. Everyone makes up their their own mind on how that one worked out. Let's go to the next point. I know, but this is okay. This is perspective. This is how you. This is how perspective works. But okay, we'll just move on. That's not. Hold on, hold on. That's not. I'm not going to let you say that. That's not how perspective works. A this meme, is, no, not at all. Reality. No, it's not. I, a meme. It's a calculation of. This is angular resolution. It's based on this. Accurate. Okay, but nobody ever has seen oh, this, from the side view like this ever. That's not how perspective works. Well, it's not from the side. It's just trying to show you the. This is the equation for calculating how how your angular resolution when an object goes off in the distance. So it's just a fundamental lack of understanding of burden of proof. So again, doing perfect math with unicorns and Superman and flying spaghetti monsters wouldn't prove that they exist even if the math works. I don't, why is, yeah, it's just weird. Brian can't grasp that children's level concept for some reason. It gets smaller. Halves and doubles, it's, it's right? Gonna, it's, uh, this is this is again this is a known perspective. I you know this is how perspective works. When you look at something in the distance, it gets smaller by this relationship. Halves. It's just uh, it's called halves and doubles when they talk about art. And art perspective is halves and doubles. The arctan is not a, yeah, but this is again this is just a it's a pretty well known equation that even okay. like op opticians and optometrists know for for angular resolution. Um, and so when you take this idea, it's just a simple. No, but that's not how we see sun. things. That line that you've drawn I know, there. But, but the sun okay. can never set. And get close. In fact, that's you not have true. to go like a million miles away. From no, 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 no. So imagine that you're in a Brian. Imagine you're in a big room. That's uh, the room that you're in right now. Now, picture that it's five miles wide. Okay, just picture you're in a five mile wide room, like you're in. If that light above your head started to go away from you, would it not connect with the floor very quickly? No. What do you mean? So not, you're going to see not for not on this. No, it's based on. I asked you to take the room that you're in. Imagine that it's five miles okay. wide. Uh, okay. Five miles wide in every direction, and the ceiling is still there. Now, the light that's on the ceiling, if it starts to go away from you, it's going to merge with the floor, hit the floor, and set. And it, okay. it, it'll even get dark where you're at. In your location, okay, it would get dark, and it would light up the other end of the room. Okay, but, but again, I, the, I, the, the ceiling is very close to five so miles So is the away. sky is very close to the earth. Again, I... I, I it wouldn't matter. Even if the ceiling was much higher, the same... I mean, it'd have to go farther, but... It, the same, it would be the same effect. And again, Brian's just grasping at straws here not to uh, give them credit for the example. Now, that doesn't mean that's what's going on outside. Jaronism just asked him as a thought experiment to understand how it would work if it was that. Again, there's an old quote. I don't know if it's attributed to Aristotle or Socrates, whatever. I mean, they might have not even said it, but it is the mark of an educated mind to consider a concept or idea as true without believing in it without believing in it. Nobody's asking Bryant to believe that that's what actual reality is. But just to understand the concept. It's very simple. Giant warehouse. You know, D David Weiss made those points too. Those are good points. Those are good points. That doesn't mean the Earth is flat in any way. But it does mean that it could theoretically work that, like that. Obviously, you'd have to prove it. I, you know, the flat earthers haven't provided any proof that that actually is the flat earth. But they have completely dismantled Bryant here. Just complete annihilation in terms of argumentations and fallacies used. Also, what's interesting, the flat earthers haven't really made too many positive claims either. They're just dismantling Bryant's arguments, which are all based on faith and fallacy. If the, in the brightness, the point is to the brightness of the sun. You're not going to get something as bright as the sun down a hallway. Because if you did, you would see it. Well, again, now he's plugging in the parameters. Like, it's, again, using Bible quotations to prove God. If someone doesn't believe in the Bible, like, why are you using the parameters of a model? It's just, it, again, children's level concepts here. Okay. Because, again, it, it's photons that hit your eyes, not... It's not Ryan. A resolution. Also, he went red herring and moving the goalposts again because he's he he didn't address what they specifically said. He actually, to be fair, he did address those points regarding the Aristophanes uh, sticks and shadows alleged experiment, where obviously it could work either way depending on the variables. He did acknowledge that, but for some for some reason, this was uh, he just I guess his cognitive distance was too extreme here. He's too triggered. Oh. Brian, uh, is it possible that you've never seen my sunset kitchen? It's possible. Vamos a hacer de cenar rapidín, pim, pim. 
these little okay. but I, I have a question for you is it possible you've never seen it i don't know that i've seen this one no. okay so let me it, it's one minute so just watch before you shake your head no so this line here is the path of the sun and i'm viewing it from a celestial point of view and i'm watching oh it's not playing oh now it's yes, playing. playing and and so it's moving along now this here can be mountains it could be cloud deck it could be just the atmospheric deck i never go below it and the sun moves along now i have another camera on the deck on the ground on the other side looking at that same thing and when i look the sun goes down due to perspective and this opaque barrier right here which is now at my eye level what it's really not but it looks like it is the sun looks like it's going below it but it's not it's going straight. And when I look at it really close, look at this line. This is a level line. It's level. But it looks, hold on, I'm not done. It looks like it's going down. Now let's compare it to a real sunset. We're just going to compare. Here's the sun. It went down, 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 down. And now look what's going on. It's going behind this atmospheric deck or mountain ridge okay, or I've whatever. Seen. Okay, now that I can tell you is not the way sunsets work. I have seen countless sunsets on- So CSP what are you saying? That's a fake That's a fake video? It, no, this can be one sunset with a certain atmospheric conditions, but in general, what you get more than often than not is a hard fall. And I, again, I used to what? sun gaze on- so it, uh, But in general, you're gonna get the same effect once it hits another tree line or mountain yeah. range or, but, or artificial no, horizon. Wait, wait, but also you see the oh, space yeah. the space here between, between where that's it's right. setting. Hold on, hold on, just let me make my point and we'll go right back to you. I'm telling you, the space between here and the ground, you can't see it. It looks like it's the same. It's compressed. I'm zoomed in here. And if I zoomed out, this would literally look like it's going behind a hard horizon. But it's just because it, your eye can't see it. You zoom, you zoom in, and this is what you get. No matter how far you zoom, you're going to always get a hard cutoff. With the, with the, right. With yeah. And here's the hard cutoff right here. Here's yeah, the hard cutoff. The if I put if I put a solar filter on, you wouldn't see the difference between this water and this hard thing. You would just see the sun, just like you're seeing it in yours. But that's not fully set. That's it's still it, like it I, is fully set if you zoomed it. out. I know, but I can't see it because you're so small. I mean, well, but I, okay. I I think I've seen this picture before though, and I remember saying to myself, "That's not really going. That's going behind some refractive." But he completely missed the point. Behind whatever, water, mountains, air, he completely missed the point, possibly intentionally. I mean, perhaps now's a good time for that Upton Sinclair quote. It's very difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. But what's weird is that if he were truly at a certain level of intelligence, I mean... This doesn't prove flat Earth in any way. It could still be a globe Earth. This could work on a globe Earth exactly this way. I believe the flat Earthers admitted that at the beginning, right? Where David Weiss was talking about that your maximum distance that you see would be a circle. So on a, on a globe, if it was a globe of whatever, however big, like relatively large, obviously not a tiny little globe, but you know, thousands and thousands of miles if not larger it would obvious it would work this way regardless so it's just interesting that Bryant is just arguing with such religious fervor where he doesn't want to cede any of these points that clearly demonstrate that on a flat or globe earth it would still work this way based on these other variables this is not rocket science so effects are so so look here, here, it looks like the sun's going behind a hard line, but if we zoom in, it's really not even setting. Okay. So here we go. We're going to zoom in. Darren, can you make me big so you can see it? Yeah. Uh, as I zoom in, you look, oh, right. look, it's not even touching the horizon. No, because it hasn't set yet. And, and but, again, but it, but it will set because it's going to go behind this opaque barrier. This opaque barrier is absolutely. thousands of feet above my eye line, but it looks like it's at eye level. This opaque barrier Why are you is shaking thousands of feet. How can that be thousands of feet above your eye line? What do are you mean? these clouds above my eye line? So this is, uh, yeah, this is prime cognitive distance written right over his face. I don't know if his triggering level just vastly increased because at least his subconscious recognized all his arguments were completely obliterated. Again, that doesn't prove the flat earth is true, but 
the reasoning he was using to justify his globe earth belief was absolutely fallacious and he got demolished so now his triggering level has increased so exponentially he's not even going to objectively logically neutrally even try to understand any of these points he's still a nice guy though they don't pick right. as they go into the distance everything know, merges in the clouds if, are all at the you same guys height buy into a flat earth then that's how could it be a thousand it doesn't make any sense so so hold on mm -hmm. a second so so when I when I'm looking down Long Island Sound here, the clouds touch the water 25 miles away. They appeal to incredulity is also a logical fallacy. There, claiming something doesn't make any sense because he can't wrap his mind around it. Obviously, due to cognitive dissonance. I actually think he's smart. Unlike all these other goofs like Professor Dave, Simon Dan, I actually think Brian is smart enough to understand some of these concepts if he wasn't triggered. Literally touched the water. So the curvature in 25 miles is only a few hundred feet. OK, so you're telling me clouds that are at five or ten thousand feet have gone over that much curvature and are actually going behind a curve. Or is it just perspective? I mean, I just well, proved not, that it was just perspective. perspective. No, it's, you didn't prove anything. That's not proof of anything that the, the sun so is, going is it curvature. By. Dave, the reason I'm I talking about the this, clouds. Listen, I told you I lived on Siesta Key for seven years and I did sun gazing for a year. I watch mm. countless sunsets and I'm telling you. So this is an anecdotal logical fallacy because he's using only information from that particular area to try to prove something. Again, depending on atmospheric conditions and all these other things, things appear different in different places. So yes, his experience and his experiments might be valid, but it doesn't prove anything either way anyway, as, we, as David Weiss just proved. So I don't know why he's even arguing or bringing up these anecdotal logical fallacies because, and, and he already admitted that in different atmospheric conditions in different places, the, the size of the sun does change. So he already admitted that himself. Oh, yes, there's some days where refraction, you got clouds going on and all kinds of different things. All kinds of different things. Exactly. <laughs> but almost every time, the sun goes not behind, it goes down below the horizon. That horizon is not a beyond. Feet above. Go ahead. It's not, a, it's not a thousand feet above my head. It's dipping below the horizon. That's impossible on a flat earth. What? It's going That's away from me. He just demonstrated how it's easily possible on a flat earth. That doesn't mean it's happening. It doesn't mean the earth is flat. But you got to give David Weiss credit because he demonstrated clearly exactly how that would happen on a flat earth. It would happen the same way on a flat or globe Earth, on a large globe Earth. So, like, the fact that Bryant can't even recognize how this this is completely useless argumentation, except for educational purposes, and for those that find all of these fallacies funny, for entertainment purposes, in analyzing this debate logically. But if you're really trying to figure out the shape of the Earth, I mean, this is not what should be discussed. No way. What's going no, on? No, it's it's going. It's, it's dipping. It's exactly what would happen if anything in the sky was going away from you. If, well, what, what what do you yeah. think you're supposed to be seeing if a local sun was going away from you? What do you think you'd be seeing? You'd be seeing it. You wouldn't fall below the horizon. It's impossible. For so what would it be? It's going to set way. Dave, before. can you get your can, can you get, get your smaller? Legos out? It's, it's going to get it's going to get smaller and it's going to go. Um, no, 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 no. The, the video. There was no atmosphere. He just said that you can't drop no something below a horizon. You know, if you have a local sun, that's perspective. It should get smaller. I've even seen and it. sometimes it does. It has in some conditions. It has, Brian. That's what we're saying. No, sometimes it, it does, depending on the weather conditions, oh, depending on if, if it's dry, if it's humid. Also, there's the presupposition if the sun is a physical object. If the sun is some kind of hologram or reflection, would it get smaller? Again, that's something Brian fails to realize because he's plugging in the parameters of one particular model and using those to disprove another. All tied in to the circular reasoning logical fallacy. It, everything. Wait, here, here's one where it was dry and humid and the sun should just be dropping below, but it's going away. It's getting smaller. That's it's getting the camera. dimmer. That's the camera. You, if you get the right filters and the right, oh, the right filter, it's always the same size. Any really good photographer that takes pictures of the sun knows it stays relatively, again. Different Are you times. watching Dave's screen or no? I'm seeing it, right, but that's through a camera. That's through, who knows if it's auto exposure or you set to manual. I mean, to really get a true picture of the sun, you got to set to manual because some I know. But wait a second. Regardless of the settings, I mean, obviously it would look different with different settings, but why would it, what's the explanation for why it looks like that? 
just pretending that, oh, okay, those are settings. But yeah, that still wouldn't explain it. Yeah, with different settings, it wouldn't have as much haze or the circle, let's say, would be smaller in the first place, whatever. That doesn't mean it wouldn't be getting even smaller. Or even if it did stay the same size and didn't get smaller, why does it look like it's moving away instead of down like in other videos? Again, because of all these other things and all these other variables, but Brian is just pretending it's just the camera? What? <laughs> I know. Some telescopic, I, I, telescopic cameras will, they, they, they like make things look distorted because that's autofocus is doing stuff like that. I yeah. know you said you saw my son fade out videos. I, know, I have a whole bunch total. of them. You have my app. I have the roll on there. But the sun went down, 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 down. Forget the fade out. It went down, 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 and then it stopped. And it sat not, here. It doesn't stop. It I does. Watched, the, no, no, it's not I going down it. anymore. It's going away. Oh, it's not. I mean, Brian is just denying what he's seeing in the video. Now, why that's happening, that's a completely separate argument. Nothing to do with flat earth or globe earth, but he's just, his, his cognitive distance. I mean, look at his face here. He's just so triggered that he can't even handle the points being presented. I mean, you don't have to concede anything in terms of what that means for the shape of the earth, because again, all these unknown variables, but the cognitive dissonance and the triggering is so extreme that he's refusing to even address what's right in front of his eyes. Not David, I've watched it's, hundreds, oh, it's hundreds. going down? Are you talking to people that don't live on the beach? You must be talking no, to- No, no, but, but no, no, actually, oh. during the filming of this one, I was talking to people it on the beach. Happen. Hold it's on, hold on. I was on the phone with my friends that were at the beach and they saw the sunset from the bottom up 10 minutes earlier. Yeah, I mean, again, there, are, there can be exceptions. Whoa, 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 there can be exceptions? What? <laughs> so, <laughs> See, the thing about science, like if you're claiming something works a particular way, like it either works that way or it doesn't, or there's so many other variables in play that would, con that would cause these exceptions that that's why you can't make these absolute claims when there's this many variables causing this many exceptions. When you, when you have some, no, when you have some type of refractive things going on, there can, but you're never going to, I've seen hundreds of sunsets, Dave, and they fall, they go below the horizon. They don't well, you're out. seeing the same thing a hundred times. You are seeing the same thing. You I just don't understand the power of perspective and the power of the opaqueness, the opaque deck. It's just going beyond it. I know, That's all. Perspective makes things smaller. It doesn't keep them the same size. And they sometimes get smaller, but when you're and looking you out over water, that. water is the thickest. The, the atmosphere, um, the non, what is it? The, the non-uniform transition zone. I probably got that half I, wrong. Go, um, I'll tell you what, Dave, take, take that picture of the fade out and, and pull, go to Siesta Key or some beach and pull a hundred people and ask them, is this what they see every night when they watch? No, they would never see this at Siesta Key because they're on the ground. It's from a Brian. drone, Brian. And this is not over water. And it's and it's below freezing. No one's going to be on the beach because they're going to be freezing. Even if you're high up at an altitude, you're going to still see the sun go down below the horizon. Over the water, yes. Right, but it just doesn't, I mean, that... That, that air, that air column, as you're looking farther and farther, it becomes opaque, period. Well, again, without knowing the height and distance of the sun, how would you know? Again, just these fundamental failures to understand the basics by Brian. It's also right? magnifying. You can't the see sun. through and atmosphere and like and that. Water. It becomes opaque, and when the sun goes beyond it, it just goes beyond it. It just uh, let's just move on. This doesn't. All right, move okay. on. No problem. No problem. Can, can I? Ready to move on. Can I show a video about perspective though, real quick? It's a short one, but I think I, that. No, I don't want to watch any perspective. Videos. All right. <laughs> he doesn't want any of his claims rebutted. He doesn't want an open scientific dialogue where burden of proof is called out. He does not want anything scientific here. Let's, let's go on. Okay, we're but never, we're, people, never, we're never going to get out of this topic if we don't just move on. All right, True. but people see perspective the wrong way, and everybody like when you talk about those guys who did the test and they have the arrows drawn to the sun, then they draw the flat Earth arrow to the sun. They're completely off because that's not how we see. Well, it. another thing I wanted to bring up, and I'm just getting a little kind of uh, steamrolled here, but um, we don't we're not is, steamrolling. Is, you. is that the, one of the points I wanted to bring up? The common common denominators is that we have confirmation that the sun and Polaris and many other things will have the same angular, they have a right relationship between latitude and where you live on a sphere. So we, we see these different angles because of us living on a sphere in different locations.
And it's really just really hard to explain. I mean, you can't really explain on a flat earth that you've got a different angle of sun and sunrise and sun, and the way that sun pass traject is based on us being on a spherical earth. That's based on perspective. That's not perspective. Why? Well, I wanted to that? show you a video. I wanted no, to show you, you a video, but you won't up, look. You look up at, no, it's real simple. But you can look up at high noon and you can see the. the but that's not how we see things. If you, you need to watch a video where if, if you stand next to like a, 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 a gymnasium, um, the bleachers, okay, you can see how perspective actually works. I, I don't even, yeah, this is. The globe model claims we never see the actual position of the sun. It's like, no, it's not, but I'm going to show you. I mean, this right here is what I was going to show you. Like, this is how we see. When you watch this video, you can see that it's I, I, not, this is how the sun sets from different locations. Everything converges to the same point. You're talking okay. about perspective, not like how, we can draw lines this way. That's not how perspective, that's exactly how perspective works. All right, listen, Darren, we're going to have to let it go because I showed him perspective with the actual physical thing. He says that's not how perspective All works. Right. We agree to move on. Okay, these are go. little models you're doing. This is not, you know, these little models you can do. I've seen tricks with aperture. You know, like the camera when you open up the wide angle. Do you, do you, you have any models? Oh, you're showing memes, bro. Like, what? So he's basically just poking holes through actual scientific experiments that David Weiss has done. Now, I'm not claiming those experiments prove anything. I don't, I don't see how they prove a flat earth in any way. Uh, but they clearly prove how a theoretical object would be, would look even on a flat plane. In this example, that's why it, it seems like it would just work the same way on a large globe or a flat Earth. So it doesn't prove anything either way, but it does disprove some of Brian's uh, notions that the math equations supersede visible, observable reality in the scientific method and actual experimentation. Which is sad if Brian is claiming to be a man of science instead of a man of scientism. You're I'm showing not, memes and calculations. We're showing you calculations and, and physical I, I things. Know, but these are based on things that you can see in the real world. I've seen sunset. <laughs> Another dodge. I mean, the, the immaturity here displayed by Bryant, because he's also, I think one of the biggest issues here is Bryant is too clueless to realize that just because something looks a certain way in David's experiment or whatever, that doesn't prove the earth is flat. Like he's behaving like a spoiled child who doesn't get to play with his toy. So he's just denying anything and everything across the board, except for like two or three things this entire time that he did have the mental capacity to concede. But in general, he's just jumping to no, 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 can't be that. Oh, that's because of this. Oh, that's because of refraction. Oh, that must be the camera. It must be some kind of aperture setting because that's the only explanation. <laughs> so we got so many false cause logical fallacies. And here... He's trying to defend his diagrams and calculations, which, again, the calculations might all be true. He might be some kind of math genius where he calculated everything perfectly. I haven't even seen the Flat Earthers dispute that. In fact, Witsit, like myself, has admitted that even if the math works perfectly, which it might, I don't think anybody has found an error in Brian's math. I mean, I actually haven't tried to because it doesn't even, like, let's give him that bone because let's say it's perfect because for the purpose of this analysis, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if one plus one unicorns is two unicorns. It doesn't matter if the math was absolutely flawless. 10 times 10 unicorns is 100 unicorns. You could do all the math perfectly. It still doesn't prove it. And this alleged man of science, again, is only preaching scientism. You could tell that any kind of contradiction to his blind faith indoctrination, it's like blasphemy to his ears. He doesn't even want to look at any actual experiment showing some kind of a concept in perspective. He doesn't even seem to actually know the definition of perspective. Like earlier, he hallucinated that you can only, perspective only applies in certain situations. Like, for whatever reason, something wouldn't be classified under the category of perspective if you're looking down at it or at an angle. Obviously, anything to do with looking at objects in space at different angles, that's all under the umbrella of perspective. But he was so triggered. And this is all such blasphemy to his religious ears, his religious scientism ears, that he can't even... Take a moment, like he immediately always starts shaking his head and denying right away. He immediately goes to false cause or just outright denial. <laughs> All logical fallacies, of course. Now he's saying that his graphs or 
whatever he's got up here is representative of real things, which maybe they are. But again, deny instead of actually addressing the experiments and videos that are actually real in terms of actually taking place in reality as opposed to drawn and using math, which may or may not represent reality as I keep having this uh, Nikola Tesla quote up here. Today's science have substituted mathematics for experiments and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. And this may or may not have even been said by, by Nikola Tesla. Many people have different theories on that, but that's besides the point. I mean, if you're being scientific, logical, neutral, and objective, you're going to examine arguments based on their own merit. And the concept of that quote is what's important, not even who said it. But if indeed Tesla did say it, I mean, I don't think anybody would be surprised about that. So Bryant here is the living embodiment of that quote because he's so obsessed with his equations and whether or not the equations are accurate. And his only defense is, oh, oh, well, it was decades and decades of astronomers did this. Do you not understand astronomers? <laughs> Like, do you not understand priests going over the Bible for decades and decades? That must mean it's true because they went over it for decades. If you're doing real science and you have experiments that adhere to the scientific method, you can come to certain conclusions if all the variables are accounted for and you have controls and you're actually scientific. You can come to, to relatively sound conclusions in 10 minutes if you have the technology, of course, the technology, the manpower, everything you need. If you have all of that, whether it's 10 minutes or 10 decades, Either something adheres to the scientific method and it can be observed, demonstrated, and repeated, or it can't. But this goof is so obsessed with his equations and predictions, or more accurately, post-dictions, as Witsit uh, astutely pointed out. He's so obsessed with it, and then all he does is default to the two quo qui logical fallacy where, like, oh, you guys don't even have a model. You guys don't even have a model. You guys can't even explain eclipses. I mean, of course they can explain it. Whether the explanation is true, that's a completely separate topic. But the goof has to pretend and hallucinate that there aren't any kinds of explanation. Clearly the flat earthers here have come up with many, many explanations, including scientific experiments. Again, I'm not claiming those experiments actually do adhere to the scientific method, but you can easily grasp the concept of the videos David is presenting. And it's really not rocket science. Things look different in different conditions. I mean, this is really the point here. And Brian is so triggered. He he actually sort of conceded the point where he says, oh, well, there could be exceptions while simultaneously arguing always this or never this. That's how silly this guy is. And again, I feel bad even analyzing to this extent because I have to be so critical of his flat out goofery because he seems like such a nice guy, but clearly he's so religious and triggered. I mean, he's literally shaking his head None are so blind than those who will not see. He does not want to have an open, logical, scientific discussion of any kind. And he's triggered that these people would even question the religious dogma he's preaching. Again, it might be true. All of the religious dogma of scientism that Bryant is preaching, it might all be true. But again, if you're being scientific and non-religious, you must demonstrate that, not expect everybody to just take it on blind faith as gospel, which look how, look how annoyed Brian is that they're not taking it on blind faith as gospel. Look how annoyed he is when they demand that he adhere to the scientific method. <laughs> I, mean, th I mean, this is so crazy because this is downright hilarious on one hand and downright sad and pathetic on the other hand. It's a, it's a paradoxical analysis is what we have here, but let's continue. That's not, I know that they- We've all they seen sunsets. Yes. And you, that's the other thing that's just beyond silly. I know I keep stopping this every two seconds, but I have to, because Brian's level of goofery is so off the charts. He rebuts points with, oh, well, I used to live in Florida. I, I watched the sunset, so I know how it works. I mean, not only is this an anecdotal logical fallacy, but it's just flat out denial and dodging of the points they're bringing forth. Explain what they are putting up there. If he, he's hallucinating to know that the camera was set on autofocus or auto exposure, how does he know that? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but the definitive nature in which he hallucinates and brings that forward as if it's definitive. 
or as if it's aperture or whatever it is. And then, but he also does have the modicum of basic logic to say, oh, well, in different conditions, it could look different. There could be exceptions. Or he's pretending that uh, David wasn't talking to people who live on the beach as if that has anything to do with analyzing the video right in front of his face. <laughs> what difference does it make who David Ice was on the phone with? I mean, yeah, that's part of it because he was saying they said it already set, whatever. We have to take his word for it uh, unless it's verified. So, again, I'm not saying anybody should take David Weiss's word for anything, but why not just look at the video and say, oh, okay, well, in certain conditions it could look like that, therefore everything Brian just said is false regarding his absolute statements of it always does this or it never does this or somehow on a flat plane it could never do that because how would he know? <laughs> I mean, you can build the model in 3D software and it does do that. Obviously, that doesn't mean it would do that in real life because, again, there's always unknown variables. This isn't rocket science, but again, Bryant is so silly. He can't even grasp these basic concepts and he keeps, like, his two things are like, oh, yeah, I've heard you say that. Like, that's not a rebuttal. Like, it's weird. When David makes a point, it's like, oh, yeah, I've heard you say that. Well, are you going to actually address the point or are you just going to say, oh, I've heard you say that? That makes him look even dumber because if it's true that he heard him say that, you would think he would prepare some kind of rebuttal or be able to address the points in any way other than just saying, oh, yeah, I've heard you say that or just flat out denial. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't. I've seen a sunset. I used to live on the beach. <laughs> Why don't you actually address the points? I mean, Brian has not brought forth anything anything scientific this entire time it's really really sad we've also heard people say they see the, the curve from a plane but they don't, most they don't. sunsets don't shrink i, I agree i most agree with sunsets that too. do not shrink in size especially because most sunsets are like to be viewed over lakes and water we can agree on that most yes. sunsets we like to watch over water so it's magnifying there's a lot of factors involved so yep. we can agree to disagree maybe you just don't understand where we're coming from here man no, I that's all basically so he says, I do understand while proving with every statement he makes that he doesn't understand because 99% of the time he's arguing against points not even presented. Like David Weiss or Jaronism. Jaronism is actually kind of funny. I, didn't, I don't even know who this guy is. But like it, the other thing that's kind of sad is Brian is just being absolutely obliterated by these three young guys and David Weiss. I don't know how old David Weiss is, but whatever. He was a working professional, I think. What was it? The solar panel industry or something? He was some kind of working professional for many years. Uh, I guess it wouldn't be that embarrassing to be obliterated by an older guy. But these three young guys, I don't know how old Jaronism is either. He looks kind of young. And then Whitsitt and Hibbler definitely look really young. And they're absolutely demolishing this guy, this much, this professor, this guy with all of these degrees from indoctrination facilities. And again... Like the Upton Sinclair quote, which I threw up earlier too, it's very difficult to get a man to understand something which his paycheck depends on him not understanding or his salary depends on him not understanding. Like what Bryant is just getting so obliterated by these, uh, by these youngins and it's just flat out embarrassing and that's why he's stuttering and flustering all over the place and all he can come up with, oh, I've heard you say that. All right, -uh, no, it isn't. It doesn't work that way while being unable to actually address any points or explain it. He flat out even admitted it's hard to explain <laughs> or let's just move on. <laughs> That's all he has. Like he's this utterly poorly prepared while at the beginning he also claimed to be very familiar with the arguments. He claimed to be very familiar with the arguments. Where is that familiarity other than saying I've heard you say that? It comes down to either the sun's moving away from you on a flat stationary earth or we're falling backwards 700 miles an hour in the United States or a thousand at the equator. And it makes the sun look like it's moving. So we'll agree to disagree. I don't think I'm falling backwards during the sunset. I know you're not. not. Falling backwards. It's, so that's, that's, we'll get to that in high speeds and slow rotations. But, um... And the other thing is, is we'll get to that. So instead of actually addressing it, because if, if he has a good understanding of it, how can he not be able to make like a quick summary? Nobody's asking him to do a five hour lecture on every single variable. Just a general explanation of how it would or wouldn't work either on a globe or on a flat plane. That's all they're asking and he can't even bring, and he can't even do that. Again, that doesn't make him not a nice guy. He seems like a very nice guy, but he just can't do anything. He's just so mentally incapable of just putting up any kind of logical defense. Like they're asking questions, very legitimate scientific questions, and he's got nothing. He's got nothing. And what's crazy is this probably is actually the best defense of the globe, the heliocentric globe model that's been made publicly. 
And that's that's really sad because this is the I mean this is light years ahead of anything that uh, that Professor Dave Goof or that Cy Man Dan Goof anything they put forward because they just put forward like kindergarten insults and total incomprehension. Bryant does seem to be somewhat arguing in good faith. He's just too triggered because he's too religious. They're blaspheming against his scientism, and since he doesn't even, part of the religion of scientism is not understanding the difference between real science and the religion of scientism. And that fundamental lack of understanding is, is actually why we're seeing all of this. <laughs> let's, let's, just, let's just move on to gravity, because I don't think this is, Yay. you're just going to use the same perspective arguments for... <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to use the same, oh, look, here's a video. This is what it looks like, what humans see, which doesn't match the equation that he's claiming represents reality, which even if the equation is accurate, if it doesn't take into account other variables, then it doesn't accurately represent reality. So he's just... <laughs> He thinks it's a detriment, like he thinks it's a problem to be scientifically skeptical and to demand burden of proof from him because he's making all these claims and he can't back any of them up other than the equations which ignore many other variables. It's oh, not oh, an wait, argument, I, I, it's reality. We're not giving you anything that's not... Memes. We're you're not... Using so, your, whatever, I've bro. seen some of your perspective like videos and it's it's not... Which video? It's not based on reality. Well, so all he can say is it's not based on reality, but here's the thing. How is it not based on reality? Like, you actually do see that outside. Obviously, it has nothing to do with the shape of the earth. Again, I have to reiterate that because there's so many triggered goofs that think I'm actually arguing for flat earth. There's even a couple of triggered flat earthers who think I'm arguing for globe earth. And then there's a whole bunch of clueless goofs in the middle that are just <laughs> outraged that this topic is even being discussed, that anybody even wants to look at this topic with logic and reason at the forefront, which is actually, I mean, flat earth is actually one of the best topics I have found for that. So it's just very, very educational across the board. But that's it, that, That's really the issue here. He actually can't explain anything. All he has is denial. It doesn't represent reality. No, it doesn't. That's not what it is. And he also refuses to look at the evidence they want to present. He wouldn't even look at a, at a one or two minute video from Jer that Jeremyism wanted to present. So he's claiming to have, to want to have this scientific discussion, but he's very, very he's being very religious and closed-minded, where he can only regurgitate approved information from his approved scientism religious text. Which again, even if true, there's also there's always other variables. They might have questions about other variables. So if he's that ignorant of the topic in general, why is he even here? Um, There's nothing that we're showing that's I think, not I think based the ones on reality. I was watching were Nathan, Nathan Oakley. I was watching some of his well, videos. On well, we, we haven't been watching him. What does that have to do with what they're saying? He was watching some other videos. Like, what does that have anything to do with the points they're presenting and what's on the screen right now that they wanted to present? Or him not wanting to even watch a two or three minute video? Like, they're willing to go through all of these diagrams and videos that Brian is presenting for hours on end. He wasn't willing to give Jaronism two or three minutes or even less. I don't know how long that video is. He said it was really short. He wasn't even willing to do that. And he was also protesting as David threw up the video, but then they just kind of threw it up anyway, it was a very short video, that he had no rebuttal for. All he could claim was like, no, 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 that's not true. That's all he had. Like a little five-year-old, you know, having a Batman versus Superman. Or, no, 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 Batman's better. No, no, Superman better. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's all he had. This is really sad here. And again, it pains me to have to do this because Bryant seems like such a nice guy. So. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, um, I, I've seen, the problem is I've seen like different flat earth believers have different views on what perspective is, where... Okay, but why not address what they specifically said? <laughs> he's, always, <laughs> he's always engaging in these red herrings and straw men and obfuscation. Now, I don't know if he's doing... I actually don't think he's doing it intentionally. Just my opinion here. Again, I don't know this guy. Where you, like, Goofs like Professor Dave and Simon Dan, they're so disingenuous and intellectually dishonest as well as possibly mentally disabled. But they're both. They might be both. Whereas Bryant, he, I don't think he realizes how illogical and goofy he is because I think he might actually have a problem. If he watched this video, I mean, I hope I don't make him cry, but he's being so anti-science here. And... 
anti-logic. All he's doing is trying to shut down all logic and reason to maintain some kind of establishment dogma, which even him, like, Whitsit, I don't know, maybe he didn't do it yet. I've, I've been watching a few different analyses, uh, debates here to analyze for analyses. He might have not brought it up here yet, but w Bryant is also, I don't even know if Bryant would claim that he knows 100% of the so-called establishment approved physics and science or whatever. So there's certain things that he's not taking into account and he just flat out denies that some of these variables could be the reason for it. Again, false cause logical fallacy, false dichotomy logical fallacy. He needs to brush up on these children's level fallacies, otherwise he's just gonna keep humiliating himself here. And, and it's kind of sad, like it's really not as funny as it is sad. Like, you know, with these other goofs, like Professor Dave and Simon Dan, it, their clueless goofery is actually kind of hilarious when they humiliate themselves. But this guy's a nice guy. This isn't that humorous to me. Uh, some of the actual points being made or lack thereof, that's humorous. But on a personal level, you know, it's not that humorous because he seems like a really nice guy and just genuinely clueless about all of these aspects. In general, like an ophthalmologist or an optician kind of it's like there's what there's just one simple type of way to see perspective it's not simple that. and again that's a false dichotomy hasty generalization and appeal to authority rolled into one again this brings me no pleasure to point out these gigantic stacks of logical fallacies that brian is hallucinating somehow make legitimate or scientific points which they obviously do not and he it's just these constant appeals oh well i'm not of this i'm not of that oh well these are these ex so-called experts whatever they research it they do it you got to just put blind faith in it instead of actually breaking down the actual science and how it works the way it works. I mean, now would be a really good time. I'm bringing out Feynman because it's time. So this is a quote from Richard Feynman. Learn from science that you must doubt the experts. As a matter of fact, I can also define science another way. Science is the belief in the ignorance of experts. When someone says science teaches such and such, he is using the word incorrectly. Science doesn't teach it. Experience teaches it. If they say to you science has shown such and such, you might ask, how does science show it? How did the scientists find out? How, what, where? Not science has shown, but this experiment, this effect has shown. And you have as much right as anyone else upon hearing the experiments, but we must listen to all the evidence to judge whether a reasonable conclusion has been arrived at. And Bryant Myers represents everything that is the opposite of this. He has as anti-science as possible, because all he does all he does is demonstrate that everybody and just point to and call and clamor for everyone to put their blind faith in the experts, the optometrists, the astrophysicists, all of these experts. He's like, I'm not of this, I'm not of that, but they are, and they've been doing it for decades. And then also he, not only, not only does he not think they have as much right as anybody else about hearing the evidence to judge whether a reusable conclusion has been arrived at, whether something logical, reasonable, adhering to the scientific method, whether the conclusion is valid or not, he doesn't think so at all. He thinks there's some kind of exclusive club of only these experts, these scientists and priests, only they can talk to God and know the real truth. And then also, we must listen to all the evidence. All he does is shake his head and refuse to look at all these experiments and videos and evidence. Whereas the flat earthers here are being, even if they're wrong about the shape of the earth, they're being so much more scientific than this alleged man of science. I mean, it really is a sight to behold, these flat earth debates with these goofs that are claiming to be on the side of science, claiming to be for the utilization of science, when everything they're doing and saying is demonstrating the complete opposite. Bryant Myers is here is being as anti-science as possible while pretending and hallucinating that he's actually being on the side of science. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, people. Continuing on even further on Feynman, this Nobel Prize winner in physics, he also stated this. I mean, this is a little, most people just refer to the earlier quote that I just read, but here's even more. 
Quote, science alone of all the subjects contains within itself the lesson of the danger of belief in the infallibility of the greatest teachers in the preceding generation. When someone says science teaches such and such, he is using the word incorrectly. Uh, here's the full, this is the full quote. Science doesn't teach anything. Experience teaches it. If they say to you, science has shown such and such, you might ask, how does science show it? How do the scientists find out? How, what, where? It should not be science has shown, but this experiment, this effect has shown. And notice also how Bryant Myers was unable to point to any of that regarding distances of the sun, of any of the stars. He just hallucinated and pretended that everybody should just take it on blind faith. He hasn't presented which experiment, how, what, why, where, everything that's actually real in science and the opposite of, of religion, Brian has not provided here. It should not be science has shown, this experiment, this effect has shown, and you have as much right as anyone else upon hearing the experiments, but be patient and listen to all the evidence to judge whether a sensible conclusion has been arrived at. The experts who are leading you may be wrong. I think we live in an unscientific age in which almost all the buffeting of communication and television words, books, and so on are unscientific. As a result, there is a considerable amount of intellectual tyranny in the name of science. Science alone of all the subjects contains within itself the lesson of the danger of belief in the infallibility of the infallibility of the greatest teachers of the preceding generation. And if anyone needs to heed these words more than Bryant Myers, I don't know. <laughs> and for anyone doubting that Feynman has said this, the source here is what is science. This was presented at the 15th annual meeting of the National Science Teachers Association in New York City in 1966, also published in the Physics Teacher, Volume 7, Issue 6, 1969, page 313 to 320. And unfortunately, Feynman's words were not heeded, as we find ourselves in a generation where logic and reason are quickly going extinct, which is actually the reason the Mind Shock podcast exists in the first place. All right, so we're actually going to end it there for this first part because this is all quite dense. Uh, there's so much more to cover here in this just extreme goofery, nonstop usage of logical fallacies and fundamental lack of understanding of the scientific method. So, yeah, hope you guys found this interesting and entertaining. Stay tuned for part two. I'll be finishing this up there. If you enjoyed the podcast, find it interesting and informative, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. You can also become a YouTube member right here on YouTube for access to exclusive streams and chats. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, like and share, spread the use of logic and reason out there on the interwebs, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Patrons do get priority for case topic, logical analysis, cool podcast requests. You can also be a guest in the podcast depending on your tier. Questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunks of any kind, leave them in the comment section. This is Bruce McGuire signing off. Catch you guys next time.
If you like audiobooks or audio shows, check out a free trial of Audible. Just click the link in the description. Welcome back to Mind Shock. This is your host, Bruce McGuire. This is part two of Bryant Myers vs. the Flat Earthers. Jaronism, the one and only Austin Whitsitt, Flat Earth Dave, and Hibbler. And in part one... Brian Myers, of course, racked up quite a bit of fallacies. And his mental breakdown seems to be onsetting here. His cognitive dissonance off the charts. His lack of knowledge of even basic children's level logical fallacies and the scientific method itself on full display here. I'm embarrassed for the poor guy. 
but we have to finish this. Let's see what else he can bring to the table. If anything, as always, we do have the Logical Fallacy counter, and there is also a Zingers counter for added hilarity. I'm really rooting for Bryant Myers to at least get a couple of Zingers in against these Flat Earthers that are just decimating him. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I mean, it's just sad here. Sad or funny, depending on how you want to look at it. As always, if you find the podcast interesting and informative, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. Help support the Mind Shock channel. Help us get more mind shocking content out there. Logical analyses, critical thinking, deductive reasoning, all going extinct. And we, of course, are trying to promote them in every single topic out there, whether it's conspiracy, flat earth, true crime, the paranormal, anything and everything. That's the brilliance of logic itself, the foundation of knowledge and validity, what is valid, what is not valid. You could also check us out, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Patrons do get priority for case topic, logical analysis, co-podcast requests. You could also be a, a guest in the podcast, depending on your tier. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that bell for notifications. If you're not getting the notifications, just comment more on the videos. Apparently, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. And you could also be a YouTube member right here on YouTube for access to exclusive streams and chats. Comments, questions, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunkings of any kind. Leave them in the comment section so let's pick up right where we left off and i think we're about to get to gravity but all right listen let's go well so we, you have a lot of points to get through okay I, I, wanted to, well, I, I wanted to go through the one that professor dave didn't answer which okay. was how you you like to <laughs> Ah, that was kind of funny. <laughs> did Professor, did so-called Professor Dave manage to address a single point or make a non-fallacious point? If you haven't checked out Flat Earth Dave versus so-called Professor Dave, I mean, this is one of the greatest decimations in the history of debate. And uh, yeah, it's it's either extremely sad or extremely hilarious, depending on your viewpoint. <clears throat> And you were talking about how the seasons where it should be arctically cold because because the earth you know in the morning it's the, the angle coming in is going to just be skimming the earth right but, so did you get an answer to that or do you still buy that you should be arctically cold because it, of the it, angle i shouldn't be able to feel the heat the same way i can um in the summer okay but you do know that the atmosphere stores energy right and that the ground heats up and stores energy so in the summertime, what happens is that this whole latitude that's getting, or down here, that's getting more, more heat is actually the whole band is heating up the earth, like all 20, you know, it's going around and every day it's getting heated up and the ground and the atmosphere contain and hold that it's called specific heat. And it's the reason why you are, you're always going to be warmer near a body of water than on land. That's why deserts get hot. Wait, what? You're going to be warmer next to a body of water? Has this guy never been to the beach in the winter? I mean, it is freezing on the beach. A lot more than inland in, like, the forest. <laughs> I mean, it is freezing at the beach in the winter. But, okay, so this is just, I mean, this is just insanity. So false cause, logic, fallacy. He hasn't demonstrated how all of this is the cause that he's, deter that he's claiming it is. So again, I'm not calling him wrong or anything to all the Dunning-Kruger goofs getting triggered in the comments already. <laughs> I can feel them coming. <laughs> no shortage of Dunning-Kruger goofs that, for whatever reason, circulate around these Flat Earth videos proving that they don't understand anything. I'm not, obviously, I'm not even claiming the Earth is flat or a globe in any way. This is just analyzing the debate and which points are fallacious and which are not. For whatever reason, just merely addressing logic... <laughs> triggers a lot of goofs. Obviously, their subconscious is picking up on something. So, all right. He's making a claim here. So whatever happened to the scientific method? What happened to clearly determining the dependent variable, the independent variable, the utilization of controls, and therefore structuring an experiment that clearly demonstrates the variable in question which he's claiming is responsible for what he is claiming? This is called science. What he's doing is just preaching religion cold really like wild swings where live on hawaii you got the same temperature almost all year round it's because the specific heat of the water holds that energy and the atmosphere holds that energy too well what, what does that really have to do with anything because no i don't know if anybody's disputing that is anybody disputing that but 
if the, the the question here is if the sun is this powerful, I mean, that was always the question. It wasn't about the storage of I mean, this is, again, why the scientific method is so important and clearly determining dependent and independent variables. Because if you're sitting by a campfire, it doesn't take a genius to realize the further you go from the campfire, from the source, the heat, from the source of the heat, the colder it will be. So scrambling and doing all these mental gymnastics to try, even if you're correct, you have to demonstrate how you're correct. You can't do all these mental gymnastics and expect everybody to take it on faith while preaching nothing but faith and fallacy. That's the problem with, of course, this in entire conversation. And not only that, but I don't think, is, does Bryant have the mental capacity to even understand this? Because I brought up the possibility that he's uh, he's some kind of idiot savant, where he's just like a math genius, but he misses even children's level basics when it comes to logic, even basic English comprehension and things of that nature. So the reason why, and you're right, when it's colder in the morning, you know it's colder in the morning, because the sun, you know, the sun's been gone for a while, but but the atmosphere is still holding a lot of that energy. So it's not going to be arctically cold when you wake up because the ground and the atmosphere are still retaining a lot of that heat from the daytime. I mean, does that make sense? That well, I, I, I do agree that the ground maintain, you know, keeps um, radiating heat and it stores it and it releases it uh, uh, overnight. Yeah. But um, when I'm looking at the sun in June, yeah. I could, uh, the, the, I, the heat, the heat's strong and, and I'll get a tan, you know, yeah, yeah you can get a, you can get, a, you can still get UV rays in the winter and burn, get burnt, but it, you don't feel the heat. It's, it's like far and it's closer, but you say that that percentage doesn't matter at noon, <laughs> at noon in December. Why would the percentage not matter if it's that powerful? And then also he's, of course, stacking the fallacies, circular reasoning fallacies, because he hasn't proven how far the sun is. I mean, he's this ignorant of the history of physics. He thinks that the sun has been approximated to be where it is. Obviously, there have been drastic changes to the tens of millions of miles. And this goof is just this clueless, this utterly clueless about the history of the sun's distance being determined. I look at the sun and it barely has any heat. Okay. But at dawn in the summer, when the sun's farther, I, I can feel the heat. Yeah. It makes no sense. But uh, now again, that, listen, you, you have to go to jump to big hurdles to say, well, it's because of the earth and the, the atmosphere is holding, holding, uh, you it's know, not, you radiant heat and stuff, but it, it can't be that big of a swing. Here's the thing though, on a flat earth, the idea of a lo local sun moving back and forth, that works out perfectly. We could actually test that. We can actually oh, test it. But this is, this, is sci this is science too. I mean, this is science too. So he has no, re he's not even interested in hearing Professor Dave's experiment. Like what if he has a legitimate, I'm not saying it is legitimate, but what if he does? Brian is such a zealot who's thoroughly indoctrinated into religion, he doesn't want to hear the blasphemy. He immediately goes to, well, this is science too. Well, it, okay. It's almost like a no true Scotsman fallacy layered up on all the other fallacies because, yes, you can scientifically prove that the, uh, the ground can trap heat and energy and all of these things. Yeah, obviously. But to hallucinate, that he can determine which factors are clearly responsible for what. So clearly, because if he really could do that, why didn't he present the evidence? That it could account for this level of distance at this power of the sun, where it's clearly against not only experience, but basic common sense. Again, the campfire. The farther you go from the campfire, the colder it gets. It's not rocket science. And if, if, if Brian, again, I'm not even saying Brian's wrong here. If this can account for it, but he can't explain how it account for this much power of the sun. I mean, his uh, one of his priests, Einstein, once said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. So clearly Bryant would be the wrong guy to discuss this because clearly he doesn't understand it. If his only rebuttal is, this is science too. <laughs> I mean, that must, have been, that must have been the most pathetic rebuttal thus far. This is science too. That's all he has. Again, the specific heat equation well shows that land. It gives you a, a way to measure and quantify how land and atmosphere hold on to heat energy. But that's not what's being discussed here. So this is almost like 
I mean, not only is this a red herring logical fallacy, I mean, it, 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 this stack of fallacies here, I have to say, Bryant might be the new champion. Because even though profess, so-called Professor Dave, I mean, his ad hom spamming is legendary. He commits more ad homs in the quickest amount of time. But Bryant is really diverse with his fallacies. I mean, he's coming out with all sorts of different fallacies, stacking them on top of each other and regurgitating them with religious fervor. His religious fervor is evident throughout this entire so-called discussion, whatever you want to call it. So this kind of red herring where, yeah, you could scientifically measure the, this energy strap. What does that have anything to do with Professor Dave talking about the, dist the alleged distance from the sun? <laughs> I mean, where's the relevancy? <laughs> I mean, sure, you could say it's tangentially related just because there's some storage of heat, so that could account for X percent. But obviously, again, the campfire example, let's dumb it down as, as much as possible. I mean, you'd have to really be able to come up with some some really, because even if, even if the ground and the atmosphere can store tons and tons and tons of energy, why would it magically not be storing that energy at different times of the year Related to the distance of the sun, because the sun's even closer, so then you get even more heat from the sun, plus all of this stored energy. How is this stored energy magically not manifesting in higher temperatures at closer distances to the sun? Like, what is this goof smoking? Again, nobody deb nobody's debating that the atmosphere and the ground and, and the earth store some energy and heat and release. Nobody's debating that. But why does it magically not do that? in relation to the distance to the sun when it's farther versus closer to account for the temperature, which it clearly doesn't, not to mention the sun is this powerful. I mean, even turning your back to the sun, you could it's just like a campfire. I mean, it's so powerful. So at this alleged distance, it doesn't really add up unless you want to add in, you know, more laws of physics, which again... I'm not saying there aren't. I actually believe there are further laws of physics, undiscovered laws of physics that could account for that. That's not a claim. I'm just theorizing right now. I'm not using that to purport any kind of argument that the Earth is a globe or not a globe or whatever. But there, there are other factors, and they can be introduced. But everything Bryant is religiously preaching here, it doesn't hold up because it has nothing to do with David's point. And does Bryant not get that? Because it really seems like he's genuine. It really seems like he might have some kind of mental disability because it doesn't appear that he's actually trying to deceive. Maybe he is. Again, I don't know the guy. He seems like a nice guy. I could be completely wrong about that. He might be some kind of evil, maniacal genius who just plays dumb so well. And then again, he keeps going to his math equations, to his unicorn equations. The math might all add up. Again, nobody's dispute. Like, like let's give it. Let's give him all the math. Let's say it's all perfect. What does that have to do with with reality? <laughs> and if you, you can, again, it, it makes perfect predictions. And then, by the way, the, I did the calculations on the ninety-one versus ninety-four million. You know, the different perfect predictions. Again, these are post predictions, not prediction as Witsit uh, brilliantly, brilliantly addressed in uh, part one. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out. Uh, Austin Witsit, actually, he hasn't really unleashed. He's like Michael Jordan, and he's, he's kind of been on the bench for, for most of this. He's come out for a couple of plays. But I'm still waiting for him to just pounce and annihilate. Because, again, Austin Witsit, if you're a fan of debate, this has nothing to do with Flat Earth. Watching Austin Witsit debate is like watching Michael Jordan in his prime. I mean, it's just... It's, it's a sight to behold and be here, and uh, we will hopefully hear a lot more from him. But again, let's continue here with uh, Bryant and his uh, perfect predictions. <laughs> you know, the difference of three million miles in the Earth's sun's trajectory, it turns out if you actually look at the perfect, it's all based on the perpendicular angle that the sun's coming in. So when you take, it's basically taking the sign, you know, whatever angle is coming in, you take the sign of that, and it gives you the, the component that's perpendicular, right? So I did the calculations and it turned out even being 3 million miles away, the amount of, you can calculate the irradiance hitting the earth at a certain latitude. And because the angle is closer to 90 degrees, you actually, I wish I, had, I don't have the calculations here. I, I did them though. You actually end up getting a lot more energy, even with it being 3 million miles away. You, you can do again, because the, the 3 million miles compared to 93 million miles is so small compared to how you can have these sharp angular differences from the seasons. And that's the reason why it can be hotter 
in the northern hemisphere, even though the sun's further away. And again, I did the calculations and it, and it works. <laughs> so he stacked the assumptions and hallucinations. So all these unicorns, if there were X amount of unicorns, then it would be the X amount of uniforms, unicorns. And the math is perfect. It just works perfectly. Therefore, it must be true. <laughs> That's Brian's position here. <laughs> Again, stacking all of these presuppositions and circular reasoning logical fallacies, it's just, it's insane how many he stacked here. And look at the look on his face. He seems genuine. He seems to be generally under the impression that these fallacious religious points are somehow scientific. Obviously, that's the nature of scientism. Scientism is the religion of believing blind faith, infallible and or corrupt humans is actual real science. That's the actual religion. It's pretending that blind faith is science. Obviously, real science is adherence to the scientific method clearly demonstrated, which he hasn't done a single time about anything yet. But maybe he will. Let's see. Wow. Um, it's, actually, it's actually significantly, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, not even close. It's very easily to show, very easy to show that. And any one person want to make a comment? Maybe Austin? Mm -hmm. So basically you're saying that uh, when the sun's 3 million miles further away, it's, it's warmer? <laughs> oh man when the campfire when you go further from the campfire it becomes warmer <laughs> oh man oh man what do all the listeners think of this because because seldom am i left this speechless where i can only just laugh at this because this is degenerated now into just brian's religious meanderings it's just uh it's insane and how he can't understand just the very basics of logic no it's again anybody that's in the because solar, of the angle the perpendicular well, no, it's angle, the angles. Yeah. if you're in the my friends in the solar panel industry and i explained this to me he understood it right away because solar panels they have to find based on a certain geography right what what's the best angle for the statistically the time like how many sunny days are there that whole year right he actually just disproved himself here because the sun is that powerful that one solar panel that's right next to another solar panel if the angle of the roof has a different angle on one of the panels versus the other so panels right next to each other one of them would can get more temperature and more energy than the one right next to it so if that's the case if there's this drastic variation, then why? This is a point I brought up before too. Again, this has nothing to do with uh, with proving a globe, Earth, or a flat Earth. Just take that all out of the equation. You can do do an experiment with a flashlight and a globe. Because again, I haven't seen an adequate explanation for this on the flat Earth either. But you take a flashlight and a globe. Every time the Earth is in darkness, it should be so drastically colder. And now, so obviously there's a few variables. This point, this is a two-part point, so don't jump on me yet. Let me finish the two-part point. Part one, if the sun is that hot and that powerful, regardless of its distance far away, it should be winter every night. Now, if you're going to argue, and you know, depending on some days, it's actually warmer at night than during the day. Even in the winter, depending on where, obviously not every day and not usually, but it does happen. So the fact that it happens, that means there's other variables, there's other factors. So again, are we just endlessly arguing a false cause here? Because if he hasn't even proved the distance of the sun, all of this is just nonsensical rambling on the part of Bryant here. It's all complete nonsensical rambling. Because if there's that drastic variation in the same spot, why wouldn't it be... 10 or 20 or 50 degrees colder or warmer in the in the summer on let's say anywhere on earth even a place where it's summer in the season walk 10 feet to the right versus 10 feet to the left i mean how much of a drastic difference is there if the if the angle of the rays can make that much of a difference why is it not seen same thing in the winter now, obviously, you go into the shade, it's cooler, but let's forget about that. He's talking about angles of light. So solar panels that are both in the sunlight, and one of them is at a different angle than another. Obviously, that's true, that there would be a slight difference. But if he's talking about these drastic differences, he just disproved himself with that point because if, if solar panels right next to each other could be that drastically different, then why are areas where it's the same season, there's not drastically different temperatures 
You have to go quite a bit of distance to get those. So presumably, according to this argument, the angle of the sun's rays would be drastically different, yet it doesn't produce a drastically different temperature result relative to the same area. And, and, they'll, and they'll put the angle of the solar panel to where it gets the most of the direct, it gets best direct hit, 90 degrees. So it turns out that the irradiance, it's gonna, you know, you gotta take the sine, that's like, you know, it basically, op, you know, opposite over hypotenuse, right? And it's basically- You're saying when that, they hit the earth or when they hit the atmosphere? It's the perpendicular component that, that, that is really what's heating things up. And again, anybody in solar panels understands this. So when you just take a simple- Appeal to authority logic, Palsy. <laughs> Instead of talking about who understands what, just explain your damn point. <laughs> If you actually have one and you can. So when you just take a simple solar panel analogy, you, you can see that you can calculate the irradiance, how much less it is in the, in the winter versus the, or in the summer versus, you know, the northern hemisphere summer versus the, and, and it, that 3 million miles does lower the Do you know that scientists don't know how solar because, panels work? Well, they might not know, but you can, you can still read how much is heat is absorbed and energy. You can look on your meter and see how much energy is getting outputted, right? So what I'm saying sure. is the amount of energy... And his point, so again, he completely dodged David Weiss's point. If they don't know the reasons why, the reasons behind it, you're just engaging in conjecture. Yes, you can measure a certain effect. We'll get to gravity hopefully soon. You can measure the effect or a force, but to pretend you know what, how, where, why it is, I brought up this example too. Like, let's say you have uh, a certain amount of water in a cup, a certain amount of milliliters. You can measure that. That doesn't tell you how the water got into the cup, though. So <laughs> what Brian is too goofy to understand is just because you have a measurement, that doesn't mean one of many various theories on why it is that way is true just because you can measure. That's a lot of things all these goofs don't understand, like Brian, Neil deGrasse Tyson, pretty much anybody arguing for scientism, they don't understand that basic point. I mean, small children can understand that point. It does, just because you can measure perfectly, it doesn't tell you how or why it got there or what the, what the greater mechanism is or, or any of that. It doesn't tell you anything behind it. That measurement, it's good. You need to have it if you're trying to be accurate. But it doesn't tell you why. There could be a million different reasons why. That's what the scientific method is for. So this goof couldn't even digest that point. He's so permanently triggered here at every point. He just, he can't even argue normally. He constantly is just grasping desperately at these fallacies in his highly triggered state as he just, I mean, this is the, one of the most obvious ones where he just completely defaulted to the measurement instead of actually having an honest scientific discussion about something of energy it's based more on the angle than it is on the distance away and again you can do the more <laughs> wow i don't know how many fallacies we're on now i mean this is just insane this because he just hallucinated in order to make that claim you you would have to have so much information that bryant doesn't have because you would have to do the experiment with the sun at various distances. I mean, I don't even know if they've done an experiment like that. Let's say the top of Mount Everest from the, to the bottom of Mount Everest with solar panels. I don't know if they've even done that one, let alone millions and millions of miles. So how, <laughs> I mean, the level of religious delusion Bryant is under here. I mean, this, this is so extreme. <laughs> Well, again, if it's for the for the case of the sun, yes, because it's all it's you understand three million compared to ninety three million is a small percentage. Not really. It's compared to, that doesn't compared matter. To three like, million miles. <laughs> you got to understand between what between ninety three million unicorns and ninety million unicorns. That three million unicorn difference. <laughs> but it's ninety three million. That's what. That's one. Well, now it's 93 million, Bryant. In the past, it was 1 million, then it was, I think, 10 million, million then 36 million. million. Yeah, it's pretty. And it even went past 93 million. I know, at one but point. again, when he brought it back down for you. So. I know, but with the heliocentric model, we can see that the, all these distances perfectly fit with the equation. No, with did he not even understand? So is Bryant. Wow. Well, when you're constantly revising the equations to make them fit in a reverse engineering fashion, like all the unicorn calculations could be true, especially if you keep changing them to match the unicorns. Like if you change the weight, if you're doing the weight of all these unicorns and then you change the amount of number, then you change how much the unicorns weigh. And then, so then after you change everything, now it adds up perfectly. That still doesn't mean unicorns are real. I mean, maybe they are. Again, I'm not saying they're not, 
but just doing all the math doesn't prove it. I mean, it's just, it's weird how silly a so-called intellectual academic like Brian is. I mean, he's goofier. I mean, small children, mean, obviously small children, there's varied degrees of intellect, but there are many small children who could understand these basic points, and yet Brian can't. It's kind of sad. I mean, what is this, like, second grade English comprehension required? He didn't even die. I think in his triggered state, nothing's getting into his head. So he's not even really listening to any of these guys because he's he doesn't really – I mean, maybe he has the mental capacity to understand the points, but he it looks like he's not even trying to understand anything they're saying. He's just here to preach his sermon on scientism. So I think he's just viewing this as a platform to preach his sermon and not actually have any honest, intellectual, scientific debate of any kind, anything going for truth. Or, or, or real science, anything like that. It looks like he's just here to deliver a sermon. That's that's what it appears at this point. The new model, yeah, yeah, again, it used it's to not be... not a new model. The, he, yes, Bryant, it used to be a different um, dimension away. It, was not, it wasn't always Newton, 93 million miles Newton didn't even history, know. Man. Newton didn't have a clue how far the sun was. No idea. Yeah. It's changed. Oh, I just want to. I want to see the project or science experiment that shows how they proved the sun was ninety three million miles away without telling me equations. anything about other stars. Equations. I'm about how to, I, I, yeah, I, the equation. I, had sure. the, I showed you. Well, you, but you won't. You won't take. You know. Again, you, I can tell you that they've that they've shown where they. We can. We can shot. We can ra put radar on. He's not talking about now. He asked you how they came up with it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's how they came up with it. They, they've changed can, it so many times. That's so. how you can measure. They haven't changed it in the past couple centuries hardly at all. I mean, it's. Hardly at all. I mean, these are monumental differences in numbers. So Brian's ignorance of even basic physics history, I mean, it's astounding. It is astounding how utterly clueless he is. Absolutely astounding. It's, it's Yeah, you go back far enough and they didn't know, but, but since we've been able to get the measurements of these... No, no, meaning oh. these scientists at that time said it is exactly 36 million miles and then it changed to 60-something, then it goes up to 93, then it goes past... I, I then they bring why. it back and, to 93. And, and the it's fact been, that they like, changed like, Polaris by a third, yeah. maybe they're well, going to change the sun. A few years ago. A few years ago. A few years ago. Okay, well, years I'll, ago. I'll, I'll look at that, but I'm... <laughs> Whenever Brian's completely and utterly decimated, all he can say is, I'll look at that. Send me the links. I'll look at it. <laughs> I mean, it, this is, yeah, this is, I mean, I feel bad for the guy, yet at the same time, he brought it on himself. So, I mean, I don't know. Sure. Thank you. For Good answer. Good look at it. Thanks. Good Can answer. we get to this magical gravity? You got me all excited, man. Okay. Let's, let's. Um... Gravity's real. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> okay. So. It's a relief. By the way, I, I had a little experiment that you can actually, well, I don't, you guys don't need to do it. You can actually calculate, you know, this is kind of cool. You can calculate Pencil. the 9.8 meters per second squared. Sweet. Which is just a. With a with a piece of paper and a pencil, and you're in your mm -hmm. smartphone. Are you under the impression that we uh, are we contend nine point eight meters per second squared? Well, I'm just saying there's a way that you can. Send, it's just kind of cool that you can show. And for people out there that don't know that you can measure the acceleration of the gravity, it's not hard. So again, false cause, red herring. <laughs> reification logical fallacy i mean how many times has bryant just spun all these fallacies measure an effect sure but the measurement and, and circular reasoning fallacy of course the measurement does not reveal the cause there's many different theories that have been put forth on whether or not it's mass attracting mass electromagnetic or even other theories there's other theories out there i'm not claiming any of them are true or untrue but Brian is. He's claiming mass attraction, attracting mass is true. So he's hallucinating that because there's five millimeters in a cup of water, that means your mother put the water in the cup. No, it doesn't. Somebody else could have put it in the cup. Just because your measurement is perfect and accurate, that doesn't give you the reason why. Again, we're talking children's level basic fallacies. You don't have to get a ball and a meter stick and a stopwatch. Yeah, your phone has an accelerometer in it, yeah. Well, it's just, you don't even need the accelerometer. You simply just, you can look, you can kind of look at the frames. Well, 9.8 meters per second squared is programmed can, into it, the phone. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a good point. See, that's a good point. Because this is something that uh, obviously the thoroughly indoctrinated goofs won't, uh, won't address or even think about. Because th this is why the scientific method is important. Because you need clear, dependent, independent variables and controls. If you cannot determine those... If you cannot clearly determine those 
and demonstrate those. You're not performing a legitimate scientific experiment. So the same thing kind of goes, there's a lot of arguments about airplanes and flights and all of that. What's programmed into the plane computer? And again, this almost almost has nothing to do with flat or globe Earth, because if it's globe or if it's flat, if the continents are different shapes, shapes and sizes in different positions slightly, like let's say just slightly, no one would ever know because the computer is, is, is spitting out the information and everybody's taking it on blind faith. So yeah, but you guys yeah. agree that we all agree that things fall 9.8 meters. Per That's second. an agreed upon average once things go down. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's pretty. The gravitational fields are pretty constant across the globe. It's agreed well, upon average. But there's no there's globe, also but... atmosphere here, so it's gonna, not going to be 9.8 meters per second squared anywhere on Earth. Well, it's it can be measured. Wait, wait, wait. This doesn't prove anything, though. We the, no, we no, know no, you know I, things fall down on a flat I know, Earth too, I'm, I'm right? Getting to, I mean, I, I'm getting to that. This is this okay. is just the first. Um, things down fall down, down is down on a flat Earth, well, Brian. You know that, right? Down on a flat Earth, down is down. There's no one uh, upside down in Australia right now, hanging on for dear life. All right. Okay. Down, down is down. towards the center of the earth. This is I, know, I know heliocentrism. I, I grew up with it. I this understand. I'm saying heliocentrism. This is how this is how down. It's not. No, this, this is, is how we were taught. Theory. Yes. Correct. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Because it's not no... the theory. It's a, it's a very well proven theory of gravity that hasn't been. <laughs> Wait. In the same sentence, he says it's not a theory. Then he says it's a proven theory. <laughs> I've kind of lost all hope for Brian here. I mean, he's mentally gone. Gone. In the same sentence, he's he, he's even contradicting himself. Does he not even know the definition of a theory? I think he's just this triggered and that he's having these three young guys completely obliterate him and David Weiss. No offense, David Weiss, but David Weiss is not a super young guy. <laughs> I mean, again, like, I don't think Brian's ego is that damaged. I mean, maybe it is because David Weiss is not a supposed academic, high-level academic, even if he was... I mean, actually, I don't know. I don't know what, but but Bryant, he, I mean, his ego must be so bruised from having these these young guys like Jaronism, Witsit, Hibbler. I don't know how old any of these guys are, but they're clearly not as old as Bryant. They clearly haven't spent as much time in indoctrination facilities or have these super high level degrees. I actually did uh, speak briefly with Witsit. Uh, I messaged him. Well, I've messaged him back and forth a couple times, and because I was curious as to his background, he's actually he actually had an academic scholarship to university, and uh, he's clearly not a dumb guy. He's clearly extremely smart, and uh, so this is not a random nobody, you know, high school, middle school dropout in his mom's basement. I mean, this was a super sharp guy that got a full academic and I think athletic scholarship as well, if I'm remembering correctly. Somebody can uh, correct that if uh, if I'm wrong about that. But yeah, I was just curious as to Witsit's background because clearly, I mean, this guy, again, my best comparison, this guy's like Michael Jordan. Clearly there was some kind of talent there and then he just built upon it. So clearly there was some kind of aptitude for logic and science, and then he just developed it over time. And now he's just completely obliterating this uh, high-level quackademic, Bryant Myers. And Bryant Myers just can't handle it. And I, I think his meltdown is just going to get worse. It's know? proven theory of... So, okay, can you... What well, is the theory of gravity? Okay, again, uh, this is... Yeah, I, this is well, not, I just want to talk about gravity. Man. I, I thought wanna, I was going to be able to go through some slides. Give your presentation Go, go through gravity. the slides, and then we'll interrupt them. you. Yeah. There you go. go ahead. This is I should next maybe next time we can just talk one on one because this is. Uh, this you have is, your presentation on gravity, man. The sermon continues. <laughs> All right. Well. Well, anyway, um, one of the things that flat Earth believers don't seem to understand is there's a difference between laws and theories. The psychological projection continues. <laughs> Brian Myers has firmly shifted into psychological projection and also hasty generalization of logical fallacies, compositional logic fallacies. Obviously there are, there are many flat earthers who don't understand this, just like there are many quackademics like himself who don't understand it. So it clearly has nothing to do with the group they belong to. They're simply logical and illogical people. So yes, gravity is not proven. Didn't you just say it's been proven? It's not no a theory. It's a, it's a very well proven theory of gravity. Very well proven. <laughs> very well proven. <laughs> Didn't the goof just say it was proven? Like, a minute ago? Very well proven. Very well proven theory of gravity. Very well proven. So yes, gravity is not proven. 
Very well proven theory of gravity. Gravity is not proven. Very well proven theory of gravity. Gravity is not proven. <laughs> But yet, it's a, it's a gravitational, it's a law because we can use it to make predictions and to build things. In fact, most, I don't know if you know this, but most of the world around us is built on Newton's laws of gravity. In fact, reification logical fallacy. Laws of gravity. In fact, you know, if you look at, I mean, if you look at skyscrapers and bridges, and again, I took in, at Georgia Tech, I took uh, classes on, you know, statics and dynamics, you know, civil engineering type of classes. And you use Newton's laws of gravity and, and to build and make all of these things. Again, well, first of all, you don't. <laughs> Second of all, I mean, computers pretty much do everything now. But uh, first of all, you don't. Second of all, they were building bridges way before Newton, as well as many other technological marvels, pyramids, monoliths, all of these things with flat Earth cosmology, without any mass attracting mass theories. So... Brian is so goofy that he's hallucinating that, I mean, what is he hallucinating here? This reification logical fallacy just ad nauseum? I mean, the ancients with flat earth cosmology clearly built marvels that can't even be replicated today. Some argue that they can, but they're too expensive, blah, blah, blah. But if they could, they would. So this has nothing to do with anything, obviously. I mean, Brian is actually doing everything other than proving gravity here. So he thinks this logic, he thinks this fallacy stack is going to prove something to, to actual people who are demanding scientific proof. This sermon of his doesn't have any actual scientific proof. Does anybody notice that? It's completely missing the actual meat. Where's the meat on the bone? The actual proof. Where is it? <laughs> this kind of reminds me of, uh, <laughs> this reminds me of Al Pacino in Justice for All. Where's the case? They forgot to bring it. I don't see it. Do you? <laughs> that man there wants a win so badly today. It means so much to him. He is so carried away with the prospect of winning, the idea that he forgot something that's absolutely essential to today's proceedings. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? So this is one of the problems with the flat earth. The flat earth doesn't really have a model that can build or make anything. And then, of course, as Austin Witsit says a lot, falsification is independent of replacement. So first of all, you don't need to have an alternate model to, to, to poke holes in another model. Second of all, even that was false because, again, the ancients with their flat-earth cosmology built incredible marvels that haven't even been replicated today. I mean, you're, you're, you know, if you, if you go to school, if you're a flat-earth believer, maybe you won't uh, do that. But if you really want to make things in the real world, you use Newton's law of gravity. I mean, okay. it works. It just works. So, so if the cause is actually electromagnetism, it just works. It just works. So it wasn't the mass attracting mass. It was the electromagnetic force which can be clearly measured, and everything built with that electromagnetic force in mind. So it's kind of weird how Bryant doesn't understand this point. Or if it's not electromagnetism, it's some other theory that's true, then the, it doesn't matter because you're measuring the forces accurately and you're building around them. It doesn't tell you why, why those forces are there or what causes them. You just build with them. And you could argue the ancients did that as well, regardless of the true model of the universe. So the, the difference between a theory and a law is that laws are analytical relationships that basically are true in, 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 their, in their given sphere. So here on Earth, with low gravity and low speeds, you know, relativity, if you got really high gravity and really high speeds, then you got to use general relativity. But for, pra for practical purposes... And if you haven't checked out my Run Z Cal uh, breakdown, as well as a few other points on the complete debunking of Einstein's relativity... Check that out, because, of course, Brian is still using that tenant of his religion of scientism, clearly, utterly debunked, also by his, his favorite thing, pure math. Pure math also debunks relativity. It's quite dense. I don't go too far into, into Oleg D. Jeffomanko's equations, which utterly demolish Einstein's relativity. But if Brian really is this idiot savant who can only understand math, he should check out Jeffomanko's equations. As we call these things laws is because we can use them to make very accurate calculations to actually make, make things. You know, the Industrial Revolution was a big part of 
you know, because of Newton's, Newton's laws of motion, you know, that we are able to build steam engines and all these structures. And so, so it's very, it's very pragmatic. Um, and uh, it, the thing about gravity is very elegant. I mean, <laughs> Oh man! Wow! Now he's going to elegant because it's elegant. It must be true. <laughs> oh man, elegance! I did. I have to say, I I did not think he would be this level of silly. But let's see what else he's got. <laughs> Basically, well, it does. It, it explains all of these things. Everything kind of works because. No. Of <laughs> yeah, not none of none of Tesla's hundreds of patents and wireless tech that they're using right now. None of that works. Clearly, only Einstein's relativity and Einstein with his zero patents to prove it. Only that works, and the fraud of 1919, the hoax of 1919, of which his fraudulent Nobel is built on, where where Eddington actually admitted that he made up the eclipse data, and the Nobel committee just took it all on blind faith. And then all of the other gullible goofs took it on blind faith. Meanwhile, there were hundreds of physicists and scientists who did uh, stand against relativity. Of course, most of that was erased from history. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Well, just, hold on. We can good, good. Let him finish, and then we'll respond. No problem. I just don't see what the point is. I mean, this is... <laughs> the point is you have to humiliate yourself further to show the problems with scientism. Because <laughs> he thought he was coming here to preach a sermon and he thought they would all take it on blind faith without actually being log without being logical or scientific. So if, if his only goal is to religiously preach, I mean, there is no point here because these other guys came here for a logical and scientific discussion. Well, it's a, just go ahead. Just, maybe we're wrong. I'm open to being wrong, bro. So let me know. But yeah, I mean, the things that you're showing us are things that we've all had to obviously research through to be flat earthers. We have not, this is not new to us. We've gone well, through this. Maybe he's going to okay. teach us. So maybe, maybe right, we're wait, wrong. Well, I mean, but the thing is, is, you know, I've done the Cavendish experiment. I know you guys, oh, boy. Have, you have your reasons. I mean, I've got a Cavendish device here. Mm -hmm. um, What's a Cavendish but, uh, device? A Cavendish torsion balance. It's a torsion balance, a gravitational torsion balance that you're able to calculate the gravitational constant in it. In and your house? Very... In your house? Yeah, yeah, he has one. He has one right beside him. I don't see it. Oh. I've never seen that before. We just maybe present your argument and then maybe uh, I can become a believer. Yeah, do that. And the, the little G or big G, I don't know which one I'm supposed to believe in that created everything. The big G energy, but it's, um. it's about, again, you're able, you're able to make predictions. So. <laughs> so were the so, so so were the Mayans or and the Aztecs who built these uh, pyramids based on flat Earth cosmology, and they actually have shadows of snakes during eclipses. I mean, they predict they could predict all their eclipses with the flat Earth cosmology. That must mean the Earth is flat, right, Brian? Because they could predict. <laughs> I mean, the scientific method again. Yes, it's based on measuring, observing, and repeating, therefore being able to predict through the repetition. But he's ignoring the most important part. Clearly identifiable, independent, and dependent variables as well as controls. Because then you can prove which variable is responsible for what instead of just hallucinating and preaching religion. So he's so obsessed with the predictions, which obviously flat earth cosmology civilizations also could do. Therefore, that proves nothing. But again, even like a prophet or some kind of psychic who's somehow able, let's say, accidentally guess really well predictions. That doesn't mean they really have psychic powers just because they could predict perfectly or just they have really good records of predictions. Like he's more obsessed with predictions. He should be more obsessed with the scientific method instead of predictions. I mean, how goofy. <laughs> And again, all you can measure measure forces with the Cavendish. I'm actually going to do a podcast on the Cavendish because this is probably the most misutilized experiment to prove alleged mass attracting mass because it doesn't account for the electromagnetic forces. And when you put the – because this is obviously not in a vacuum here. So in a vacuum, 
Uh, De Palma actually did experiments that pr- that where mass did not attract mass in a vacuum, effectively disproving the mass attracting mass theory, or at least not able to prove it because it doesn't happen in a vacuum. So we have to pretend and halluc- the, the thing about variables, if you're ignoring the electromagnetic charges with the Cavendish, then you're not doing the experiment properly because you have to account for all the variables. How are you going to ignore the electromagnetic pole and then say, oh, yeah, no, that's actually just mass attracting mass. <laughs> And then regurgitate ad nauseum. I mean, this is just insane. It's like Bryant is so focused on all this advanced math, he's missing even second grade science. We use Newton's laws of gravity to, to make. You got a little quiet for some reason, Brian. Just, you know, just can you get back towards your mic or something? It was really quiet there, just so people can hear you. Okay, so. Um, there you go. So, the, so they have the Cavendish device, which I, the Cavendish experiment, I've done myself. And. It gives you, I mean, if you do it yourself, you're not going to get a, a very super high level of precision. You know, within, you can get within 2%. But the, but the thing is, is that this has been done thousands of times in labs around the world. And even if it's off by a little bit, the fact that you're getting almost exactly the same answer every time. It's almost like there's magnetic forces. But what's the reason behind the magnetic forces? <laughs> if you have all these people get a cup of water and it measures perfectly a cup, that doesn't tell you who put the water there. You could do this experiment of measuring a cup of water in every single country, and you can get within 2% of a perfect cup of water if you're using a cup of water. That doesn't tell you who put it there, does it? <laughs> it's very, very good proof. In fact, um, and it's not just the Cavendish. There's, there's other ways that you can measure gravity. You know, the Shahilian Mountain Experiment, they're able to very, again, calculate G pretty relatively accurately. Um, this is a Von Jolly experiment. So the, the bottom line is we have overwhelming proof or evidence that mass attracts mass. And again, when I say a law, I mean something we can use analytically to make predictions here on Earth is that mass attracts mass. And there's no other way. And I've seen your electrostatic stuff and density and buoyancy. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work? And yet, what do you mean it doesn't work? <laughs> In my uh, dismantling, debunking relativity podcast, check that out. There's a lot of electromagnetic experiments you can do yourself with cheap magnets, less than $20. And you can see how all of magnetism works without any mass attracting mass hallucinations. So saying something doesn't work doesn't mean it doesn't work because the argument is, oh, well, gravity just doesn't work. That's not an argument. (laughs) Unless you invoke heavenly energies and we have to look at what that is, but... Um, but the point is, is these are gravity measurements. This is now uh, mctune.net forward slash g. Oh, you good, can good just source. see. Well, but again, you can look at, you can click and look at the studies mm-hmm. yourself. So you got a genetic logical fallacy from the flat earthers. Now, McToon is a goof of epic proportions. I mean, the guy clearly has some kind of mental disability. And uh, nobody told him because I guess people were too polite around him in this, uh, I don't know, participation trophy generation on the rise. The guy's clearly got a mental disability. I mean, he can't even understand first grade English. So there's there's no reason to engage with McToon. But if he, he could have accidentally posted correct things on his website. So that would still be a genetic logical fallacy. There's just, yeah. I mean, it's it's overwhelming the number of times that these num- these experiments have been confirmed. It's not just one person or, or even just one experiment. They, they've been able to confirm it in many different ways. So a cup of water and a cup of water can be confirmed many different ways. Does that tell you how the water got into the cup? Does that tell you the reason why? I mean, yeah, this is sad. <laughs> not just by Cavendish, but by doing other things like I told you with the Shahilian uh, uh, experiment and the, um, you know, Von Jolly. Um, it's just two examples. But so there's many ways that we can show that mass attracts mass. And it's typically, you know... Again, circular reasoning, logical fallacy stack. The force between masses is typically, you know, the gravitational constant M1, M2 over R squared. And we can, you know, uh, unless you're in a really high gravitational field, like in a black hole, or you're going near the speed of light, these, these equations hold very, very accurately. And again, yes, gravity hasn't been proven, but no theory is ever proven. So a theory versus a law... Is something that tries to explain what the law is saying. So the theory of gravity went from Newtonian's theory to and then Einstein updated it to a better theory of general relativity. And the interesting thing, though, is that 
you know, Newton's equations aren't, weren't proven wrong. They actually are special cases within relativity where space is really flat and time is not so fast, or and the speeds aren't really super high. So you actually get Newton's equation. So the new theory didn't, you know, it, 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 it transcended, but it included Newton's equations, but just as a special case. Okay. Um, so, you know, and again, with general relativity. Wait, well, can, we, can we talk about one at a time? Is that cool? Instead of like, you're saying Newtonian well, gonna, and then you're, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. I guess just. No, no, I was just going to go through the gravity. Then we can talk about gravity in general. Then, I'm, then we'll get to the flat earth gravity thing I have set up. So, oh, so, so we're not going to get to rebut all your claims right now about gravity. No, no, we are. No, 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 we are. I, gravity. no, 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 no. I, I said, let's just get through this. Then we'll have a discussion and then, you know. Okay, we'll, fair enough. Um, so, um, and I, I know you guys have seen this stuff before. So, you know, there's a lot of validation for relativity. And, you know, I'm sure you guys know with LIGO, which, by the way, the, the long interferometer arms did have to account for curvature of the Earth. Mm. Um, I mean, incredibly accurately confirmed relativity to like eight decimal places. I mean, it makes it one of the most accurate theories as far as making predictions that we've ever had, along with mm. quantum electrodynamics. So I think these guys are going to totally obliterate his points about LIGO. I actually also go over this in the Annihilation of Relativity in the Relativity Debunked podcast. But they're probably going to get into it. I'm assuming Jaronism and David and Whitsnit probably know this. That uh, LIGO openly admits that they do experiments with injected data. So it's basically fraudulent artificial data, but they don't tell the analysts about it. So the analysts get the result from the computer. Oh, look, gravitational waves discovered. and But they don't know that it was fake injection. So when you're dealing with this level of fraud and then magically they say that then it wasn't fake for one time and then they apparently couldn't detect them ever again. I don't know. I think Jaronism is going to or, – or one of these guys is going to talk about this. So let's see. Is, very, it, is very, it true about accurate. LIGO? The, LIGO it, the amount of the string displacement was smaller than a proton? Yeah, well, it, it has to be smaller than um, the diameter of an atomic nucleus, actually. Wow. And what's the margin for error for this fallible human technology? <laughs> I mean, all of these scientists and cultists hallucinate that the margin where there's no margin for error. They must have detected it. It must have been perfect. It just must have been. <laughs> it's not wow. a wow. It's, it's amazing. No, it, it. that's incredible. Exactly, it is incredible. It's incredible, incredible precision that has to happen. Mm -hmm. to detect a gravitational wave. But this chirp that took, you know, took place in two locations, they didn't just do one location, they did it in Washington and like Louisiana. Mm -hmm. They were able to, to confirm the exact same gravitational pattern exactly as predicted by general relativity. So and I, it was just an amazing, amazing a couple of weeks cause. ago I read That's a story. Cap, bro. A couple of weeks ago I read a story that they they first faked the experiment to see if they would if everybody would agree with it. And they did. They they faked it the LIGO the first time. Everybody showed up at the press conference and then they were told that it was fake. But nobody knew. Nobody knew it was faked. Yeah, but again, that's just conjecture. I mean... <laughs> it's right on their website! <laughs> I mean, this goof is just utterly clueless about everything he's talking about. No, it's not, I just told you they, I could give you the article where they write about it. It's uh, called... Okay, an article. Well, send me the article and I'll look at it. Isn't that answer. weird if that's true? Isn't that weird if it's true, bro? I mean, I'll look at it. I mean, I've see how he can't. He can't even. He he can't. He doesn't have the mental capacity to even consider the possibility. The mark of an educated mind is the ability to consider a concept as true without believing in it. But you can tell that Bryant just has a mental breakdown any time his faith is exposed. <laughs> He can't even consider any possibility of corruption or fraud in his religion of scientism. Just look at his face. I'll look. Just on, I, I will look at it. I really will. Um, okay. So, but I, I'm not convinced until I can see it and take a But look. if it's true, is that not really weird? That's what we're I'm saying. I mean, that's it. We're, if you we're confirm just, we're, we're just playing what ifs right now, though. I, I'm no, not, but just to be it it, is an intellectual honesty thing, right? Like, hypothetically, yeah. if mm -hmm. they lied to everyone... And just to see if they would believe it, I mean, that would be kind of weird, right? And it would be weird if it I happened mean, to be a I mean, hundred, yes, yes. a hundred yes. years to the day that, a uh, hundred years to the year that Einstein predicted them. That would be crazy. Like, what are the chances it would be on the hundredth year? But that's just a coincidence. That's oh, a coincidence, coincidence, argument, yeah. a coincidence argument. <laughs> Bryant Myers, coincidence theorist extraordinaire. <laughs> he forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. 
I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? That doesn't make it's amazing. Doesn't yeah. No, I didn't mean it's not, it doesn't prove anything. It would be okay. weird. Okay. Go I mean, it's just, it's just like Stephen Hawking being born like exactly a couple hundred years after like what was it like Galileo or something. It doesn't prove that he's a reincarnation. <laughs> they said that they faked it, bro. It's weird. Well, so we we'll, can... well I'll, I'll look at the information, but I'm again, I, I, I've spent, you know, the, the Nobel Prize by Kip Thorne. I mean, it was a really big deal. And I, I've looked at the, uh, it, it doesn't seem like it was fake. I mean, everything that I've seen looks pretty good. Obama expensive. got the peace prize. From the same the people that yeah. Ever. I put, yeah, it, I, so, put it, I put it in the chat yeah, by the, the way. Pure, it's in the chat. I know, but the, again, I'm with you with Obama, but with, okay. with, with the pure sciences, this is where I disagree. With the you. same I, people. Well, we'll see. I mean, I. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. That's his new catchphrase. We'll see. <laughs> Oh, man. But see, he doesn't even have the mental strength to consider any alternate possibilities to his religion. But again, this to me is just common sense. I don't know why you guys put like upside down votes like on the I mean, this so, is the, that's the old because that's what's happening in reality. Right. I mean, it's it's what's happening is if you were to be looking from space, there is a boat sitting at the bottom of the earth upside down. Now, I know you say, no, it's not upside oh, no, down. But, no, the, yeah, but yeah. You, no, you realize that the satellite's upside down, looking at it right side up. Like you're, you're missing the satellites go. You do get that, right? Yes, yeah, but but one like, boat is antipodal to the other boat. Or... The antipodal theory was from the Middle Ages. They, like I told you, no, there's the antipodes Atlantis. now. Things are antipode to me on the Brian. Oh, so when they showed us the picture I, of the I, Earth, right, and the they show the moon the in front of the Earth, Brian, think about it, right? They showed us the moon in front of the Earth. If that if that satellite had a zoomed in on the top of the ball and then zoomed out and then zoomed in on the bottom of the ball, it would have saw stuff upside down on the bottom of the ball from its outside perspective. It, 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 yeah, but you can't, you can't get zoomed that far. Well, we know that, but we're <laughs> but, 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 but we can but, zoom in on like... And you can see how he's just scrambling. Like he can't even, he can't even admit that it would be upside down if you could zoom that far. Like notice how he just has a mental breakdown. Like <laughs> anytime his religion is questioned or someone says something that he doesn't like. What's weird though, if the earth is a globe, it's a globe. Why would he be triggered by boats being upside down? They are upside down relative to the other side of the globe. Like, why is this even a point to get triggered about? Like, it's weird. It's almost like he's just following the triggered playbook where he just has to get triggered about everything they say. It's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> You know, newspapers from satellites. satellites and and again, yeah. The way that gravity works is that everything is getting pulled towards the center. That is a center of mass. We know how they tell we us. We know that. Okay, this is, so again, uh, well, let's just go to... Okay. So we just need to buy uh, into... I, I mean, the problem I have with it is like when they go up in these uh, uh, high... Whoa, 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 what's this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, no, 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 can I address, can I address <laughs> some we're, of we're that, gonna, We're going to discuss. I, no, I'm, I'm just pulling up. I'm, we're going to discuss. So like a parabolic flight... Can I you said first? If we dropped a bunch of Skittles, why don't the Skittles get together? Why don't they come together in in a zero g plane or in the iss how come the skittles just go everywhere why because don't they... the skittles are very low mass you understand how we so how did the, how did the earth start then how did any planet or star start if they well, if low the, mass doesn't again, do it you understand that everything is spheres because everything is getting pulled in yeah but you just said that was... you just said that if something is too small of a mass it won't attract anything so how did they start that's a massive amount of energy density when the, when the hey gas can i so he just magically goes to energy. He just magically invokes. There had to be a magical amount of energy to pull to to form the planet. And at what mass will it start to pull other mass? Like where where are the clear delineations here? Because he's he's just. Uh, I mean this this is all kind of this vague, abstract hallucination and faith. Like where's the actual evidence of of matter getting together to form bigger matter? Like where is it? He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Go ahead, Can I address Austin. your arguments, man? You, you, you made a few fallacious arguments. So for one, yeah. you're talking about mass attracting mass. Yeah. Please just give me a couple minutes, please. You're talking about mass attracting mass. That's way outdated, right? That's like, uh, you know, superseded in 1905 by special relativity, then turned into well, general I, relativity I, I in 19... Bro, that. bro, you got to give me a couple seconds, man. You said a lot of stuff that's just all provably wrong. Okay. So then you brought up Cavendish. Well, when Cavendish did it, he didn't even account for the variable of electrostatics, which is an attractive force. And so the torsion bar, like the actual mass itself, whatever, he had to run away and use a telescope and barely saw it move. 
And even if you use something to control for that variable, you can never eliminate the variable electrostatics, right? Because all molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature, and that's an attractive force, and you're barely getting any change, and it's not consistent. So it definitely doesn't prove gravity. You're claiming it proves mass attracting mass. That's not even the claimed model anymore. That's just really, really oh, old. No, that's Hold on. Let him finish. It's, it's his turn. Just let him go. It'll be quick. Go ahead, Austin. Yeah. And so then the whole relativity thing, you said that it's been proved and then you brought up like the, you know, the fifth of a proton, whatever. But the theory of relativity has been debunked on the cosmological and quantum scale within your own paradigm. It isn't accurate at all whatsoever. It's never been proven. And then when you looked at the Arthur Eddington thing, like, dude, they, they admit that that might not be actual bending and warping of space time. So Simply put, there's actually no empirical evidence that's ever verified gravity. And then when you're talking about the downward acceleration, that's an effect that we observe on the Earth. It's not exclusive to, to the idea that we're on a magic spinning ball in a vacuum. Things go down on a flat Earth too, bro, on a stationary flat Earth. That's just the effect. You're claiming the cause of the effect. We want to prove the cause. The fact that we engineer things based on the downward acceleration agreed upon average isn't exclusive to the Earth being a ball or gravity or something. The fact we use 9.8 meters a second square to engineer things has nothing to do with the earth being a ball so those are just fundamental misrepresentations of what's actually going on we're questioning your your cause claim bro and mass attracting mass isn't what your cause claim is anymore because that was debunked a long time ago and newton did not even propose a mechanism for gravity wow there was the sheer decimation we were looking for jordan just put up 50 points <laughs> i mean that that was one of the biggest obliterations i've ever seen I mean, Austin Witsit really has a way with words and also clearly and succinctly giving his argument. Because a lot of globe earthers, flat earthers, I mean, they just ramble. Whether their points are legitimate or not, they just ramble a lot. Austin Witsit completely demolished this, I don't know, 20 to 30 minute sermon by Bryant here on his religion in clear, succinct points of just sheer demolition. I mean, he didn't call out the specific fallacies like I did. I'm sure he could. He has knowledge of all of them, but he was trying to just be quick and uh, summarize everything and why Brian, everything Brian just said is non-valid, which is true. And you could see Brian's facial expressions of his cognitive dissonance melting his brain. <laughs> I know, but that is empirical. You, you, you hear what I said about theory, the law, the law of gravity? I'm saying that's, that's empirically how we can use it to make things. And so, again, he didn't, he seemed to have not really even comprehended. It seemed like the mental, the, the brain melting was just from Austin telling him he was wrong. Because he's used to preaching in the classroom and everybody taking what he said on blind faith and viewing him as some kind of a priest who can't be wrong. And Austin Witsit, this young guy, just completely obliterated his, all of his arguments, clearly demonstrating even in what, fourth graders could understand what Austin Witsit just said? in this clear obliteration, but it seems like Brian actually didn't think about what Wits had said. He was too busy being triggered that he could possibly be wrong and called on it. And I, then I said that general relativity was warp space-time. Yes, that superseded it. And, spe- and, and Newton's equation wasn't, it wasn't proven wrong. It was proven as a special case. So he just, he's basically, <laughs> so he made up all, so he made up all this unicorn stuff. Austin Witts is saying, but you haven't actually presented any proof of the actual unicorns. And then Bryant just says, yeah, yeah, but the math about the unicorns adds up. He just reiterated his faulty argument <laughs> as if that's a rebuttal. <laughs> But no, I mean, no, they're different because Newton's Newton's no, doesn't no, they're work. Not Newton, is, Newton is basically Newton's saying, doesn't take, work on the solar no, system scale. You can take relativity. No, you can take relativity and, and take the, the curvature down to close to zero, very low curvature, and you take the speeds and you reclaim Newton's equations from general relativity. <laughs> Newton's equations are in general relativity. They're I'm there. trying to help you out here, okay? So downward acceleration on the Earth is not because that the I'm taught that. <laughs> <laughs> so because he's taught it he can't be wrong so this uh, again anecdotal logical fallacy well i mean mostly just an appeal to authority logical fallacy but he thinks because he's the authority i mean that makes it the anecdote as well but he <laughs> nobody's debating that he's preached sermons on this that's not what anybody's debating nobody's debating the content of the sermon the, the only thing Austin Whitson is doing is demanding logical and scientific debate here. And actual evidence of which Bryant, again, where's Bryant's case? 
Did he forget to bring it? <laughs> he forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? There's mass attracting mass. That's not what your model claims. And gra electrostatics is yeah, 10 to the 30. Yeah, Listen, man, fine. electrostatics is 10 to the 36th power stronger I, I than gravity even claims to be. And then you can look at um, Walter what? Lewin from MIT explain to you that all effects observed on the earth is from electricity or electrics or electrostatics that nothing to do with downward acceleration or anything observed with how your body is on the, the earth or anything we'll is anything next. other than electricity. Electric. Uh, this is MIT professor for four decades within I've your own paradigm, video. astrophysics. No, I watched so. that video. Notice that there is a clear parallel with gravity. Newton's law of gravity, that the force, which in that case is always attracting, gravity never repels, is the product of two masses. And then you have here a gravitational constant, and again you have the distance square. So there is an enormous parallel between the two. It's a great beauty that electricity acts in a way that is very parallel to the way that gravity works. If you compare electricity with gravity, you will see that electric forces are way more powerful than gravitational forces. If now I compare the electric force with the gravitational force, so I divide one by the other, notice that the D cancels. They both have D squared downstairs. And so you will easily be able to show that this ratio is roughly 10 to the 36. So the electric force is 36 orders of magnitude more potent than the gravitational attraction. This teaches you some respect, perhaps, for 802. If these were the only forces that acted on the protons, and you bring them in the nucleus, which has a size of only 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, then the acceleration that the proton will experience is the electric force divided by the mass of the proton, F equals ma, basis of 801. And if you take this electric force, when you make d, 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, which is 10 to the minus 14 meters, and you calculate this ratio, you will find that it is 26 orders of magnitude higher than the gravitational acceleration on Earth. 26 orders of magnitude higher. So you wonder what the hell holds the nucleus together if there is such a tremendous force on these protons. Well, what is holding them together are the nuclear forces, which we do not fully understand, but thank goodness the nuclear forces are not part of 802, so I'll leave that alone for now. So what holds our world together? Well, on the nuclear scale, 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, very important are the nuclear forces. On an atomic scale, up to thousands of kilometers, it's really electric forces that hold our world together. But on a much larger scale, planets and stars and the galaxy, it is gravity that holds our world together. So even though our immediate surroundings are dominated by electric forces, including your own body for that matter, the behavior of the universe on a large scale is dictated by gravity. So he watched his videos, but he didn't understand anything presented? <laughs> his rebuttals are, we'll get to that. I've seen that. I've heard you say this. I know this. I've taught this. Notice how he actually hasn't rebutted a single point about anything. No, I've got his book. So he's got his book and he watched the video. But did he understand any of the contents? Like, that's the question here. The electric forces are way more powerful than gravitational forces. So the electric force is 36 orders of magnitude more potent than the gravitational attraction. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Video, so it's 10 it can, to 36 power you know, stronger it, than gravity claims to be. Watch, so. but if, yeah, but if you watch his videos on gravity, he'll tell you that everything is electrically neutral, which is why you don't see 
that, you know, again, why we don't get much large scale electrical, I mean. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Right. He says that out on the planetary scale, that gravity takes over. Okay. So when you're talking about all the right. planes and trains and automobiles on the earth, and yeah. we couldn't even do anything on a flat earth because we but have to use gravity. Mostly, That's patently false. That isn't yeah, true. Electrostatics is, is way stronger is than gravity. Electric, just a it's fact. Mostly elect, it's mostly electrically neutral though. No, it's, it's, it has, it, just because things cancel well, out it, doesn't mean it doesn't have electrostatic potential. Well, and its resting gonna, potential uh, is 10 to the 20, 36 power stronger than gravity claims to be. Uh, all molecular uh, and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic let's, let's, in nature. Let's, These are all objective let's, let's things. Let's go through man. that because the electrostatics, I wrote a book. I understand the Earth's energies very well. So this. Well, clearly not. <laughs> does he understand the scientific method well? Because <laughs> does he understand basic logic? So. <laughs> Every Austin is just completely obliterating him, and you could see his ego just can't handle it. So he's sputtering and spinning and trying to have control of this conversation because he's been completely obliterated and he wasn't able to rebut a single point there. So he's just left scrambling that this guy, because he, again, clearly the guy from MIT, I'm actually not that familiar with his work, I have to admit. I got to do more homework like Austin Whitson. Obviously, I'm, I'm familiar with electromagnetic theory because that all goes back to Tesla, who, of course, called out Einstein's uh, emperor with no clothes relativity, where obviously electromagnetic forces can easily be demonstrated and you can do experiments with them and you can clearly identify the dependent, independent variable and control with magnets. You cannot do that with any experiments with mass, attracting mass, unless someone wants to present one that has done that, because so far, none of them have been able to do that. He forgot his case. He <laughs> forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Again, nothing really to do with the shape of the Earth, but it's just mass attracting mass. So this MIT professor is claiming that gravity is only on a cosmological scale and it wouldn't be on a local scale within the Earth's atmosphere. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Which Bryant clearly pretended that it would be, and that was the argument. And now he's just sputtering and spinning because I guess, obviously, he didn't anticipate that Austin Witsit would just completely demolish him like this and call him out on it and demand actual evidence instead of nodding their head and saying amen to the sermon and the religious preaching, actually questioning the preaching and holding Brian's feet to the fire, demanding an actual scientific and logical conversation, which, of course, Brian's not able to provide. Let's just go through, and I know you guys um, don't believe, but I'm just saying if gravity was true, you guys realize it'd be ridiculous. You know, things would things would all go towards the center. But I, I know you don't what? believe it. I don't What? <laughs> Se- what? Why why? <laughs> oh man, this false dichotomy is like the king of all false dichotomies. Well this is okay, if you had a disc and gravity was real, which you guys say it's not, the center of mass is gonna be right here, right? We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't believe in gravity know, pulling you know. to the okay. center. So, so why uh, don't bother showing that? That's an old okay, Vsauce my, my, video. Now, we, I mean, that's also a king of the straw man files. It looks like Bryant just looked, Google searched how to debunk flat earth and came up with all these like horrible arguments and then just brought them forward and then just defaults to I've taught this anytime he's obliterated. <laughs> my whole point is that you obviously you can't believe in gravity because it's never going to work on a flat no, earth. No, we don't believe in that fairy tale of gravity. Gravity is nothing more than incoherent dielectric acceleration. If you want to get super, super it's technical, not it's, it's not You can't it's explain well, it's, not, explain. it's not point specific. Okay, it's incoherent let's, let's, electrostatic. Okay, well, for- he's telling him he can't explain it while he's in the middle of explaining it. It's like telling Jordan he can't dunk on you while he's dunking on you. <laughs> he forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Okay, forget all that. that. That's why I jumped over. That's why I jumped over. So I just want to show why it can't be dense. You don't think it's density and boy. That's the thing is you guys can't agree upon. Is it electro? We don't, we don't group things like it's, the cold. No, no. The, the density and buoyancy sorts everything else out. Exactly. Right. Density and buoyancy depends on gravity. Um, no, it doesn't actually. The R- Circular reasoning logic fallacy. <laughs> Archimedes okay, principle okay. was long before I know the equation with G in we'll it. So what are you talking about? It, it doesn't require. Is, is, well, so let's let's start with density. Okay, so, <laughs> so if I have two two pails of water here, they're both the same density. 
He didn't like being interrupted in his religious sermon. Let's continue the sermon. Let's not have any actual li logical or scientific uh, discussion where any kind of evidence is demanded. But yet yeah, one is obviously is, is weighing more than another. So if things fall down because of density, shouldn't these be the same height then as far as the balance goes? You have to determine what causes weight and what gives something density. So you seem to be missing the point. <laughs> Wow. I really like how simple Austin puts it. Because you really do have to talk to Bryant like he's like a three-year-old. Because if he's missing all the basics of the scientific method and how to identify those variables with controls determined, then everything Bryant is religiously spewing here is just built on nonsense. Even if it's true, the way that he's built it is all built on nonsensical, non-scientific, a house of cards of religion, even if it happens to be true. So you're reifying no, gravity with mass times density, gravity as way, but it's- Density is mass divided by volume. It's not, it's, it's not how- Density is mass- These two have the same density. This amount of water, this has less about half the volume, twice the volume, twice the mass, one half the mass. They have the same density. There's a different amount of- them. It's a different amount, right? But it's, you say things fall because of density. They don't fall because of density. So okay, say, so- First of so, all, you're talking about weight, which is if you have two, yeah, you're so saying if you have two liters of water, it pulls something down more than one liter of water, but water has the same density. Yeah, it makes density is part of the thing that determines it going down, right? And then how much you have is going to have a certain amount of downward pressure. Okay, but that, that's mass. As, I mean, yeah. Now you're okay, cool. I just explained everything that's material is electrostatic. So what gives something mass? What gives something its density? What gives something yeah, weight? Not, well, Electrostatics is what holds it together. It's not gravity. We'll get to that. Every time he's obliterated, he just says, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to the point of the sermon that doesn't actually address it, but he's going to pretend it addresses it <laughs> to soothe his ego and his dissonance. Man, wow, Brian has turned out to be such a disappointment. I mean, from the outset, it really appeared like he might actually have the modicum of intelligence required to actually have a logical discussion on globe Earth versus flat Earth, but it was all a facade. It was all a facade. He's got nothing. Where's his case? He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Where's the case? <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, if Bryant just understood what a burden of proof logical fallacy was and a false cause logical fallacy was, perhaps this discussion would not go this way. Gravity's not holding okay, the okay. molecules together. So at, higher, at higher air density, things weigh more. So again, so what? So you, did, you, did, you guys deny gravity, but so at lower altitude, the air is more dense. Okay. So, and things, um, and objects will weigh, um, uh -huh. he's got the goof so shaken. All he could do is scramble for these red herring logic fallacies to make it look like he knows what he's talking about when he's just utterly demolished. I mean, I've never seen someone get obliterated this hard. I mean, David Weiss completely destroying so-called Professor Dave. I mean, that wasn't as bad as this because Professor Dave basically destroyed himself by just, you know, running around like a kindergartner just with nothing but ad homs with no case either. So that was a different kind of obliteration. This is just pure intellectual obliteration. <laughs> and, I mean, I feel bad for Bryant because his ego is not going to be able to recover from this. <laughs> Okay, I'm just I'm No, just, a helium okay. balloon on either low altitude or high altitude is doing the same thing. A golf ball is doing the same thing. <laughs> Brian is shook here. He can't even he can't even finish the sermon. <laughs> it's dead city and buoyancy sorting everything else. And we it have an electric everything gradient. Else out there. Sorry. Oh, we have electric gradient on the earth, bro. So like 100 volts per meter. So yeah, we have a, a electric gradient, we have a pressure gradient. That's cool. There's a bunch of reasons we have a pressure gradient, which has to be contained, but I think you're going to get to that later. So Anyway, the point hey, is look, that look. there's a the way, listen, man, there's electrics that sets the, the up and down, okay, on the flat plane earth. And then work. density and buoyancy. It doesn't work? What do you mean it doesn't work? It's really electric forces that hold our world together. There's so many experiments that show that it, I mean, you could, the thing is, you could do these experiments yourself without hallucinating other variables like mass attracting mass. Now, nobody's, there could be plenty of other variables that also 
could theoretically prove that mass does attract mass, and and again, the heliocentric globe model is exactly as presented. But unless you can bring them forth, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of weird because can you can't really deny electric charge. I mean, everybody's been shocked. I mean, everybody's experienced some kind of static. The the all your electronic devices are obviously. Uh, they're they're using electricity, so you don't need a fairy tale of mass attracting mass to believe in electricity and electric charges, and to believe in magnets that you can manipulate yourself due to their charge, not due to mass. So I don't know. Yeah, Brian's just he's having a complete meltdown here. Why does it not work? Because it's provable okay, well, and measurable, and yours is a fairy tale okay. that can't be proven at okay, all. Well, so first I'm, of all, again, I know the electric fields of the Earth, so. So we know the gravitational field. Again, we can measure this. What are you measuring? Nobody's disputing the results. Of, nobody's disputing that you can measure a cup of water in a cup of water. What put the water there? Why is it there? And you can tell Witsit is pretty much uh, done with this goof because, I mean, I feel bad for Austin Witsit. I've seen some of his debates. I'll be getting to more of them, obviously. They're, they're actually the most highly requested on Mindshock, which is good because they're the most fun to watch because, again, it's like watching Michael Jordan in his prime. And none of these goofs are on his level. Like, Bryant, I had high hopes for Bryant. He seemed like a nice, polite guy who had some kind of brain cells to rub together. But alas, No! Alas, no, he brought nothing to the table. He's just scrambling so hard here. And you can see from the look on his face, I mean, he knows he's getting obliterated here. That's why he's so frustrated. His subconscious knows exactly what's going on. Now, that doesn't mean he doesn't, that doesn't mean he's a fraud in the sense that he doesn't believe in the heliocentric globe model. He might fully well believe it's true, but his subconscious has now recognized that he's not able to actually argue it logically or scientifically. Austin completely exposed him. And he's having a lot of trouble with this with this fact. It's relatively constant across the surface. You know, you can you can mm. actually measure the gravity again. Okay, gravitational acceleration. You guys call it nine point eight meters per second. You call it whatever atmospheric acceleration, whatever you want to call. It. I don't know what you incoherent want to call it. dielectric acceleration. Is what okay, I call it whatever. That. So whatever this number is, is is an empirical number. Whatever you want to call it can be measured across the Earth. And it's roughly by very high precision the same across all of Earth. Again, this is empirical measurable you, you know you yeah can yeah welcome to the flat earth yeah okay right so you don't disagree so now the no. problem with electricity and when you guys use the 100 and i got i wrote about this in my book so i know the the, the global electrics very well it's really electric forces that hold our world together <laughs> clearly not <laughs> how could he know them so well and not know the basic you know second grade scientific method so the problem with is that the electric the electric um, potentials across the globe. There's a really what good is this? study by, by Carnegie. Well, I'm Who just trying to show in a you globe, that. Though, bro. I mean, no, no, no. On. Listen, I'm trying to show you that this is very uniform and constant. The electric field across the Earth varies wildly. It, it it's not a constant thing like gravity. So you can't use electricity to, to describe 9.8 meters per second squared. It just okay. doesn't work. Based okay, on, so. Yeah, you know, you're not understanding. You're not understanding. For one, we don't live on a globe, okay? For two, well, everything's electrostatic. The air is electrostatic. So we're saying that the electric nature of the earth creates the down and up, the, the objective up and down. And density and buoyancy sorts the rest out. All no, matter no, 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 is wait, electrostatic. You're not, you're not so if we want to say it simply, it would be electrostatic no, you're, you're not acceleration. Me. I'm trying, even if this was flat, whatever. This is a uniform acceleration across. I mean, if you want to use your disc, I'm just trying to show you on your model this doesn't work. That you're wrong, though. No, I'm not wrong. I'm trying to show you that we have empirical evidence to show that the electric fields are very wildly across the planet because lightning strikes. You do realize that during a lightning storm, the potential, you know, the 100 volts per meter potential goes upwards to 10 to 20,000 volts per meter. And, so and during a lightning strike, sometimes things go flying in the air like they're weightless for a moment. No, they're not going to go <laughs> upwards 20,000 times stronger than normal conditions. Wait, I'm let's not, look. I, I, I had you're a, not. I had a, no, Dave, I had a light. Who said anything about 20,000? <laughs> I mean, his straw mans and hallucinations are kind of hilarious. He just pulls out these crazy numbers. He this is the, He's done this like a number of times. Like, especially with, like, the speed of the flights early on, they'd have to be going so much fa crazy faster. I mean, again, if you don't know the distances, can't verify the distances, they wouldn't have to be going that much faster, et cetera, et cetera. 
at least understand the argument first, but he's so triggered, he doesn't even understand what's being presented, so he obviously can't rebut a point he doesn't comprehend. He can only just spin his wheels in these relig with this religious sermon. I didn't strike the corner of my house here, no kidding. I didn't levitate up in the air. The electrical potential would have had about... Appeal to extremes, hasty generalizations, appeal to incredulity, and anecdotal logical fallacy. Man, this guy's setting records now. 20,000 volts the other direction. Jay, I, would, doesn't, I should, doesn't I should matter. have levitated straight up. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> appeal to incredulity again. <laughs> it's really electric forces that hold our world together. Because if... If he doesn't have the mental capacity to understand it, does that mean it's not true? So if somebody doesn't have the mental capacity to understand relativity, does that mean relativity is not true? The truth is not dependent on Bryant Myers' ability to understand it. But again, he, I guess he's too much of a narcissist to understand that. Hey, Brian, can I ask you a very simple question? Yeah. Can you explain why the clouds are not being forced down to the ground by, by your gravity theory? I just want to hear your oh. version of it. Well, I mean, the, the clouds, I mean, it's the, the, de the actual density of the atmosphere at that level. It's going to be the similar. There's, you know, there's millions of tons of water in the clouds. It's spread out very thinly, though, over it, large distances. Gravity That's doesn't why, make, uh, gravity has can, a mind of its own now? Well, gravity, I mean, is, on, keeping, <laughs> gravity is keeping those clouds from, I mean, gravity is. The helium cool balloon, the too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, it's we, electrostatics. The, the helium balloon, yeah. you know, it, things are, buoyancy is dependent on gravity. You know, gra the gravitational acceleration is right in the equation. That's not so the right that, answer. Like, well, it is the right answer. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's admittedly in your own paradigm electrostatics that holds clouds together. It is, yeah. again, we're going back to this. If it was electrostatics, it then the, there should be a uniform electric field across the Earth giving us a downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. That is, that is not what we observe. We observe wild variations of the electric field across the, the electric circuits of the Earth. Okay, you're misunderstanding nothing, again. No, this so. is this is this 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 proves that it can't be electrostatic. No, no. How, so just, how can it be electrostatic? Because everything I'm is trying constant. to tell you, man. I'm okay. trying to tell you, brother. So okay, so we have an electric gradient on the Earth. That's cool. 100 volts per meter. If there's some variance. There's some variance in different places. That's that's not relevant though. It that is sets absolutely the, relevant. Man, calm <laughs> down, man. Calm down. I'm gonna help you out, man. It sets the up and down. Okay, so we have positive energy increasing. We have negative at the surface. It sets the up and down. Everything that falls is electrostatic. So well, that means it's electrostatic acceleration. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Dude, you can't have density, you can't I, I, have mass, you can't have weight work. without electrostatics. Well, it's just what sets the up okay, and down. It doesn't matter if there's way more uh, positive okay. energy up higher, positive charge up is, higher. It doesn't matter. It okay, doesn't no, matter. it doesn't matter. Listen to me. The electric field falls off exponentially faster than the gravitational 9.8 meters per second squared. On the top of Mount Everest, it's like 9.73 or something, right? The electric Again, he's trying to use parameters that are not in what Was Austin Whitson is talking about to disprove what Austin... <laughs> This kind of circular reasoning logical fallacy wrapped into a straw man logical fallacy. I mean, this is just complete nonsense being spewed by Bryant now. I mean, I'm honestly a little disappointed. I, I was expecting more brain function from, from Bryant Myers. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? <laughs> Not one piece of substantiating evidence. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Electric I don't think you get it. No, you're not getting it. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. The electric field, by, beyond, 20, beyond 30 kilometers, there's hardly an ele any electric field at all. So how is it that we know gravity can still pull things down beyond 30 kil kilometers when there's no electrostatics up there? It, because gravity there's, doesn't... There's it, no it, electrostatics where? No, it's very low. No, if, oh. if you look, if, no oh. I've, I've researched these charts. If, how does he go from no to low? I mean, that, that's a kind of a big difference, especially when you're trying to be very, very specific. <laughs> I mean, how many times has Brian even contradicted himself within a single sentence? If you look at how the electric field drops by altitude, it drops off exponentially faster than what we know the gravitational acceleration drop. Yes, it does. Look no, I'm saying up. you're not understanding it doesn't matter I, because what it, the it electric nature how? of the Earth does is sets the up and down because there's positive energy or electricity, positive charge, which is really just charge. There's no such thing. And then it's, there's discharge at the surface or what they call negative charge. So it sets the up and down. Everything that exists electrostatic, we can prove this with a test. We can use a Cavendish 
right? We can use a, or, I mean, not a, not a Cavendish, which we can actually, that is electrostatic too, but we can use a Van de Graaff oh, generator. Listen, bro, I've check got, this out. I've I'm going to stop Cavendish. talking so much. I just want to help you out. That's here, patently wrong though. I've Van de Graaff patent. generator. Have you heard of that? <laughs> so because he possesses something, the theory is wrong. <laughs> Man, Brian is setting new lows here in his desperation to not look like a clueless Dunning-Kruger goof, but it appears he is. Yes, I've used him. I used to teach physics. Okay, can we make okay. things float with a Van de Graaff generator? You, yeah, if you, if you electrostatically charge him, you can get them to stick, you can get a balloon to stick to a wall. Can you make something float, though? <laughs> if, oh, the, you're talking about the aero electrostatics, the, the research from MIT. Electrostatics, you can make things float. Okay, we also see it in nature. Okay, well, hold Bumblebee, on, hold on. Bumblebees, beetles, uh, no, no, spider can't. ballooning. No, no, no. That, that's something. That's the that's the electro. That, that's the new technology. But this right here, Dave, you, new te Bumblebees aren't new technology, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of this just boils down to one of two things: either Brian is just this uh, idiot savant, or he's just a math genius but he just doesn't even understand basic English or basic logic. Or he he's relatively intelligent, but he's so triggered that he can't logically function for just any discussion on Flat Earth. I really don't think he's like a super genius playing stupid or anything like that. Maybe he is. Again, I don't know him. But that seems to be the issue here. So he either he's either that triggered that, that his logic switch turned off or he really is just an idiot savant who never understood logic or basic English in the first place. And he's just this uh, master regurgitator. So that's why he excelled at academia. He just memorized everything with no critical thinking or deductive reasoning. Bumblebees you generate, have lift. They have wings that generate lift. But their wings that's aren't different. aerodynamic. Their bodies aren't aerodynamic. It they use electrostatic they're resonance. Generating, they're still generating lift. No, and spider what ballooning is, also uses electrostatic what levitation. And we can... It, it, this it, is what it, science it, is, Brian. What science oh. is, is that we manipulate an independent variable to prove the cause of the effect. No. And we can do this with electrostatics and make like, things You close. can't do it with electrostatics. And wow. He just dunked it right in Brian's face. I mean, this is sheer obliteration. I mean, Austin, nothing Austin Whitsitt is saying is even that radical or, uh, or hard to understand, really. I mean, what, second, third, fourth, definitely fifth grade. Definitely fifth graders can understand what he just said. I actually haven't heard anybody else talk about the dependent, independent variables and controls. I think Austin Whitsitt is the first flatter people, person in a flat earth debate, globe or flat side, that has brought that forward. I've been talking about this for, for as long as I've been watching flat earth videos. I mean, you have to go to the, ba what is the basics? What is the foundation of science? And nobody's talking about it. They're all up on the higher levels of the house of cards of the religion of scientism varies and we know david's that literally right. showing it right now he's literally showing it i know but if you take that same charge and put it against the wall it'll stick to the wall okay so but you're you're making my point stronger <laughs> <laughs> all right does anybody else feel bad for bryant now i mean i wasn't like i don't know what i was expecting but this 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 level of sheer obliteration cons consistent sustained obliteration i don't know if i expected that he forgot his case he forgot to bring it i don't know i don't see it do you <laughs> not one piece of substantiating evidence which is yeah, that no, the I'm primary not. causal no, agent no. of the directionality of things going up or down or to the side that it was, you just agreed that it would stick to the wall because you increase electrostatic surface charge what happens once it runs know, out but, it but goes back fall, down no. electrostatics is called the dispersion or the van der waals of course yeah okay? what happens when it and, runs out of its surface charge that you and, added to it? it's going to no, fall gravity, back down to the ground no, gravity's always downward it doesn't go e who's talking about gravity <laughs> on austin's face it's like what is this goof rambling about you can't stick a balloon to the side because gravity's not real my man i'm sorry it it's not like it? you're manipulating the bending Again, and warping of space you can time it into whatever you want i spent a year studying electrodynamics so i could do a course on pmf it's really electric forces that hold our world together wow that that makes bryant look even dumber he spent a year studying this stuff and he can't grasp basic concepts about it it's really electric forces that hold our world together. Well, the, the problem is, in his own mind, he can't even do a thought experiment where gravity is not real. That, that seems to be the problem because he's, he, oh, it seems like he's 
hallucinating that gravity would always have to be part of the equation, even on a flat Earth where gravity doesn't exist. He still has gravity in the equation. And that's why he's having so much trouble understanding it in relation to electromagnetic forces or electrostatic forces. Because he still thinks that even with all the electrostatics, the gravity would still have to be part of the equation. And his brain, he just doesn't have the mental strength or the mental wherewithal to even do a basic thought experiment. Because I did energy, I've done energy medicine for 25 years, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm telling you that the, what we know as the downward acceleration on planet Earth, so it's very uniform. The electric field and electric volt is not uniform at all. It w varies wildly. And the Every, can I say one last closing thing and then I'll move on because I don't want to take over the whole thing. Okay, Just check me out so you can know our position. You can decide if it's true or not when you look into it. Okay. Into uh, let's just let me say one last thing. All molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. So all matter is electrostatic, like even insulators, right? Rubber, glass, you name it. Okay, now that's an attractive force. It's attractive or repulsive. And so, and so listen, man, everything that falls is electrostatic. You can't find any matter that is electrostatic. Dude, I mean, if we manipulate that variable, we can make things float. Now, we can prove that. We cannot manipulate the bending and warping of space-time. Relativity is a theory that has never been proven. It's actually been debunked on the quantum and cosmological scale. Therefore, electrostatics I, 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 is the I, 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 only I, 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 viable option. Okay, but... You know, I'm done. That's just, that's just, that's just nonsense. <laughs> oh, wow. Ad hom. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. That's just, that's just, that's just nonsense. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. That's just, that's just, that's just nonsense. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. That's just, that's just, that's just nonsense. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. That's just, that's just, that's just nonsense. And also Austin Witsit uh, did commit a fallacy there, false dichotomy. There could be other, th again, You'd have to prove it if you think it's true. But theoretically, there could be other variables or factors as well. Uh, but yeah, that was just another 50 points for Jordan. And Bryant was left so demolished, he had to resort to the ad hom. <laughs> it's just a fact. It's all just objective. No, electrostatics does not have a direction out. You can stick a balloon to a wall. Gravity's always straight down. I, I told know. you that positive energy increases above the surface. We have an up and down That's set by the electric energy. nature on the earth. Positive it isn't complicated. Is okay, tell me where that comes from. Positive and tell me where that positive energy the comes earth. from. Earth. So yes. let me ask you a question, Brian. Where does the where does why does mass attract mass? Like where does that come from? Like why would mass attract mass? Where does that come from? <laughs> right here, this is MIT. They have a silent drone and it has no moving parts. Is it defying gravity or is it defying electrostatics? Okay, I'll tell you what it is. It's actually what's called corona discharge. So the, 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 the front part of it's a wire. I've seen this technology and I've looked at it. It's basically shooting out a stream of ions from the front thin wire to the back thicker one, okay? Corona discharge. That movement of ions is actually moving air under the wing, okay? It creates a very, very weak lift, but it will move it a little way like that. Now, they even admitted this only works in the atmosphere. You have to actually have air for this to work. Yeah, there's definitely no air on Earth. <laughs> that, what you just showed, will not work at high altitudes because there's not enough air up there for the corona discharge to shoot ions from one electrode to the other. And again, I spent a lot of time looking at this. That this is how it works. It's called electro aerodynamic thrust, Dave. Also, he, he's definitely a narcissist because he somehow equates with the amount of time he spent looking at it to how much he must be able to understand it. Obviously, there's no correlation there. Like, if he spent all... The, like, let's say he's not good with languages. If he spent all this time trying to learn perfect Icelandic or, or I don't know, some of these older languages that are very, very difficult, just because you spend time on it doesn't mean you have a good understanding of it or that the theories that you've built to explain it are actually true. That's what you need the scientific method for. Austin Witz is constantly talking about scientific method, dependent and independent variables, controls. Uh, I'm talking about that too. That's what's, that's what's being scientific. Not hallucinating that the amount of time you spent on something or because you taught a course on regurgitated information that you took on blind faith as true, regardless of whether it's true or not. If you can't explain it in scientific terms by providing actual evidence, you are not scientific. It's that simple. You're not scientific. You're not logical. You're just religious. And Bryant just can't comprehend that fact. Where's his case? He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? <laughs> Not one piece of substantiating evidence.
All right. Can we can. All right. So. Um, we could agree to disagree on uh, half of what we said. The The question now is, let's take gravity and the atmosphere adjacent to a void. Can you explain how the atmosphere stays on the Earth? Let's let's get to that. Um, well, and first of all, we have to um, look at the rotation, which we didn't get to. So I wanted to, ex- to explain the high speeds and slow rotation thing. And one of the things I've seen you guys share. Where did it go? Um, I think, I'm sorry, it's loading very slow. Um, oh, no, wait, it's not here. It's this rotation. Oh, I'll just go. To, I'll just go. Forget it. I'll just go here. Oh, shoot. What's happened to my internet? Oh, it's the ether messing with you, man. Do you know that you can't fly north to south on the great meridian circle routes? Uh, you you would have the Earth spin underneath you like thousands of kilometers over a five hour flight. It's, okay, well, what we can, we can, I, that's, no, I, I can explain that too. Um, okay. Okay, so, so first of all, we have to understand the atmosphere, it's not a hard division. So you've got this very slow, very slow gradient. It's, it, it's a gradient that, that tapers off very slowly. And like I said, this is the Kármán line, right? The Kármán line is 100 kilometers above the surface. And it basically is like a thin bubble around the Earth. The atmosphere is not some big, thick thing like... I've thick seen or thin, speed. go ahead. Paper thin, right. So these speeds, I did the calculation. So you can actually calculate like, with the atmosphere rotating with the Earth that you end up with... And you can really tell how much of an insecure narcissist Brian is because he's talking about how he did the calculations instead of just saying... You know, you could do the calculations or the calculations show. He's always obsessing with, well, I did the calculations. I wrote a book. I taught this instead of allowing the evidence to pres- to speak for itself. Not one piece of substantiating evidence. You end up with only like a 12 mile an hour difference between the surface and that this altitude based on the whole radius. So these numbers are just way off. I mean, whoever shared this is just... So, Forget all those numbers. We have an atmosphere so, okay. sitting on the Earth adjacent right? to a void of no pressure. So it's not well. First of all, when you go when you take this gradient, all right, you're going it, very slowly from a high pressure slow, to no pressure. I, I got it, and it goes until there's nothing left. So and now you're like, in. Not, it's not like so, so. You know, so here's what's becoming very clearly evident. I don't know if I mentioned this in part one. But it looks like Bryant just went up and found some anti-Flat Earth memes, and he's just arguing in, against the memes without any regard for the arguments being presented in this particular discussion, debate, whatever you want to call it. And his goofery with this is exposed, and then also his desperation, like, you have to understand as he's preaching the sermon. No, they don't have to understand a religious point that he doesn't back up with evidence. And saying, oh, well, you have to understand, God wanted to do this and this and that, and that's why. But wait a second. If you haven't proved the existence of God first, saying, you have to understand, that doesn't mean anything. Just like him saying, oh, that's not convincing. (laughs) Because he said that a bunch of times. That's just not convincing. That's the only rebuttal he has to any of this. He doesn't have any actual logical points of rebuttal and when somebody is so thoroughly indoctrinated into a cult or religion like brian is what would they find convincing like if you have some kind of radicalized religious person planning to do some kind of whatever religious event uh hopefully not deadly but whatever the case may be somebody a radicalized religious person Are they going to find any kind of logic or reason or scientific experience? Are they going to find it convincing? Or are they going to say, well, that's just not convincing, like Bryant does. (laughs) Saying that's not convincing, again, that's an appeal to incredulity, logical fallacy, because it's so incredulous he's not convinced by it. To him, it's incredulous. Because, again, if you you completely abandon the scientific method, if you completely abandon it, what are you going to find convincing against your own cult? Obviously. Not much, as Brian is proving, but let's continue this uh, total train wreck now. I mean, we've been off the rails for a while. That man there wants a win so badly today. It means so much to him. He is so carried away with the prospect of winning, the idea that he forgot something that's absolutely essential to today's proceedings. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. 
I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Uh, it's not like so, so. What's holding it down? Gravity. Okay. <laughs> Look at his face when he said gravity. As if, as if it's blasphemous to even suggest. Now, it either doesn't exist or doesn't work the way he thinks it works. His expression gives it all away here. And that brings me to my next point. Is it more dangerous to have a potentially genuine guy like Brian? Like, he, he's not, I don't think he's playing an idiot here. I just, I really don't. Maybe he is, again, I don't know. Him, but I don't think he's playing an idiot. So he seems genuine, but utterly clueless in abandoning the scientific method. But he has this hallucination that because he spent a certain amount of time, or he wrote a book, or he taught some kind of religion, that must mean the religion is true. And that's dangerous to anybody looking for truth, right? So is it worse to have a guy like Brian in this kind of debate? Or is it better to have an utter buffoon like Professor Dave humiliating himself uh, with all the ad homs, clearly exposing the agenda that he has? Is it not? Is it better to have a guy like Professor Dave, or is it better to have a guy like Brian, who's somewhat polite? Obviously, him. I mean, his mental breakdown here, where he just has to resort to ad homs, which he hadn't before. Uh, it's 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 sad, but it's also seemingly more dangerous because this guy's a supposed professional, supposed professional, and he all he can do is find some anti flat Earth memes and argue against them instead of actually addressing the points presented with the people actually talking to him. I mean, it's crazy. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. That's just, that's just, that's just nonsense. Not one piece of substantiating evidence. Okay, so here's a question for you, an experiment. I'm in a room and I have a shoebox and I suck all the air out of the room, an open shoebox. I suck all the air out of the room from underneath. So now I'm in a vacuum. Is the air in the shoebox going to stay in the shoebox? Is Wait. gravity going to hold it in the shoebox? Yeah, but in that situation, you've got all the atmosphere pushing down on you. No, no, no. I suck all of the air out of the room. So the room is now a vacuum. It's space. It has no air. The only difference from space is the room has a container. But that shoebox of air, according to you, the gravity should hold the air in the shoebox. Because if that doesn't work, if you say it wouldn't no, do no. that, then your entire no. gradient argument is off the table. No, the, if you're talking about six, a six sextillion ton Earth. It's a huge mass pulling so that's a lot of notice how he completely avoided addressing what david I and mean, he does this with everything it's like I, I think the main issue here might be narcissism because he has this need to satiate his ego because he doesn't like looking this dumb in front of a bunch of young guys and i mean not only young guys but flat earthers no less so he seems to be very concerned about what everybody watching this is going to think because he's getting utterly decimated, so he has to grasp anything to satiate his ego. So he has to bring up, again, all of these religious points, some of which might be completely true. Maybe all of them are true. But he, again, he has to cite these, uh, equ you know, either talk about equations or calculations or numbers. He has to make himself look smart. That seems to be his primary goal. His goal here is not to actually logically or scientifically discuss anything. His goal here is not to find the truth in any way. His goal here is not to engage in true science and see if his theories actually hold up to scrutiny. Because that's what science is all about. Religion is about not blaspheming against it. So these guys are blaspheming. He doesn't like it. He's getting all triggered. But he's also one of his main goals, if not his main goal here, is supposedly seems to be to protect his ego. So instead of addressing basic points and answering basic yes or no questions, he has to, again, try to make himself look smart. And that's why this has been completely off the rails for a while now. And it's so obvious, his desperation in not looking stupid over actually having a genuine logical scientific debate mass pulling the, the atmosphere that's very paper thin like you agreed on the so it, it's oh, holding listen, the air down but i could pull impression. the air up and away with a straw no you're not what you're doing is you're actually you're, you're sucking out the air and it's the atmosphere pushing down from gravity that's pushing the water up this is how the straws work it's really electric forces that hold our world together you're you're creating a partial vacuum in the in the straw i used to teach this day <laughs> Ego on full display. He used to teach a particular religion. So if you're a priest and you're preaching a sermon in a church, that means you can't be wrong. That means you can't be wrong. God has to be real 
if you've preached a sermon, because the priest can just say, "Oh, well, I used to, I used to, I used to have sermons on this." Of course, it's true because I did sermons on it. Like the amount of insecurity here from Brian is emanating so much. Like I really feel bad for the poor guy because he seems to be having a mental breakdown, making to look this dumb from these young guys, these flat earthers, utter decimation and. All he can do is grasp desperately at these regurgitated points from his religion, which again might be true, but notice he's not actually proving anything. He's just, it's almost like he's trying to convince himself it's true. Like the sheer desperation, this is how, this is how straws work. This is how they work. It's like he's trying to convince himself more than these guys. <laughs> again, just to soothe that fragile ego. I mean, this is what, this is what it is. Uh, uh, so can... What happens is, you know, well, here's... here's... But Dave, ask him again because I, I didn't understand his no, no, answer no, no, for no. this shoebox. Yeah, you understand the atmospheric pressure is fourteen pounds, fourteen point seven pounds. Yes, square inch. Yeah, you know we all know that. So this is a fifteen pound weight. So this amount of atmosphere, it's a huge. Have try this experiment. Mm -hmm. Hold up a fifteen pound weight. Okay, every square inch. Looks like Brian's having a little bit of trouble with it. <laughs> is fifteen pounds of pressure. So when you create a partial vacuum in that straw, there's one atmosphere or fit or 14.7 pounds per square inch pushing the water down and up. What side. about my shoebox? I don't understand the shoe. So box. why does? Oh wow! Is this the first bit where where Brian admits he doesn't understand something? Because he doesn't seem to have understand any of the points, but his ego, his Dunning, his extreme Dunning Kruger has prevented him from addressing his own mental deficiency and not understanding anything up until this point. Now he seems this is the first time he's admitting his mental deficiency. But let's see where this goes. So why doesn't so, water wait, why doesn't water come out of the straw when you just put a straw in a glass in? Because there's no there's no partial vacuum. The air is still there. You've got to actually suck the air out to get that's a partial what he's vacuum to push down. So it, and I guess the shoebox is the wrong example. Let's not, say it's not hard. It's not hard to understand. Hold on. Let's really. say that there's a box that is sealed. It's got air in it. Okay, we suck the okay. rest of the air out of the room so that there's just the box there with the air in it. When we slide okay. the top off the box, will the air then stay at the bottom of the box because what, of gravity? To, I don't know what you're trying to say. And he just he just exposed himself there. I don't know what you're trying to say instead of answering the question. If you're a physics professor, can you not answer that question? Because he if he th if he thinks the answer is going to make him look stupid, then he doesn't want to answer it, which he admits right here. I don't know what you're trying to say. Because he's thinking they're going to make him look stupid, regardless of who's right or wrong about anything. Let's assume Brian is correct about everything. Just for the sake of argument, no need for anybody to get you. Just for the sake of argument, let's assume Brian is correct about everything. But you could clearly see that his motivations regard around protecting his ego. Because if whatever, if wherever this is going, if he gives the right answer, if it makes him look stupid, he doesn't want to even give the right answer. So he just really exposed himself right here. Gravity Why don't you just listen for a second? Listen, if you're in a room, I, I am listening. Okay, then answer the question. If you're in a room and there's a and we suck all the air out, but there's only a shoe, uh, a box in the middle of the room that has air in it, and then we remove the top of that box, where's that air going to be? Is it going to stick to the earth, or is it going to? How gonna... does that relate to the? Again, he's dodging it. He can't because he's so concerned about looking stupid and being utterly exposed as the goof he is. That he doesn't even want to give the even if it's the correct answer he doesn't want to give it because he thinks it might look make him look stupid. So this tells you all you need to know about Brian Myers. That man there wants a win so badly today it means so much to him. He is so carried away with the prospect of winning the idea that he forgot something that's absolutely essential to today's proceedings. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? I'm asking you a question. It doesn't matter how it relates. I'm just asking you. So, I want to well, know. Because cause you said that the gravity holds the air under the earth and the air gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Okay. okay so we okay. removed all of the air out of the room. So there's no pressure okay. from the atmosphere okay. pushing down on this box. We open okay, up the box. Gravity holds the air in there or we, not? Yeah, but do we still have gravity or not? Are we? Are yes. We trying to yeah, we have on, gravity. On your Earth, your gravity. Yes, on okay, your but Earth. But have you actually done that experiment to get down to a zero yes. vacuum? Yeah, people have done that. People have put a chamber inside of a vacuum chamber. It's not that hard to do it. Okay, yes. But, they, but so, but here's here's the thing, Brian. I mean, okay. 
little bit. If the answer is the air would not come, it oh, would come out of the box and the entire wait, pressure wait, gradient wait, next wait, to a void wait. is, is, is off the table. No, no, no. And here's the other thing. There's nowhere in science nature anywhere that you could have high pressure next to low pressure without a, without a container. Nowhere, anywhere. What do you mean Ever. high pressure next to low pressure? High, any, any higher pressure next to lower pressure or hey. no pressure hey. in any orientation. Okay. It doesn't matter. Listen, do you, you have a little app that can measure the pressure in your house, the atmospheric pressure? I don't. You can wait, why would you not answer his question? No, wait, no, listen, I'm answering his question. You can you can literally measure the pressure at one altitude. It was a yes or no answer. <laughs> but now the cognitive dissonance is spinning. The and, and the protection of the ego is clearly Brian's primary concern. I wasn't sure about that early on, but now he's clear he's made that clear. And go up and higher and see that it drops at altitude. I mean the real question here now, is Bryant more concerned about shielding his ego? Or actually proving that the Earth is a heliocentric globe. That's the real question now. We've shifted. <laughs> okay, but that, he asked that, you what that, would happen to the pressure in the pressure box. That is lower pressure next to higher pressure. That is lower pressure next to higher pressure. You can measure no. that provably. What would happen with the pressure in the box? The, the kinetic theory of gases says that gases are, are, are going out fast. So but when space, you have yeah. the sheer scale of the Earth and the gravity well of planet Earth, they're not going to go outside of the gravity but, well. They might... They might in that room scatter around because gases do that. That's the kinetic theory of gases. But what's different? They might scatter around. That's his answer. They might. He doesn't even know what would happen. <laughs> Is he the right guy for this conversation? Think about it. It's the same gravity. On the surface yeah, it's of the, the Earth. Same, same right. gravity is pulling. I, I, yeah. I know, but you're, you're not looking at the whole. That, 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 those gas molecules aren't going to escape into, out, out of space. They might. Gravity is actually pulling on them, but you have to look at. Like, again, I don't think you have to do the calculations. You got to say, okay, mm. here's what the kinetic theory of gases says, and gravity is going to pull down. And there's going to be some energy that might be moving them around, but gravity is still there pulling them down. But Isn't gravity have... stronger at the surface, though? But there's other forces than just gravity. You guys realize that, right? Like electromagnetic forces? <laughs> it's really electric forces that hold our world together. But I'm just there, asking like a simple question. Isn't gravity strongest at the surface or technically at the center of mass, right? So the oh, right, surface. But, but it's a very slow, gra I mean, it goes off very slowly though, you see? So that small gradient, it's not a very fair experiment because you've got to get on a larger scale to see a, a, a big difference in the gravitational field. Do you not see his point though? Like if we take I, gas I, I and see it's in a point, vacuum on not, the surface where the gravity is the strongest, is, but, it but, goes but, in all directions. I know, but So we, how would it stop it next to a vacuum where gravity is weaker? The gravitational field of the it, the reason that's because you see you see less gas up there, right? So that's the reason why there's more pressure at sea level because it does have less. That's and less a non sequitur gravity. to the question, though. It isn't. This is why you're getting close to a, a vacuum at a kilom at a hundred kilometers up. It's almost a vacuum. Yeah, you're just I mean, you're, so you're the, repeating the, the same thing. Line. So this gradient is because of gravity. That's why you know. Is that a false cause, logical cause? How has he demonstrated it is because of gravity? Again, dependent variables, independent variables, controls. Not, he's not actually citing any real evidence. He's just preaching. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? <laughs> not one piece of substantiating evidence. The gra gravitational field decreases with altitude. That's why, you know, less and less, you know, you get... That's a begging the question fallacy. Well, well, what are you trying to, I don't understand what you're trying to. We're saying it, listen, listen, if we have gas pressure in a container on the surface and it's next to a vacuum, once we open that box, it's going to fill the vacuum violently, right? It's immediately going to seek equilibrium. Second law of thermodynamics. Oh, wait, you're, you're about, Second talking... law of thermodynamics. The gas is going to fill the vacuum because high pressure goes to low pressure, right? Kind Entropy of like this, will... railroad, this railroad tank truck, how it just implodes like this. Has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, do I, why I can't you just hear me out and answer? Just listen so to we can Austin. Hear I'm just trying to understand what so you're saying. So listen to Austin. Just listen to him. He's going to explain something. Just listen and, and take it in. Yeah. So like, if we have a container of gas on the surface of the Earth, and then we have a vacuum chamber, and we open the gas next to a vacuum chamber, that gas from the container, once we open the lid, it's going to fill the vacuum violently, right? It's going to immediately seek equilibrium and fill that vacuum, fill the available space. And that's on the surface where gravity is the strongest. I know, but the gravitational field is still acting on all those particles, but there's other things going on. You know, again, the gases are very, they have a lot of motion and energy. So is this just reverse engineering where he has to pretend all these other things going on would explain away any issue with gravity? <laughs>
Now, again, that doesn't mean it's not true, but the burden of proof is always on positive claims. <laughs> I mean, Brian really doesn't even have a fundamental grasp of basic logic. It's really sad. And his need to satiate his own ego seems to be superseding his need to even prove the point about the heliocentric globe. <laughs> So that's the, what we're saying. Oh, oh, yeah, actually, I know. I know the reason because at the at the surface of the Earth, the temperature actually makes gases move faster. So that's the problem. When you have something like a gas, you've got a higher temperature. That's where they're going to move around. So gravity is still pulling on them, but there's other factors at play there besides just, besides just uh, gravity. Vacuum chambers are actually not uh, very warm, bro. So even on the surface level, when we have a vacuum chamber where it's not warm, well, again, the gas is still going to immediately that fill the vacuum. The send point me, is that it's filling the vacuum, it. and if it's at the isolated exp experiment, if you want to send me the experiment, <laughs> fine. You can do it a million times, man. Do you not see the intrinsic contradictory nature well, of what you're did saying? Did you see the contradictoriness of you're what you're using saying? One little isolated thing. It's not an not, isolated thing. We're trying to explain to you that gravity isn't sufficient to hold down gas when it's adjacent to a vacuum. The gases have kinetic energy, and they're moving around. That's I mean, what we're that's saying. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Man, what is, I don't know. I think Bryant really is this idiot savant. He just has some kind of mental disability, but he's a super genius in math. I haven't double checked his math though, so maybe he's not, but let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say he's a super genius in math. Let's say all his actual math adds up. In his mind, he hallucinates that the math must prove the theories that the math is based on. Like, if 1 plus 1 unicorns is 2 unicorns, if you do that equation, that must mean unicorns exist. That's Brian's logic here. He has presented nothing other than that argument. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? <laughs> I know, right. But I'm saying when you've got a large scale of a huge 6 sextillion ton Earth, that creates this gradient of different pressures. So, you, yes, you've got a lot of mo movement going on at every... Six sextillion tons? Is, is he sure it's not 666? Or 6.66? 6 <laughs> How did they measure the weight of the Earth? Does anybody know? Like, did they put a piece of it on the scale and then they thought that they, they just extrapolated from there? Like, how did they do that? <laughs> Again, I'm not saying it's wrong, and Bryant might be correct about it, but when you're just throwing out random things without proof, that just makes you look like a religious zealot, like Bryant. Not one piece of substantiating evidence. You know, nobody doubts we have storm systems. I mean, we've got all kinds of stuff going on, but as a whole, the gravity is keeping everything... But it's uh, not. It doesn't keep it down on the surface where it's the strongest. And the, the strongest vacuum we can replicate is like 10 to the negative 6 tor, right? They yeah. claim space is 10 to the negative 17 tor. So that's where gravity is the weakest. It's close. It's know, next but, to a much, much different know, but, pressure but, but differential. Vacuums, but vacuums aren't sucking things out. I mean, No one said that. Gas fills the space. Vacuums know, don't suck. That's another non sequitur The gravitational though. field is what's keeping everything in place. That's why it's really electric forces that hold our world together. So why doesn't it keep why doesn't it keep that air in that box in place? Okay, so the box. Well, again, I haven't done that experiment. I okay, but I you don't even need to do the experiment. Just think about it, and let's pretend. Yeah, yeah, use your mind and, and yeah, let's come pretend. I'm using my solution. mind, so, but you're using a little tiny room. Okay, no, hold on. Of like entire huge. Wait, if he's using his mind to try to comprehend, he's not getting it. Like, how much of a mind does he have to use? <laughs> um, a huge. I mean, so it, you're saying that the little it's, tiny it's, room gas or the little tiny room vacuum is stronger than the vacuum of I, space? I'm saying that gravity is pulling down on those gas molecules, but they also have a kinetic energy. And they, there's a lot going on there that you're just... There's a lot going on. So yeah, it is important to identify all the variables, but hallucinating variables are acting on something without knowing what the variables are or proving that they're doing that. That's not science. That's hallucinatory religion, which Brian has been practicing this entire conversation. <laughs> So why doesn't the kinetic energy of our atmosphere go off into the fill the void of space? It actually does. We lose, we lose atmosphere oh. every, every day. And who told you that? And where, where, how did you measure this? Man, just, this is just I a actually, theory. This is just no, a theory. I've actually heard David Murphy, Dave Murphy say, saying this. Is, oh, he heard a priest saying that he talked to God. That must be and it's true. He heard someone say it. <laughs> and look at his face. The religious zealotry. You can read it right on his face there some kind of like you're losing atmosphere i'm like yeah you're right Dave. we are we got about 150 million years based on this calculation of atmosphere still left a theory 
It's but yeah, so no, we can no. One of your own flat Earth people has brought this up at a, at a debate. Okay, okay. Why well, you're appealing to? Yeah, they're talking about how no, your saying, model has a no, theory. I'm saying that's... that we do lose uh, atmosphere every day, and it's actually a lot, but it's. Compared to how much atmosphere there is, it's a small amount. You know what else is weird? Why do? Because this is actually a semi-plausible uh, scenario, semi-plausible theory. Maybe that is what's going on. Why didn't he bring it up right away? Like, why was there all this just ego protection and and insanity and Dunning Kruger triggering? Because that that's a that's relatively plausible. Now again, you'd have to obviously replicate this gradient or prove that it exists somehow instead of just theorizing about it. But I, I wouldn't say that this isn't that this isn't convincing. I mean, it's not convincing, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's implausible. This could be how it works. But if he again, the burden of proof, logical fallacy, he must prove that's how it works. You know, this theory. Maybe it sounds good. Maybe it's plausible. Maybe it's true. But if you want to prove it scientifically and logically, you actually have to do it, not just say it. Not one piece of substantiating evidence. That's what we're saying. That doesn't make sense. That's not how the second law works. I know, but it's... Why does some escape and not all? It's because, again, it's, it's a little... Gravity's holding it. It's, it's a statistical thing. You've got a little bit of... You've got a little bit of gas at the fringes. What's statistical about it? <laughs> it's like when Bryant gets completely obliterated and decimated, he just desperately grasps at random words to make himself sound smart, and he just keeps going to gravity. Gravity's like his god. Well, why gravity? Why this? Gravity. <laughs> he has no actual proof or evidence, adhering to the scientific method anyway, that it is gravity that's doing any of these things, but he just preaches it as if it has to be true. Anything that can't be explained? Gravity. Relativity. Gravity. <laughs> It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Statistical. Is it like rolling, got gravity's out here shooting dice, bro? No, no, like, it's, that's not... you just have, because there's a lot less up there, there's not that much that's going to come out. But, but yeah, because the pressures are so low, there is going to be some of this that will, you know, escape out. But it's... it's but then the stuff lower, the stuff lower down small, is being held by the gravity, small right? percentage, yeah, to, to what's left. So, okay. yeah. you know, This debunks I, the model, bro. It doesn't debunk the model. It does. It's physically impossible. It's contradictory to natural law. It's not, though. I mean... It literally is. Gra gravity it works just perfect to keep it. You can't have a pressure gradient without But we just gravity. explained... We just gave it a, a thought experiment that but shows that gravity doesn't really? do You think electrostatic... Electric gradient on the Earth. Yeah. Austin, awesome. what was the difference again? The, the Austin? electric gradient falls off a lot faster than gravity does. It doesn't work. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. How much stronger, Austin? Work. I want to hear it again. How much stronger is the electrical? Uh, I know. Oh, 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity it's, even it's claims it's to be. It's also electrically, because it's so strong, it, it attracts like that. Everything's neutral because of that. And, That's and such a non sequitur. The, the, the electric force on the earth. I just now quoted MIT four decade long professor Walter Lewin telling you that all observations we see on the earth are electric. And the only time gravity begins to account for anything is out in space on the planetary scale. Well, you have yes, you have electrical phenomena on the Earth, but notice how he completely do Brian completely dodges that because he's viewing his fellow scientism priest. It, it's funny; it's like nothing that the sci the other scientism priest he has to respect him or at least pretend to respect him because they're they're both priests of the same religion. But anything that is too anything that triggers him and he thinks might be inaccurate relative to the religion, it's like it doesn't process in his brain. So he still has to keep up the facade of respect for the other priest. I mean, this is very curious here. <laughs> the mental gymnastics that Bryant has to do to maintain the faith. I mean, it's, it's very, very curious. This is a very interesting case study. Bryant is a very interesting case study here because we also have his, uh, his struggle here between protecting his ego, which he, val he might value more than even uh, defending the heliocentric globe, just by the way that he... Uh, is conversating here just all of his desperation grass and mental breakdowns i mean it's just very very interesting to see the exact method by which it's all happening <laughs> i mean this is unique this is a unique discussion i will give it that i will give it that it is a unique discussion here it's really electric forces that hold our world together most for the most things that we deal with in everyday life everything's electrically neutral for the most part but it's all has electrostatic potential and it's all electric and the air's electric and everything's I know, electric but the, but the point is that the 9.8 <laughs> not gravity bro 
9.8 meters per second squared is uniform. We can measure this uniform across the planet. Yeah. The electric you can measure a cup of water in every single country and replicate it. It doesn't tell you why the water is there. I mean, this is just, these are the fundamentals that Bryant can't grasp. I mean, he's not even on a second grade level in terms of the definition of science itself. Field varies wildly. There's no way that that can account for the 9.8 meters per second drop. Not only that, the electric field becomes basically zero at about 30 or 40 kilometers up. Again, measurably so. What? Yes. It goes are. up 100 volts per meter. It gets stronger no, as you go. No, it yeah. doesn't. Where, where, where no, did you, you come up with it gets, it gets weaker? It gets weaker. I, I, what are you talking about? The electric field at 100 volts per meter, as you go up in altitude, that, that drops off. Mm -mm. When you get to like the ionosphere where it becomes highly, con no, this is, look it up. The ionosphere. No, the, I'm saying there's a highly conductive realms within the atmosphere that then the electric yeah. field gets blocked. You, you don't, the electric field drops. How high is that? It's, well, it's, it's, it's pretty high up, but it's not, it's not, it's not out into space where gravity still works. It's pretty high up. <laughs> Very specific terms from this man of science. <laughs> Gravity's not real, man. So the point well, is that there's no electric fields up there. What's what's pulling things towards the Earth? I mean, it, no, it okay. We, we said it's up and down. Density. We've explained it, but I got a question. When you would you like to admit you were miss you misspoke when you claimed that all this stuff to do with trains and cars and stuff has to have gravity exist? When when I just now no, quoted the, from your own paradigm, MIT professor, right? I watch Watcher Lewin. You, you said watch you watched it, but you keep denying what he said. No, I don't. I'm not denying electromagnetism. I'm just saying that you that when you actually build structures like bridges and buildings, you always use Newton's laws of, of motion and gravitation. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Cool story. It's just nothing it's to do not with downward story. acceleration. That's hey, all it is. Up. Coulomb's law is the same thing, except you replace your, your little fairy tale just, of gravity with a charge. You, you have a constant velocity the known, the same thing. The known, the known values oh. of the electric field very wildly across the planet where we know the gravitational... That's a non-sequitur, bro. It's not. It, 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 you don't understand it, then. Does Bryant not understand what a non-sequitur is? <laughs> I mean, it's also a red herring as well. It debunks the electric static model is what it does. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. No, it doesn't. All, it does all too. molecules. It does too. That's his argument. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does too. <laughs> what a scientific conversation they're having. <laughs> Do you agree that all matter is electrostatic? You just agree that the, uh, that, that the uniform acceleration across the surface of the Earth is uniform. And I just showed you that you can easily find out that it's not. Do you agree that all matter is electrostatic? All matter is electrostatic? Yeah. Why would you say the word electrostatic? All matter that exists is electrostatic. I would not say, I would not put it that way. Can you name one thing that isn't? When you say electrostatic, I mean. Does he not know the definition of electrostatic? <laughs> this man of science who's supposedly studied all this and is very familiar with electrostatics. And <laughs> electrostatics, it deals with just, I used to teach this, right? It's, it's Coulomb's law where you're dealing with just pure charges without magnetism. So when we, okay. study, when we study electrostatics, we're, we're not using magnetism at that point. We're just looking at Coulomb's law without a magnetic field. So no, okay. it's not all electrostatic because there is magnetism, there is mass, and there what? is other forces. Can no, you name about, one piece of matter that's not electrostatic? What do you one mean, type of matter? That's not, how you, that's not how you define matter, electrostatic. Can Another straw man. He's not saying you define matter that way. He's asking if matter has this property. So I don't know. I don't know what happened to Brian here. Did his mental breakdown just render his brain completely useless at this point? Where he can't even understand basic definitions? Can you name one type of matter that's not electrostatic? That, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> all molecular and intermolecular <laughs> attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. All matter is electrostatic. Matter has, again, it's got, you know that matter, ha it has mass, charge, spin. So there is charge in there. Yes, I'm not denying that there is not a charge on electric oh, particles. In all matter. But there's also mass and there's also spin and there's also other things. It's not. Yeah, you get charge to mass ratio. You're always looking at charge. And that's what holds the matter together. And that means everything that falls down to the earth is electrostatic. It's not, no, it's not. You can't. It's really electric forces.
that hold our world together. Oh my gosh. Show All me right. a model. Okay, with your electrostatic theory, I'll give you a challenge. It's not his theory, right? It's <laughs> the existing theories. Show me yeah. how you can calculate 9.8 meters per second down. Give me an equation where I can use your electrostatic model to verify that things fall at 9.8 meters. Because with Newton's laws, I, I can do that. Okay, we can use the same exact equation. We just have to properly define mass. Gravity is nothing more than downward acceleration. Little g is downward acceleration. That's just, re, that's just rebranding gravity. Just wait, wait, listen, it. buddy. You don't, you don't understand that. It is it rebranding gravity or is gravity rebranding electromagnetism? <laughs> Either way, are you just reverse engineering? Like, what's the real truth here? And does Brian not have the mental capacity to understand this basic point? Little g is just downward acceleration. It isn't a cause claim. And Newton just... literally said that anyone that claims mass attracting mass through the vastness of a vacuum on innate brute matter without something, some medium acting between it is incompetent beyond belief. Not, whatever it is, I mean, yes, I agree. We, we have a law of gravitation that gives us powerful tools to make calculations to build things. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. But the theory based on gravity, downward acceleration, right, so it doesn't right. mean it's is a uh, constant across the surface and it decreases okay. very, very predictively with altitude that based on the one over r squared drop off of gravity. That does not that. happen with the electric field, it, it provably does not happen. Uh, provably all matters electrostatic, and so you have that's incoherent not, electrostatic no, excel. No, if you're trying to give a model that talks about electrostatics being the downward reason that things fall down. I'm telling you that the, that the electrostatic field of the Earth does not match the 9.8 meter drop. It just doesn't. It, it drops off very quickly and it becomes so almost... So you don't understand. It's not that electrostatics is pulling stuff off in, in a vacuum down to the Earth. That's not how no, it works. But, it just but, sets the up and down. I'm, I'm, I don't want to take but, over the but, whole but, thing but, and make but, it but real but light, but Again, around a lightning storm, I would be... I had a lightning strike hit my house. Oh. That's like... That's a 30,000... Like a 10, 20 to 30,000 volt reversal. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> He's not, like, Bryant's not understanding the, the main point here. Now, is it by design? Upton Sinclair, of course. It's very difficult to get a man to understand something, which is paycheck depends on him not understanding. Is Bryant under the impression that understanding this disproves the heliocentric globe? Because if he is under that impression, obviously it doesn't, but if he is under that impression then he has to protect the ego. So he's going to deny it and spin his wheels as much as possible. So clearly, Bryant has absolutely proved this is not a good faith discussion. That man there wants a win so badly today. It means so much to him. He is so carried away with the prospect of winning, the idea that he forgot something that's absolutely essential to today's proceedings. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Not one piece of substantiating evidence. So why didn't I go up into the clouds? That your house is grounded. It went into the ground. That's why. Yeah, you, it had to be really strong. I mean, this is children's level basics. Like, what is he talking about? Well, he'd probably die. I know, but if you stand near, a, if you're in a lightning storm with that kind of potential, you don't start levitating up. Things you don't? levitate things with electrostatics, you know, literally. You're telling me that people are levitating all the time around yeah. lightning storms? People have gotten hit by lightning and go flying in the air. All sorts right of up. stuff happens. Well, I know, all but right, there's, so, there's, so, there's so hang on, hang on. There's... I know, but? What do you mean I know? He just disproved himself. So what, what is he talking What is Brian talking about? Not one piece of substantiating evidence. <laughs> If he can't make his points clearly and he just he's just grasping at straws desperately here, trying to not look as dumb as he's actually looking. So, I mean, it, it, it's rough. This is getting rough. Seven I know you have a bunch of other things you want to get into. We're going we're, we're gonna to come up on three hours. So would you like to let's agree that we don't agree and let's go on to I something know, else. You guys got to rework your electrostatics model because it doesn't work. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. It just doesn't. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. <laughs> Look at the desperation on his face. Rework the model. So because he doesn't comprehend it, other people have to rework it. So this is the height of the Dunning-Kruger effect. He doesn't recognize his lack of mental capacity to understand their point. So he's hallucinating that it can't be him that's incompetent. Therefore, they have to change it.
since since it's not a it's not in in Brian's mind his ego is so stratospheric and he's so much of a narcissist that there's no possibility that he didn't understand what they were saying that must mean they have to change what they're saying instead of Brian actually gaining mental function I we disagree. It, we, we disagree. disagree. Agree or disagree? So you're Agree to disagree. You're a little balloon experiment, Dave, where you have it go to the ground and you can stick it to the wall. Gravity doesn't get stuck to. I don't. Because gravity is a fake exist. force. I know, but yes. if, I, if I if I take if I take this lead ball, a little piece of a little piece of wood, this is more dense than that. It should stick to the lead. No. It doesn't goes down. But no one, no one thinks that. I mean, his his the level of straw manning here. I mean, it's get it's. These are just the silliest strawmans. I mean, Brian is just making an utter fool of himself here. I mean, how can anybody not feel bad for this poor guy having this mental breakdown because he's just made to look this dumb and his ego can't handle it? It really seems like this isn't even about the shape of the earth to Brian. It's just him shielding his fragile ego. Why are you saying that? No one thinks that. I understand, but electrostatics, you can stick a balloon to the – or if you're a little experiment – you can also put that near a wall and it will stick. Why doesn't gravity pull it down? Yeah. What do you mean, why doesn't gravity? Why doesn't gravity pull it down if gravity's real? If, if there's electro, well, because there's force, other forces at play. Because electrostatic okay. is so way we, stronger. We, we, there's I, there's no, all sorts imagine. of electrostatic no, 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 forces that we can lift things off the ground with. We haven't been able to do it with gravity because we can't figure out what gravity no, is. No, no. Let's move on. No, yeah, just when it falls, you, it's still electrostatic and never goes away. You know so agree to disagree. You know what a free body diagram is? You've got to draw all the forces acting on the body. So with the, with the balloon on the wall. And did he do that with the Cavendish? How come he's not talking about the other forces with the Cavendish? Notice how he never mentioned the other forces with the Cavendish. There's going to be an electrostatic attraction from the van der Waals dispersion force. There's going to be a downward force of gravity. Okay, so you've got to get the resultant force to see what's going to happen. In that case, the resultant force is stronger from dispersion or lunker of a van der Waals than it is from gravity. Okay, okay. Because, because you're adding charges by you know rubbing the balloon on your sweater, you're transferring charge. Okay. I'm saying in general, when we're not doing these things to create charge, you're not going to get electrostatics to create the downward 9.8 meters. Even when it falls, it's electrostatic after it loses its charge and comes off the wall. So just agree to disagree, bro. I yeah, know, but, but, hey, but, no, but I, I wanted to say one more thing because if you're going to you use, get the final word, go ahead, Brian. If you're going to get use electrostatics, you've got to use Maxwell's equations to actually Must. calculate 9.8 meters per second or Coulomb's law. False dichotomy. If you can do that, then I'll believe electrostatics is real. It's really electric forces. That hold our world together. But you gotta have. So he doesn't believe electrostatics is real now. <laughs> Some equation besides. I believe it's real. Gravity, <laughs> you're, you're basically just taking the gravitational equation and saying that that's electrostatic. And if that's what it is, what do you expect people to do? <laughs> All right. It's Oh, you are. Yeah, you really are. So, uh, he said you have the final word. Agree yeah, that was the final word. Agree to disagree. Um, do you want to? you want to do? Um, you were talking about you could show drop, a horizon drop, uh, and you don't, don't like don't the. Do, I don't want to do that. Just, you don't want to do that one. Oh, because the perspective stuff. We're just gonna. We're just gonna. Oh uh, yeah. I was really but hoping you, for some proof of curvature. I mean, I've been looking for seven years. You, you had an. Stuff. You had an image that uh, on your sheet that was quite interesting, um, of. Of um, a, a lake or something where you where you could see below it, you could see the drop. I think this image right here. This image right here. Which one? Can you see oh, my yeah, screen? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I did the calculations on that. <laughs> he did the calculations. <laughs> Anything to protect that ego. You know what's funny though? Normally, I don't really like people who are like so caught up in their ego and they're just narcissistic goofs. But honestly. Just the level of humiliation and decimation Bryant has had to endure, and he's still, and all the meltdowns and breakdowns, to me, he still seems kind of like a likable guy. Like, I don't know what it is about him, but I don't know. I still, I can't, I can't dislike the guy. I don't know why. I just, can't, I can't help but not dislike the guy. <laughs> but let's continue. So you did the calculation. I have to ask you a question. Where's the horizon? Is it right here? The horizon is below eye level. It's a little is bit. Is it? But is this the horizon here? The horizon. Well, that's the that's the apparent horizon. The, the but but this is is it? Oh, hold on a second. I heard. Okay, hold on a second. Brian is exhibiting some mental capacity here, because the horizon. Now it's actually kind of funny because all of his. I, I really think if he wasn't triggered, like if this wasn't a flat verse globe thing. And if this was complete, something completely different and he wasn't triggered, 
I mean, maybe he can have a normal good faith conversation. Because obviously this is something I actually I'm not sure I've even heard any heliocentric globe defenders in in debate use even apparent horizon because they all hallucinate the horizon is what it appears to be because obviously the hor- the apparent horizon is not the true horizon i've actually gone over this on other i mean this isn't rocket science this is very very obvious i mean there's there's various situations where it could look like boats are floating above the apparent horizon because that's not the true horizon so that way even if you see things dip below the apparent horizon that's not the true horizon so obviously it doesn't tell you anything about anything it can't be used to prove the shape of the earth now i don't know if brian's going to admit that but the fact that he's already using terms like apparent horizon that's a good sign that's the horizon you're you're measuring saying that it's below eye level Right, because eye level, it's a drop. And again, you got to look at the actual the calculation because the geometric drop, what he yeah, did... Yeah, but where actually, are you putting but the I'm, I'm asking you a question. Is this the horizon? Where did you calculate it from? Hori- horizon, horizon. Is this the dropped horizon that you're... Notice how Brian... What has he ever answered a yes or no question directly? <laughs> is it? Is it not? Is it something else? Or why can't he answer the question? He just starts spinning his wheels as always. We're talking about right here. Well, let me... Let me see what you're... Jaren, am I big so you can see? You're small. Oh, can you make me big, please? Mm-hmm. It's not really my job, but all right. Great. Um, but the, my, so in your, in your paper, oh, yeah. I was looking, and I think you were talking about this being the dropped horizon. Yeah, so you're looking, right, so the... Is, is this the horizon? Yeah, so you're looking down, right, so that would all be right, the horizon. so that's not the horizon. This is the horizon. Okay. Oh, that's, that's this is eye level. That's no, eye level. no, 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 no. Yeah, this is this is, is eye right. level horizon. Exactly. If you can see, everything is mirrored here, right? So this is an apparent horizon, but this is mirroring. Now, if there was no land here, if there was just ocean there, you would you would think that this was the curve of the Earth, but it's not. It's just mirrored. And and you, the, now this is just a, an image. But if we if we actually look and we we see. Um, this is a boat going beyond that horizon where there's no land past it. So let me just fast forward here a little bit. This boat is floating in the air because your horizon's right here. Well, let's look at some of my boats. Now. <laughs> he doesn't even want to look at this evidence. Let's look at this other. Let's not address what David Weiss is bringing up. <laughs> now, obviously, different conditions provide different visual results. So nobody's debating that. It's whether or not you can use that to prove something, which you clearly can't if conditions vary that widely. So how does Bryant not comprehend that? <laughs> but 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 first I'm showing you the image that you showed us is where you thought the horizon was, where all your calculations were done, is not. And that's another good point. So all of his mathematically sound calculations are wrong because that's not where the actual horizon is. So if... The actual theory or whatever that Brian is is trying to measure, if the basis of it is false, then all of the mathematic equations, regardless of how accurately the math is done, regardless of how perfectly you count or multiply the unicorns, it will not prove the unicorns exist. This is just a very basic concept. Let's see if Brian maybe is able to process it. I mean, I have, I'm, I'm not expecting much, but let's see. This is the actual horizon, oh, not this. No, and, and, and by the way, the, having land or something in the background, it's super easy to see. Having nothing in the background makes it an argument that we can never win, right. okay? Because, because you, you'll be like, no, that's not, you know? But I, I'm showing you on this other image, on this video, um, this boat is going far over that. It's floating, but you see the horizon here. If these trees weren't here, this boat would be flying in the air. That's, okay? not, that's too close, though. That's way too close. It doesn't matter. The farther it goes out, the worse it gets. That's and by a- the way, and by the way, if, if you see the horizon here, if let's say the boat went another 50 miles out there, it would just get harder and harder to see, and it would mirror the sky, I, I, and you would think that this is a physical horizon. This is an optical horizon. Well, the real horizon's out here. 
Send me the video and I'll look at it. I can't see it here. It okay. Looks, it looks well, like I, in, you, you have my app. Go to Boats Over the Horizon. There's a hundred of these videos. Okay, well, let's look at some of my Boats Over the Horizon. Now. All right. Beautiful. He's like a small child in kindergarten. Well, well let's play with my toys now. They're your toys are now. Let's play with mine. Let's look at mine. It's all about mine. Because <laughs> he's just here to give a sermon. He's not here to actually have any kind of logical, meaningful, good faith discussion, even though he still appears to be a relatively nice guy. Bring on the waves. Small, what yeah. we got? Okay, can you see my... Okay. Yeah. I see a big wave in the foreground, but go ahead. It's not a big wave. Oh, it's not. Okay, go ahead. You think that's Let a wave? That's, that's the bulge of the earth. So how... <laughs> <laughs> the religious fervor in his denial of waves. <laughs> oh, man. This is, we're off the rails. We're firmly off the rails. We've been off the rails. Oh, man, this is insane. This comment from Shiloh, Brian wants to call his mom right now. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is the problem. Yo, you can just say it. Well, this is the problem is you guys will take boats that are not over the horizon, and then you can, yeah, you can bring them back with the zoom, but if they actually go over the horizon, like this one, with critical things. So do you think that any boat can be seen to go over the horizon with just your naked eye? No, you you got you got a Now I well, asked a question. Somebody, somebody, could could can you well, see boats? Because it matter if an optical Because zoom, it matters it because they tell us that that's the way that they figured out that the earth was round hundreds of years ago, which is ridiculous because they would have never seen any boat go over the actual horizon. They would have seen it disappear from their eyesight if they would have had a zoom camera, you know, they would have pulled it back. Bottom up every time. I mean, uh, it, it disappears from the bottom up. Just like your son does, right? Mm -hmm. So here, here's a building, okay, where the bottom few floors are missing. But if you look, these balconies, which are all the same, are getting compressed, 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 hang compressed. On. And hang on, there's a there's waves here in the foreground. This horizon, this apparent horizon, is dozens of miles closer than this. And these little waves, again, it's the same way the sun sets. It's being blocked. My finger can't hide my face if it was a wave, but if my finger was closer, I can set behind it. It disappears behind the, it. The little waves can't explain this. So yes, a millimeter above your eye level cannot knock out an entire Dave, city where, skyline. Where's your Lego? 100%. Where's your Lego video? This is this is not from. I don't know where it is. is. Oh, that was a good Lego video. I don't know if it was Dave Weiss or a different guy. Someone did an experiment with this on the football field with blades of gla of grass and it did the same thing but bottom up and then if you just adjust the angle then of course you could uh you could see more the football field relatively flat so they're just replicating this on the small scale again none of this proves anything so i don't know why brian is so desperately clinging to this and notice how his ego wouldn't even allow him to admit that you know obviously there's different atmospheric conditions there's different amount of humidity there's precipitation levels visibility index etc so none of this actually proves anything just because of all these other variables the way the human eye works so i don't know why he's so religiously desperately clinging to this and it, i mean i don't know man this is rough it's like he just has these religious tenants these core religious tenants this is one of them so he has to defend it to the death no matter what well, I'm just showing that when you zoom, when this is zoomed out, when you zoom it in, it doesn't matter if you take, you can take the original screenshot and just zoom that original, it still gives you the same. So you're not able to bring this back from a zoom because when you take that, that image and just zoom in the actual image of the distance, it's still the same as if you actually zoomed in with the camera. And that is very much over the rise. Those are not. Well, but, but see, that's what you don't understand. The, that horizon that you're seeing is called the wave front edge. It's a it's a horizon that is way closer to you than those objects. Okay, well, those sure. hold on. The hold maximum on. distance is like three miles, okay. right? Of the so waves. If this, if this was a boat, right, and this is the wave front edge, which is that which makes it look like it's at your eye level. This boat is just going to go beyond it, and it's just going to disappear behind it, okay. right? From the bottom up. From the bottom up, Correct. and that's okay, just show, perspective. Okay, it's not. But show me a picture. Okay, it's not. <laughs> It's not, he just showed it to right to the camera and he's denying his own eyes and this empirically verifiable fact. <laughs> that doesn't mean the world is not, see that the other thing Brian doesn't understand, that doesn't mean the world is not a globe. That doesn't mean he's wrong about the heliocentric globe. That just means he's a complete moron and not being able to understand the basics of perspective. <laughs>
Well, no, it's you know, not, show me a show me throwing it's not. Show, no, show, show, what, what do you want to say? Go ahead. No, show me your, what you're talking about, the wavefront occlusion or whatever. It is. Uh, so uh, again, so, so in, think in the, the app, in the app, just watch the boats over the horizon. It explains no, it for you, Brian. If you're, you can study. only see the edge of the, the edge show of these spheres study. three miles away. We're right? Showing you. It's not. Sh- you're showing me tricks. I mean, all these tricks, empirically verifiable experiments are tricks. <laughs> So he wants a study instead of an empirically verifiable experiment he can do himself in front of his own face using his own eyes. He wants to read about how other people did it. (laughs) How the other priests, he wants to read about priests. He doesn't want to actually engage any kind of real science. I mean, this tells you everything you need to know about Bryant Mayer. That man there wants a win so badly today. It means so much to him. He is so carried away with the prospect of winning, the idea that he forgot something that's absolutely essential to today's proceedings. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Not one piece of substantiating evidence. They're not tricks. I'm showing you tricks. They're three miles. Three miles away would be the furthest you We're could see the edge of the earth, right? The the curvature of the earth. So if there's boat. waves there, what? What? There's little. This is a huge boat. Little waves are not going to include it. This is a big steamliner. Oh it's going to hide the whole thing. That steamliner is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until its angular size is too small for you to see. You know what's weird? Can Brian really be? The, I mean. Does he have a mental disability? He's never played that game as a child where you just put your finger over like um, you put your finger over anything in the distance or like kids like to play it in school. Like they'll put their thumb and their next finger together, squashing their teacher. I mean, their fingers are tiny. Their teacher could be five and a half feet tall or six feet tall. And they're just squashing them like a bug with their tiny little fingers. And this goof has never done. He doesn't understand that things, uh, things, even if something is much larger than your finger, because your finger is closer to your eye, it can obscure a much larger object in the distance. I mean, we're talking children's level basics here. Not only that, David Weiss just showed him, like, right to the to the camera there, and this goof just can't process it. I mean. This is rough. This is really rough. I wasn't expecting this level of mental disability from Bryant, but I mean, that, that's what we have here. That Wait, wave, right? that wave front edge is going to block it for miles okay. in, in front of it. Okay, you see what I'm doing right here, right? This is getting off in the distance where your angular resolution can't see it very well. And we're taking this original image and blowing it up, and it's still the same as if we actually zoomed in. It's, it's no different. So it's both cases. It's already it's over. You can't bring back. a What, ship what, what kind of horizon. camera was this? Can I ask what kind of camera was this? What kind of zoom? Uh, what kind of zoom optics were you looking at here? This is this probably is a P900. I mean, I didn't do it, but I mean, OK, so obviously you've seen one P900 still image that you're fixed on. No, Have you seen the th- wait, 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 let me finish. Funny. Have yeah. you seen the thousands and thousands of others that bring the boat back into view? Yeah. Right. Uh, can we funny. have you? No, you know yes or no. Is. Have I'll, you seen I'll, them? I've seen a lot of them. And I'll okay. tell you what it is. So why are you picking on one, Bryant? Why are you it's picking like, on one? What about the thousands that, that bring it back? And it's Brian, boats. the ones that when you can't see the boat, it's always a rough, windy, wavy day. No, it's always a rough, windy, wavy day. Those boats that are coming back are not over the horizon. They're small boats that are near the edge of the horizon. But when you actually get a boat that's over the horizon, you can't bring it back. All he has is these flat earth memes and denial. Like... It's it's sad to even watch this because presumably you would think a supposed intellectual could at least grasp children's level basics, but but Brian can't here. He just can't. Yes, you can. Bring That's that because back. it's behind a wave that you cannot get behind. You can't see through That's it. Not a wave. That's Absolutely, the is a- there's no waves in the ocean. <laughs> it's not a wave. There's no waves in the ocean, really, Brian. This is the level you're thinking to? Exactly how perspective works. It's, uh, right. I showed you with my flat earth sunset and my kitchen sunset. Yep. That's exactly the same on That's the water. It's a heart-made experiment. It doesn't prove anything. But- <laughs> science experiment doesn't prove anything, but your memes that you found on Google does. No, yeah. no. These, science exp- these memes are based on science that have peer-reviewed studies where you have independent labs validating. This- where are the links to the independent labs validating these random images taken by people on a beach? <laughs> I mean, Brian's just full mental breakdown mode now. Stuff you guys. So, what kind of science have you done, Bryant, with boats over the horizon? Can we see what you have done? 
Because we've done freaking tons of stuff. Can I see what you have done? When you say science, it's nothing but no, just no, no. Your a image. science experiment. I said, have you done one with boats over the horizon? And if you have, which it sounds like you have many, I mean, you might, you, you're bringing it up. Can we see it? D Dave, can I show the leg? Cricket, cricket. <laughs> Ghost. I'm just um, yeah, you have it, Eddie? Okay. Yeah, I have it. Okay. I mean, let's just move on then. No, it's okay. Let's just move on then. Unless all I see are lies. Let's just move on then. All the videos he sees are lies? Well, how does he know what he's looking at is not lies? If you're just going to add hom like that. <laughs> like you're making up all these boats over the horizon. Jeremy's going to show. Jer hold, hold on. Let, well, give, give us me one a second. It's going to take a second for me to get it. Oh, Brett, he's, he's pulling, pulling it up. But again, when we look at large boats, um, when they disappear, the only some of the times the, when they disappear, they don't always disappear like that. Um, it's because there's waves in the foreground. And those waves, just like... like um, those waves here's my biggest you know, problem oh, will block an entire city skyline see these, these are big waves out here right and this you know the other thing that's sad that this even has to be explained different days have different conditions i mean anybody that's been to the beach obviously anybody that's seen a weather report the visibility index but then you also have the wave size different days sometimes waves are bigger closer to the beach Sometimes they're smaller. Sometimes the waves farther out are bigger or smaller. I mean, this isn't rocket science. The fact that this even has to be explained is really sad. Boat is going to disappear behind them, right? There's all sorts of optical effects going out here, and it's never the same. It changes every day. Yeah, I it live changes. in California, so I go out to the, the beach day. sometimes, Brian. I'm sorry, guys. That's the curb you're seeing. Well, right I'm sorry that's not because I've, I've been out there, and here's... I'm sorry. What a great argument. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not one piece of substantiating evidence. It's a problem I have with it. Because you know what? Eventually, you know what? The boat does appear to go over an edge. Eventually, it looks like that. I've been Way out to the beach edge. and looked at it. Right. But the problem I have is why do they continue telling people that the reason they knew the earth was curved is because they saw boats go out and go over the edge? Because that is not true. Because when I go out to the beach with my plain eyes, I see boats disappear, and I can always bring them back with a zoom-in camera. Now, eventually, always. you're right. Event. Yes, but Always. listen, eventually yeah. the boat go. What do you mean? You, you don't think with your eyes, you think you can see a boat go over the curve? I'm not saying that. I'm saying you can't always bring these boats that are well over right, the curve. Right, because no, you're not listening to what I said. You're not listening edge. to what I said. Yeah, Darren finish. It's not yeah, what I Darren said. Finish what he's saying, bro. I but said. The front edge doesn't make sense. Waves don't make sense. <laughs> the fact that objects closer to your eyes appear bigger than larger objects farther away doesn't make sense to Brian. I mean, come on, kindergartners know this. I said uh, that with sense. my so eyes, let him finish. with yes. my eyes, I always see the boat look like it disappears. Then I pull out the camera and I can pull it back. So if that's true, then there's no way that Aristotle or Ptolemy or any of these guys saw boats go over the edge and then knew that the earth was curved because that's impossible. They couldn't have seen yep. boats go over. Well, the but there's, there were some pretty big boats though, right? I mean, Brian, this <laughs> is the wave front edge right here. I don't have the video. I wish I did. But the entire deck of where these fishermen are, you can't even see it because it's behind this wave front edge. When I zoom out, hold on. When I zoom out, all of this water beyond the boat becomes unseeable and the boat is missing from half down and it's behind the wave front edge. Now we know this isn't curvature because we can see water back here. Right. Okay. This is the way, hold on. This is the wave front edge right here. Zoom out. This is going to look like a horizon right here. This boat's going to look yeah, like it's behind it. Boat. Hold on. Hold on. If that boat was out here, way out here, it would be totally gone. Right? You wouldn't be able to see it. And big boats, the same thing. A, a big boat in the distance will get as small as a small boat closer. It doesn't matter. And the farther out you go, the worse it gets because that wave front edge doesn't keep moving away from you it you stays have, close you have a paper that goes over wave front edge you have to have a paper dave <laughs> wow the desperation of brian you need a paper to explain what he's seeing right in front of his own eyes you need a paper to know that there's waves in the ocean you need a paper to know that sometimes the waves can obscure the bottom of the boat or the entire boat depending how big the waves how big the boat and the distance you need a paper for this. Brian doesn't have the mental capacity of a kindergartner to understand the size of waves in relation to how human eyes would see it in relation to boats. Wow. We've reached all new lows here with Brian Myers.
You have to have paper. No, just anything. No, that, I mean, I, this doesn't. This does no. This does nothing to back it up. No, we go. We don't. We don't. The government doesn't back it. We Damn don't. It. Nothing to. We don't. Nothing to back it up. Your own eyes back it up. Holding your finger in front of your eye over a bigger object farther away backs it up. I mean, what is wrong with Bryant Meyer? I mean, he just has a complete mental breakdown here. Like. No, we I just want to see some. We don't write of, papers. We go out I mean, and make observations. Brian, do you understand? Brian, just because there's a small wave in front of a small boat doesn't mean that a, a wave front edge. Okay, Dave, which one do you want me to show? Brian, this one you'd rather see a paper. Anyone Brian, you want, Jaren. This one, you'd rather see a paper, now. Bryant, than an actual experiment done or go do it yourself. You'd rather see a paper? How, how you're Hello. proof that a wave front edge Here, can include watch a huge this. boat. Watch this. Watch this. Wait, I don't see that. I know You're not sharing, Jaren. Yeah, I am. It's on the screen. Is it? Oh, okay, yeah. There you go. It's I not. Well, I might. Yellow brick in the distance. So it's just oh, showing you that, that all these bricks are falling behind this blue br brick here. You break. What? Uh, you were breaking up for a second. Oh. Those are all very level, but just because of the way you look, it can be a mile away. You can see this blue block away. covers all the white bottom pieces i can't of really see it i mean, okay, something well, I mean I'll look at it. All right. can you make it I'm bigger not sure that's but. the case but well, just every time he's decimated he just says oh i can't tell i'll look at it later because he does his ego can't handle the fact that he's so blatantly wrong just i'll look at it just send it to me i'll, I'll take a look at it okay and then here's another one there you there go, you yeah, go. I've, I've seen some of these videos yeah so there's your wave front edge. Those blue bricks are and they're covering up five or six layers of of um higher I know, but levels. You know, but the camera is the no that you can still see the table. You can still see the table. Know, I'm above but, the table. But you know that sometimes the actual lenses when you put a, a bigger zoom. But my eye sees it. Epic. My eye sees it the same way. My point is those blue oh, those the blue line there, those that's the wave front edge right there. I can't see any of the counter oh. beyond it because the wave is blocking it. Okay. And then as those Legos get smaller into the distance, they disappear behind know, the blue days, Lego wave front edge. Days where the water is calm, Dave, and when the water is calm, there's no wave it, front edge to block both the You're right, and you can see them much farther. However, yeah. there's the non, what is it? What, is, what does Karen call it? The non, uh, the, there, there's a, the, 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 the thickest part of the atmosphere, the thickest moist, um, is right above the water, and yeah, it yeah. becomes opaque. Mm -hmm. It'll yeah. mirage the boat out. Well, yeah, opacity. Depending, yeah, depending on pressure and temperature. The non-uniform. Yeah, but always in the case, zone, right? It like always happen. You can get well, but it's it's it, it, the, the effects can vary wildly. Depending sure, on but it always right. happens. You understand? We're saying that the horizon is just an apparent horizon that fluctuates based on Atmos, but the globe claims it's a physical place. But we know it's not a physical place, just there's water and you can't see forever and it changes drastically throughout the day. That's that's our position. But I had a, maybe I forgot to put a slide in. It's not a it's nobody says it's a physical place. Yeah. The horizon is just where the eye it's it, again. So are you saying on a ball there's not a physical horizon? Well, it's based on a circle around a sphere around you. And you know, you looking at but, at a certain point, that that, that 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 spirit you cuts off the rest of the globe. That's that's what the physical horizon is. That cutoff point, that physical cutoff point. So Bryant, I mean, we have to really handle Bryant with kid gloves here because he seems to have either just this idiot savant who's just mentally disabled in anything that has nothing to do with mathematics, and he just might be a math genius. Again, if somebody out there wants to double check his math. Uh, I just I don't want to go into that level of minutiae because it doesn't matter if his math is perfect. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume it's all perfect. You see Brian, do you know where the word horizon appears, comes from, Brian? Appears to be a horizon. Do you know what the word Brian? You have to share again if from? you want to share again. I accidentally I think it took it, you it, off. It, Brian, look look, look here. A, this this is Skunk physical. Bay. This yeah. is Skunk Bay, right? And uh, Glober would say, okay, well those houses are hidden. Um, but then as we pull as we move throughout the day. We can see the beach. The buildings disappear. This is all just apparent horizon. Okay, yeah. this is just showing you how it looks different all the time. Yeah, but there's a lot of mirage going on there. I see all kinds of. Yeah, there's a lot there, of things oh, going there on. There would always mirage. be mirage. There would right, always be mirage. That's our point. The distance. The thing, 
no, but I don't think any scientist would say the horizon is a physical thing. It, you're you know, claiming that the Earth you go is up blocking. You just said the Earth is blocking buildings. You're, yeah, you you're the saying Earth is blocking the, the, buildings. The, the, the big boats, boats are going over the curve. That's a physical horizon. What's yeah, blocking like a hill? Where you're, but again, it's where your eyes are. If you're higher up, then yes. If you're at, this is why you got to use the curvature calculator because then we can, do. So if you're at about six feet, then your eye level is going to be different than if you're up a hundred feet. So yes, yeah. but yeah. But yeah, the curve, you are, that is kind of where things disappear over the tangent of that point on the sphere. You can't see beyond that. We can't, well, show them we can again. Show them all the places showing. we yeah, can see. Yeah, but that different. tangent will, you know, it will vary as you go up, up an elevation or so down. So what about like there's, it varies there's at this, the same height. Brian, there's this mountain, Mount Canagoo, that is 175 miles away. And from a thousand feet up, you can see it when it should be about a mile below the curve. Is your. Is that, is, is that, is that, is that, what's his name? Who is in the, beyond the. Here, here it is, right here. It's right here. It's right here. As the sun moves away, appears to go down, all of a sudden it backlights the mountain and you can see it. And it's not a mirage, right? Your only excuse is that the mountain and the sun are already over a physical curve and they're refracting up perfectly to stop at eye level. Wait, I don't. Okay, this is going below the horizon. What, I'm not sure. What so that mountain, right mountain right there is called Mount Canagoo. Flat. It's it's nine thousand feet high, but from a thousand feet, if you use your curve calculator, you'll see it should be sixteen thousand feet okay, or something I, below. This the top of this mountain should be over half a mile below the curve, but it's not. It's right there. But yeah. people say people on a normal day will look out and go, "Look, you can't see it because it's below the horizon." Now you would claim this is your physical horizon, but the light. That's bouncing off of Mount Canagoo doesn't have the power to push back all the way to your eyes because the atmosphere blocks it. However, the sun is much brighter than the reflected light coming off the mountain. And as the sun moves beyond it, it does have the power to push back 175 miles. And all of a sudden you can see the mountain. Now, there's two answers for what this means. That means the earth is flat. Or the Earth is a thousand times bigger than they're telling us. Yeah, but is that, is that what's his name? Media. What, what's the guy that did? Um, Jay Tolan the, Media. Jay Tolan Media. Yeah, he's been this is, soundly by the, the science guy. I mean, I, I watched some. No, he things. hasn't. No, he you hasn't. say the science yeah. guys, you mean like fight the tight shirt oh, no, and Bob Simon the science, Dan. Bob the you, you oh, Bob the science guy. <laughs> Bob the science guy. So he watched some guy say some words, and he hallucinates. That's a debunking. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing with all these goofs. They pretend that others are debunked. See, he ha see how desperately he was grasping at the genetic logical fallacy at who made that video? Go out and do it yourself. There's a whole bunch of videos of tourists and random people who have the same video. So pretending it was debunked based on who did it or who debunked it, that has no relation to reality or science or logic. That's why you, you look at the actual evidence. You look at the actual video, not who made it. The, the pedophile or the whatever. Well, whatever. Is. I mean, I've read through it and it's very convincing. Allegedly. These are allegedly. Not, yes. Well, allegedly. Yeah, but well, you're legally Brian, here, here's the problem with like peer review. About, you're you're yeah, explaining but, you know, the problem with peer review. Peer review is a problem because you're saying anything that comes from Bob the Science Guy, oh, it's so soundly put together. Well, no, but, Hold on, I'm, yeah, yeah, but you're this, saying the same thing. You're saying one person doing this is a proof. It's no, no, we're saying thousands of it. people have seen this observation. It happens twice a year. Okay, but if I use a metabolic curvature calculator, I'm I'm positive I could find the reason why. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Let's do it right now. Do it right now. Let's do it right now. Let's go. I don't want to do it now because I don't want to do it now. <laughs> I can do it, but I won't. <laughs> You guys, I, oh come on! You just bro. said you'd be yeah, able to figure it out. Said, I'm not there, so again, they they debunked that Jay Tola Media guy because he doesn't report. Oh yeah, because we're, we're, you you know no you're right because you don't have no one right ever But the margin of error, though, that's the thing. Like, yes, that's true. You would have to know exactly at what height the observer is, but that's the thing with a lot of these uh, videos. You could, unless you you're arguing that he brought some kind of gigantic tower. Because the margin for error, like it should, it's not like it should be a couple feet below the physical horizon. It's not like it's off by a little bit. I mean, we're talking the margins of error here are so gigantic, and it's still visible that that's a problem. And of course, Bryant won't address that. Because as soon as we started to see too far, they fudging, added refraction. The, I know, but if you're fudging the numbers, like he's been nobody's fudging you, the numbers. What? You're gonna get different. I always like, err to the I, side I, of the I've globe. Got a whole always. Scrolling page on on Jay Media, how he basically. 
misrepresents. Well, of course numbers. they're going to say that. Otherwise, Bob the Science Guy's out of a job. Dave or, or no, Psy Up Man Dan? Not Pastor, neither of them. I mean, it's a long page. I'll, Bite I'll, the fat I'll, shirt. I'll, it's definitely like Bob the Science Guy oh, or it, Wolfie it, or well, whatever their names well, are. It, we, yeah, but they do very careful. And like, um, no, they don't do very careful. They're known liars. They they're down in anything. Very careful psychological they all hold the same thing. They all believe all of the same nonsense. You guys in so many lies. Those, those what lies? Name, name one. Name one lie. Name one lie. You can't say that without naming I'm one. You. I'm not saying you specifically. You just said okay. you guys. I've caught you guys. No, I'm, no, I'm saying you, flat earth I, community. Okay, well, I can't We, we, we don't know the whole oh, flat wow. earth community, you know? So you're talking I'll put a, I'll put an end to that right now. Guys, flat, flat earth, knock it off. Stop lying. All right, there. You okay. stop lying. I put an I'm end to it. We don't lie. I'm talking about these images right here I'm showing on the screen. What images? You have to share your screen. You have to share your screen again. I'm going to get Dave off here. He's scaring me. I can't scare myself. <laughs> Don't look at me. Mount Canagoo is scary. Mount Canagoo is scary. All right, so it's getting really long now. I mean, we're going to have to do one more episode on this uh, first round here with Bryant Myers against the Flat Earthers. There's actually another follow-up uh, discussion, debate, whatever you want to call it, with just Bryant and... Uh, Austin Witsit. I mean, after all this, I mean, I don't know if I can stomach it, but <laughs> if the Mind Shock listeners want and request, I will cover that one as well, as well as many others. But yeah, I just feel bad for Brian Myers here. I mean, this guy is just in the middle of a mental breakdown. His brain just simply cannot handle any kind of logic or reason or actual scrutiny of his ideas and beliefs and how he came to them. You could tell he's not used to anybody actually not taking what he says on faith in some kind of scientism cultist stupor, like most of his students probably did in all his time teaching. Like, these guys are actually holding his feet to the fire. They're actually holding him accountable for what's coming out of his mouth, and he just can't handle that. So there actually is still quite a bit to go over and dissect, but we're in world record territory here. Bryant Myers, with literally hundreds of logical fallacies. Place your bets here. Is Bryant Myers going to hit four digits in logical fallacies? <laughs> That's the question here. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed another edition of the Mind Shock Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. Help support Mind Shock. Help us get more mind shocking content out there with logic and reason at the forefront in a multitude of topics. Obviously, flat earth analyses as well as other science versus scientism analyses out there. You could also become a YouTube member right here on our YouTube channel. Help support the channel that way. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share. Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Patrons do get priority for case topic, logical analysis, co-podcast, and requests. You could also be a guest on the podcast depending on your tier. Questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunkings of any kind, leave them in the comment section. This is Bruce McGuire signing off. Catch you guys next time.
Welcome to Mind Shock. This is the epic finale of the Bryant Myers Flat Earth Debate Logical Analysis against Flat Earth Dave, Austin Witsit, Jernism, and Hibbler. This is one of the most fallacy packed debates or discussions I've ever seen. <laughs> Make sure you've checked out the first two parts. We're coming to the thrilling conclusion that everybody's been waiting for with bated breath, and I don't think it will disappoint Bryant Myers in full mental breakdown spiraling here, committing so many logical fallacies. I mean, this guy's going to be setting all kinds of world records. As always, if you enjoyed the podcast, you can donate to our PayPal, help support the podcast, help support logic and reason, and bringing it back to a world where it's quickly going extinct, as Bryant Myers has been so clearly showing here for the past few hours in this discussion. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can also become a YouTube member, help support the channel that way. You can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like and share Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunkings of any kind. Leave them in the comment section. So let's jump right in here. That's the specular reflection yes, impossible on a globe, by the way. Okay. Well, no, actually, that's just a hot, that's just basically a reflection on a, on a shiny surface. Yeah. If you got a yeah, it can't be convex or concave. You can't get a specular reflection that way. I know, but you you will agree that this I, hey, I can show you the original footage from this video, and then the thing, the thing is bobbing up and down. Uh, I was talking about your wallpaper. What? Your wallpaper debunks the globe. You can't have specular reflections on a uh, a body of water with any convexity or concavity. It has to be flat. So. Oh, the specular reflection. I did a whole video on that. That's actually you can you can disprove that with like a little. It's because you got to not use a shiny surface. If you got like a rough <laughs> piece of aluminum foil over a basketball, you can see the shine. The light comes all the way to your eyes. Where if you have just a shiny surface, then you get a you know what looks like a hot spot. What? No, no, no. I'm saying on your wallpaper. Okay, like if you have a body of water and you have mountains and you can see the mountains in the water with a perfect specular reflection. That's impossible if the water is concave or convex, like vex at all. Like it has to be flat. I don't, I don't think that's, that's anything. Okay, well. I don't think that's anything. That's his rebuttal. Although, I would, would, wouldn't that depend on the size of the water, right? I mean, again, I don't... Uh, yes, maybe the globe is a lot bigger than has been purported, but what would the size of the mountain would have to be so huge if the, wa the water would have to be... The, the space of the water that the reflection is falling on, it would have to be incredibly large on a sphere. So, I mean, Witsit is correct on a small scale, but if the globe was big enough, that section, and again, I, have, I haven't done the math on this, but <laughs> so I'm not claiming anything is true or untrue, unlike, unlike you know, the goofs like Bryant, but let's continue. Well, that's a fact, but it's all right. It's, it's a, a fact. Go check it out. Fact. Go, go get a reflective piece of plastic or, or you know, I've a mirror it. thing and bend it a little bit and it it, it, it changes. Well, it, well, it, it doesn't... It do doesn't the same, do the same you haven't there. done this because then you would agree I, with us. No, right? I've seen... I've what are you seen, talking about? You I'm haven't done that. I'm talking about that it's not, a it's not a flat surface. If you get that same experiment with like a basketball and put like aluminum foil that's got ripples in it, like the... The water, you will see the, the light come all the way to your eyes. It doesn't just stop at a spot. Do you want to bet money you right show now that, that you can, can you show get that? a I'll specular yeah. reflection on a curved body of water? Hold on. Let me just bring up my, my video. I can see it. Please. I think we need to remember, though, he, he is, we are standing on the shoulders of giants like Bob the Science Guy and McToon. Oh, it's not Bob the Science. I'm just saying, oh. debunking some of those, I've gone through them, and you, it's pretty clear that like one they, it's Mount, they, Mount Shasta. That's crazy. Seen, That's, the CIA is yeah, crushing, it wasn't bro. Even, the CIA it wasn't is even really good. It wasn't even shown to be not even Mount Shasta. You guys yeah, seen, I hope these aren't these, aren't these same guys pushing another agenda? Just saying. Yeah, for sure. And so Dave's not, quick with it. You see Dave's picture, right? You understand what we're talking about? I was just letting you know that, it, well, you know, we're, we're you might want to change your wallpaper. It debunks the globe. I was just trying to help you out. It doesn't, doesn't debunk the globe. <laughs> All right, bro. Let me see. What did I put there? You see how pretty that picture is, Dave has? That's a perfect specular reflection, man. That water can't be bending, or you wouldn't get that perfect reflection. Here's the thing, though. The size of the water, though. Like, I don't, again, I don't know the size of that mountain range. I mean, is that small? If it's small and that piece of water is relatively small, like, lakes are basically completely flat unless you go to super gigantic lakes that would conform 
to the curvature of the Earth if there is any, if the Earth is a globe. I am not alleging it is or it is not. But on a small scale, wouldn't the water be relatively perfectly flat? Again, I would have to know that I don't know the size of that mountain range or the size of the water. So on a small enough scale, the water wouldn't be curving. Now, if you want to go to like Lake Baikal or some of these super gigantic lakes, I mean, is that what that photo is of? Maybe it is, and then maybe that's why the, he's Wits is saying that. I don't know. Like that mirror effect. That's so. I mean, are you talking about like this here? Um, hold on. Just... Hello, this is Brian. My yeah, name. Name. Your channel well, name is debunking a... flat Earth. <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah. I'm talking about oh, is this what you mean by, by just being seen like on one spot here versus like. Well, that is a local reflection, which is interesting, but just a specular reflection of a reflective mirrored image. So that's not quite what that is. But yeah, I mean, even the local reflection is interesting. I don't see. So what is your oh. what is your answer on the picture on the right there? Yeah, how's that work? I'm just saying you can you can get like a little ball and put like the. I mean, the point is, is that water is not perfectly, you see that it comes through like this. What? Well, the point is that this, it wouldn't be a local reflection like that if it was 93 million miles away. It's just light. It doesn't matter how far. Light is light coming in at that angle. It would be a and, 90 degrees spread be, across the, the whole sky. No, it, it, it's coming in from your, this is your angle of vision. You're looking right at it. So th it doesn't just hit a spot and, and not come all the way to your eyes because because the water surface is not, you know, it's got some texture to it. So when you add some texture, you can get the light to all the, come all the way and not just to. Okay. We're, we're talking about specular reflections and that's, that's interesting in my opinion. And I think that's a local reflection, which is impossible if the sun's 93 million miles away. But that's a different thing. Specular reflections a mirrored reflection. I mean, they really got to talk to Bryant like he has some kind of mental disability because he's not even he's not grasping any of these basic points. It's it's kind of sad, actually. And I was just not even trying to debate you about it. I was just letting you know your wallpaper debunked the club. So uh, I don't know what you were about to bring up. I don't know all that. I don't see that at all. But... All right. Well. Oh well. Specular reflection. Well, dude, you can come hang out with us, though, man. Flat Earth is way cooler, bro. It'll we, take. It'll yeah. take. We don't expect oh. you to change your teams tonight. It'll take you a month or two, and then you'll have oh, a couple of restless. Yeah, I mean, no, never, because I know because because well, it would call into. It would, it would, well, listen, electrostatic theory. I spent. I, I know electrostatics very well. I know electric. Clearly, he doesn't. <laughs> it's really electric forces that hold our world together. What? Very well. And it doesn't work to describe 9.8 meters per second squared. It absolutely so you've, can't. you've spent literally zero time on it and you say it doesn't work? No, oh, I'm saying that you can provably show the electric field falls off a lot faster than 9.8 should be falling off. So you're not understanding it yet, but maybe we can well, talk about it. Not not it's not what me, we're not saying it pulls things through the earth. That, we're not saying it pulls anything to the earth. Show me yeah, we're model. not saying it pulls things. You know down why you want a model from... so bad, Brian? The no, reason you want a no, model so bad is because you were handed one as a little kid no. and you hold on to it. Where's your Where's your model? No, something that can make. Why do you need a model? We're giving you facts and science here, and experiments. Any science, and you're like, where's no. your model? <laughs> Jaren, read the Brian. Science right. makes Jaren, read the George Ellis quote. You've got nothing that makes a prediction anywhere. George Ellis yeah, or yeah, you? All the ancients with their perfect predictions. Eclipses, building actual pyramids that have shadows in perfect alignment with perfectly predicted eclipses. Yeah. <laughs> and only NASA could do that. You mean the one that says I, we're going to see can't predict anything. Miles away if there is oh, come on, That's you, my you guys prediction. think that you, you don't need a model to make actual predictions to be science? You think you could just make stuff up and it be? Uh, no one's making anything. Not up. Observations that. and common Look, sense. Look, here's what we thought. We thought that when scientific method. Don't you understand? Hold, 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 hold on, Brian. Hold on. Let Jaron talk. Brian, let Jaren don't you know talk. that if electrostatics is made up? What? It, what? <laughs> it's really electric forces that hold our world together. If it was a deception, that look at what a great job they did by convincing you guys all that we have a model and everything works perfect, then anybody else who comes along down the road who says, I think that maybe it's wrong, you're going to, well, where's your model? How does everything in the universe work? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that these things are wrong. Well, if you don't have everything in, known, if you don't know everything, then you can't be right. That's yeah. what you're, know, that's but, your but position. The electrostatic theory is provably wrong. You are, it's really electric forces that hold our world together. Aren't even understanding no. what it means. We don't. I we understand don't. Understand electrostatics. Very okay, time out. Do you think that we think that electrostatics is pulling things to the ground? You think it's density buoyancy plus electrostatics somehow? 
Yeah, it's, it's, something sets the down, but then it right. density so and buoyancy yeah, works out. You keep, okay, well, you keep just, straw manning us like we're saying it's pulling it down, but we're not saying that. We're saying it sets the up and down. There is an up and down set with the electric okay, gradient on the earth. I can put a balloon on my wall. It doesn't set any up and down. Well, Brian, Brian listen, okay. Let me, hear me out, okay? If you take the balloon and rub it on your head, right, it'll stick right. to the wall. Eventually, right. it'll fall back down. When the balloon falls down, you're claiming it's because gravity pulls it, it gravity, to the yeah. earth. The problem is that balloon that falls to the earth, it's still electrostatic. It didn't all of a sudden stop being electrostatic. It lost its char- Electrostatic means it has a surplus of charge. It's probably neutral by the time it hits the ground. Now, you're trying to say at the atomic level there's electrons. Well, guess what? Those electrons are tied up in chemical bonds. And overall, the object is electrically neutral. It still has so, potential. It still has potential. And I'm not claiming electrons. It probably That's doesn't have potential. It probably doesn't. It doesn't have electrostatic potential? It, when, you, when it's neutral. No. I mean, if, if I rub it on my wow. head, it's going to. No. Yes. Oh, so it does have potential then. Does Brian not understand what the word potential means? Does Brian not understand anything? I mean, he's just in the complete mental meltdown mode where he's just not able to grasp anything and he has to resort to his sermon mode where he just expects because he's he's taught this stuff he expects everybody to just take it on blind faith and he's getting highly triggered when they don't when they actually demand scientific evidence adhering to the laws of logic and reason when you transfer electrons from you know what that means you transfer I know electrons are pseudoscience but yeah I understand it see okay if you believe in particle physics <clears throat> you believe it's that electrostatics is physics. This is just simple. I mean, this is like 18th, 18th century. Oh, yeah. You believe that it's virtual electric- photons? Okay, I'm just saying that electric. They claim in quantum mechanics and virtual pi- it's uh, not particle ele- it physics. It doesn't matter if it's electro or photons. Dude, or I'm not. just trying to let you know, man. It's okay, it, that, it, everything's intrinsically saying, electrostatic. It's actually dielectric a- field. There's only charge and discharge. That's electrical field theory. It was thrown out because they said the Earth was a spinning ball. That's okay. a whole bunch of stuff. You have to you open your mind to hear the truth, man. We I can can't. Measure, we can measure. And notice how Brian keeps interrupting, because it's not about, he's not even allowing Witsit to get his point out. That's how triggered he is. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't even seem to be about proving any theory to Brian. It's just shielding his ego, because he can't handle any kind of dissent to his religion, or that he could be wrong in any way, because he was duped by it. You I can't can measure, do it for you, man. Measure you what? You can go up to the top of Mount Everest and, and measure how long it takes your ball to hit the ground. Calculate 9.8 or 9.7. But you've never done that. You just, you're just going to say everybody else. Yeah, somebody and that else was did. predicted before but Newton. That was predicted inverse, before Newton. It's the inverse square law from gravity. The electric was predicted field, before the Newton. The electric field of the Earth drops off a lot quicker than that. It can't I'll, be I'll, I'll, I'm going to cite it for you in the chat that that was predicted yeah. bef- and explained before Newton Way on a before. flat Earth model. On a flat Earth, it was explained why you would get it downward acceleration flat, consistently no, long before Newton. It so wasn't just so on you know. a flat Earth. No, it was. Yes, it was. I'll the show flat you the model. Earth, the, the, I'm telling you that they they use the the. He <laughs> just defaults to I'm telling you, like he's the priest. Only he can talk to God, so you have to take his word for it. I'm telling you is Brian's argument. I mean, look at his face. I mean, this guy's mentally gone. What, like the, you guys like to quote that NASA study of non-rotating flat Earth what, by what's his name? Not a NASA study. It's what NASA claims they no, test it, their it, stuff over no, is non-rotating Earth. What do you mean? Important. It's in all their documents. You're saying that they don't say I, they that? Have it in, I'll tell you what it is. They have that in quotes because it's an approximation. It's no, they don't have quotes. that in quotes. Yes, it's you are quotes. literally lying to no, your whatever audience. Whatever it is, it's, a, it's an approximation. Stop lying. It's we a, don't lie I'm to not, you, so don't lie, Brian. I'm not lying. Don't lie, Brian. That's all. Please don't lie. It's I've not seen, in quotes, I've Bryant. It in quote. I've seen it's in not in quotes. It's I'm multiple it's documents. Everywhere. NASA, the military. Why are they saying the this? The military has ballistics manuals that talk about the Coriolis. Dude, forces. I have a ballistic oh missile God. right here I can drop in the chat that says that it's a flat, non-rotating surface. A ballistic missile okay. document. Okay. Documentation. Okay. Document you love your documents so much. I've got a Might as well show them a few. And if it's a deception, but, but, we shouldn't be surprised that they throw it in some manuals, but nobody ever uses it. Because the rotates so slowly. Maybe we can talk to him about that. Can we talk to him about that? You think the non- Earth is spinning. Non-rotating Okay, let, let's talk Earth. about this. The, not slow-rotating. Slow can, can, can I show you yeah, what you the edge is? You said earlier that the air is connected to the Earth. Coriolis claims the opposite, right? Coriolis claims that you have to have an accelerative and an inertial frame, inertial systems, and then that you see a difference, right? So then how is it that you're now claiming a singular system where the air moves in lockstep with the Earth 
at the same time as it you, being disconnected you can, have, from you can talk about relative velocity there's nothing wrong with that but the thing is the atmosphere and the earth do move together overall now <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're looking at the, at what? the overall large scale i'm not talking about local st storm systems are going i'm talking about the at the global level the atmosphere is moving with the rotating Earth. Because it has to No, be. but Coriolis Perfect. claims the opposite of that. It claims that there's an inertial and accelerative system, right? And that's how you get Coriolis effects. Coriolis. The Coriolis force, has, is a, it's, it, it's actually imparted by the rotating Earth. So when you go north from the equator, you shoot a ballistics north, it's going to get deflected to the right because the initial velocity has a stronger... It's got a higher velocity at the equator. So why doesn't the air do that? Down. Why doesn't the air? That's do what that? we're saying. So why doesn't the air? It's, it's saying it's detached with oh, the, the air. That's the, the whole air, point. No, it's not the air. It's it's like you're. It's all moving together, but it's that the air is a little faster up there than it is when you fire it away. How does the air outrun the spin of the Earth at forty thousand feet? That's it's, you're, that, you're using that again. I already showed you that diagram that the atmosphere doesn't go. He showed a diagram, therefore the diagram must be correct. You don't need any actual evidence. You just put your blind faith in the diagram. <laughs> I mean, this is really sad, but Coriolis is something actually, I'm not sure I went over that extensively on the other uh, logical analyses or podcasts, so I guess they're going to go into it now. Let's see what they can make of it. I'm actually following Brian a little bit here. The problem is when you're trying to explain everything. So if the, earth, if the atmosphere is attached to the Earth, then a plane going one way west to east instead of east to west would be going much, much faster. And then if the air is going with the Earth spin of the Earth, then the whole north to south runway situation with planes going in all these different directions, that, that starts to be an issue. So I, I would like to hear what Brian's take on that is. I mean, a lot, with a lot of this stuff, it's kind of like a neither here nor there because, again, there's so many different variables. It wouldn't necessarily prove anything either way. But let's see what Brian said. Hmm? No, it's outrunning ground speed by oh, 150 miles an hour or more. Where yeah. did you go north? So the Earth is spinning to the east. So where, did the you get air that that, where did you get that number? From, I, I, I from, the from, from, it, there's there's wind there's wind charts that show it and they they admit it you oh, know no, FAA no. uses it but which, it's out which means it's probably faster the spin than of the no, earth that's not true the spin of the earth I did the calculations when you actually look at how you, you did the hold on a second hold on a second on your hold flat, on your you said that the, oh, you, you can do the cloud calculations based on the fact that what are, what's the number you said what's the atmosphere is spinning with the, the earth if it's only twelve miles an hour faster at the Carmen line than it is at the that's surface. not what he's okay, asking no, you that's not what he's saying so what's the mechanism that makes it go faster what's the mechanism that makes it go faster gravity gravity is the gravitational column is holding it with it come on that doesn't work gravity doesn't work I'll tell you why because at that level there's very little power Particles. You gotta, so, so here's the question I have. Anything, anything you said, there. you said it's spinning and the higher, it's only 12 miles an hour faster. Great. How come that molecule that's at, at the Kármán line that's going 12 miles an hour faster in the spin just to keep up with it? How come it's going an additional 100 to 150 miles an hour oh, faster than that? Outrunning the spin of the Earth. Oh, that that doesn't make sense. That's no, you're this, right. It doesn't make sense because the Earth isn't spinning. The Earth is flat. The, the jet streams. The jet streams. How do the do planes, have, can you pull up the hold on? Jet stream? No, but ask him. Moving, okay, listen. Hold on, Brian. Together. Brian, they you just said earlier. Brian, you said earlier that planes go faster one direction than the other. Why is that? Why is it? Why do they go faster one direction than the other? That was well. That was based on wind currents. You know. The, okay, the so hold on. Travel. That's what he's saying. That the wind exactly. currents that blow uh, to I, the I, east. I, listen, I know that there's low. I'm not talking about local weather. I'm talking about the global atmosphere as a whole. Okay, but there's winds oh. inside the global atmosphere that are moving faster that, the than whole... the Earth spins. Right here, here it is. These are these these white and pink ones. I think oh. are. 200, 150, 150 200 200. miles an hour, and they're outrunning the spin of the Earth. They're going east. Can you see? It doesn't, yeah, but where do where do those where do those forces come from? You guys don't. What do you mean? Where do the forces come from? It doesn't no, matter. We need a model. Now we need a model. Over to a that's, model. A flat, that's a flat again. Earth though, model. Where's your model? Uh, that, no, a that's a, I thought you said there no, is no, no flat no, Earth no, model. You're, you're right. This is a flat Earth model, but on the globe, they're they're heading east. Right? Yes. It, it's the same thing. They're heading east. They're outrunning the spin of the earth. 
You have it no explanation for that. Yeah, we're just showing you a real version. Yeah, of we're showing you reality. We're in actual reality. Yeah. Going in perfect circles. Okay, hold on. I just want to say you you said that we spin very understand. you said we spin very slowly. Okay, let's let's go over this. I just want to show you this is what this is what a thousand miles is gonna. I mean, a thousand miles per hour looks like. Okay, let's talk about that. Hold now, on. I, okay, so is, just saying that it spins slowly. Well, this is fifty miles per hour, and then I'm gonna multiply it I by. Know that, okay, hold on. Here's a thousand mile per hour edge velocity. Tell me how the atmosphere, wait till it gets to 1,000, and tell me how the atmosphere is sticking to the Earth like this. Ready? It's about to, hold on. You're not even listening. When it goes 1,000 miles per hour, I, you're I, saying. I know this. I, I, you know what? You've never seen this. Let's, you know what? What do you know? Something he's never seen. He already knows, Jaron. Okay, I guess so. So here yeah, it goes. He now, this knows. is 1,000 miles right, per hour. Man, just chill, look it, bro. We're going to be your friend. Brian, like, look you it. Hang out with us. Look at that. Ticket, That's bro. the edge okay. velocity. I understand. Okay, but let me just talk about why those speeds are not what you guys think they are. What do you mean? A thousand miles per hour is a thousand miles per hour. That's okay, the edge velocity. Let's, let's, <laughs> no, no, it's, you're not, it's not. Rotation is measured in radians per second. Of course it is. But you can, uh, okay. but can you it's not figure out the edge velocity? Let me, let me ask you this. Is your engine measured in miles per No, it's RPMs. That's revolutions per minute. Okay, so we can yeah. do... You let's, can, just, so, let's just go through this. So, so Dave loves to pull this helical. So this would be a red herring logical fallacy and also an etymology. He's mixing in etymological logical fallacy as well because regardless of how you measure it or how many spins, the, the answer you're looking for is fast. <laughs> so he's the one claiming that the atmosphere is going with the Earth. Now, in addition to that, there's, of course, other factors like like wind and all these other atmospheric factors. So, again, this doesn't really prove anything either way. But you can see the religious fervor on his face when he's trying to defend this. And, again, I'm postulating it's all to protect his ego, and he actually doesn't even really care about the shape of the earth. It's just that his ego is connected to it. Model of the universe, or of the solar system up but yeah, you it's know, a joke. Dave, that this is a million times faster than the real thing? Yes, it's a... This is not anywhere near... It's a visualization to show the different vectors. That's what happens. It's, mislead, it's misleading, though, because it's going way too fast. Doesn't no, matter. No, that's, that's, that, that doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It, doesn't, it actually doesn't matter a lot. Well, it, it's no. misleading because it's actually not going a thousand miles per hour. It's only a little tiny uh, representation. Well, so the actual through. thing is way worse. Let's just go through. So first <laughs> and, of all, it's, okay. you know, and when you, when you point this spin. out though, when you point this out, it actually proves that the earth doesn't spin. You guys love to say the earth spins at a thousand forty miles. Cause it does. Way. No, no. Yeah. We don't no, love to say that. That's no, what they taught us. It. No, yes. it does it, it spins at 0. 0.006. What is the uh, circumference of the earth? What's the difference in that in 1037 miles per hour? It's because it has to do with forces, you know, inertial. It sounds smarter. It doesn't sound smart. It makes it sound less significant. It, yes. Listen, Brian, if you were on a merry-go-round that's a twenty, no. that's the size of the earth, the width, you know, the equator, and you're sitting at the outside horse, it's going yes. a thousand miles an hour, and it's going off of your trajectory at no, a, a, a mile a minute, okay, that's or more. Weird. It's not the same thing. You're, 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 it's the exact same thing. It is not How fast exactly is that a train, Brian? How fast is that train going? This is train is going two or three hundred kilometers an hour. And what would what? happen if it slowed down or sped up or oh, turned? Yeah, then, well, then and what if gonna, you took yeah, the roof off it, of it? Then, then you're actually getting an acceleration. See, I'm talking about well, Brian, but this is not a curved trajectory. But the Earth is spinning. What are you it's a not. It's what? never going in a straight line. What kind of science experiment is this, bro? No, this is a replication of anything. No, listen, I've done the math on the actual forces. Okay, so when you actually. So the Earth is rotating as slow as twice as slow as the hour hand on your clock. Okay, it's a very no. slow rotation. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, show. it is. What is going on? We just pointed out to you that that you had a constant, you had a constant speed those. on a straight path. That's not synonymous with moving in a circle. No, no, that's we're... acceleration. That would be a non-congruent logical fallacy, non-congruent argument by Bryant trying to compare or parallel something that's not comparable not even close rim Where's the velocity it's Where's rim the velocity the train. tangential tangential speed okay listen you're so bringing up all the points from these known oh, liars yeah, Wait, this, this, this whole thing oh, twice can, the speed you it's not twice the, it, can listen can talk about listen, this Hold on, let me let me say I'm one thing, and then you can go on. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing. It's angular velocity, and here's a simple experiment yes. you can do if you want to do an experiment. It's not go outside. Velocity. I'm gonna it's tell you it's angular. angular. Velocity. He doesn't no, like experiments. Listen, he likes memes. Here, here's an experiment, and, and I encourage everyone to do it. Get a string, tie it onto um, a weight, right, and and start spinning it around. Start spinning around and let out line and let out line and get it to the point where it may be 20 feet of line out there, and you'll see 
that it'll be pulling out. It won't touch the ground and you just spin around and you'll be going around at, you know, at a good pace and then get another, hold on, then get another string that's only a foot long and hold it right with, with your hand. That string, that one will, won't even, will barely go out, right? It's going around at the same uh, angular speed, right? But its rim velocity is so slow that it doesn't even swing out. The other one is pulling my arms as I spin around. Okay, hey, but, right, the one, but, but, but the one right here that's hanging, it just hangs. It doesn't even, hey, but, it barely me, swings out. That's just, rim let me, velocity. Let me just explain to you, but we don't feel velocity, Dave, we feel force. Let me just explain this to you. So, Notice how he completely dodged everything David Weiss just said, completely ignored it, and then goes back into his religious sermon. <laughs> we actually have a very slow, ang this is our angular velocity. This is angular velocity, not this, guys. This is angular velocity. Angular velocity is, is radians per second, not miles per hour. So when you actually calculate the actual uh, centrip centripetal force, centripetal force. And how did he determine the radius? Because I, I, I think some flat earthers, Witsit usually ask this as well. So is again, is this a circular reasoning logical fallacy? Because he's presupposing through his blind faith that the radius is what is claimed to be. Now he's building all this math and equation off that presupposition on blind faith with religious fervor. So he's spending all this lifetime of work going off a religious faith-based claim. What happened to the science? What, what happened to the science here? You end up with 0 0.03 centripetal acceleration. And this is a very small, small, small... Uh, uh, force. But, but Brian, Brian, you're just you're just reciting numbers and beliefs. Go outside and spin. Oh, Brian, a, what is listen, the, let me finish. Spin. spin a rock on a string. The farther out it goes, the harder it pulls at the same rate. OK, the farther out it goes. And so why should I believe that the, you know, if I double the distance, it's making a huge circle now. Why would it pull less? It pulls we, we more and more and more and more. Right. Well, we can you can calculate all you want, but you can oh, in real life, measure, the farther no, can, out it goes, the faster its rim speed is and oh. the more power it has. On a, yes, on a rotating system, but I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, well, you're living on a rotating system, and I it's know, a curved trajectory. You're going by the tangential speed, Dave. Yeah. The tangential speed, we don't feel. You accelerate. Yes, no. we do. We Acceler don't. Curving is acceleration. No, and I'm, t I'm showing you the actual forces of acceleration. So, okay, let me ask you, though. The equations that you're using, hold on, centripetal and centrifugal, can you tell me the equations for each one? Yeah, it's 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 omega squared R. So, so there's this, you take, but what about the other one? Angular, but what about the other one? What do you mean, what other one? I said centripetal and centrifugal. What is the equation for each? Well, they're, they're just in opposite directions. Oh, so the equations are equal. They're the same equal, equation. Equal and opposite. Same equation. Do you the have proof the Earth is spinning? Can I get some proof? Because that seems weird that the two equations are the same. So the, the equation for being thrown out from a circle and throwing in from a circle are both the same? It's just like outward... Outward force. No, you, okay, you, what's, not, the angular velocity is the, is the is the is the is the angular speed that a rotating body is going, and it's measured in radians per second, not miles per hour. The tangential. Okay, speed, so let's drop again, miles per hour. We don't feel. We don't feel. We don't feel constant speed. Just that's but, why. But, but wait, hold on a second. Hello, you, you tend. You're going in a straight line at a thousand miles an hour, a hundred miles an hour. It doesn't make a difference. You're not going to feel it. Your quarter right. will balance. Your water will sit. Hang on. Yeah. But if you take the slightest turn, now the Earth is curving. At no point are you going in a straight line. You are curving. That is acceleration. Okay. okay. You want to see how fast the Earth is rotating? Look no, no, no. no. I, I know top. how fast. It's going 1,024 miles per hour. Point I'm not, zero, hold zero, on. 0694 RPMs, Dave. That's how angular speed is measured. It, but no, it's uh, again. Get the get the rope with the rock the on it, and you feel, feel it. We don't feel the tangential speed. We feel the okay. acceleration. How about this? I disagree to disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> also you always feel acceleration. Any rotation is always accelerating, and we have an elliptical you can't orbit. We feel feel the a bank of it. But dude, here's the question, right. Brian. Here's a question, man. What if we? we what if we're in a plane spinning? I, I asked you that because I know for a fact everything you're about to bring up is not going to prove the Earth is spinning. Okay. okay well, what about this then? So you He's, want to skip your whole first page? You agree? You got well, nothing. Well, you already got your your arguments for the ring laser gyroscope because Bob has brought up so many. No, times. no, no. But hey, I want to tell you something. Let me tell you something. So according to Einstein in relativity, okay, uh, if the sky was moving around the Earth, oh, no, you no. would experience centrifugal and Coriolis effects 
if with the earth as the rest absolute frame of reference because of a thing called the Machian principle. And Einstein himself integrated this into relativity for the uh, Arthur Eddington experiment where they saw the eclipse with the star behind it. And he okay. wrote a letter to him explaining that that would be the case. So according to relativity, which is your current theory for gravity, you just talked about how it was so awesome earlier, remember? Yeah. None of that stuff you just showed on your page would prove that the Earth is spinning. According to relativity, it would be that the sky is moving around That's the Earth. That's not true. So he doesn't understand relativity? He doesn't understand frame of reference. I mean, look at his face. I mean, I think he does understand, and that's why he has that look on his face, and he's having the mental breakdown, because he does understand that it wouldn't improve anything. It is true. I have no letter right here. Let's go through which one of them it is. So let's see. Um, there's Aries, Aries theorem. I mean, Aries failure, which showed Aries that failure, the know, Earth is stationary. So which... Show uh, that the Earth is stationary. Sagnac effect shows that the Earth is stationary. No, it's called Aries failure for a reason. I mean, yeah, it's a failure on the science's it, point to, to prove what no, they wanted to prove. That's why it's a failure. Well, not. The, the, yeah, Do you understand the opposite? Every you, guys are, you guys are trying to say that the ether is still a thing. Where a thing. it is. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, even a quantum thing. mechanics says it is. By the way. You put so much of your beliefs in other men. It's so scary. Yeah, quantum mechanics is saying quantum. Oh, Brian, quantum life is so much better quantum when you know it's Quantum fluctuations are not you. either. If you want to call quantum fluctuations ether, you're just rebranding quantum fluctuations. What's quantum fluid? So it's interesting. He goes to this uh, mental gymnastics move of rebranding. The truth is whatever it is, not reverse engineering or making post-dictions as Witsit accurately called Brian and scientism cultists out for. So just pretending it's a rebranding instead of the actual truth and actually arguing in good faith with logic and reason at the forefront, adhering to the scientific method, Bryant wants no part of actual real science. Bryant wants no part of actual logical discussion. He's made that perfectly clear. Bryant? What, like superfluids? Like he, What's like quantum like, fluid? What? No, not, not like superfluids. No. So you don't know. Okay. What, what is dark matter? Dark, I, I, I admitted earlier that dark matter and dark energy, you know, that we don't, we, just because we don't have answers to everything. It's ether, buddy. It's e dude, everything they're talking about is. Show me ether. a paper that, that proves Why that. does that. <laughs> the desperation. Show me the religious scroll. Show me which gospel. Because <laughs> he can't think for himself. He doesn't have a functioning brain that he needs a paper. Have to be a, a paper. paper. Why a paper? Brian, do you understand? Well, oh, look outside, Brian. Show me anything that proves. And there's, there's actually a ton of papers on dark matter. So, yeah, calling, calling uh, dark matter and dark energies, uh, if that really is ether, because obviously relativity doesn't work, special relativity doesn't work, check out the Mindshot podcast on uh, relativity debunked, clearly debunked, by the amazing Run Z Cow, and others as well, I mentioned others as well. And since Brian is so obsessed with math, he should check out Oleg D. Jeffomenko, who completely decimates relativity with pure math, although it is very, very dense, so not really recommended unless you're an actual mathematician. But yeah, th this is really, really tough here. Because again, you have Nikola Tesla, his hundreds of patents all working flawlessly with Ether. And then you have uh, relativity with zero patents and just this, uh, re these reification logical fallacies hallucinating they're actually using the principles of relativity when they are not. Brian, I'll give you five yeah. quantum physicists saying we have to reintroduce the ether. Five of them. Yeah. Like I have them right here. Probably, PDFs, they probably five of them. don't have very much published research. That's oh, because that's, what, that's what dictates. This is his well, how much published research was there on relativity before relativity? <laughs> And yet, Brian still takes it on faith. <laughs> There's just constant appeals to authority, appeals to popularity. Brian has bought nothing but faith and fallacy to the table. And again, preserving his own ego. That seems to be his top priority in this complete mental breakdown. That man there wants a win so badly today. It means so much to him. He is so carried away with the prospect of winning, the idea that he forgot something. That's absolutely essential to today's proceedings. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Not one piece of substantiating evidence. That's information, what dictates. Right? I know. This Brian, is why. This, this is why they. Be on this CNN is why they have peer review. The morning, this bro. is why there's peer review. Peer review <sighs> protects your guys' science from ever being questioned by anybody else. That's no, why. It shows no, that that's why. Is true. 
Because that guess what? You can validate something that. that Sorry, no. That, scientists that, that's, that's don't. No, no scientist ever wants person. their theories told that they're Otherwise, wrong. Otherwise, it's just one person making a claim, and then there's no validation. Why? Well, let's uh, talk about Mickelson Morley. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened? Okay. So they they had a prediction with the Earth moving through the ether. So then they shot the interferometry. They did. They got one sixth of what was predicted. Less than one sixth of the orbital motion around the sun assumed. Right of thirty kilometers a second. So they had an option, which uh, two options, which either throw out the ether. Or throw out that the Earth was rotating, no, that was revolving. The, that was, was wait, the wait, 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 what that proves is that the interferometry does detect the motion if it's there. It's detecting the motion of the Earth, I mean, the, the sky around the Earth, right, in the sidereal rotation, and it does not detect an orbital motion. At all. Those two combined debunk the fact that the Earth is spinning. And so it's just been hidden. And the Sagnac effect is what's used for gyroscopes, and Sagnac said it was a vortex in the ether. So there you go. Sagnac, what Austin what Sagnac, said. I know what Sagnac huh. said. Facts. But Mic drop right there. I mean, there's really nothing more to be said because everybody, again, I'm not claiming that the Earth is or isn't moving, is or isn't a globe, but to all the goofs that are hallucinating that the experiment proves the motion of the Earth, they're ignoring all these other factors and variables, which Bryant does have the mental capacity to mention these other variables, because he has mentioned it a few times. He just completely ignores it when it uh, points out the flaws in his religion. But they found, the, they, they discovered the effect after that, so he was wrong when, when he said what he initially said. Well, you're just saying that, but are you going to address the Mickelson Morley combined with the Mickelson Gale Pearson? Mickelson Morley experiment had a, there was a, a allowed tolerance for error, and that was within the allowed tolerance. Also, keep in mind the detection of gravitational waves, and also, who's this magical arbiter of allowances? Because if the margin for error, this has nothing to do with this, just in general. The margin for error could always be greater than they think it is. I mean, putting all this blind faith in fallible humans and fallible human technology, that's always an issue. But in scientism, they, people hallucinate it's not. So what do you no, mean? No. So they you still didn't detect it? That it didn't that detect the motion of the orbit, but using the same methodology, it detects a sidereal rotation within 98% yeah, accuracy. They got 1,200 miles per hour. Which means that it does well, detect me, the well, motion of the sky me. around the well, Earth. Send, send you what? It's it, the Michael Simorley experiment. Go look at it. Pull the papers. Yeah, yeah it's it, it's a paper. You it, love it. That's your paper. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, though, if you're I'll looking look for a paper again. to be, I'll, I'll imagine a Brian. Imagine that you started doing good answer. Good answer. Imagine Brian. you started I'll to agree you. with us, and you wrote a paper, and you turned it into a publication. Do you think they would publish that paper, or do you think that they would trash your name until you weren't able to show your face again? Which one do you think is true? Because you're telling no, us we I need to go get submit ladder. a paper. The ladder. That's just conspiratorial. Oh, boy. What? Are oh, you thinking about yeah, posting a paper saying the Earth's flat? And it, it is conspiratorial. Conspiratorial fact. That's the way the one the world works. Protecting status quo. I mean, Brian is... I mean, is he exposing himself as a coincidence theorist goof after pretending to agree with David Weiss on other conspiracies? <laughs> I mean, it really does seem like, yeah, Brian's just in it to soothe his ego. I mean, that's really what all this is. He's made that perfectly clear every step of the way. Ether exists. Wow. They're going to peer review it and be like, prop this guy up for a Nobel Prize. And it means everybody that you're giving that paper to is all going to be signing away their, their entire research, their entire careers is garbage. Yeah, they'll just sign right off. Oh, yeah, let's, post, let's publish this. That's That'll not happen. a conspiracy it, theory. It, that's a it, fact. But just the stuff that you say with, the, with the electric feet, I mean, I know that that's wrong. The, 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 the... Notice that there is a clear parallel with gravity. Newton's law of gravity, that the force, which in that case is always attracting, gravity never repels, is the product of two masses. And then you have here the gravitational constant, and again you have the distance square. So there is an enormous parallel between the two. It's a great beauty that electricity acts in a way that is very parallel to the way that gravity works. If you compare electricity with gravity, you will see that electric forces are way more powerful than gravitational forces. If now I compare the electric force with the gravitational force, so I divide one by the other, Notice that the D cancels. They both have D squared downstairs. And so you will easily be able to show 
that this ratio is roughly 10 to the 36. So the electric force is 36 orders of magnitude more potent than the gravitational attraction. This teaches you some respect, perhaps, for 802. If these were the only forces that acted on the protons, and you bring them in the nucleus, which has a size of only 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, then the acceleration that the proton will experience is the electric force divided by the mass of the proton, F equals ma, basis of eta one. And if you take this electric force when you make d, 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, which is 10 to the minus 14 meters, and you calculate this ratio, you will find that it is 26 orders of magnitude higher than the gravitational acceleration on Earth. 26 orders of magnitude higher. So you wonder what the hell holds the nucleus together if there is such a tremendous force on these protons. Well, what is holding them together are the nuclear forces, which we do not fully understand, but thank goodness the nuclear forces are not part of 802, so I'll leave that alone for now. So what holds our world together? Well, on the nuclear scale, 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, very important are the nuclear forces. On an atomic scale, up to thousands of kilometers, it's really electric forces that hold our world together. So he's immediately going to that. And st like their actual point was about whether it, wouldn't, it would or wouldn't get published. Now he's, of course, sidetracking and uh, red herring and straw man. I mean, just this constant stack of fallacies instead of addressing the actual point. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. You forces still don't get it, though. No. <laughs> you still I, get I, it. I, you I, you I know it's it. wrong because you don't get it. I, it's really electric forces that hold our world together. You get it. I just, <laughs> it's really electric forces that hold our world together. <laughs> you guys don't understand Maxwell's equations at all. You just don't. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Oh my <laughs> gosh, saying, bro. Bro. Right. That's what this, that's what defines electrostatics, my friend. I mean, Brian, is there a, 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 a next, other next topics topic, you want right, to yeah. yeah. anymore you want to cover? Because wait, can, can I we Antarctica over? before we go? Can we please yeah. do Antarctica? Please, please. Brian, wait, can we can we talk about the? I can't. How about the equinox? The equinox and the ninety degrees. Let's talk about that so we can at least get that out of the way. Well, you are, it's just going to be, a, you already have your answer, even though I don't... Well, because they have our answer, answer because we've been... Spot on psychological projection. Brian already has his answer from the religion, so he's not going to be open about anything. At least the Flat Earthers are actually allowing him to speak and give his sermon. Notice how triggered Brian is. He's interrupted countless times. I mean, even just three or four seconds into a point where the Flat Earthers have given him literally like ten minutes of the time to speak. I mean, it's forever. I well, you, you come up with it. Really no, there's no coming. Let me no, explain this to me. With it. We're going to yeah, show you, let me stuff show you something. And, and stuff that you've never seen, and then you, maybe you can think. Just try not ideas. to say no before. Yeah, it's just over. listen for a yeah. second and just follow me and see why this is. So you're saying that at night, at the equinox. Yeah, wait, hold on, hold on. Jared, put it on the big screen. It's, so it is uh, on the big screen. Unshare. Oh, is it? Is it? Oh, there you are. All right, never mind. Sorry. Bye bye. Okay. So it, north and south, if somebody is north of you and, and are you south of them? Yes, right? Okay, yeah. What about east and west? Are they the same as north and south? So if somebody's east of me, I'm west of them? Okay, yeah. Okay, so what if I showed you that that's not the case at all? If we took somebody who's north and south, yes. If we draw this guy and we go ne south at... I'm actually kind of surprised. I have to give Bryant props there. He was actually able, for the first time in hours, to actually give a yes or no answer. <laughs> 180 degrees right there. Then if we drew this line back up... Let me save this. And we drew this line back up. Now it's going to be exactly north. Okay. This guy is going to be exactly at zero degrees, right? Okay, great. So what he's showing is the guy at south is south of the guy north, and the guy north is north of the guy south. But just east, like you would expect. East west. If I were to draw a line and say, okay, I'm here in California and I'm going to go 90 degrees east over here you to the can't east coast. It's a straight line there. That's a great circle. You're using a straight line. It, it, no, I'm not. I'm using we're using Google. We're, we're, Google we're going exactly it. 90 degrees east. That is a great circle. Okay, so 90 degrees. Yeah. See that? So I'm going to hit save on that one. We've got 90 degrees. So now, is this guy going to be 270 to this guy? 
because when I draw from here and I go 270, 270 is down here. Okay. So what that tells you is that north and south are consistent. You're always north and south, but east and west vary, right? So now if you start drawing lines, let me see this. Okay. So I, 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 I'm just not following all what you're trying to do. I know right, because, because they it's didn't teach not you what you believe. It's not what they taught no, you. What what Watch again. The guy, what he's saying is the guy, if somebody is 90 degrees east of somebody, the other guy is not 270 degrees west. Right. It's completely different because the globe is not real. Yeah, you're watching it. You're seeing it on a on a false know, model. So they're showing it. Their model right. doesn't I gotta, work. I know, but I can't just, I don't know. What, so here's the like thing. This guy, I don't if, see. if this guy's show, looking show east. Again. Just listen, watch again. Jaron's good at explaining this. Well, if this guy's looking east, 90 degrees east is here. Okay. Move out of the way, box. 92, 90. 90 degrees east? I don't know what. 90, 90 degrees is dead east. Yes. Okay, but 90, okay, it's just east. So when you're looking east, east yes. 90 okay. degrees is east. So I'm going to save that one. So now you'll kind of notice something weird. As we keep drawing lines of everybody looking 90 degrees, they're all looking at the equator. 90 degrees here is here. Nope, 91, 90. Okay, so now if I keep going with these lines and I go down to the south, every line I draw is going to be pointing at the equator. So if we spin the globe this way, and now we look at what everybody's doing, when it's the equinox, everybody is looking at the equator. So it shouldn't be a shock that we see the sun rise in the east for everybody because east is everybody's looking the exact same to the exact same point, the equator. When the sun is you at guys the think, center, you guys think oh. east is all directions. I just drew it for you. The sun, literally the showing sun. it. Look at the meltdown on Bryant's face. <laughs> Now, my problem with all this, of course, is that you don't have those verify. I mean, has anybody objectively verified any of the continent distances from each other in relation to each other and where they are in relation to other continents? Because everybody's kind of just taking it on blind faith. The map is the way that it is. Uh, I'm not going to go farther into that, but because let's assume if we assume the globe is not only true, but the continent, like all of it is mapped perfectly as on this demonstration here. But you could tell Brian's meltdown, like his face just complete meltdown i'm you know, showing okay, you okay but that's that's not I'm not sure. yeah because you think that. east is this way no, listen listen you send it to me and i'll play with it and I'll no see you can do it on you send it to me instead of addressing what's right in front of his face he has to go to you send it to me i can do it but i'll do it later <laughs> i mean he really sounds like a four-year-old like i can do whatever i claim i'm not gonna do it right now and prove it i'm gonna do it later not now <laughs> Google Earth yourself. It's your own Tell me this, Brian. Yeah, Google Earth. Yeah. We're, Brian. No, we're not doing any tricks, bro. Brian. If I'm up here in California and I start walking east, can I walk in a straight let line? Me, and let me just look. Okay, no, just please hold. answer Jaron's simple just, question. Just follow please, him. Jaren. You can okay, Jaren. Please ask it again, Jaron. I'm not going to believe this unless I can look no, at just it. Just ask myself. the question again, please. So if I'm, see, if I'm, see what Google Earth is doing because I can't just. Okay, if I'm know, in California and I'm, it does not look okay. Let's say I'm in California. I'm at 35 degrees north or something. And I but start. Can you, can you at least give me time to play with this myself? To Absolutely, we're showing you yeah, now. And check questions. it out. We'll, we'll have another I'll conversation. Check it out because I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna buy this one. Just I'm soak it in. He doesn't need to buy anything. You're. <laughs> does he not know where California is on his own model? Like, there's no need to buy anything. Just you could see how desperate he is to shield his ego because he's unwilling to even do a th simple thought experiment using his own model. You could see the mental breakdown, and also his—he's just that triggered about being made to look like such an utter fool. He wants to play with it later instead of answer a question about walking in from California. No, I'm not no, asking you to buy it. Quick, simple it question, right. please. Jared, it doesn't look right. It's, it's going to be all right, Google man. Earth. They lied to you about the Earth, brother. It's all. I'm just. Yeah, I just. Of a deal. Do you think if you went east from here that we would come back to where we started? But you're you're drawing. That's a straight line across. It's a simple the question. I'm not asking. It's, it's, pay, no, 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 pay no, no attention lines. to lines. Here's Go the straight lines. East. Lines are gone. There you go. There, no yeah. lines. Again, on a curved surface, you got to follow a great circle to go. I mean, you got, it, it's not the same as a straight line. Okay, now I'm not talking about a straight line. I'm <sighs> saying if I so, okay, no more so, lines. So you're right. saying if I am going to start in California and end up in California, I have to do a circle. No, I'm just saying that you have to follow the a great. You know what a great circle is? Yes. Yeah, circles are on flat Earths too, by the way. But he's trying to make a point to you. I know, but that's that's how you draw a line on a spherical object. Is if you want to find the shortest distance, it's a it's a it's along a great circle. Hey, no more lines, though. If you just go east, uh, will you get back to where you started from? I was just asking. If, if you we just go, head east, if we go east, if I go ninety degrees east from California, do I come back to where I started? I mean, you, you're using this map, but I mean, yes, it's not a map. It's the, the globe. It's okay, Google listen. Earth. It's the globe, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
what a goof. Down a street that's east-west, a lo really long street. You're going to go down that street and come back to your same location. I don't care, you know. What? If it's, if it's east-west. If you have an east-west street. Say? I don't understand. Hey, you're, trying to tell, you're just trying to tell me that if I go east and come back west, that I'm going to end up in a different location here? Yes. No, I'm asking you well, if you go east. Not, not here. Let me tell you why east. the answer is no. Is because on a flat earth, which is where you live, by the way, your compass always adjusts to the north. So, yes, you would come back to where you started. Yeah, exactly. Which is the wandering north, by the way, which the flat earth doesn't seem to have an answer for. Oh, yeah, we don't have an We're answer. Not so, therefore, it's false. The yeah, so, I mean, if you don't know, Austin, if you don't know about the wandering north pole, then you don't, the earth can't be flat. It's illegal to fly within 500 miles of each direction of the North, man. We just uh, address Jaron's point, though, bro. Just, just think it's, about he's it. not listening. If you it's go just... east, if you go east and come back west, you're gonna end up in the same spot. No. Okay, I'm talking no, about you go showing east, you, you the go globe. East. Look, so I'm it, saying if I'm in California, and I'm gonna go. He's trying to show me, but I'm saying I'm not gonna buy it until I can look at it and see because okay. it doesn't doesn't make showing? any sense what you're showing. So me. so look, what am look, I showing look, you? I'm so Bryant just here desperately grasping at the appeal to incredulity. It doesn't make sense, even though it's the exact globe that he believes in on Google Earth. And he's just this triggered that he refuses to address what's right in front of him. He has to pretend he has to look at it later in order to understand it. Now, here's the real question here, though. He's saying it doesn't make sense, but does it actually make sense, which is why he's just sputtering and spinning out of control in this mental breakdown, because he knows it makes him look like a clueless goof who's never even looked at any of these arguments. Because at the beginning, he was pretending like he was well-versed in the Flat Earth argument. I mean, clearly he's not. I mean, he just looked up some anti-Flat Earth memes <laughs> and just, you know, was preaching this sermon this whole time. Now, for the first time, I mean, there's only been a couple times where the Flat Earthers are actually showing him something because he usually just spends all the time interrupting every second. But what's the real question here? Does he actually understand the point? And that's why he's so terrified of addressing it here in the middle of his mental breakdown, so he has to pretend he has to look at it later because he doesn't have the mental capacity to understand what's right in front of his face. I mean, this is, I mean, I get it. This is sad or funny, depending on how you look at it. Showing you the globe, it doesn't make any sense. You're exactly it right. It doesn't make sense. This, yeah. is a, right. This, is a, this is a particular thing I haven't been able to look at. And see if he hasn't been able to look at the globe. He hasn't been able to look at any physical globe in his hands, or he's never dealt with Google Earth. So this supposed intellectual, this supposed physicist, scientist, whatever you want to call him, the professor who's, who's taught this stuff, which he reiterates every second whenever he gets obliterated, I've taught this, he's never looked at a globe before? Like, what, what, does he not understand how utterly clueless he's looking right now? Some but I'm asking you your general knowledge. You're a physicist, okay, so I'm I'll asking you. Okay, okay, let's, let's pretend, pretend I'm a student. Oh, pretend I'm a student. <laughs> like a little four year old. Let's move on. No, no, no. He's plugging his ears with his fingers. Let's move on. <laughs> Refusing to address the very thing he's here to discuss. So, if anybody wasn't clear by now on whether or not Bryant was here for an honest conversation with any kind of integrity or pursuit, of actual scientific or logical discussion of any kind. I mean, if it wasn't settled already, I mean, it seems to be settled here. Let's move on. Whenever he gets his feet held to the fire or even asked to perform a simple, simple thought experiment just to see if whatever he's preaching makes actual sense or just to see whatever the flat earthers are preaching to see whether that makes sense. He won't even do it. At least they indulged him. At least they had the modicum of integrity and honesty to let him speak and actually attempt to answer all of his questions. I mean, are there any questions that the Flat Earthers flat out ignored or didn't address? Because I, I don't remember any. Maybe I missed some. But are there any questions the Flat Earthers plug their ears and say, let's talk about it later, later, later. I don't want to do it. I can do it, but I won't. <laughs> Every time it came down to time to do it, any kind of a... Any kind of actually doing equations, any kind of actual proof that would be provided for something, anything, maybe, maybe not, but the possibility that proof could be provided here to prove either model untrue or untrue, or at least to point out further issues, he wants no part of it. I mean, that should really tell you how unscientific Bryant Myers is. I mean, he's obviously currently the logical fallacies champion. He's also in the running for Dunning-Kruger champion, psychological projection champion. I mean, this guy is breaking all sorts of records here. Pretend I'm a student.
Hold on. I'm just a student. I'm a student. I'm trying to learn. I'm not saying anything. Let us show you. So again, with these, uh, oh man, I can't believe, you don't need to believe anything. I mean, what, what is Brian smoking? This is why it's so difficult. It's difficult to, to assess here whether he has a true mental disability, whether he's actually mentally disabled and he's just this idiot savant at math equations, if that's the case. Oh, let's give it to him. Let's, let's, let's assume all his unicorn calculations were correct and he's really good at them. So is he just that mentally disabled that he can't even comprehend single point? Or, or... Is he now resorting to playing stupid, plugging his ears, refusing to engage in any kind of logical, scientific uh, discussion of any kind here? Let's move on. I mean, this is the most embarrassing, absolutely embarrassing result thus far. I mean, this is just insanity. He hasn't had a chance to look at a globe. I mean, what the Flat Earther should have done here is, is forget the globe on the screen. Does They should just ask, Brian, is he aware of where the continents are on the globe that he's claiming to be true? Where the states, does, is he familiar with all of the states of the United States? Because they're asking about California, other states. Is he from, does he know all 50 states? If he does, there's no reason to even look at the screen. Just think about it in your head. But he's plugging his ears and say, let's move on, let's move on, let's move on, like a little four-year-old. I mean, this is so embarrassing for Bryant Myers. I mean, it's, so, it's moved firmly into the territory of just plain sad instead of hilarious. So you I'm know what to you, look at later. If a student asked you, hey, teacher, if I'm in California and I go east, do, can I walk straight east and stay 90 degrees the whole way and come back to where I started? Is that a straight line or is it a circle? If I'm in California, is this person walking you have a to, circle? You have to, if you're here. California, do you have to keep turning to the left or do you go straight? Again, it's, it's this is spherical geometry. So you can't talk about a straight line exactly on a sphere. It doesn't work. Again, with these constant strawmans. He's talking about walking, regardless of whether it's regardless of whether it's perfectly straight or not, relative to where you started, where you end up, to the actual purported locations of the states and the continent. Notice he can't answer any question. He always goes into the sputtering BS mode just to shield his ego. He's just trying to not. I mean, clearly this is just extreme narcissism here. So he's trying to just spin and sputter and appear to not be a complete and utter moron to shield the ego. It's not actually about the truth. It's not actually about anything scientific. Because if it were, he would be able to answer simply. And again, if he's this utterly clueless about physics and even just basic common sense in just understanding where states are and where continents are, he's clearly the wrong person for this discussion. Because if you can't explain it simply, you don't, know, you don't understand it well enough as one of the scientism priests that Bryant worships, Albert Einstein allegedly said. What you about understand the, what he's saying. Okay, but Do what about the equator? Back around so the equator is not a straight line? Or? Stop saying lines. Is the equator a straight line? Involved. You said there's no straight line on the globe. What about the equator? If I walk on the equator, isn't that a straight okay, line? I, I, I kind of see what you're getting at. And if I look at it and play with it, I'll, I'm sure I'll be able to figure out what's going on. So this supposed physics professor can't answer whether walking along the equator is walking straight. <laughs> he, has to, he has to play around with a software program. <laughs> To understand whether or not the equator would be walking straight. <laughs> oh, man. Th this is literally the most embarrassing flat earth debate I've ever seen. I mean, I wasn't sure at the beginning. I was willing to give Bryant a chance. He seemed to have decent enough credentials. He seemed to be a nice enough guy who wasn't going to be intellectually dishonest. But now we see his true colors. We see these levels of narcissism possibly never seen before in any flat earth debate, or at least one that didn't involve just ad hom sp spamming. I mean, obviously, Bryant's uh, got triggered a few times and he had to resort to ad homs, but nowhere near the level as the typical uh, globe earther arguing in these types of debates. So the hopes were high for Bryant, but what a massive disappointment. What a complete and utter goof Bryant turned out to be. If a student asked him a question, is this the kind of teacher you would want your kids to have? He can't even answer a simple question about the equator on a globe without going on Google Earth and playing with it. What the hell is this guy talking about? <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you for that. It doesn't make any sense. But, bro, it's well, going to be okay. They lied about the earth, but, bro, it's not that big of a deal. It's really not. Like, it just – you start to figure out stuff makes sense. You can trust your senses. 
You know what I mean? Overall, it's a good thing because all of a sudden you can start to understand where you really what? live, maybe put together proper physics and stuff like that. It's not a big deal, bro. Proper physics? And you saw, you're trying to tell me proper physics with electric field? Yeah. But I can prove yeah. can't beat the 9.8 meters per second. I mean, easily prove. He can easily prove it. And yet he didn't. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's been having a mental breakdown for hours on end talking about how he can prove it while not proving it <laughs> and plugging his ears and wanting to talk about everything later or resorting to I've taught this without actually explaining what he taught in a logical or scientific sense only appeals to faith and fallacy. I mean, this, how can anybody not feel bad for Brian here? I mean, I don't understand how anybody could hate on Brian. I mean, this poor guy had a complete and utter mental breakdown here. I mean, this poor guy, not a modicum of logic or reason present in that head. Not even a little bit. I mean, he's got nothing. That man there wants a win so badly today. It means so much to him. He is so carried away with the prospect of winning, the idea that he forgot something that's absolutely essential to today's proceedings. He forgot his case. He forgot to bring it. I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Not one piece of substantiating evidence. He brought absolutely nothing to the table, but he's this much of a narcissist that he thinks he can prove stuff, but he won't actually do it. Just like the four-year-old. I can do that. I won't, but I can. <laughs> I mean, this guy's literally on a four-year-old. I don't want to insult four-year-olds. Maybe there's smarter four-year-olds out there, but I mean, this guy seems to be on a four-year-old maturity level when it comes to discussing this. I mean, this is very, very sad. Particle physics and quantum mechanics can't explain magnetism, electrostatics, or electricity. So yeah, you need to acknowledge that. Well. No, you call them virtual photons, which don't exist. I'm just trying to it help you out, matter. man. Like, he's pretending he knows all of this. Really, Notice how he, it's almost like he's trying to convince himself to not look stupid. Oh, I know this stuff. I know this stuff. While not actually explaining or making any scientific points. He just, <laughs> I mean, this is just so sad now. I just feel really bad for Brian. I mean, how could anybody not? You can measure the forces. Of virtual forces. photons? No, the forces between charged particles and charged objects. We can what about measure. virtual photons? That's well. They again. It's the it's the trans. What they use to try to explain the force, but it doesn't take away from the fact that we can empirically use Kalum's law, which is what that's electrostatics. Welcome to flat Earth, my I'm man. Say, I, I'm saying exactly. We use Kalum's law to disprove that things can't fall 9.8 meters per second squared. It's gravity. It absolutely no. does. It absolutely. No, it doesn't. You can't use electrostatics to explain I, gravity. That's I would love. I'd be down to talk to you. I mean, this guy's just so triggered. I think the reason he's so triggered about the electrostatic argument is he knows that it's valid. Now, regardless of what's true or untrue, again, let's take out of the equation the shape of the Earth and all these things. Even if mass does attract mass, that that still, again, does not invalidate the empirically verifiable electric charges and electric forces he's pretending that they invalidate this other force gravity without actually showing how so all he can do is ad nauseum repeat oh i can prove it i did the calculations i've taught this without actually proving anything but he doesn't have even a modicum of logic or reason to be able to assess his own mental deficiency. Therefore, this is why his mental, his uh, Dunning Kruger is off the charts. And this is why I, I constantly advocate for studying psychology in addition to logic and reason and the scientific method. Because the psychological component here is what you can use. You can actually see on Brian's face here, it betrays him. Micro expressions, the triggering. His psychology, his subconscious has betrayed and exposed him completely here. Utterly and completely and this is why he's so triggered and he keeps going back to the ele electrostatic argument he could be triggered about everything he could he could be going on about any of the other points made but notice how he keeps coming back to the electromagnetic or electrostatic arguments because he knows they're valid and he's so triggered about that he's trying to convince himself that it can't be true and you can see the desperation on his face because why would he be this desperate and triggered over these goofball flat earthers these young guys who he clearly thinks he's smarter than why would he be this triggered about them bringing up the electromagnetic or electrostatic forces if he didn't know that that is in fact valid to some level regardless of the shape of the earth that's why he this he's this trigger and having a mental breakdown and he keeps coming back to the electromagnetic electrostatic arguments they didn't even bring them up and he's already getting triggered
He keeps coming back to him of his own volition. He keeps bringing them up because that's how triggered he is. That's how much his subconscious is betraying him here. About it. I'm just trying to talk to you about the macro now. We've talked to you about a bunch of stuff. I'm trying to know, talk to you. I'm trying to level with you, it. bro. Pun, pun intended. You guys have no answer for why things fall. My dude, it's okay. They sure. lied to you about the earth, but it's not a big deal, bro. So they've given the answer a million times, and he's just going flat out denial mode. How there's no answer. I mean, I've put up all these uh, all these papers on the screen and these uh, supposedly commonly accepted in the world. Like he, this is the thing though. Bryant is clueless about what the the actual phys what the physicists are not disputing. I mean <laughs> I mean all these papers I constantly put on the screen it's like Bryant doesn't isn't even on a basic understanding of the model he's defending because he doesn't even know about all the measurements of these forces and that gravity isn't even purported to be 100% uniform. But he's pretending it is and using that hallucination and the pretending of it to try to disprove all of this that's triggering him. I mean, this level of narcissism and goofery, I don't know if we've seen this in Flat Earth debate thus far. I mean, Bryant really is a leader in many things, logical fallacies and otherwise. <laughs> It's not a big deal. Like the government did all kinds of crazy operations, went and looked at Antarctica, came back, said, you're not allowed to go there, founded NASA, and then they've been lying we'll to you, bro. The and they've been time. showing you cartoons. Let's, let's, just go, let's just go through that. It's all right, bro. And you, yeah, I'm just go, saying, let's do, like, Antar let's do it to Antarctica. Brian, right. I just, one other question, though. So why is it when we listen to Feynman and these other guys that they say if something doesn't match experiment, then it's wrong, right? If a theory doesn't match experiment or observation, then it's wrong. Wait, you got to... Yeah, you got to throw it away. So why? I'm telling you, hold some on. of the other stuff I can look at, mm. but electrostatics is definitely okay. So I'm not talking about that anymore. So, so explain to me though why then. So he just he's tell his argument is I'm telling you like the the sheer desperation because if if he was a man of science he wouldn't be preaching and expect people to take it on blind faith in what he's telling he would allow his arguments to speak for themselves instead of just saying oh this is provable oh this is provable i can prove this without actually doing it notice how he actually hasn't proved a single point not a single point that he proved not one piece of substantiating evidence he just pretended to prove it using faith or fallacy and then reiterated oh i prove it i can prove it and some of it he wouldn't even prove he refused to even do the calculations when the flat earthers called him on it he refused to even calculate he refused to even <laughs> to even answer basic questions about walking along the equator i mean this should tell you everything you need to know about brian this is utterly embarrassing when they looked out at the galaxies and saw that gravity wasn't working, that instead of throwing away the theory as they're supposed to do, they added something that we've never observed and said it must be there. No, you, that's not how science works. You don't throw away a theory. You find huh? either – no, if it doesn't work, you either can refine it. Like, you know, like I told you, general Okay, so is refining, is refining gravity adding dark matter and dark energy? Again, just because we don't know it, you guys have the same problem. You're, you're he keeps going to two quo qui. Whenever he gets called out on his religious BS, he's like, oh, you guys do that. As if, again, hasty generalization, logical fallacy, false dichotomy, logical fallacy, as well as many other logical fallacies, because different flat earthers do different things. Obviously, not all of them do that. But with you could just look at the sheer desperation on his face. I mean, this guy, his meltdown is in full swing. The sh it's like he's trying to convince himself to preserve his own sanity. Because obviously it's easier to fool someone than convince them they've been fooled. Like his ego is so stratospheric. His level of narcissism is so extreme. He can't handle himself being wrong about anything or him being hoodwinked that he has to pretend and hallucinate <laughs> to justify all of this blind faith and corrupt foul of humans that have been proven demonstrably false, of course. But his ego won't allow him to confront any of that information running contrary to his indoctrination at indoctrination facilities which he didn't even he didn't even really do that good of a job because he's utterly clueless about all of this electromagnetic argumentation i mean again walter lewin i mean this guy's got 450 over 450 scientific papers it's really electric forces that hold our world together I, I mean, this guy is one of the de facto accepted in his realm. I'm not using, I'm not claiming Lewin is correct about anything, but Bryant is the one claiming that some kind of consensus or what's currently established and accepted in mainstream science, actually scientism, but he doesn't even know that. That's the point here. Bryant is utterly clueless 
about his own position. <laughs> I mean, that's what makes this so utterly embarrassing for Bryant. He doesn't even have all the points he's... He doesn't even understand the points he's trying to argue and is utterly clueless about everything the Flat Earthers are bringing up, which is in his own model. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. In his own religious belief system, and he doesn't even understand it. It's like some kind of Christian arguing passages of the Bible that they got wrong. He's not even arguing correctly for his side, let alone talk about who's right or wrong about anything. He doesn't even understand his own side's positions. I mean, that's what makes this so utterly embarrassing for Brian. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Whatever magic disc We've never added void. anything. There's no oh. disc. What disc are and you there's talking no void. about, bro? <laughs> I'm sorry, whatever you want to call it. You keep there's showing no this disc in space. You know we don't believe that we're a disc no, in space, where right? Are you, where are you? Earth. Hey, can you pull up the pond? Just like the give basement. him a freaking vision. That's it. Yeah. Because this guy thinks we're a disc in space. I wasted That's four hours if he thinks that. The pond is just oh, a goodness. huge... Come on, man. What is no, it, it looks like a fluid like medium. If you want speculation station, it looks like there's a fluid like medium, super fluid behavior, which would give you perpetual the, electromagnetic energy without any type it's of not electromagnetic energy. Thermoluminescence <laughs> would give you the stars. Well, it looks like we are well, in an electromagnetic not, vortex of the you. ether. If you wanted the real gravy, bro, I could give well, you the listen, gravy, bro. No, no, he wants what's in the physics yeah. book. Yeah. Austin, awesome. what's in the yeah. physics if book you only? Drop a magnet in an electric field, it will drop at a different rate than something that's not magnetic. I know. It works out of flat earth. Look at Dave's screen. You're going to have different velocities for different materials. That doesn't work with electrostatics. No, right. Gravity works just fine. Or does it? Again, does he not even understand his own... The, the model that he's preaching, he doesn't even understand it. Because it's not even purported to be 100% uniform. And he's pretending and hallucinating as he's strong. I mean, the stack of fallacies here, he's stacked it higher than anybody else. I mean, I mean, this is crazy. The, look at the fallacy counter. I mean, never would I have believed... That, that any goof, I mean, any kind of goof would even be able to stack this many fallacies. I mean, Brian is very talented with his Dunning-Kruger stylings and his uh, appeals to faith and fallacy. I mean, there's no science to be found on the side of Brian, but there is faith and fallacy. Brian, look at Dave's screen real quick, and um, I, I don't know, just so you get rid of this disc thing well, we live I in the antarctic is, basin antarctica is the highest guys, land on just, earth it's a container of our pond that's it's not it the highest place on earth it's it is the place. highest land on earth what are you talking what about man do you just say ever. stuff no. out loud not that it's the, the highest point about? not the highest point not but highest its point. land plateau land is higher than all the it's others not, those yeah. are not you do realize that the antarctica doesn't have an ice shelf those are just ice shelves by the way there's ice shelves in greenland Ice shelves and great, uh, but not the ones that we're wall. showing you that are in Antarctica. Those no, aren't in those, Greenland. Those, those walls you show, <laughs> I've seen your pictures of the ice wall. They're just an ice shelf. That's in Antarctica. Yeah. It's the shoreline of our pond. Period. That's whole, it. If you, if you go all the way around Antarctica, it's not. It's sixty thousand miles. Yeah. The amount of straw mans this goof just had to pull out of nowhere. I mean, it's crazy. There's no reason for it either. Like he can make his point without stacking all these straw men. Like, it's just insane. I mean, this guy really is arguing like a four-year-old. No, 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 no. And, like, literally every point, no, without even understanding the point that they're making. And that's, the, it, it's really hard to tell, does he actually understand the points they're making? And that's why he's this triggered and having a mental breakdown. Or is he just this much of an utter goof behaving like an immature four-year-old? I mean, that's the question at this point. I don't know the answer to that. But <laughs> let's continue this train wreck. It's, again, it's hard not to feel bad for this poor guy. Captain so, Cook did it, yeah, Brian. Why don't you shores. research Captain Cook? There's places where there's no ice shelf that you can go into Antarctica without an ice Have shelf. Have you ever researched Captain Cook, Brian? Do you know what he did? Well, I, there's a lot of people. He navigated are, around the Earth and went 60,000 miles. Excuse me. Hold on. Let me finish one sentence. Okay. He went 60,000 miles around the Earth. No way to get in. Can you explain that on your 24,000 mile circumference okay, ball? And 13,000 mile around I can, Antarctica. I can, I can tell you many expeditions to Antarctica that I have on my image, but I'm not on the screen right now. But You need to share your screen. This is, this is one. Hit click share. Approved guided tours where you can only go where the government tells you to go is really not right. going to in any know, way. And, and the the one, of the, one of the ones you're going to show us, Brian, is this people, woman. She went here, and then she said she went here to the South Pole, and then she went here. And then she went back there, and they call that crossing the South Pole. Oh, no, wow. she just went to here and turned around and went back. And by the way, this is like a thousand miles or two thousand miles. This is huge, three thousand miles. 
I doubt she actually did it. Same thing but with if she Zeke, did, oh, Zeke it's right Pilot, here. Right? The guy who but, has the uh, no, it, the guy who has no, the record for flying around image. the South Pole in circumnavigation. Well, look at my image. I mean, people go to the South Pole all the time. I mean, you can book it. Like, yeah, I mean, but see, you don't, you don't understand what... How would you know if that's truly the South Pole, though? Because, of course, there's the uh, the marked South Pole, which is not supposed... It's not even claimed to be the real South Pole. So, again, this goof's just taking all this on faith. I mean, yeah, this is really tough to get through, I have to say. I mean, I've just got to the point where I just feel so sorry for this poor guy utterly humiliating himself, not even being on a four-year-old level. There, it, it's just tough. It's tough to keep going, but... I will do it for the Mind Shock listeners. They wanted this. They're going to get it. <laughs> You're seeing there. Go go back to that image. Go back yeah, to that go image. Back. It's go, one image. Go back to that go image. Back, go, back. go back. We're trying to go, help go you. Go back. Man. So, so this, this um, spot that, that's. Look at the lines the, drawn on the right. That you're calling the South Pole. <laughs> it's right here. This is it. Okay. They've wrapped it around. Now, there's no images of the south of of antarctica in the center yes there are bases along here okay but there's no images of the center because they brought it all together and okay. it's fake okay but still you know how does light wrap around i mean we know there's 20 I mean, dude i can show you right here i'm gonna show you a live time demonstration okay you want to know it's called the coffee cup caustic are you ready look at this look at this you see how the light bigger? is lighting up all the way around it you see that but you that's see not it? that's not how our world works. Oh, it's a coffee cup costume, buddy. <laughs> you that's said, your, you, that's you your said experiment. It, you said it couldn't happen. I just that did it for you. But that is not, that's literally your experiment. But he just I showed mean, you no, that I'm it just could happen. It's possible it's to nothing. literally have a, know, a 24 hour sunlight. But you're taking a little toy and you're trying to show that this. That's what a globe is. is. Dude, you just asked. You just said it was impossible. I just showed that you can effortlessly do it with a container. It's called a coffee cup costume. It's impossible on the actual Earth, not using refractive index plastics that can. Again, we don't live in plastic. We live in atmosphere. Bryant, Bryant, oh, globes are not for educational purposes. You do agree <laughs> with that, right? But everything. No, no, no. Yes or no? Do you agree with that statement? Globes are not for educational purposes. Period. What do you mean they're not for educational? They're purposes? not. No, no. That statement exactly. They're not for I, educational. I, I don't, ag I don't agree. To... I don't agree with that. Go okay, to the but store, every buy globe, a globe yeah. and look at the bottom of it. It says not yeah. for educational purposes. It says they for have to. Oh, okay. oh. They have to. It's bullshit. Well, well, it's not. There's always. So you guys try to take things like that, like the non-rotating. So, I mean, that's just an approximation. Right. Can you admit anything. that when you he keeps hallucinating that it's approximation, but it didn't say it was an approximation. That's his uh, religious hallucination to justify his blind faith. And look at his face again. He's so triggered. The meltdown is so complete. There, there's no logical reason that's going to get through that skull, even if there's something capable there. I don't know if there is. I don't know if there is. He might have some kind of mental disability. I am not arguing that he's capable of understanding. P possibly he is. Maybe he is. But in this triggered state where he's like a triggered little four-year-old, nothing's going to get through. He's made that perfectly clear. All he's doing is pretending to have proved stuff without actually proving anything and just preaching religion. Very, very embarrassing here. NASA said that, bro. When you said that it's not... in their studies as an as a, as a approximation. They didn't Ryan. mean that, that, that. They didn't say right. the word approximate and they, anything. And You're they making actually, up words. In those same documents, they talk about the spherical earth. And the, no, and they you know, don't. No, they don't. You made that up. You're literally so, making bro, stuff up. Okay. I'm, I'm not making Ryan, stuff Ryan, up. Ryan, I'll drop okay. you. I'll send you like 50 documents I have. But I've even ballistic documents. missiles, electromagnetic propagation, or flattery stuff, for man. ground weapon systems. I've documents for ballistic Dude, they used can electromagnetic you show them? weapons. Can you show them? Oh, no, 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 Austin, let them show it. Can we see it? Okay, yeah, yeah. We see electromagnetic propagation, just so you know. But yeah. you, you would think you would we enjoy see. this stuff if you were study electromagnetism. Yeah. Yeah. He has never studied it, obviously. I have. He taught it. No, I I can do experiments. That's the nice thing about science. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All magnetism remember, has remember, inertial planes. Okay, so remember right, the scientific look, method too, Brian. This Don't is forget the field the scientific artillery, method. field artillery manual, canyon gunnery. They talk about the rotation of the Earth. Like many throughout the whole document, they're talking about yeah. the rotation of the Earth. Yeah, we've seen this alleged Coriolis. Do they? Okay, what's the spin of the uh, bullet exiting the muzzle? Well, now you're going to say that that's what it is. There's also. Well, I'm asking you, what is it? Which one's stronger? Well, if it was the muzzle, then why in the southern hemisphere does it go? Notice how he can't answer the question. Like, he does this this whole time. He's just there to shield his ego.
because he's that much of a narcissist. Like, I don't even think he cares what shape of the earth is. He's just here. He's like a four-year-old, needs to shield that ego, can't handle anything, plugs his ears. We'll talk about it later. We'll do it later. I'll check it out later. And then just constantly spewing and regurgitating these unrelated points, these constant red herrings and straw men, instead of just blatantly answering the basic question. Like, you know, the whole thing. So why, do, why have we talked to shoot, shooters who say they've never used well, that ever? the English ever. Navy, actually, when they attacked Germany in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, my never, God, he's repeating that Neil deGrasse Tyson story has been debunked a million times I'm, over. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll Good give you article Neil. after article. That's a joke. Well, That's a whole here, joke, dude. That's not even a real out, story. Bro. Think about what you're saying, that they're launching cannonballs and missing, and they just kept doing it, and they never thought. That's not how army work. If you shoot a cannonball and you miss a boat, you aim to the right until you hit it. You have yeah, you account it. for wind way stronger than oh, any you, of this you nonsense to, you're talking about. I know, but you have to. You do account for wind, but you also have to account for for long range ballistics for the Earth bus effect. And well, the Earth bus is just another component. I have <laughs> long range so ballistics saying that. the Earth's flat right here. They have to treat the Earth like it's and flat. I've got I've got documents to say that the Coriolis is is it got to be accounted for. And I told no one that, accounts for it. Nobody accounts for it. No one counts for it. And Zero I told you even if that was hypothetically there really, real, there really the sky could be causing There are a lot of studies on proven that the spin is they're spinning no there's not anyone can anyone can print a study right i know but this is like 14 studies you guys don't have one study i literally what <laughs> we, we, we we've talked to snipers and then none of them ever account for it oh, oh wait hold on we gotta account for the curvature none hold of on, them there's guys. one video of one sniper who, who's probably not even a real sniper it's there's the one, same video all the everyone time. look at this mental breakdown he can't handle it he can't handle anybody committing blasphemy against his precious religion of scientism. Because here's the other thing, too. Like, it's not like the narcissism doesn't make any sense. I mean, this guy's so invested. I mean, he's wasted his whole life memorizing religious texts and religious studies. I mean, what does it say if they're wrong about something as fundamental as whether or not the Earth is moving, regardless of the shape? I mean, to be wrong about that fundamentally, I mean, his ego can't handle that. I mean, this poor guy might commit suicide if he if he has to confront this. I mean, nobody wants that, obviously. So the brain's defense mechanism is performing as designed here. It's performing as designed. It's shielding Brian's fragile four-year-old style ego. Because people who are mentally strong, they wouldn't have a mental breakdown over this. They would calmly be able to address all of this because they're not that emotionally invested. They don't have their life. They don't have their identity attached to the religion in question. Brian's whole identity, his whole idea of self-worth is attached to this religious blind faith in scientism. So he can't handle anything that goes against that. So for actual snipers, I've actually talked to a sniper as well. They said they didn't account for any kind of uh, <laughs> any for anything <laughs> other than wind. So it's it's kind of weird how uh, he's this triggered when you move into the realm of empiricism and doing it yourself. It's it's just he knows that that's valid. So even if the Earth is moving. That doesn't mean snipers can't operate without cac. They could still, again, there's a certain amount of trial and error in certain situations where, you know, especially in the middle of a war where you can shoot a million times and there's fire and explosions going on around. So it's not like you only get one chance. You can adjust for wind or whatever variables. But the fact that he's getting this triggered over it, I mean, it just it really exposes his level of narcissism, insecurity, and mental weakness. And it's hard not to feel sad for the poor guy. Yeah, everyone goes on that. But and he doesn't even make sense when he's saying it. He doesn't even make sense. Yes, no, long range, range. range. No, snipers. Like yeah. so Bryant, have yeah. you talked to real snipers, Bryant? I will, uh, now I will. Now that you okay. Got, I okay. promise you I'll find a couple. Of look, look at this religious faith. I promise I'll talk to God. If I, I've never tried praying to God before, but I promise that if I do, he'll hear my prayer and respond and give me evidence of the existence of God. I mean, how goofy is this poor guy? It's like a four-year-old being told there's no Santa Claus. He just can't handle it. He needs his toys. He can't handle it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If the earth were truly yeah, flat and stationary, on, would you want to know? I've seen interviews on, 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 you know, dude, dude Brian. I, if I the Earth were just truly because I haven't met stationary, than, would you want to know? I, w I would want to know, but it's like I can easily prove that it's not. So notice how he couldn't even answer yes or no. He had to pretend 
that he would want to know and now desperately clutching to hallucinating the proof that he's failed to provide. We're several hours in and he's failed to bring any kind of case. He's brought zero to the table. Not one piece of substantiating evidence. But like a four-year-old just had to pretend that he actually, it's like he completely lost in whatever game, but he had to pretend that he won. And he thinks repeating that he actually proved something means that he proved it. I mean, this is the level you're dealing with, the mental deficiency of Bryant Myers here that they're dealing with. I have to applaud the Flat Earthers. I mean, their patience is impressive. They well, you would want to know. You haven't done was. that yet. Oh, no! I mean, to me, the, all these things, the sunset. Well, watch this back. video back, the my guy. The sunset proves we're we, a globe. It just, we, we, did you not see the sunset kitchen test? That's literally oh, replicated the, in real the, life. The sunset Show me a test? NASA sunset that's replicated in real life. It's the all composite. Wait, what about. Test proves that. that what, the Dude, we have the stuff great. that debunks the globe all the time. The impossible eclipse, a cellulose eclipse. Oh, the impossible eclipse. Actually, there is an explanation for that. Oh, we course. know we. You claim that the sun and the moon are just refracted up oh, in the air, and it's not really yeah, there. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> happening? Look at his religious fervor. And that's the difference between him and at least these flat earthers. They're arguing from position of security. They've already been on his side if they're being genuine flat earthers. Again, I'm not claiming they are. But if they are genuine flat earthers, they've been on his side. So they're well aware of all of the religious uh, scientism regurgitations that are required in school. And then they've actually applied them to the scientific method, they don't work, or at least these particular arguments don't work. That doesn't mean that other arguments for a spinning globe don't work. But the arguments that Bryant is desperately and fallaciously clinging to, obviously those, as we've seen point by point, he's failed to prove anything in adherence with the scientific method or even basic logic and reason in any way. But look at the religious fervor. Like, he, ha they have to... It has to be refracted. There can't ever be any other explanation because then that would disrupt his blind faith in his religion. So any any evidence against God, he can't process that because he's too much of a religious zealot, hopelessly indoctrinated into his cult. So he'll never accept any other explanation regardless of how valid, and he'll desperately cling to, against all logic and reason and the scientific method itself, these so-called explanations. Very, very sad to see somebody this mentally far gone. That's what's happening. Hey, you did anyone notice? That? You can do the math on that and see that that's what's hey, happening. The, slightly, oh, I, I, I wish I... I, I those selenium eclipses have to be taken just, from a higher Hang level. on a second. Last night, the, the moon came up, and I don't know if it, I don't know, Chad, if you notice this, the moon, the sunlight was on the wrong side of the moon. The sun went down over there, the moon was up, and the other side of the moon was lit. Not just like partially, I'm talking the opposite side of the moon yesterday that was lit. Those, are always, those things are always explainable. I mean, whenever I look into something like that, you can see the explanation. They make the purposes. explanation has nothing to do with Earth. Yo, yeah. Brian, by nothing. the way, when, when you oh, say, when you so, I mean, he really gave him, I mean, he's been giving himself away this whole time, but he really gave away himself away there. There's always an explanation to defend his blind faith in his religion. The religion has to be true. There's always going to be a post hoc. There's always going to be a post hoc fallacy that he can desperately cling to, to maintain the faith. I mean, he exposed himself. I mean, clear. I mean, could it be, could he be any more clear there? I mean, there's nothing more to discuss here. He's made it perfectly clear. He's not interested in any kind of logical, objective, neutral, scientific, honest discussion with integrity of any kind. I mean, he stated it so clearly. I mean, what, what else is there to say? You said that you did the math. Brian, you need to understand what, what you're doing is basic remedial fallacies. You, said we did the math. you get the globe model. You predict where the sun should be. You do the math on based where it really was. And you I say, oh, it must have refracted this much. That's right. not proving something. That's ad hoc fallacy I to dismiss the geometric impossibility of the cell, oh, clip, which happens in November I again, did. by the way. Your model gets debunked on a regular basis in the sky. It doesn't, uh, you can't explain that. I, I, mean, I saw your attempt. But we can easily explain that. Equalizer. Polarized lenses show you exactly what could happen during the eclipse. Dun dun dun. Well, tell. Well, how how can you guys explain a lunar eclipse? That's another big polarized one. lenses. Notice how he could completely change the subject. <laughs> I mean, this is so sad. I'm having trouble here. I hope all the Mind Shock listeners understand the level of pain required to make it through this. I just told you.
A polarized lens explains. Yeah, polarization with an electromagnetic uh, oh, field. No, you got, you no, no. The Earth has to be between the sun and the. It has to be between. It has to be between. It has to be refracted up where we don't actually or, see or it. And how it. do you cast a shadow on something a quarter of a million miles away? They, uh, you, you, you can't take a basketball, hold it against a wall, have the shadow on it, and then move it away. Ten feet away, there's no shadow anymore. There's no sharp edge. There's nothing. Shadows don't travel like that and okay. make make that little curve. And they it, only it, do in the heliocentric model. That's right. The only time something like done. that would happen. This is the actual to scale. You see, a lot of those charts at the eclipse. Uh, the eclipses are not to scale. You have to use a multi-scale diagram because it's that's a cool, cool graphic. Diagram. By the Ooh, way, we so have real away. videos cool of graphic. Life. Brian, I'm putting the moon above. Brian, actually, why why is the moon of uh, why is the moon shadow? Oh, that's a solar eclipse. I'm sorry. Never mind. Brian, I we put in the chat for you the, uh, the sun and the moon above well, the earth the, during the this eclipse. Is, yeah. This is not cartoon problem. memes that beg the question. We have real <laughs> life videos, Brian. Sun and that, that that was sun and the moon. I saw some fake pictures of the sun and the moon on the same side. The selenillion eclipse has been well documented for well, many hundreds of years. Can be explained, though. That can be explained. No, he just explained to you why that's not explanation when you take the math and then make it match by saying, oh, well, then it's refracted this much so that it fits the model. That's and not it's proof. from a higher altitude. you got to take those pictures from a higher altitude. No, you, no, you don't. don't. You can we be on the ground level. pictures taken at the ground. And by the way, if you claim now? that, Brian, if you claim that, if you claim it's refraction, you have to claim that we never see the actual sun ever. That's what you have to claim. Eclipse or the impossible eclipse now? The selenillion is the impossible eclipse. So there, there's versions of the selenillion that are not the impossible. Actually. The selenillion eclipse is always impossible. You can't have the sun and moon above the earth. It's, it's, there are just can't... worse versions, more and, egregious versions no, where the shadow comes from the wrong we know side. refraction from a sunset. You know, a sunset, oh. you can see it further than when. It's the same thing that's happened with this, the impossible eclipse. You can you can explain all those shadows. But and I and I and I know this because a guy brought it up and it stumped me for a little while. But then I finally figured it out. You can explain it. Go with ahead. Magic, ad hoc magic. magic. That's all it is. You're saying. I'm well, still waiting for an explanation somewhere else. Brian, yeah, I mean, cool. and I put in the chat for you the. Uh, it's from Stack Exchange. I'm talking about the fact that it's a completely made up story about the Royal Navy and the Coriolis effect and all that it's garbage. Okay, well, whatever. Maybe that I don't know about. I'll look into that. Okay. Fact check. Thank that. you. I, I have. Well, it's interesting. So he admitted that he didn't fact check it before. So he just took it on blind faith, like he took everything else. So he's, <laughs> I mean, I'm actually a little bit surprised that he's even willing to see this single point. I mean, is this kind of his own mental gymnastics of, oh, look, I can see the point. Therefore, everything else I said must be true. <laughs> I've seen that. You got a lot of stuff to look into, bro. Not just, well, so do you guys. Electromagnetism no, can't we explain don't. gravity. <laughs> He into everything you brought up. Look how he's so triggered. He keeps going back to that. Like, there's so many points he could have went back to, but he keeps going back to the one that's most triggering because he knows it's valid. His subconscious is utterly betraying him here. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Wait, well, you for really think the years. electric field can explain 9.8 meters per second? Because that is so easy to debunk. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything's so intrinsically electric. So easy. He couldn't do it. <laughs> it's been hours. He still couldn't do it. <laughs> he still utterly fails to even understand that gravity's not even claimed to be 100% constant. I mean, he's missing the fundamental basics of everything he's even talking about. Because if gravity is real and the, old is, and the world really is a spinning globe, it still doesn't work the way that he's claiming it to. But he's so utterly clueless and devoid of all logic and reason, he's not capable of understanding that. Electrostatic, it isn't a field pulling it down. It just sets the up and down, and then uh, density separates the rest for the 50th density, time. Density is just a relative that doesn't have a vector to it. Yeah, yeah. It, no, but the vector comes by the electrostatic. Electromagnetism works in all directions. Oh. It doesn't work. I'm mm. sorry. It doesn't go. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Like I said, you can. Do we have an electric gradient on the Earth, yes or no? The electric gradient, like I said, it, 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 it increases no a lot. Non sequitur, no non sequitur. But you said I it comes said, in every I direction. Not a non sequitur because it's it doesn't matter the strength. It doesn't matter what the strength is. It's that it sets it, does it up and down. It, it varies wildly, and gravity doesn't, doesn't matter. Vary wildly. Doesn't it does, matter. It's always it more. It's always. Are you more, kidding more, me? It's always it more positive matter? above. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. The Earth, everywhere on the horizon. Even if it varies wildly across the planet, it can still account for a, a stable nine point eight. No, wait, wait, no, but not, nine point eight meters per I'm second sorry. varies greatly across. Brian, the Brian, let me let me ask you a question. I, I know what? I know you said you're Brian. Brian you, you said that the electrostatic force isn't equal isn't equal all over the earth. 
and you're ignoring the fact that the, the, the number of times stronger than gravity is is an unfathomable Earth number. So wait, hold on a second. Let's pretend true. gravity. Hold on. Let me finish. Let's pretend gravity is real. We know the electrostatic force is real. So why do things fall at 9.8 meters per second when the electrostatic field is also How pulling, is uh, also doing it? You know, 100 volts per meter where it is, it's, very, yeah, it's a very but, weak electric field. It doesn't but matter. It's, it's stronger than gravity. He's, right. he's missing yeah, but, the point, though. But if, the point. if the point is your 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 gravity falls apart because you got your gravity and the proven electrostatic field, the the the, the myth the, of gravity know, and the proof. But why why so why do things go down at the speed hey, that you hey, say? Can I just talk? To, I don't want to talk to Austin anymore for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk. <laughs> Well, I mean, this is truly four-year-old. He's plugging his ears. He's covering his eyes. He's doing anything and everything to try to preserve any kind of vestige of intellectual or academic credibility, which he clearly doesn't have. I mean, this poor guy has been utterly decimated for hours on end by a bunch of young flat earthers and David Wise, who's a flat earther, but not young. <laughs> I mean, the utter decimation here, the, the, the level of embarrassment here, how could you not feel bad for Bryant Myers? I mean, this is literally four-year-old tactics, completely bereft of any kind of logic or reason, or even base level professionalism at this point. <laughs> I'm just intellectually eviscerating. Yeah, I I'm going to mute you. You're not, you're not listening to me. I just want to talk to Dave because... <laughs> All right, go ahead. You're not listening. He's the one constantly interrupting where they've allowed him to speak for dozens of minutes at a time and give his sermon with all of his presentation uninterrupted for the most part. He interrupts every... Like, what is the longest amount of time he's allowed anybody to speak? Seven seconds? Nine seconds? I mean, he's jumping in literally every two seconds on average. Every two seconds, and he's and he's complaining that others aren't listening to him. They've listened to every single point he's made. They've listened to all these rambling sermons and hallucinations and appeals to faith and pointed out why they're fallacious for the most part. Uh, and, and yet he's been unable to do so with anything they've said. <laughs> I mean, the level of goofery is so off the chart here. Look at this guy's face. I mean, this guy's mental breakdown. How do you not feel bad for this guy? I mean, his psyche is doing what it can to preserve any kind of function left. So this poor guy, I mean, obviously mentally he can't handle, he can't handle any of this. He can't handle the fact that his brainwashing and indoctrination is being utterly exposed, his religion being utterly exposed for what it is, an anti-science blind faith position. And he just can't handle it. Talk to Dave. No, you haven't proved. <laughs> I'm going mute, bro. I'm going the, the electrostatic field, Dave. It, you, can you agree that it varies wildly across the planet with lightning strikes and the electrical activity? But that, you, that you're not understanding. Austin tried to spend, it, explain it to you a whole bunch no, of time. He, he, it, he it just, just sets down. down. It just determines the up and down. It doesn't no, it have doesn't. the intensity. So, okay, well, I'm out. I, I would agree yeah. that we completely disagree on this. You I agree that you don't understand. You had absolutely nothing with any substance. So I, nothing. I, we have I, nothing. I, the psychological projection. I mean, his subconscious is on point. You have to at least give Bryant subconscious credit. I mean, it exposed him completely. He has nothing of substance, and he's brought nothing to this table for hours. Not a single point. I mean, he's bringing sponges to tank fights. Very, very sad. Not one piece of substantiating evidence. That's it. You know what? You know who? You know who has all the substance though? Is is physics? Physics? Physics books? I know, but they got the, all the, the substance. The electric field is so. Bob, easy the science guy, I mean, you, But you, hey, I gotta say this. It's really funny Ridiculous. that you're you have such a high standard for what I'm explaining, which is objective, and you've yet to understand. But it's you not. don't apply the same standard to the theory of relativity, which has been debunked. So it's just a hypocritical oh, standard because you have a cognitive dissonance bias what do you towards mean the globe Earth. That's makes objectively what we're all to understand laws and theories make accurate predictions. If they're if they're proven to think so, what is okay? So point, hold on. If it makes still, it doesn't take away from that. It makes accurate. All right. So space time is predicted, right? Me. Again, his hallucinations that prediction equals truth. I mean, there's the ancients had all these predictions with flat Earth cosmology. So what? Does that mean they were correct? I mean, just this level of goofery, I really can't even laugh at this guy. I feel bad laughing at this poor guy now. It's just, I feel sad for this poor little guy. I mean, to just be this brainwashed by a cult, to be incapable of even children's level cognitive function is just very, very sad here.
space time is predicted. So tell me, what is being bent in space time? Because I'm conf- I thought space was the absence of everything, but you are saying it's okay, bent. Spa- again, this is again, I, this is a model. It's a math. You understand that? Wait, so it's not reality? No, it's not real. All 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 theories are models that that actually will give you accurate predictions about the reality. But it doesn't. It doesn't give us accurate predictions. It says are you kidding me? LIGO, it's off by ninety five percent on the cosmological scale, and it's off on the quantum scale. Well, that that's a different thing. I'm talking. No, about it's not a different thing. It's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. I'm talking about astrophysics now. I'm talking about general relativity has has never really been falsified. It literally has, though. Well, show me. Show me what's okay. Really dark matter, dark energy expansion that rate. The lack of falsified general relativity. What? Because you so added listen, again. You added something to make your model work, and then relativity you made a prediction. Okay, it was but wrong. your model doesn't even come close to explaining. Gee, we've been oh, yeah. We're we're a bunch of guys in our house. We're a bunch of guys in our houses. Why things fall nine point eight meters per second? Here we go. I it's not can. our job to it. prove our model. You have to prove your positive claim of the globe. And so far, there's been zero proof. I'm saying that Newton's gravity makes accurate predictions that we can use to actually build things. Things. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Okay. Well, the whole so, world around you is based on. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really electric forces that hold our world together. Decent. Listen, it's accurate on the on the local scale because it's downward acceleration, which is an agreed upon which average. Can't that can't be ac- the electric field. Absolutely I, I, I can't. Be. Cannot be. You're afraid to hear it me can't. lay out. Cannot be. Man. Listen, you can have a magnet. A magnet. And a, and a diamagnetic object, right? The magnet's going to get bent by an electric field and it's going to slow down. Non sequitur? It's not a non sequitur. It, it, you can't, we know that things fall at the same. I mean, come on. It, it's, the magnet, electric fields don't work. To hey, if gravity. I drop a magnet over top of uh, a, an area of the ground that has more metal composition, does it drop faster or slower? Or exactly 9.8? If there's no air resistance, it's all going to drop at 9.8. That's, That's incorrect. That's if I drop true. a magnet... Yeah, I mean, this is sad. I mean, Brian's not even... I mean, this this is like, what, third graders or fourth graders do experiments with magnets? I forgot what year we did these experiments. This guy doesn't even know what magnetism is. Is that the problem here? Because he can't even answer this basic question about that that small children understand this stuff, that magnets can attract, and and based on the strength of the magnets, they can attract or repel at different rates based on the strength. I mean, this is children's level science. And Brian's not even there. I mean, man, really, really sad stuff. Over top of a bo- oh, um, mag- oh, like, magnet. Like- oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. If you, okay. If that's okay. The, but, so stop talking no, about magnets. No, no listen. That's, the, that's when you draw a free body diagram. You have two forces you got to account now. The electric force, I mean, the magnetic mm-hmm. force, and the force of gravity. There's more than just one force in some Gravity's of the- a pseudo scientific fairy tale that needs to explain the convexity Dave, I, of the I, I, ocean I, I, bending I around the ball. Debate on Austin, that's not why you brought him on, Dave. So you got, you got some ace no, in the it, hole, flat earth. <laughs> ace in the hole. Like, what does that mean? So he acknowledges his own obliteration? So did he just. He called Austin an uh, ace in the hole? So, like, look at his face here. Like, his narcissism couldn't handle being th- obliterated, so now he's attacking Dave for bringing Austin on Because, to- <laughs> I mean, you have to give him credit, because at least on some level, he realizes he got completely obliterated. So he's not, he's not completely brain dead or anything. He might have a mental disability, but it's not like he's a vegetable and he's completely brain dead. Clearly, he can understand certain concepts, and clearly he understands that he's been completely obliterated by this so-called ace in the hole although i have to say the other guys i mean not so much hibbler but uh jaronism and david obliterated him pretty well also so i mean (laughs) yeah it's just just so sad it doesn't matter. He's actually oh, better at explaining these things than me. So you, 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 I'll disengage. I don't want you to get triggered, man. I'm just trying I, to help well, you. Listen, out, listen. We we've been going round I, and round I, I on could, this. I could easily explain to you that the electric field can't work, but you won't no. listen to that. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. They just listened to his religious regurgitations for hours, and he's done everything except explain it while saying how he explained it. <laughs> that he explained it and proved it. He did everything but actually explain and prove because his basics are wrong. He doesn't even understand what is claimed about gravity. I mean, this is just really sad. No, you can't because it just sets the bias. If, you, if you'll give me 20, 15 seconds, I'll do it. No, I'll I don't want to talk to you anymore. 15 you seconds. <laughs> not, not li- wow, a little four-year-old got triggered. Not even a four-year-old boy. I mean, this is like a four-year-old girl who just doesn't want to talk to the classmate that made her cry with the truth that she couldn't handle. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, this is so sad. So sad. 
listening though. <laughs> I'm not, Bro, I'm trust all, me. I'm all right. Can we can we change to like the stars or something? Wait, wait, or you know, slitting my wrist? Fifteen seconds. Just so you 15 understand. Seconds, fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. I'll stop. I'll stop after fifteen seconds, Brian. You gotta trust me. I'll mute him after fifteen seconds. I'll mute myself. Fifteen. All right. Listen. So yeah, the electrical field changes drastically across the earth. It's not exactly the same, but the fact that it Thank always you. increases at all creates the up and down, it which is all that's with needed. Altitude. It's over. It's all right. I'm done. I'm done. He couldn't even wait the 15 seconds before interrupting. I mean, this level of triggering and mental breakdown. I don't know if I've ever seen something like this before. I mean, this is just all new lows for humanity itself. Done. If you heard, if you heard it, you didn't hear it. I don't say. No, look, didn't look hear it up. It. What the does? Didn't, didn't hear it. <laughs> it does. I'm, I'm telling you, you just like, it does. All right, bro. All right, bro. All right. Agree I, to any disagree. Other... It's a agree fact. to disagree. I'm agree to disagree, disagree. Brian. 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 You can measure uh, it. And decrease. Let, let's bring listen. it back home. Let's just let's say our goodbyes. Let's say let's be nice to each other and let's go our separate ways. Listen, listen I want to point out one thing. No oh insults were thrown. Some joking around. Some heated conversation. This is how globe believers and flat earth believers should have a conversation i think bryant you know was willing to come on with all four of us and no austin well yeah he is my ace in the hole he sp explains that stuff better than i do that's why i had him on because i want to give you the best answers right i had sean i had, had jaron myself together i think we gave you the the best arguments because by myself probably wouldn't have done as good of a job so um i just want to thank you for being a reasonable um well reasonable uh, a, a polite um guest i was about to call dave on uh the reasonable aspect there there was no logic and reason from the side of brian but he caught himself there so good on david white yeah okay all right so uh, hats off to you for that we uh we and he wasn't even even actually that polite in the second half because the in, once he got heavily triggered and he spiraled into his mental breakdown he just constantly interrupted every two seconds that's not really polite violently disagree on 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 this stuff and there was a whole bunch of i gotta look into that i hope you do look into that I will, and i'll, I'll and, look at it so i can see what's going you know, on and, i just can't follow what's going right. on and and we didn't um talk about nasa because I don't know that one. That one would be a, a pretty, pretty scary. I mean, you know, the the litmus test. Normally, we don't really talk to people that can't look at this thing and go, <laughs> "This is not a want, spaceship." I don't want to look at talk. About, I don't want to talk about the moon landing. I yes, of course you don't. <laughs> of course. Well, no, it's just because <laughs> no I no duct tape, no duct tape. Dave. Well, listen, I know it. you guys have so many answers. I got to look into everything. No, you, talk you about know what? You're right. If you haven't oh. looked into it unfair so i have one question for you That's one question for you okay. knowing about pressure and water and everything it all could i put you in this and submerge you in a lake would you let me do that would what you, you go into this thing and let me submerge you underwater because it is airtight right it has to be airtight i mean look at that that tinfoil and those curtain you can do it to me Dave. I'll, I'll, do it. I'll go ahead and do it go ahead and put me in the i won't do it to you darren right. uh, i'll be fine um come on so just but here's the thing just this alone debunks nasa which debunks all debunk, a picture doesn't debunk anything Dave. i'm mm. sorry this the thing, lunar module debunks the, the, the lunar mission. module it this debunks thing. it makes so the earth is flat i mean if it, because of the, yeah, no, they had to fake no, but the they, moon they certainly to wanted to get that view yeah. all right listen he doesn't yeah. listen we've gone I, three and a half out four hours we've gone four hours he doesn't want to talk about the moon landing i well, don't blame again, him i haven't spent a lot of time with it but i've spent enough time to see some good evidence but i i'm not going to pretend you guys have every single talking point i know this is what the really the top flat earthers do. They they know how to respond to everything. Yeah. So notice how th this really gives him away. So notice how he can't he can't even be honest enough to consider the possibility that he was wrong or it was fraud. So he has to pretend and hallucinate, do all these mental gymnastics as if these are memorized talking points and couldn't possibly be the truth in any way. They're just uh, responses or talking points. They can't actually be the truth. Look at the religious fervor in his face. He will always be unwilling to accept anything that does not align with his religion. He's made that perfectly clear, even in the way he phrased that regarding so-called top flat earthers. I mean, it's just kind of weird how he has to do all these mental gymnastics in order to continue his hallucinations and blind faith in corrupt, fallible humans and the religious cult of scientism.
It's because we I'm looked into you, everything. I mean, the reason yeah, we've been think, studying electro, it. We've been, we've been looking into it for years. Electrostatics cannot work to describe why they... It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Man, this guy's really triggered about the electrostatic. I mean, he just keeps going back to look at his face. Look at this poor guy. Austin gave him a complete and utter mental breakdown, and he's still sputtering in this triggered spiral. I mean, wow. I mean, this is truly a one of a kind, unique discussion. I might have to leave it at that. <laughs> That's again, you don't opinion. understand. Right, again, so you don't understand it by saying that you don't understand. It. No, I do understand it. I, again, I just wrote a book that was based on me spending a year restudying electricity and magnetism. I understand it very well. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. If you spent electric, 10 years on it, it doesn't mean it's right. But electric, it's, it's, it it's can't, right, bro. again, if, if things fell 9.8 meters per second and dropped up by one over R, the electric field of the Earth stop, literally comes near zero at a certain altitude, but gravity doesn't stop there. Again, Ryan, show me the curvature, please. I showed you plenty of curvature. No, you haven't. Where, what? Show me, show, me I left? The show me the pond. The pond? Go look outside. Go, go outside, brother. Go outside. Go, brother. Yeah. Go, yeah. outside. No. go on an airplane and look <laughs> no, around. No, listen, you're demanding whole Earth images. I'm demanding a whole pond image. Excuse no. me. I don't, I no. don't make $330 billion a year to go prove these things to you. They do, and, and they've never proved know, it. Because if they high, proved it, Brian, we wouldn't be having this conversation I know, but all those at all. High, all those high altitude balloons, I've been able to see easily that they're. Brian, but uh, you can't see that cherry, far. You, you can't see cherry, forever. He also doesn't make whole Earth claims, I thought it, wait, right? I thought so it was three different. miles we could see. So how far are you talking right. here? Right. That depends, earlier, three miles is the farthest. And, and it, on, no, it depends on your eye. On there's, your only, eye, your eye there's only yeah. one side making Fraction. whole Earth claims, Brian, right? The government claims exactly what the Earth is, Show exactly what picture. it looks like. They claim they go to space. Wait. They're making the whole Earth. Remember, remember, whole Earth pictures. That's remember right. Remember, Jaron said, put yourself in a room, make it 10 miles wide with a 10 foot high ceiling. Could you take a picture of that whole room? No, you couldn't because a half a mile away, the ceiling would touch the floor. Okay, so you can only take pictures of parts of it. The perspective equation says otherwise. Oh Actually, boy. it doesn't ever. What? What? I, I was at the Bellagio in <laughs> Vegas, and the lights. But were Dave, touching the, the floor equations at the don't say that. No, the, nope, the, the equations don't say that. The lights were touching the floor at the other end of the hallway. Not according to my math, they weren't. <laughs> Uh, that's not about that. It's, I mean, it, you're just. It's taking perspective. One, you're taking one example. We Those damn flat earthers love perspective. It's what everybody you sees every day, is, every but bit. That of, doesn't prove anything. That's inside of one place, and you're saying that that. Proves that's where we it. live. Yeah. Right. Here's my my final statement. It's okay to have your entire life destroyed with new information because then you have a whole new life. <laughs> all right. Is, again, your whole foundation based facts. is based on elect the electric theory of gravity. Is absolutely oh, that's our whole wrong. thing. Yeah. That's our whole thing. You know that's what? One of the things, bro. Yeah. That, and that proves curvature. Out. Good job. But your entire world is set that an atom at the very center of the earth says, I'm the center. Everyone come to me. <laughs> but the atom that's, that's halfway so between the center and halfway between the the, the center and the surface. He, he goes, no, I am the center. Everybody come Dave, to me. And then they fight it out. And the guy at the middle always wins. No, Dave, that, that's how, that's how equilibrium is established. That's how equal. Have, how does gas turn that, into that, a, a gravitational that, ball that, 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 that they've avoid in between? Okay. How does that happen? It's a lot of, it's an energy density. It's not energy mm. density. That, damn it. I you should have known that. that. Well, it is. I should have looked into that. That's how relatively explained. So, so that's nothing that's exploded, exploded, became everything. All the rocks stuck together and all the gases turned into well, giant balls it? and they left a void in between and somehow they hold on okay. to each other and they ignore the three body problem. They go into the hundred billion body, not problem. Oh, and can. they repeat every year. <laughs> Wow, that was actually one of the funniest rants I've ever seen from David White. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty good. I got that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. I gotta say, <laughs> everything repeats. Problem. The eclipses repeat every eighteen I, years. I understand chaos, dude. By the way, the three body problem. You know what the you know what the prediction the, the predictability horizon is within the three body problem within. <laughs> My my question is, oh, how right. do all of these planets and stars and everything maintain perfect order like a clock? Okay, let me let me let me counter that with the same question for you. Where in the world is the pond? What, what's around it? What's beneath it? We're not allowed to go I there. I don't know. Brian. We're not allowed to go there. But you got and that's just it's all. What, just what's at the end of your universe that's at expanding least, faster know, than the speed of light? All, Listen, we had a conversation before. You kind of know my views as a more spiritual view of let, everything. But this physical universe, we don't have. So there's a lot let, of. Let space. me ask you a question. What makes more sense? Of, what makes more sense? Space. That we're on a, a non moving level plane, like every observation, 
tells us and that we're not allowed to explore the outer land so we don't know or we live in this heliocentric space void that's expanding faster than the speed of light into nothingness okay but this the hubble model is not perfect i agree there's a lot of things not known but not guys, perfect. But you guys not, don't Wrong. have anything. But you guys don't have anything. Yeah, we were you lied to say, as children. We dude, were dude, you're like bragging about the fact I that know, the but... world's countries got together and said we can't go past the 60th South Latitude. You're like, you guys can't even know what's are, past. You, yeah, the world guys, governments the are working the together, treaty, Brian. You didn't know treaty. that? Hey, you know, no, the Antarctic Treaty. Antarctic. I've read it, actually. And it doesn't say we can go there. Wow. So, okay. So is Brian admitting here that there's a fundamental deficiency in basic first grade English comprehension because he claims to have read all these things, looked at these things, watched these, but nothing was processed. So are they just really ganging up on this poor guy with a mental disability? And if so, that's kind of messed up. I mean, that's kind of messed up, I got to say. Two, two, there's two things that all of the major governments in the world agree upon. Can't go to Antarctica because we have to protect the ice and the penguins, and everyone needs to get a shot in the arm. Wait, what about okay? wearing masks? They, 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 agree, wear on, mask. they agree on those two things. They agree on the, the boogeyman thing, and they agree on Antarctica. That tells you something. That should tell you something. I know, but the Antarctica, people go there all the time. No, you but yeah, they go there. there there's a, a hundred companies all owned, run by the same guy. There are a whole bunch of shell companies. I mean, it's I- out of most people's price range, and you barely get off the ship. Yeah, and if they did, even if they let you go, how far are you going to go? Are you are going to walk a hundred miles and come back? Mm. You're still on the ice shelf. <laughs> the Antarctic tree doesn't prohibit people from going there. It prohibits dumping. Prohibits it prohibits. No, we have, we have to turn in a report. And, and, We'd have to turn in a report. Exploration is forbidden. You have it to be not, not tree, you have to go Absolutely okay. is. Okay. Get, Brian, book something. Book something to go explore Antarctica. Tell me how the process works. Once you get denied, we can have that conversation. Because and, you don't know what you're talking about. You've no, never tried to go to Antarctica and explore brian you've never time. tried to yeah do they go on have a cruise ship there and explore? they spend thirty thousand bucks to I go to the edge a, i don't want have, a, you, have you been there to explore we can't go there have you tried here what we're saying well, i understand we, boat, but, we have friends that have boat. gone why brian, don't you try to book brian, one of those antarctic t- brian i'll tell you t- t- what we've done all the work for you one of our flat earther guys who's a lawyer put all of the information together in a 30 minute video it's in the app under the antarctica button on the faq page hit it it's called why is um sorry antarctica's closed watch that he did all the work for you it would take you six months to get this amount of research he did it in 30 minutes for you watch that and then go double check it go go and then verify I, it i found out that there's the papers all the, on all, of it. all the cruise ships Documents. are all owned by the same Documents. person you know, the other thing that's a problem is yeah. that with these high altitudes. Did you hear what Jaron said? said? Let Jaron say something again. What, what was that? I just said all the cruise ships or most of the cruise ships that go down to Antarctica are all owned by the same guy. And he's the guy that Obama put in charge of NOAA uh, back, whatever wow. that was, 10, like 20 years ago. I'd like to fact check that. I'm, okay. I'll, I'll look at Please do. You got a lot to fact check. You might want to come back and watch this video again and then remember all the stuff that you want to fact check. We're not lying. Spinrass. Nina, Nina Spinrass. Spinrass, I, I think is her the name. Electric, just go back to the drawing board with that. Like, because that doesn't work. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. I mean, You're obsessed with that, man. It's because I'm it's obsessed with it because every it's the only thing that you have because you, 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 you can argue it all day long. You've explained everything else. He didn't argue he just, it actually. He, he got, gravity I just mean, annihilates the flat earth. That's the problem. Why you guys have the gravity? Oh, gravity. Oh, there gravity. is no ball without gravity. It's a hypocritical exactly. statement. That's bro. the only proof for gra- for gravity is that it has to exist if the earth evolved. It's That's a, why it's something that we can we can actually know the. I, I explained to you what the difference between a law and a theory. Laws are things we can use to actually make get calculations, make predictions, then we can get things that we can then make, then we can use that to make things in this world. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Great. If there was an applied, listen, if there was an applied science of flat earth, we wouldn't, nothing would be getting made. There'd be no innovation. Oh boy. What do you, you guys. So we would have never figured out that things fell 9.8 meters per second squared if the earth was flat. We wouldn't have figured it you out. Can, it was yeah, predicted yeah, before Newton. You're just rebranding. Yeah, I know, but you're just rebranding gravity. He just goes into the defense mechanism of hallucinating and pretending that rebranding somehow invalidates what was just said. <laughs> As if, well, it's also psychological projection because what he's saying is rebranding the previous ideas. And he's pretending 
that they're doing. Again, classic psychological projection. Yeah, in, 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 into a true model, not the fake one that's telling still, everybody we're spinning and flying through space. Mad. Newton didn't even offer a mechanism for gravity. He said, do not ever attribute that to me because any man with competent faculty of thinking and philosophical matters can never fall into but the absurdity of thinking that it could be something. Hey, what if, what if when that apple fell, some kid let go of a helium balloon? What would have Newton come up with? A helium balloon is actually just <laughs> gravity pulling the atmosphere down hard. Well, Dave, you know I mean, what would would he, would he have come up oh, with gravity? Wait, 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 Brian, what what yeah. would happen if Newton saw the <laughs> apple land in water and it just floated there? And, and the helium balloon up? went would up. That mess everything yeah. up for him. The same thing would have happened, actually. But but you yeah. know, no, Dave, another would, fake story, guys. Think, another fake story um, never happened. 1666 was 666 nobody, nobody Newtons. Oh my hit, god, bro! Hit, you think that's a coincidence? But you guys have all these great little stories. It's pretty nice. It's like a religion almost. They're cute. They're cute stories. They're cute. If you get a helium balloon and then you're in a car and you slam on the brakes, which direction? the helium balloon go it goes to the uh we've seen this before we saw the guy from smarter every day do it but it made sense why i did because the air gets pushed forward so it goes back wait i'm trying yeah to well, the, the air it's all it's all about again because the atmosphere the reason the helium balloon rises up is because the atmosphere is pulling down the denser air below it and it pushes it up oh you mean it has all an electric gradient gravity. Wait, oh, yeah, the electric gradient. But where is, exactly. but where is it pulling? Gradient? Welcome to Again, flat Earth, Brian. We can yeah, measure just... the electric field, guys, at higher altitudes. Wait, hold on. If I'm holding a, faster. hold on, I'm holding a helium matter. balloon. Work. Hold on, Brian. Work. I'm holding a helium matter. balloon. I'm holding a helium balloon in a string. It a lot. And I let it go. What are you saying that the that the Earth is pulling the gravity, the air from where? No, the air, yes. So the, the air is more dense than helium, right? You know, you know. Thank that, you. Right? Yes. Okay, so the air that's displaced Jesus. by the, so the amount of air that was in where the helium balloon is, so you got a helium balloon right here. Right? Yes, D density. So that air inside that's getting displaced is denser than the helium. So the so that's push, that's Archimedes' you know idea. So it's what happened to gravity? <laughs> He's <laughs> Brian sounds like a flat earther right now because <laughs> that's the arguments they use. Well, gravity's pulling the atmosphere down. That's what creates the pressure. But pulling what atmosphere down? Pulling the balloon's there. The atmosphere we live in. It's the gravitational force. No, I'm talking about the balloon. Why is the balloon not going down? The balloon, Why are the clouds not going down? These are questions that you can't answer. The balloon will go up to where it gets to its same density as the air, and it will stop. No. You think that the where clouds with that with the with the, the down balloon doesn't with, keep going up with guys. trillions of tons of clouds, water? Man. It pops. Yeah, are they are they lighter than balloons? It doesn't stop yeah, it. Pops. Pops. Wait, you ever been? Clouds, like if you've ever been in a down, a downpour, like a, a heavy deluge downpour. Okay. Where, okay. where is all that water? Why is it floating up there? Clouds Can you explain are, it? I mean, okay, clouds are mysterious. I'm not going to try to explain something. I don't they're not understand. mysterious. We know what they're doing. We know what they're doing. Yes, but you don't have any, your answer is electro, electrostatic. That's the actual answer. Why don't you look it up? <laughs> it doesn't work. It it does it. Does it. All right, all right, all right. We're, 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 we're on the same thing. I mean, he's just like this religious regurgitation, arguing against blasphemy, trying to convince himself that it doesn't work. I mean, that's looks. Like, I mean, just from the expressions and everything, he's trying to convince himself that it couldn't work in order to justify his blind faith in his cult. All right, guys. Brian, final, just say say you have a final. You statement. even agreed to me that it varies wildly, and somehow it, it's still doesn't matter. Just matter. Well, it's funny. I'm, I'm looking up electrostatics, and yeah. it says right here, the presence of surface charge imbalance means that objects down, will exhibit attractive and repulsive forces. Is right there. During a lightning storm, <laughs> grab, the electric field switches polarity. You know that, right? Why, why are you getting? It doesn't matter. It sets you up and yes, down. Yes, it does. You just mm. said it sets up and down. It he doesn't understand player. what that means, Austin. That's no, I guess no, not. He, dude. he, he doesn't understand what I'm saying. You said the clouds weren't held together by electrostatics. During, during I think it, it might be time to call it a night, bro. During it might be time to call it. No, a night, bro. during an electric electrical storm, the the polarity reverses and it increases by like ten thousand fold. So oh, okay. you're, you're saying that electrostatics defines the direction of gravity. How can it reverse gravity like that? Gravity doesn't exist. What are you, it's, gravity, not, it's, it's always down. Well, gravity is incoherent dielectric acceleration. I'll send you some stuff. All right. I'll no, send you some the, stuff the, and you can read this, it or no, you cannot read it. I don't answer know. Answer this one thing. Answer this. How, if the electrostatic field is given the direction to why things fall, how mm -hmm. is it that during a thunderstorm, the electric field switches from positive to negative and increases? Why don't things start floating up during an electrical storm? You just get dielectric imp like pulses, dielectric discharges towards technically counter space. Now and you think the entire electric talk. gradient on the Earth flips over? Is that what you think? It, it provably does during a lightning storm. Real, the whole entire Earth's electric gradient clouds, flips upside down. That's what you think? From the clouds to the ground. It, it it's a... It's
<laughs> Austin just easily answered that question, and this goof is just spiraling out of control. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to grasp desperately at anything just to make him sound himself sound not like a complete and utter fool like he's been sounding like this whole time. It's a well, lightning like, bolt for a split second. Yeah, that's it. It's a dielectric discharge. It doesn't matter. It's, there's no variations like that with gravity or 9.8 meters per second. But why is he using the para First of all, there are variations. Second of all, why is he using parameters which are not being claimed uh, again, like it's again, it, it all comes back to somebody trying to prove God using the Bible. But if somebody doesn't believe in the Bible, why do you keep using the passages of the Bible as your proofs? And Bryant doesn't have the modicum of mental wherewithal that even small children have to understand this very basic point. Nine point eight minutes per second. Stays oh, the same. That's an average. It doesn't stay the same. How do you keep saying that? Understand it. And, no, and wait, wait. Have you have you ever gotten a scale and then stood exactly where lightning striked and to see if the weight on the scale changed? Have you ever done that? I don't think anyone's ever done that. Well, okay. I don't think that's going to show much. You I don't can make it, things float uh, with electrostatics, bro. Come on. Yes. It, but again, electrostatic field of the earth stops. We're, we're, we're back. We're back. I know. But oh, yeah, this is going on forever, bro. It's I'm one fifteen in the morning. Right. I got to get out of here. Yeah, I mean, I, we got to so wrap we'll it talk, up. We'll talk to him it's about so it. It's so obvious. You're denying the obvious. I mean, you're saying like, this. This actually hurts worse than my broken tooth. Brian. Brian, we all love you, by the way. We all love you. Very nice. I feel bad for you. Listen. Go back, listen to this, all the things that you said you were going to look into, look into it. If you need us to send you any documents, you know, we'll send you some. Wit, what's it? I'll give him, his, give him your email. He'll send you some stuff. I want to see how electrostatics can give a uniform, at the surface of the earth, a uniform 9.8 meters per second, when we know it varies wildly and it reverses okay. clarity. All right. Which means you cool. got to explain. He'll get it over cool. to you. It He'll get it, get, it, we'll get it over to you. I got you. And then yeah. there's something to my then channel, too. Welcome to Flat Earth. To, but good luck, Charlie. Yeah. Notice that there is a clear parallel with gravity. Newton's law of gravity, that the force, which in that case is always attracting, gravity never repels, is the product of two masses. And then you have here the gravitational constant, and again you have the distance square. So there is an enormous parallel between the two. It's a great beauty that electricity acts in a way that is very parallel to the way that gravity works. If you compare electricity with gravity, you will see that electric forces are way more powerful than gravitational forces. If now I compare the electric force with the gravitational force, so I divide one by the other, Notice that the D cancels. They both have D squared downstairs. And so you will easily be able to show that this ratio is roughly 10 to the 36. So the electric force is 36 orders of magnitude more potent than the gravitational attraction. This teaches you some respect, perhaps, for 802. If these were the only forces that acted on the protons, and you bring them in the nucleus, which has a size of only 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, then the acceleration that the proton will experience is the electric force divided by the mass of the proton, F equals ma, basis of eta one. And if you take this electric force, when you make D 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, which is 10 to the minus 14 meters, and you calculate this ratio, you will find that it is 26 orders of magnitude higher than the gravitational acceleration on Earth. 26 orders of magnitude higher. So you wonder what the hell holds the nucleus together if there is such a tremendous force on these protons. Well, what is holding them together are the nuclear forces, which we do not fully understand. But thank goodness, the nuclear forces are not part of 802. So I'll leave that alone for now. So what holds our world together? Well, on the nuclear scale, 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, very important are the nuclear forces. On an atomic scale, up to thousands of kilometers, it's really electric forces 
that hold our world together. All right. Get it over to you. No worries. I'll um, send you some stuff. Mm. Uh, thank you. And all right. Well, all right. Let's be. Let's, let's say our goodbye. All right. All right. So you know, it's nice. Thank you for coming. And I, was I know just it did. What I was worried about. I know four on one was not not kind. Or uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a second. I think we were very good to you. Yeah, we were. Well, we didn't call not, you the names. It's not that you were not bad. It's not that you were. I just didn't want to talk to Austin. Most. I wanted to talk to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to talk to Austin when it comes to this well, stuff. But he's, he's not listening. He's, not, he, he's got his strong idea of electric. But you don't. You really don't have any strong ideas that are I do, but I can oh. prove easily that the electric field varies wildly. It's- Man, this guy's still obsessing over it. He can't let it go. <laughs> he's this triggered. <laughs> They stopped talking about that as the main subject over an hour ago. <laughs> he just keeps coming back to it. So simple to prove this. So simple that he can't do it. <laughs> okay, but he didn't say that doesn't have anything but to do with the But we're not saying that, ma- that matters. It, when it switches polarity, it does. You're saying that For a split polar- second with the dielectric discharge for the millionth time. It, it, again, but it's just, that, that means gravity would have to have an impulse that you could measure, and it doesn't. No, the the gravity has nothing. Oh, you're missing the, the whole point. electric grain doesn't actually, flip no, actually, on the whole no, earth. No, no, no. Actually, during an electric storm, that potential reverses for quite some time. But the lightning is a split second. You're right. It so doesn't flip gonna, across the whole earth. And people don't you said you're right. Just move air. on from there. Let's just All go. right, whatever. whatever. Yeah, you said I, you're right. It doesn't work, guys. Absolutely doesn't work. All right, man. Earth he's trying to convince himself more than he's trying to convince them, which you could see written all over his face. Sure, but, uh, he said, you know, uh, agree or disagree. We, we can talk, I'm just saying that that's one thing that's just very easy to debunk. I know. Spinning, the spinning of the earth doesn't work. Neither does the it lack of curvature. It works. It works. Ryan, you did say there were some yep. things that you should look into. Please do. I, I, I will. I will send you a, send, get my email. So. All right, man. And Thanks I'm, for coming. You just send yes. me the most convincing ones. Which okay, wait, wait. I sent you in the chat. Do you see in the chat before you get, go away? There's a couple of things I put in there. The Hit the chat button. You wanted Zoom. to know where the cosmologist faked the LIGO. That's the uh, second link it, there. He doesn't want to say that. And then no, the I'll one. Look at, no, I, I, I <laughs> well, he look just at, said it didn't happen. He didn't so believe go it, in but. the chat before you exit. Um, but we already know what these guys link. will do. He'll come back and he'll be like, oh, no, but they faked it on purpose. Like, yeah, that's what we're saying. But but oh, no, but right. they did it to they did it to I'm test gonna, their gonna, systems. You know. You're like, sa- okay, you're saying that, but let me, let, me, let me look at it. Okay, I'll look at it. Okay, and then Fair. the one below that Fair is enough. the uh, British Navy never existed to. Be, it's okay, a, the, a dumb okay, listen, I'll here concede that. I'll concede that one, but okay. it doesn't mean that Coriolis. Just get his email, okay. Austin. All right. What's weird is that he was that's the only point he officially conceded. So is he basically just admitting to himself cuz the other things let's say he spent more than 1 second. So let's he probably just saw like an anti flat earth meme about that and actually read 0 seconds of anything about it so he conceded it. But that exposes him even further on why he would bring it up in the first place if he actually doesn't know anything about it. Not that he knows anything about anything, but his ego kind of hallucinates that if he spent more than a few hours on something, that somehow that means he understands it. Obviously, it clearly doesn't. But he hallucinates it does to protect that ego. So does does him conceding this point mean that he actually spent zero time on it? He just took it on blind faith. And the fact that he would do so in the first place and bring up that point, that also exposes him and further tells you everything you need to know about Bryant Myers and his anti-science position. I got it. I got it for you. All right. Uh, let me All right, check listen. Super Chats real quick. I just cool. want to say thank you to those people who did that. Ryan, take a nice breath. You did a great uh, job. 1,073 people I, listening. We got to keep going. People like the, I, I, uh, the I, good breath. Right. my best no, show we ever. Four, we went four hours and 15 minutes, so oh, wow. we're good. Time flies when you're in the- When you're having fun, time flies. Yeah, we're Come all on. having fun. Come on, man. Time dilates and then slows time. down. I, it's just don't, Austin, no more talking. We should get, <laughs> we should get <laughs> McToon here. He, he thinks so. Think yeah, that, that would be fun. Bob the science guy. We got to get him on. He'll tell yeah, me. not going to happen. Well, yeah, at least, you know, listen, at least next time if we do this ever again, at least get one other. Let me have at least one other person. Yeah, get, well get, get as many okay, as you absolutely. want. Bring totally fine. Absolutely. Bring them on. Bring them on. The more the merrier. It doesn't bother us at all. We weren't trying to bother you. We want to have but it doesn't a, bother us. Because it's a fully us. rounded conversation. So if you got somebody that can explain sure. it better, bring them. Sure. Bring all the credentials you can find, ideally. Yep. Yeah. Bring right, some college professors, whatever, and, whatever, you, whatever you like. Yep. But th- 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 listen, for Globers out there and Flat Earthers, this is how you have a conversation. Wow. We had fun. We got a little heated. Um, and, and that's it. We didn't call each other names. That, that part was let's, hope, let's hope that nobody in the yeah. Super Chats did. I, um, I, you know what? I was watching the chat. 
People were pretty good. A right. few f- people got frustrated out there, but Brian, you know. Brian, I swore once, and I'm just apologizing for it, Brian. Okay, I did no. swear once. Well, we, so no, I'm, I'm sorry about that. That's, I said I was going to cut it. my wrists in the chat, so I apologize we, for we that. Did, we did. We did. I really wrong. wasn't going to do that, but I did say that. Oh, that's great. I, I'm no, sorry no, if I'm calling, sorry no. if you if I made if you got mad at me, bro. It's all love. It's impossible. Electrostatics impossible. I spent several days actually de- deconstructing the, the whole electromagnetism. And I'm telling you, it doesn't work. It's Austin. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. And after all that time, all he has is, it doesn't work. That's all he has is pretending it's easily debunked, doesn't work. And he keeps coming. And look, he's coming back to it again. That's how triggered this poor guy is. I mean, his mental breakdown is complete here. <laughs> it's not that I hate Austin. It's just that you can't Fucking describe hate. why hate, things you hate. Fall you hate his beard with nine point eight like seconds squared. Right. So when you can't explain something, then you look into it. You don't just dismiss it. Oh, I can't explain it. It's gone. I mean, imagine if everybody right, did that. If it's the electric field, you can, we know we have all kinds of. You can measure. Austin, it. you're banned next time. Yeah. It's not Dude, I said banned. we'll talk about it later, brother. <laughs> Austin, <laughs> banned. It, it, it doesn't work. All right. Let me read. It's really electric forces that hold our world together. Oh, hey, yeah. Brian, 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 we love you, man. We thank you for, right. for thanks doing for, this. Really. Thanks, for, thanks for coming, and we'll continue yeah, well, the conversation. You can leave if you want. I'm just going right. to read you Super Chats. All right. I'm going to let but you go. Could, maybe we could do it again in the future, Brian. Why don't you look at a couple of these doors we showed you and see if you could walk through them? But it's impossible. I'm not going to do it on this type of form again, though. I, okay, I we're sorry. Sure. No, this no worries. Not, Understandable. Not, hey, I'll let you come on my show, and we can talk about electricity. He'll be on tomorrow. Yeah. Dave, would you go on the show with Professor Dave, Simon, Dan? What? And- no, I don't. I don't talk. Uh, to look those at the way lying, those guys. Those come on, lying. hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't compare us to them. No, that's rude. Yeah, that's, that's kind of rude. Let's that's rude. Let's we didn't. Just, we didn't call you names. No, 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 no. Hey, I, I, no, 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 no. I Brian, know. did you? You got to watch the fallacy breakdown of Professor Dave and I. Did you watch that video yet? No, no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna send I'm it to you. Two hundred seventy-five to five. If they acted with manners, if somehow they acted with manners, that'll never happen. He got two hundred seventy-five fallacies to my fifteen, telling him. Brian, here's the difference. The difference between us is we can have a conversation and we actually attack your real arguments. We don't make straw men. Those guys just attack our character. They call us names and they build straw men. And I don't like that either. Okay, well, that's what they do. Well, actually, Bryant set a record amount of straw man fouls. I mean, not ad homs. He only had a couple ad homs where, where he called the uh, everything about electricity nonsense because obviously he was so triggered by that. <laughs> but and, and maybe one or two other times. But regarding the straw man, I mean, all Bryant did mostly was straw man. He pretended that these other positions were being brought forth that weren't in his triggered state. Now, maybe he didn't do that intentionally because of his mental breakdown, his mental deficiencies, but... Yeah, I mean, not a good look for Bryant. They're definitely giving him too much credit here, but hopefully I, hopefully he'll watch this breakdown as well. <laughs> so don't compare us to them. That's why yeah, we, we don't like that the, either. We, we have, have that kind of conversation. Turned, that's why we like you. By, yeah, I was turned off by Professor Dave. The way he well, he's not a professor you. either. So Listen, hey, well, he's, he's, he's not a real professor. Does well, that bother you? Does well, that bother you? He didn't teach chemistry, actually. While we're at it, we'll just point out Professor Dave is clearly scared to debate me and only wants clearly. to debate me on an unfair platform. Just want to throw that out there. So, so that he can well, berate yeah, you. I mean, All right. You can, uh, upside down guy <laughs> says you can confine and raise a kid to believe anything. If confined enough, you can show and tell them dragons are real and they will come and eat them and they all misbehave. Sorry. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Sacred knowledge says belief is something you do when you lack info necessary to know. We don't believe we know it can't be a ball because we measured it. Globers believe. Okay. Thank you. Uh, aware verse. Thank you very much for the two bucks. Uh, Eric H says, Bryant is just going to tie his own self into a knot. This is great. Uh, THC says, smoke some more indoctrination, Bryant. Come on, be nice, guys. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Hey, I'm not a, hey, Dave, he doesn't, he didn't hear a conversation before the call. So. Yeah, he's got a little bit, uh, he's, he's kind of on our side and on everything, but of course, on everything, yeah. but these two topics, which is, and, and, a, and if, I'm wide awake when it comes to not. Well, <laughs> I mean, indoctrinated goofs always think they're not indoctrinated. I mean, that is a common uh, theme there. <laughs> well, you think photons are real, though, so I don't agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, whatever you want to call them, we can use them to model what happens in reality. Okay. You're, you guys are hung up on names. We, we can, I mean... The, the difference between I mean, quantum the, mechanics is based on all the, the computers that oh, we're using sorry, about are based on photons. They're hung up on names while he has all these mental gymnastics with rebranding, and because he's so triggered by the names, rebranding, exposing his cult. <laughs> he's the one. I mean, his psychological projection is pretty accurate. I do have to give him that. Whether you want to call him photons or not, I mean. All right, all right, right. Brian, you're you're don't compare yourself to those guys that you just mentioned. 
because you actually believe what you're saying and that's fine. Yeah. Those guys don't believe what they're saying. They know that they're scamming and they, they do what all psychopaths uh, um, do. They just call other people exactly what they are. Right. It, it's, it's amazing. So, I, 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 I thank you. Totally turned out. Yeah, I'm totally 406 out. findings and Reggie P 56 and bear plegic bear and homie the handyman. Thank you guys for the super chats. All right. It's good. Now we can go. All right. All right. That That's is it. all everybody. Thanks for right. coming guys. Do your all own right. research. When you do, you'll never again believe like Brian does. Till next time. <laughs> right. Peace. <laughs> so there you have it. Mind shockers. We have a new champion, Brian Myers champion of Dunning-Kruger, champion of narcissism, and champion of logical fallacies in Flat Earth debate thus far. This man has committed more logical fallacies by the largest margin imaginable than any other debate thus far covered on Mindshock and any other Flat Earth debate I've ever seen on any platform. When I started doing this analysis, I mean, I definitely did not think this would be going into four digits. I mean, no matter how clueless a goof, I mean, even so-called Professor Dave, one of the most clueless Dunning-Kruger narcissistic goofs of all time, didn't even rack up this many fallacies. And Bryant Myers, most of these fallacies aren't even ad homs, which is what's impressive. I mean, he's definitely committed some ad homs when he got extremely triggered. I mean, I don't know, maybe 10, 20... 30 at most, but I mean, we're, we're looking at about a thousand non ad hominem logical fallacies. This is impressive stuff. I mean, My Bryant Myers was pretty diverse with his logical fallacies in his complete mental breakdown at having his religion questioned. And, you know, we had high hopes for Myers. I mean, he's very credentialed. He's very polite, uh, or at least he was at the beginning. So that led many to believe that he would be able to mount some kind of defense for the heliocentric globe model, but he brought nothing to the table. Absolutely nothing other than these Dunning-Kruger stylings and extreme triggering uh, to the point of just extreme psychological protection, outright denial, and just these religious faith-based appeals where it sounded more like he was trying to convince himself than the other guys he was talking to. Very, very embarrassing showing. I've actually never seen anybody get humiliated to this level, even within a flat earth debate. So I genuinely feel for this poor guy. I really feel bad for this guy. Uh, he might have some kind of mental disability uh, just from what he's shown here. So, yeah, it's, it's just a sad state of affairs here, a very sad state of affairs. This was really difficult to get through. So, again, I hope all the Mind Shock listeners out there appreciate the amount of work and effort it took to logically break down this so-called flat earth debate or flat earth discussion where this man, this priest of scientism, just got utterly decimated to a level we've never seen before and i'm sure i've missed a bunch of fallacies too from all these guys i'm sure the other guys committed fallacies that i might have missed too and i was actually hoping that brian myers would at least get one zinger in there i mean i was rooting for the guy for the past few hours i was hoping he'd get at least one zinger on these guys but alas no it was just complete and utter thrashing of this so-called intellectual but yeah, it definitely serves as a very good educational tool to see the failure of goofs like Bryant to bring any kind of science or logic to the table and only their scientism masquerading as legitimate science, but of course no logic, no reason, no adherence to the scientific method to be found here. So that's it for now. On to the next one. Hope everybody enjoyed another edition of the Mind Shack Podcast. If you want to help support the podcast, help us get more logical analyses out there in all different types of topics and bring logic and reason back to a world where it is quickly going extinct, which Brian Myers perfectly illustrated, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. You can also become a YouTube member right here on YouTube. Help support the channel that way. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share. Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunkings of any kind, leave them in the comment section. This is Bruce McGuire signing out. Catch you guys in the next